change it all.
great coming here. I see fans uh, coming all the time and uh, it's nice. I don't know how big I am. Obviously, I don't really follow the Chinese social media. So I think it's hard to keep track of it, but uh, it's, uh, it's been a nice uh, welcoming so far. Yeah, I think uh, the, like the fans at the front of the hotel. I was hearing from like past events, like CAC. The fans were like in at breakfast, like uh, surrounding people, signing mouse pads and everything like that. It feels like it can be a bit overwhelming. But this type of fanfare, I don't know. We don't really get it anywhere else in the world. It seems a bit unique to China. No, definitely, this is a unique experience. It's uh, it's special, very special, and uh, it's also different. So uh, yeah, as you mentioned, the breakfast. The first thing I walked in the morning to the breakfast, there's a guy waiting. <laughs> To get a signature or a photo, which is, uh, yeah, it can be overwhelming, but it's also it's super nice. Uh, you get a good, like good feeling that uh, like they live to see you literally, and that's that's just super nice. So I really hope you're gonna get to play on the stage in front of them and uh, show some good good CS. Okay, and you on that? Do you guys come in here with the you know plan? This is an event for us to win. Hundred percent. Beautiful. All right, thank you very much, Nico. Have a nice day. Thanks for your time. Thank you. Cheers, man. Hi, um, Hooksy. Hi. Um, no, it is only good. So anyway, we want to get stuck into the veto. No, we're not going to talk about the veto because yeah, I don't. I veto. don't care. Okay. I don't care about the veto. You've talked enough about veto. You've been done like eighteen podcasts since. I don't talk. I don't care about that. I can understand why you picked Ancient. I don't care, man. You talk to argue with Yanko, not me. Yeah, I don't understand why you picked Ancient. Still as fuck. <laughs> uh, look, we're talking about chat. Do you have to go? Are you leaving? No, I'm waiting for someone. I don't know who I'm waiting for, but someone. Okay. Well, look. Uh, I was just saying to Nico, he's kind of a big deal here in China, but you are as well. Nah, yeah, yeah, yeah. it's not that bad. What do you mean? Yeah. Is it, were you I heard for, for the other guys, there was like 150 people waiting in the lobby. And for me, there was only like 40, 50. So. Only 40, 50? Yeah, so I'm not that big of a deal. Yeah, but you're an in-game leader. No one really cares about in-game leaders, right? Yeah, that's just life. The Zodiac Year of the Dragon. Known for their intelligence, their ambition, their power. As the proverb dictates, only the dragon can tame the fates. Virtus Pro, home to the king of time himself. Jaime embodies the Panlong. He is the commander of the clock. Art, a coiling dragon in his own right. Time is of the essence, maximize every second. But who is tasked with commanding that temptation? Control is key for the Shenlong. A dragon's wisdom lies in the depths of its scales, not in the sharpness of its claws. The master of the winds, the storms, the clouds, guided by their own Shenlong. Ah! Astralis, their spiritual dragon new to these skies. Device now faced with his own question of control. We know he can all. But how will the five claws flex under his wing? Maus, the requirement to take the reins of this young squad falls on the shoulders of Shue. Trust is imperative. All the easier to relinquish when you have exertion as your right-hand man. The Tianlong knows what it means to be the guardian of the gates. Even if that requires being in the firing line. Heroic. Two names that personify sacrifice. Not demanding the glitz, the glamour, heads down, getting the job done, no matter your leader. Nice! Tai Lu, the devoted defender, poised to protect home soil, alongside Lin Vision. G2, home to not only the gods, but the Garda. The Tianlong known for its bravery, but alongside him, the Dragon Kings. The fastest flick in the East. Phase, a mind wise and hungry. The question is, who will remain the dragon amongst men? Intel Extreme Masters Shangdu is brought to you in part by Intel. Acer Predator, DHL, Kadia, Monster Energy, the United States Air Force, 1X Bet, and White Market.
Rafa really making history. Absolutely phenomenal. And Ace is the champion of the Intel Extreme Masters World Finals. Storm's still not quite done. MC is going to take this fight, though. Three seconds left. Last two rounds of match. It's got to start it well for ESC. And this is a massive move for Zest. But he's not content with just the Nexus kill. He will get the up. And it's all done. A troll is winning. The last IM event in China was in 2019. Back then, the trophy lifting Astralis was unstoppable, but now they managed to keep only one member of the unstoppable roster. Also, FaZe Clan still had Olaf, Nico, and Colt Zera. The Chinese fans are patient, but also very passionate. So they managed to prove that they deserve more events in this region. This city, Chengdu, is known for the pandas, but we are going to make it the Chinese capital of CS2. And so it should be, because Chengdu was the first ever Chinese city to host the Intel Extreme Masters, all the way back in 2009. That was when a Swedish SK Gaming lifted the trophy, when Get Right was wearing a Fnatic jersey, and when Groove, who is still here today, was the coach of K23. We've got a whole lot of history here, which we're going to be adding to today. And this is where it is all going to be going down. 16 teams ready to descend upon the Intel Extreme Masters Chengdu 2024. My name's Ferris Spears, joined by Matthew Nyanka, but it's about this guy right here today. Should we give him a name? Him or her? How are we, how are we feeling? Uh, you choose. Well, I don't know. It, it's a you him. can assume. I, it's I'm gender. assuming it's a him. What's his name? The him. Oh, I don't know. Bob. Bob Panda. Bob, Bob the Panda. Panda. Lovely. That's a safe one. Oh. Lovely. Robert the Panda. How does it feel to be back, Yanko? All good? What do you mean? In yeah, you were here, yeah. right? Yeah, I think I'm having, I'm gonna have a much better time than at the last Chinese event I was at. Yeah, it was a rough I was one at the you, 2019. It? it was not great. 16? It was Prime Astralis. Yeah. It was Glaive's best tournament in his career. Yeah, let's not talk about that. Why, one. Do, you, why do you start the segment bringing him that memory? How mean is that? Immediately. Got a, a, it's in a rough couple of months. therapy. You know, Matthew, you should know this the best. You've got to confront your demons and move on. And we are going to move on because uh, we can have a look at exactly what we're going to be looking at as we look at the roadmap for the event. Of course, we're going to be starting off in the group stage, Matthew. Some best of ones, they're moving on to best of threes where six teams will be progressing to the playoffs. Yeah, you're correct. The formula is always the same for these short IM events. You have two groups of eight teams, the JSL double elimination format. We're looking for three teams per group to make it to the group stage. One in the semi-straight, two in the quarterfinals. And a whole lot of Counter-Strike coming your way. This is what's going to be going on the A stream. The B stream side is going to be some familiar faces and teams and talent as well. We've got B-Dog and Lucy guiding you through the initial games. Anything standing out to you in terms of these opening best of ones, Janko? Steel Helmet. That's the one. What a name. I love it. Standing Didi. in. Captain you know, Mo. Couple of teams coming in and out. But yeah, I think Heroic Liquid probably the most exciting game of that opening round. Agreeing with that, Matthew? Yeah, there's a bit of Fury of Lin Vision rematch as well. Uh, we all remember what happened you know, in Copenhagen. Let's see if we have some more shenanigans and craziness up there. And there is a lot on the line, particularly for three of the teams which are already on the board for the Intel Grand Slam. I'm talking about like, so FaZe, Mouse, and G2, all with just one notch. This is so aesthetically pleasing, by yes. the way. But this is a very important thing to be keeping our eye out on Yanko because uh, one of those three teams could potentially be halfway to that coveted Intel Grand Slam. Absolutely. And and, you know, you, it also tells you how competitive the scene has been. You know, no team was able to establish dominance, really uh, different winners. So, yeah, I think that's probably something that the likes of Maus, FaZe, G2 are looking for, probably stealing a win, especially mm. as some of the other teams are not in attendance. Now, I mentioned 2009, obviously the first time IEM was here in China, quite a while ago, 15 years. <sighs> and some faces have changed, haven't they? We've got some nice pictures. We've got Gobby on oh the top God. right. Anybody else you recognize A little bit of nothing here? down there as well, of course. Um, um, the ace here lineup, yeah, with Robin, with Wally, uh, Allen, I want to say, Threat. Ace. Face as well. Oh my god. And then we have a bit of fanatic action down there. Karn as well, Gooks, Get Right, DSN, Forest, so all, uh, the whole spiel. Any thoughts, Shanko, or are you just 
marveling in the glory. You know who's like on two of those photos? That's the CEO of Intel. Intel's always had our back. Shout out Intel. Really, 15 really. 15 years. Should, Actually, probably more than that. Should we talk about some first times and some you want, long You want to talk about our first times? We all remember. We all I remember will never the forget. first. And I'm surprised to see some of these guys on the left, actually here in China for the last I'm, surpri I'm surprised to see this isn't copyrighted, the slogan, but yeah, I think it's, it tells you just the new face that we've had, right? And I mean, Kadian is not a new face, but was never in China. And uh, on the right side, obviously a couple of long timers. And also a previous winner as well, Mr. Device in the Astralis jersey. We talked about it already. Isn't Here's that back. wild? I mean, I'm going to theorycraft something. Astralis's in-game leader last time was the MVP. Is it written in the stars for device? So that's, that's how that's how deep hat. we have to go now? No, you're the Zodiac expert, so you tell me for it. Uh, apparently so. <laughs> um, any kind of highlights for you coming into this, particularly considering we are coming off the back of a major literally a week ago? Obviously, we haven't got the champions here, but we do have the second place in FaZe. Anybody you're particularly looking out for? Well, I think I wonder what's going to happen to FaZe, right? Are they still hungover from the major and, you know, taking down spirit and uh, vitality only to lose to Navi in the grand final? It's an opportunity for a team like Mouse to find some redemption, right? Who's had problems on the stage. G2 as a dark horse, potentially. But yeah, I don't know. I mean, Spirit and, and Avi aren't here. I don't know what happened to Vitality Maniac. Like, they were thinking they were going to win the major and now they want to take an event off. Like, we all thought, they, they were going we to all thought it was going to happen. Lulu, like. And it's just now they're taking some, you know, some breaks, some vacation needed. Uh, I'm with you. Uh, Mouse is a team I have on my radar for this event. I do think that FaZe and G2 might have been a bit burnt out from the major. And, you know, the humans will have to see uh, the shape they show up in. But Mouse Mouse Cloud9, that's the two names I have on my bingo card. I had a little uh, jab at Mouse in the lobby, if anybody saw oh, that. Oh, we noticed. Group stage team, apparently, Anko. Group stage merchants. Yeah, I mean, listen, they play really good Counter-Strike, but they're a different team on stage. And until they figure that out, you know, they're going to have some issues and I'm going to go against them until they prove it. I think that's just how it has to be. I think they're doing a little bit of overthinking when it comes to those games, right? Like they they should just keep doing the same things they do in groups. So they're gaining experience. It's happened a couple of times now. So you're hoping that sooner rather than later, they're going to perform better in the playoffs. How are you feeling about Cloud9? And dare I say it, the all-ping situation or lack thereof. Oh. Should they have made a change post-major? I mean, listen, it's so short of a turnaround uh, if you want to make a change between the major and here, which is very frustrating to me. I was hoping that the teams that had to go through a change would do it prior to the next event. That's just not the case. So now we're just uh, delaying the music a little bit. DJ, loop that remix. We're backing up. We're talking about Cloud9 and the op discussions. If anything, the interesting point is Axel's performance and what he'd, he'd done in Copenhagen should not a lot of doubters out there. Let's see if he can play that kind of kind of strike because then I think it shuffles the cards a little bit for Cloud9 and what we expect for the future. Confirmed that he changes mouse, he changes keyboard, he yes. changes crosshair, Change everything. everything. No, everything. no joke, jokes aside, what he said was like, I've, I'm just thinking less. And I love it because it's, you know, you're just sort of playing the game and not overthinking it and being a little bit more loose. And I'm excited to see if his form keeps up here. It's that killer instinct, right? Like that's what we knew and love from Axel. And for... I think a lot of, absent. I think a lot of players are just watching Donk and realizing that sure, he's like super good, but he's not overthinking. He's just going for it. Like he's just doing it. And he has that freedom of a younger player where he's not burdened by all the experience in a way and like uh, just doing his thing. So yeah, hopefully we see that from more players. Well, we're going to be seeing them later on, but not before we head into our first game, but after this quick break. When we're back, it's going to be Liquid taking on Heroic. First best of one here at the Intel Extreme Masters. Viewers out there, Mike Loder here from the Ticker Studio today with your weather across the country. Brizzy is looking warm at 31 degrees with a chance of afternoon showers, so keep those brollies on hand. Turning our attention to Melbourne now, where it is looking cloudy with a chance of Counter Strike? Up the set to try and win it in a 1v5. Chris three flick. No. Oh, the Mickey won by one set. No way. He wants it. Oh, my <laughs> God. Who does it? Smokes. Let's see a double smokes in the same place there. Simple just jumping casually into the side. Wait, wait, wait. What, 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 what was that? Never miss a play again. Simple. It's not allowed. This is not FPL. This is a major. Finally. With Face It Watch, you're in control. Switch between player POVs live and see the game through the eyes of any pro. Never miss a moment with replays. Relive each highlight on demand from all angles. Watch it, control it, face it.
the day with some Sichuan spice because guess who Cadian's first opponent is? That's right, his former organization in Heroic, the team that did oh so well in the opening stage of the major and then crumbled in the face of the elimination. But uh, Yanko arguably won or two better than Liquid because uh, they didn't even make it out the RMR. Yeah, absolutely. It was a disaster for Liquid in the RMR campaign, right? So now the questions are, where's this team at? Like, do they still believe in this project 100% or are already thinking about making some changes behind the scenes and Heroic on the other side? Yeah, I had them making the playoffs. I was mm. a bit disappointed how they, you know, crumbled after that complexity game. It was a big leg down, honestly, after the overtime, they kind of disappeared. Uh, when it comes to Liquid, I don't even think Caden has the luxury to worry about this, like, intra-Heroic rivalry thing. He's got plenty. He's got his hands full of a whole situation situation in Liquid, and if for some people you might consider the post-major event a bit of a re breathing, relaxing moment, I think it's the other way around for Liquid. I think you, you're playing to save face here, you're playing to prove that after this one month on Counter-Strike you've played, you still have something to show for us, you're not just a, a team that we're gonna just brush aside and ignore for the rest of the Counter-Strike. Because we've been so hyped to actually see Liquid do something, right? Unfortunately, they did miss out on being at Katowice just due to the points and then failing to qualify for the Major after they were so damn hyped. And there's good reason, right? Because Kadian, we know his star status status as an in-game leader, and he's got the tools around him, arguably, for the most part. Yeah, I think it's also a matter of... It's just unfortunate. I mean, they lost two games, only played one best of three at that RMR, lost to Complexity, who obviously qualified. Um, for the major, but it is what it is, you know, that's your situation and you, and you need to find a way to battle out of it and to produce some results because that's in the end what it's all about. If you can't do that, changes are going to happen. So where do you place expectations then, Matthew, considering that we haven't liquid. seen... Yeah, on, on Liquid, particularly because we thought they I mean, should have been at the major, right? Yeah, listen, as it stands right now, I don't think they make playoffs. 
Like they, they don't have the pedigree right now to make playoffs here in Chengdu. I'd love to be wrong for them. And in fact, that game I think against Heroic is going to be a good litmus test to where they're at currently. But based on what we've seen, they don't have what it takes to make playoffs currently. Well, let's check in with Zeus to see exactly how the team is feeling heading into that first series. So, Zeus, I got to see you yesterday and you told me that you had a 37 hour flight. How are you feeling now? I feel great. Mm -hmm. I couldn't be better. Could do this every time. Let's travel again. Oh, and what about Caden? Because I heard he's feeling a bit like under the weather. Yeah, but he's feeling better now. I, I, we have other teams here that have it worse than us. We're feeling okay about it. Hopefully Casper will be fine. He says mm -hmm. he's a strong boy. He's, he's got it this covered. I'm sure he does. It's not like for maybe like kind of like hard hitting questions because when it comes like on paper, there are some teams that kind of feels like they should not work. Like Ens is one of the examples. You have gems, but so far like it did not proc. What do you think so? I think it's overestimated how long time takes to actually get adapted just because you have talent. It's a teamwork game after everything and we're getting adapted. It takes time. We have high expectations, the public, everyone that's watching us, but we have to keep our foot on the ground, trust the process. Other teams, we're making roster moves, changing out. No, we believe in what we're doing, so it's a long run thing and I think we're getting close to it. And what exactly did you do in the last month to like, improve it? So. Last month was rough because we weren't supposed to be here, so we were running around the world looking for visas, but we've been practicing, focusing on what we could. The RMR, unfortunately, was a hit, but there were learning lessons there. We see areas where we had to improve, and we're just doing all we can. One day at a time, we're getting better, understanding each other more, and focusing on our playbook so that we're pretty well set. Sounds good. Thank you very much. No problem. Let's go. Okay, interesting. So any questions kind of quelled there by Zeus said, trust the process, we're sticking with this for the time. Yeah, he's saying, you know, they're not considering changes, right? Like they still believe in the roster, they're going to keep grinding. And we should also remember Liquid is a replacement team for this tournament. Like yes. initially they weren't supposed to be here, but some other teams had visa issues and, and whatnot, the roster changes. So this is a bonus for them, like getting some actual tier one LAN experience, going to get to play at least one best of three, hopefully a little bit more than that. And I also think, uh, listen, we all know it takes time for a team like this to come together. I just don't know how where the players were, like internally. Like when you go, get together and you create this sort of team, this super team, you, you don't expect to have so much trouble, like a little bit of it. But then that's when the, truly the quality of the relationship within the team and the process is being tested because, you know, you're looking at each other in the eye, watching the major together. It's not a great moment. We all loved the video about their team building, but let's see if it actually was yeah. real or, you know, if you don't have a result, people stop buying into it. I I was almost going to say Heroic have kind of been the inverse because I think back in Caddo we were looking at it as uh, arguably the leftover players kind of coming together for what I thought was going to be one last hurrah and then they did work in Caddo. They looked amazing in the opening stage and then the elimination stage happened, didn't it? And that wasn't that wasn't great. Yeah, it wasn't great and also I talked to, to nerds during the lobby and he just said, I played like shit, you know, like yeah, I just didn't deliver, I let the team down, you know, and it's not going to happen and he guaranteed that they were going to be a top five team within the next six months. Months, Where, right? Where's that even coming from? What the, the hell kind of claim is that? I think it's just belief in the in the teammates, right? And in the players that they have enough uh, quality to do that. They've been playing some really good Counter-Strike, Saw doing work again, this time with Kixan, who I also think is uh, proving that he's a good in-game leader, right? And they got the individuals delivering, right? Shush and Tess is mm. also playing on a good level. And then it's Nico, those like with the off, sometimes he does more work with the rifle than the ops, so it's about figuring out that little detail for everything to come together for Heroic. Yeah, and setting expectations and knowing how to move forward. I think that Vitality granted them a great victory in Katowice, but it might have just messed them up internally just a little bit, because then you show up at the Major, and lo and behold, you don't make it past the elimination stage. What the hell is going on? I really think mentally something clicked in that overtime game uh, versus Complexity. That was a very high-intensity game, key moments here and there, but after that, they just disappeared. Uh, the game versus Pain left me more than wanting. Uh, it was a shallow of a performance. They saved face on the last map, but it was a 12-0. So let's see what they're made of. Let's see like the camaraderie, the trusting in your teammates, the, oh, we're having such a good time together. We're insane. Hold on a minute. Wait, we just lost one to three and then time has passed a little bit. And now we get a temperature check on how they're looking at as a heroic team. What was your take on the Nerds drop off at the elimination stage? Did you think they overperformed expectations or were you actually expecting them to make it top eight? I mean, listen, in individually, I think he definitely underperformed. You, you don't need me to have a master degree to tell you that. Uh, I think but they you were, do have one. But I do have one, just in case people are yeah. just But I do think that, you know, th for me, they were a conversation as like a porker team for the top eight. Like they could have had a way into the top eight. It didn't work out, of course. This is obviously it's even absolutely worse. horrendous. It's even but worse also, when it's like, you see it. 
Uh, I, again, I, I watched that game versus Payne, and then you can pinpoint towards him, and the numbers are really gross, but it's not just him. Like, they all just disappear throughout the game. They were all trash. It's just, that's what happens when you get absolutely wiped out in a 2-0 like that. So he individually, far from, rookie of the year last year, by the way, the mm. numbers we're looking at. But I think it's a bit of a shortcut to just pin all on him. I think it's a shortcut. Do you agree with that sentiment, Yanko, that it should have been the team, you know, stepping up and not just him. filling in for him? Yeah, I mean, uh, absolutely. You know, it's a team game. You you win together, you lose together, like JL was saying ab about Alexi B defending his boy back in Katowice. So, absolutely. But as a star player, you're expected to lead the way in a sense. And it's weird because I don't consider Nurse a choker or, or anything along the side. So it was just a bad timing to have a bad tournament. Yeah, hopefully he's turned over a new leaf coming into Chengdu. We get to see the bands coming out, of course. Best of one, which leaves us part. with Ancient. My favorite How are you part. feeling about that? How do you feel about Ancient? I think it's uh, on theme with like Chengdu City, like a lot of green and all. We're really, we're on track. We got the bamboos going here on the desk. I think it's all working out perfectly. It's very coherent. Not a strike. How do you right. feel, Yanko? We've had the romantic angle. What about what about your thoughts? <laughs> yeah, I feel good. I mean, in a best of one, right, a map where you can work on, on both sides. I think we'll see a lot of hopefully dynamic Counter-Strike, right? Like moving back and forth. We know both teams um, with the, on the CT side like to be proactive, like to get that information so yeah I'm, I'm hoping also to see Liquid give us a little bit of a glimpse of what yes. it could look like right like I, I want them to have a good I want to be hyped here. we want to be hyped about Liquid any predictions dare I say for a best of one I'm going with Heroic because they have the more healthy team that's going to be my oh for yeah. this tournament the physical whoever, check whoever has a sick player I'm predicting against them that is sound logic I'm signing with Heroic too okay well we've got, got our predictions me. we've got the map and we've got our two teams so I think it's time on it over to throw it on over to Alex and Chad Thank you very much, Freya. Let's get this party started live for day one of Chengdu. Are we, are we, are we Chengduin? I don't know. I was thinking about it. It came out a bit funny the first time. We're going to go. We'll be practicing. We'll We've got a whole week to practice. Yeah, I think it's more of like a you. Can Chengdu. I get it out immediately? Yeah, Chengduin and Chengduin. Don't oh, uh, Ladies and gentlemen, this is all this man has been saying since we got on the aeroplane. That sounds better. There we go. I can hear myself. And we can get ready to start because Team Liquid taking on Heroica Grudge Match, Chad. It's one I think a lot of people have been Or is it Forbidden Love? Forbidden Love? It's a bit more like Romeo and Juliet because they were split apart. Yeah, yeah. And now they're kind of looking at each other across the hall. I just saw them kind of, you know, exchanging glances in the uh, route to the bathroom. Oh. And now they're oh. in the route to the pistol. Okay, well, this one got spicy. Odds favoring Heroic, and it's going to take the tone out of things. Kadian posturing middle to see if anybody's home, but it's your kinder. Contact Cave onto Tessus. Has a lot to deal with in the first click. The first headshot, Skulls felled. That is satisfying. That is delicious. And building upon it with a smoke on Cave limits their options on this pistol adventure. Kadian starts to probe out mid. Donut angle held, so cross to red. Nuts his responsibility. He'll be calling for that, and, but he's certainly heard that. Gallivanting towards Red Room, kicks him back and away after taking some space here on lane. Yeah, what do they do with this now? The fact Kadian's got red, Shush is still tucked in to deal with that. Kixon probing forward the bomb on Naf, transitioning back. They want to take this fight. Kixon's about to get some. Oh, traction he was. Gets out of dodge in time. This B set up very strong for Heroic. CT pistols, they are very valuable. And we are going to see the Utah sail out from Twist. Do they go off of this? It looks like they will. Kadian to try and arrive. A little later to the party, he's not going to clear Shush here. It's very hard and clear. And uh, he's completely neglected. Oh, oh. oh, makes a meal of it, does Shush. Kadian lives on. This is a fast flank. Now, Kixon's in trouble. Naf has found a nice headshot. Kadian's flank applying pressure from both sides at the same time. He's not rushing it, though. Just his presence alone is, is going to waste time. On their way back in, Nikodos gets cleared out as a unit. Now Tessas reveals himself. Oh, and a couple of good clicks could have made the round interesting. Nurt still can. Not going to be comfortable nor easy. Bomb ticking away at some pace. He does not have a kit, but he's going to just stick it. And they're not going to run him down immediately. There's the first confirmed. He's off the bomb. And Kadian down. Naffle trade. A lovely 3k from Nafly to get Liquid the pistol. Just a quick one, Alex. This is for you while we get situated because it's going to take a few moments. New setup. Hit N on your keyboard. Bam. Nice. What side do you like it on? No, that looks good. Yeah? Yeah. 
The logos are, are wrong. Yeah, but that's why I thought I thought it was meant to refresh it. Uh, Hold up, I'm I'm clicking mine as well. We'll get J Raz in here at some point. He's busy fine. right now. He can come give us a hand. We got a uh, interesting little pistol that kicked off. And look, uh, do we do we need to focus on the Shush Kadian exchange? We don't have do to. Do we need to tell everybody that was the reason that the round fell apart for Heroic? Well, I mean, I think that's probably your job. Yeah, well, that is the reason that the round fell apart right. for Heroic. Yeah. Uh, it felt like that kill should have been Shusha's, but... You can attest, Chad, even as someone that's, you know... He wasn't through. running, though. I know what you were going to say. Yeah. It's a piss was around. He, he wasn't looking. At, he was walking. All right. If he was running yeah. and you had a distance Back of away... Head and He's not expecting you, so it can be a bit janky. Can we do him dirty? Do we have it in the replay? Sure, still got a smile on his face. I, I would be feeling a bit... Because <laughs> I'm not going to lie, when we immediately cut from that to kicks, and I'm like, well, he's in trouble, isn't he? <laughs> They're coming up ramp, and he's, this guy's going speedway. You're like, well... The missile started something. with that Tessa's headshot on Skulls. So nice they had the stack well. over towards B. Yeah. Oh, we know what the tech issue is, don't we? Yeah, there's a little... A bit of a very clear indicator. Look at that little purple mouse from Skulls. It's tiny. It does look small, or doesn't is it? it? Just maybe the it could be the perception of the camera. Of the, yeah, the way that maybe like a fisheye type beat. Yeah. I think it's probably a, a standard size mouse. <laughs> I think it's pretty standard, actually. So uh, the jury's out on these jerseys. Giving It's giving football core. You football know? core. Yeah, there's all of this. There's like a hardcore, well, metal like core. Trend. Yeah, exactly, okay. like cottage core. Cottage uh, core. Football core was in last year. Uh -huh. uh, a lot of the... Uh, is this like retro football? Precisely. Like the, 90s, the more retro, 90s jerseys. 90s jerseys. You okay. wear them with From like FIFA baggy 99. jeans. Yeah, okay. exactly. All right. It was a thing. You put your, your gazelles on. Oh, it is a normal on. mouse. It's it is a, a normal size mouse. Normal okay. size mouse. That's good. Good start. Great start. He's gone for the yellow edition. That's Nikodos. Yeah, the jury is out, isn't it? I liked what they've done with this, like, Pantone. Like, you got these little rectangles of color grading into, like, a pink called. at the back. No, just it reminds me of, like, yeah, like, like well, you can't see it. You have to turn around. Sh hey, shush. <laughs> Imagine. Imagine if he just suddenly looked at the camera. They're how far? Well, they're a little distance away from us. Yeah. Did you peek your head into the uh, venue, see how they're building up for the weekend? N no, but I did take a picture of a really interesting um, set of chairs on set the way to chairs. the chairs? Yeah. Okay. Can I show you? Yeah, show me the look set of the chairs. chairs. Aren't they interested? Look at that. Doesn't it look like something out of a movie? Where are they in the lavatory? That's just on the way to the, to the bathrooms. Oh. It looks like kind of a... Imagine, yeah, a meeting of some description. What if, what if all those chairs were taken as you were walking? Do you walk past those chairs to go to the bathroom? You do. Yeah, it would be weird, wouldn't it, if people were sitting there as you walk past? Yeah. Yeah, it has a, it's, it's got a mysterious aura to it. It does. I think I'm going to tweet it. Okay. Yeah. The bathroom stools. Look how mysterious this is. Okay. okay. What time is it in Europe, Chad? Uh, well, we should say good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and Hello. hopefully not good night, because no. uh, uh, we are in a GMT plus eight time zone right now, which is, uh, look, the same as my home time zone of Perth. So I, I feel Dang. still jet lag like everybody else. But uh, it is 6.35 a.m. in Central Europe. Well, have you not seen the tweets? All of the dad gamers love it. Yes, I have seen Dupree yeah. talking about it. Shoxy. Uh, yes, it's true. This is when the... Oh, oh. Okay, I'm going to yeah. have to turn yeah, him give down. Give that one a little bit of adjustment. Give him a little bit of waz. And it's this blue one right here, I believe. Oh, yeah. Because sure. that's, that's headset three. There might be a tri-cast in the mix at some point for Harry and Hugo. Yes, if they're lucky. Okay, that's, uh, that's going to be better. You like that? Apologies for the janky start, guys. No, this is how it goes. Yeah, it's just how it is. Day one, game one, best of one. With the one and only Chad Birchall by my side. Let's... Tactical timeout, actually. Yeah, so we are, it doesn't look like we're, we're cooking. And we heard from Saul mentioning something about MP9s, and, well, understandably so. They've got a couple bought up. One for Nerts, one for Kixon. That's the way it's got to be. It has to be this way. That way the logos match up. All right. It's got to be that way. Yeah, it feels better right? that way. Yeah. Okay. I don't like the... Hopefully that goes away. 1-0. The score. Yeah. In this best of one. I think one. it's good. Day one. All right, I'm going to take a breath. Game one. I'm going to set myself in. All right. Horse bite from Heroic. Let's see. Now they can respond. Aggressive maneuver through cave possible. Kicks in. And Tessus. As Nikodos with the scout, the ability to get those tags is mid control. Being vied for. Yakinda, aggressive in towards cave. Always a tough task against the pesky pistols and upgrade of the MP9s. Still going to try and 
force out any utilities. This again, Cadian has been able to get all this control towards red so early within the round. This is issues. Yeah, he's being a real problem. Now this is the one to address it. Tries to clear him out. Cadian beheads him. That was convincing. It's good if Cadian starts to feel the game. Mm -hmm. It's going to be very important for his calls throughout this map. Well, I would imagine it's going to become a very different task when you get full util on the CTs. Uh, see if he can continue to find these gaps. But right now, yeah, he has oh, certainly got a feel for the game. It's been a pressure point in the opening two rounds. And sure, you're right. It does depend on the type of buy. But also, you can see where they... We've got some info. At this point, you're thinking it's a B stack. At this point, you've got to be suspecting. Well, if you return back, you're still going to have to worry about a main. That's where Shush currently resides. But Katie just keeps on having a look. He's got the rotation cut off. Should have another kill easy as you like. And there it is for Casper. This is looking very sad, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, kicks and finding that does raise a couple of eyebrows. If Nash gets run down, which he controls lovely with the Galil there. Finds his fourth. Yet to die is Naf. This will be a save. Yeah, most definitely. See what Shush and Nikolas can get away with. Well, that's an upgrade, that's for sure. A nice Galil for Shush. Yeah, they should have known that Shush was still in the play, the A anchor. So, uh, likely assuming he was stacked over towards B. Oh, scout for Nikodos, uh 5-7 to be dropped into the next. Shush with the Galil, something threatening for Heroic to work with. Yeah, you feel a bit silly giving that one away, but uh, you'll take a round. 2-0. Uh, Dreamy. I really want Liquid to work, man. I like. I got. I got excited about uh, seeing this international project, but we we know everyone knows it's not been uh, sunshine and rainbows. The best thing they've done is qualify for Dallas. Yeah. Everything else has been miserable. Well, they, at least they're at Dallas. They're here in Chengdu. Yeah, a nice little wild card. Yeah. And I don't mean the team. No. Who also are a no. wild card. And they have a fielded a wild card. As well as the steel helmet. Yeah. A third wild card. The steel helmet. It's like a deck of Uno cards. See what they do with this uh, M4 in the mix. Yeah, this is interesting. The fact they've invested into this. That's been dropped across from Kixon. This is a round that Heroic are really going to try and win. A big investment. This yes, yes. does get isolated. Good moves from your kinder there. Using the MAC-10 close quarters. Shush reveals his Galil. Kaden has managed to uh, cause some problems. He's going to be taken down by Nerds, though. And kicks it. Yeah, he's lost his head there. And that's big from Naf. They can Reaction. surely pincer her straight into the B side. The Util's going to land. Nikodos behind it. No one forward of it. The retake. Not going to be feeling too good now. Nertz has his bell rung down to 46. He's getting punched in. You might want to hold on to this M4 if you're Nertz. You're not going to find anything behind these smokes. An extra one on kicks in to lob out. And they really should just be saving. Yeah, it's not looking too compelling. No, Nikodos is the only one that you'd say can hang around and look for something. And it even looks like he wants to back off as well. As soon as that M4 was noted over towards Red Room, they sprang into action towards B. I like to push up the ramp from Naf, isolating that kill in towards the site. The smokes land. Easy stuff. Good response from Liquid. These are the... I know this sounds silly, but these are the basics that we're looking for oh. in the early stages. How they're going to respond. So four to stay alive and a relatively clean start. Very positive signs as the bomb goes off. 3-0 scoreline now accrued. A bonus of a uh, MAC-10 in the hands of Yakinda to carry forward. Nading the smoke, getting that timing perfect. And this was uh, this is the pick you were uh, highlighting that led to, well, a completely sealed deal and a one round. We're going to have to get our HUD sorted here, Alex. There uh, it is. Uh, we, we have kicks in on Team Liquid side on our HUD for some reason. Yeah, we do. I don't know what's going on. Oh, uh, well. We can work with <laughs> the PGM. Yeah, I guess. So Fine. it's meant to be twists. Early A pressure. Trying to bait out this utility from the A defense. They've been able to do so. Nick it does call across to the AWP. Shush operating with absolutely nothing in that util department. And a rotation back around the world. So just going to bleed heroic dry of their nades into the first gun round. Just holding on to two smokes and a handful of flashes. And a good use of the first 40 seconds or so of this gun round. 
the donut smoke. It means they can't just run away. Test us with some information. But this is the thing. A flash over, a go. He's going to get pushed off of that line. I think the pressure will be applied to Kixon quite quickly. If you take a look at the radar top left of your screen, if they get past Tessas without any dramas, it's going to be on Kixon. We do get a bit of a B-stream update for all of you playing at home, and that's an unusual result so far. Another best-of-one matchup. G2 looking to see if they can go further than the Major, and this is going to be tough. Yeah, I mean, they're X-secking. Shush has rotated over at least. Let's see how they handle this. Kicks it in Covey. Tessus needs one here at least. Oh, oh he just gets his head blown off. Smoke missed for Longside. Quick with a Mac 10. Miss Molly, or rather, Miss Smoke. Molly will land. They're trying to limit his options. Shush can fight on this. And he naffed to hit a headshot. Does nail it. Your kinder builds upon it. And the round is Team Liquids. Even flubbing some of the basics there. They still hit the necessary shots. Threw everything in the kitchen sink to deal with that gap of the smoke provided. And I think as soon as you bleed out the CT utility early like that and you don't give them anything, well, they gave them something, it's going to be a whole lot easier of a round to maneuver. So very well done from Team Liquid. Has to be more than happy with a 4-0 start. Heroic hoping to save yet again. Nerds and Nikodos to retain their investments. Well, they're not getting well, hyped. all right, Captain Obvious. Do you hear that? Yeah, good start right now. Well, yeah, you haven't lost a round. It's definitely a good start. Look at this from your kinder. Really put Tessus in his place with that one. And you can see there does look like there's still a bit of rust, uh, a bit of crust around some of the Counter-Strike that's on display. I got the fix. Yeah? Alt R. I, wouldn't, I knew there was something. Yeah, I but knew, this is the we, thing. We, we used to know that. We haven't had access to it in a while. Yeah. We've got all these, you know, extra little toys the J and Rush provide us, and we've got how to use oh, it. I've only got four players. Yeah, me too. Oh. Something of a... At least now it's it I think it's Twist's fault. I'm going to blame him as it's well. It's all yeah, Twist's I'm happy to blame him too. Okay, happy bunnies. Team Liquid off to a flying start. Get to see the orb still in the mix. Is that an Easter reference? Yes, yes. <laughs> I can't even remember what I said. Happy yeah. bunnies. Happy bunnies. Happy yeah. bunnies. Uh, how did you celebrate Easter? Uh, at the major with you. What did we do? We we cast some counter strike. Oh yeah. Yeah, in Copenhagen. That's cool. Then get another rifle round. Heroic. Oh, Voice oh. of concerns. Aggression oh. this time. And oh, skulls. He's alive, but only just hanging on by a thread. That doesn't clear him. He's gonna surely clear him. The unknown entity, oh. they get them both. This is disastrous for Heroic. Skulls with just 15 HP strikes. Perfect time and team play there with twists as well. There's going to be pressure on Kixon again. This rotation from Nikodos and Tessus. They've had to deal with all the gaps that have now provided towards Red as well as Donut. They will have to start investigating forward. Nikodos, the point man on that. Okay, Nikodos. Yet to do too much, yet to frag. You have to do a point of damage if the graphic is uh, updated. Gives it a little lucky loo. Nothing to report. It is all going to be on Tessus. Now, he fell quite convincingly in the uh, defensive cave. Has he got anything here in this rather powerful angle? Oh, quick with it. Very nice from Tessus. Could have been three. Cadium puts him down. Two on two. Shouldn't continue three now. Three on two, rather. Oh, skulls. Yep, we'll be falling to Kixon. That's confirmation of Kixon. The only problem is they don't really know where Nikodos is off to. So a two-on-two -two situation, 35 seconds on the clock. Plenty of time to work with it. And they're just going to maneuver straight in. This is a perfect call. And they're noisy about it. Look at all the nades that Kadian has. They could start lobbing these out. Yeah, we'll do so. Kicks Head of the molly. Along. He's got a nice molly to deny the plant. Extinguish yeah. and plant. Oh, it could have gone horribly wrong. Kadian just getting away with 9 HP. Up on the retail, this is going to be tough. Yeah, not easy, not fun. Nade. Oh, on his face. Surely that's going to dissuade. Continues to have a look. Doesn't have a kit. No, 10 seconds of fuse, and they've both gone round the world. This is craziness. Like, genuinely cheeky as all hell. Of course he's pre aiming ramp. Of course they're going to send twists in loudly. And wall bang him. Never mind, just pushing straight through. 5 0. This is one hell of a good start, as Cadian put it. Yeah, just still staying calm, not getting fired up. No stress. But they're uh, having a walk in the park right now. Yeah. This opening towards middle was fantastic, right? The fact that they were able to grab all of that space. 
Initial exchange going their way. Tessas with almost a hero maneuver. But take a look. Yakinda investing with a MAC-10. So I think he thought he was going to be up against something quite light. But that's not the case whatsoever. Heroic have hedged their bets with some cheeky investments. A couple of M4s. Not a single helmet in the mix. So that MAC-10 can slap. And that is a very ambitious spray. Double from Yakinda. Twist puts another in the grave. And what's going on here? Heroic look... Uh, Bit wonky. Well, that was a premeditated aggressive cave maneuver. You saw the flashes coming yeah, out from Red. Two players pushing through. Yakinda deals with that completely. Naf now he's going to deal with some aggression and pushing straight in. Shush is on notice. He's called out both individuals. So the information flowing for Team Liquid as they're going to cut them off at the pass. Skulls immediately pushing in towards CT spawn. Yakinda going to go back around the world over towards T spawn. So nowhere to run, nowhere to hide. Max loss bonus, of course. Of course. Twist has even evacuated the site, so they are pressing to take away all of these investments. Saved AWP would be tidy and AK as well. Oh, oh good, good work from Shush to at least get the information. Perhaps an overstep. Yakinda takes it down, and Nika Doss as well. No way. Yakinda starts that round with a MAC 10. He leaves with four kills and an AWP. You'll take that. You'll take that any day. This couldn't be going better, could it? Everything they're doing is working. Like, it, it was a, a drama for a moment. Kadian was sticking out like a sore thumb on that box, but... It almost feels like Heroic have got, gone into this game thinking, oh, what's the worst way this could possibly go? Like, how could, how disastrous could this feel, yeah, you know, well, for them? They're remembering the pain game. They're going, yeah, we played Mirage and we lost the first half 12-0. Yeah. And then we almost salvaged it, but we didn't. Alt R. No. No. Okay. I even tried reconnecting. I don't know. His, we blame it on twists. It's all twist fault. No one knows what we're talking about either. They can't yeah. see what we can see at home. Well, he's got 10k in the bank. He's loving life. He's got an AK-47. Everyone's chilling. Everyone's got the best weapon they could possibly have. Maybe you treat yourself to a pistol at this point, having such a blast on T-Side Ancient. What's missing from Heroic CT setup, Chad? Kills? Yes, uh, like the opening exchanges aren't going in their favor at all. So the first gun round, they got bled out of util, right? And then they just get executed on late. This type of a gun round right now, they need to win these opening exchanges. And I'm not sure if aggression needs to be the answer, but apparently that's what Nerds is thinking. Yeah, he is definitely thinking that with a very aggressive double push down towards the fight of elbow. They'll clear the smoke. They'll push straight through and Nikodos loses his head. Tessa's down too. It's Nerds to hang on to things. Makes it a 3v2. Skull's quick in pursue. He's going to find Nerds. He can find Shush. Nearly finishes him off right there and then. Cadian in the clutch. I don't think he's known for, and this would be a huge one on two. We might see him have a pop off and get out of the chair. Shush is low. He knows that Kixon is the B defender. Shush is the A anchor. Last noted towards Donut. So he threads the needle, finds the gap towards Red, and has more than enough time and utility to work with in a round like this. I have no idea. Kixon's opted to. Getting quite deep into cave. And we have seen the AD push from Shush, so he's abandoned A, sweeps through mid with nothing to report. Cadian, let's get the update on him. Into the site, a molly and a plant would be nice. Kicks are not going to reveal himself, will play for the retake with his teammate. Shush, low HP. Ideally, he goes first, it's Kixon to find him, and that's their first round on the board. You can see... Tessa's trying to motivate the troops. Your two remaining heroic members from Cadian's heroic sitting next to each other as always. Winning out the jewels in the middle. That's all this one really came down to. Cadian, you know, it doesn't really matter. They got the bomb down. Sure, they've yeah. plenty of cash already in the bank, but getting caught off guard by the cave player, just not aware. Not even able to really get that clutch going. Might be some B lane press coming through. Shush with an insta door smoke from spawn. Same with the elbow smoke out towards middle. Kinda negated by that for now and not wanting to tussle with it this time round. They are just going to park. Mm. Kadian setting up some utils. So the ability to retake this lane control. It's a nice flash up and over. Not going to commit off the back of the first. Looks like there'll be the follow through on. The second. So Cave has just been smoked out. Door smoke now has faded. And the spam through from Cave makes it feel like, hey, they don't have this full lane control, which is the correct call. AWP presence will be noted now. You kind of working. I'm trying to grab them some space back, but a tone change from Liquid. 
Very much so, just off the back of the uh, first heroic round. Liquid do change the pace, change the flow of things. They've taken that space, taken that lane control, and it seems like the call is another direct approach, this time towards the A side of the map. I mean, Heroic are flying blind. They are, they've kind of boxed themselves in, no info lane, expecting a BXEC any moment, and, well, they're about to be throwing out three smokes. Yeah, the thing is, Shush doesn't have any utility to block. Oh, that would have been Even ideal, the position he's it? playing up towards Tree, he doesn't have any nades to block, so he's going to have to stand and deliver a couple of kills. Okay, sure. Shadows reveal them. He swallows that flash, forced to get away, repositioning, calling for backup, gets away with one. Twist so trade. Twist tag. Smoke spam. Tess is advancing, trying to disrupt the plant as best he can. Doesn't want to go too risky with it. Twist is right next to him. Nade of the smoke from Nerds. Combined now with Tess's spawn the push. This looks good for a retake here. Tessus needs to be the hero with his boys behind his back. Nerds another on to Cadian. This is getting problematic. Naf, can you bail them out? Skulls and Naf side by side now. Just Skulls. 1v3. He's going to get double clear. There's no way he gets this one. Huge retake. Nice! Yeah, he agrees. Yeah, kicks and summon that one up perfectly. Shush was under a lot of pressure. Yeah. He did well to get away. He did. And that's time, you know, A can be quite... I want to say easy to retake for the CTs, but this helps out a lot, right? They were clearing the smoke and fortunate to find Twist trying to play within it. It clears, they catch Nav's position up towards trees. They have a good idea that he can get off towards main. And then good teamwork on the way back in. A player covering Brokey, they swing out together, handling business, but finance is still there for Liquid. Six rounds on the T side, they'd already be happy with this. The only thing they're going to lose would be momentum. So another round or two before half time, that would be ideal. This is, uh, again, a grouped up play, but this time out of the gates. They're not going for a spread default. They're going straight in towards A main, making it look like a standard round. Cave smoke, mid harass utility, and away they go. Shush has nades this time, though. You're going to be blocked. Going through. Straight through the smoke into Shush's loving embrace. A freebie onto Yakinda gets away. Tapping away. He's edging, Chad. Just around the smoke. Playing a real difficult position, but playing it very well. Nikodos has yet to frag and full. Oh. Still yet to frag, and still yet to frag, Chad. With the rifle in his hands, he's better oh. with the rifle. <laughs> Maybe it's Get like... Get him an M4 or an AK. It's like he a, gets two there. Oh, it's like, yeah, but it's humid, the mouse pad's sticky. That's true, swamp pad. Swamp pad is a real thing. It affects us all. Well, we've paused. Taking the space, we've tussled, and look what we've been able to sprawl on towards the site, but... There's a line drawn in the sand. Two players over towards Donut reside for Heroic. Backing off is Cadian with the bomb on his back. Yeah, this... What's happening? Well, he, this is a classic heroic maneuver, and I understand that he's on liquid now, but, you know, to see them... He wants the CTs take to eventually across, think B's a possibility. Well, this is the thing. Team Liquid aren't overstepping the mark. They're hidden in towards Temple. They're parked up towards Tallbox. Uh, they're forcing heroic to either rotate or play for information, and Kixon is starting to have a look. If the sector is called clear, you might see nerds now look towards middle, but they're calling the bluff. I like this. They know. They're like, I've, dude, I've played with you. Caden, you used to be my IDL. I know I'm how spotted. you rock. And now, yeah, here comes the bomb into A. Ten There's seconds. three of them here. This is going to go horribly wrong. Yeah, Caden, goodbye. Round over. Tessus is going to be feeling very proud about that one. Calling the bluff. Cutting noise. 40 seconds. They're forced to run and hide. Wow. Okay, that gap is closing. It's closing rapidly. Good read of the situation there. You can see Shush with a smile on his face. Didn't work out for... Liquid's boys. Yeah, well, that's it, right? You bang on. They're, they're well aware of uh, the type of hijinks that Cadian likes to get up to. I, I don't mind the fact that they did just cut the noise, but they, but they that clock whittled down, and then Cadian was the first one to make the move, and he had the bomb on his back, so he gets spotted. Mm. Time was already low. Oh, you can see, I like you explained it right there. You could see the, the logic behind it in the sense that they expect okay, someone to CTs go are going to come look for in answers you know there's 50 seconds I like, think at the point that they just hit hit the pause like skulls in temple that's a great angle for someone to be potentially like looking for answers and getting going getting caught well Zeus trying to get them fired up off the back of a second timeout in this first half of play they've been able to invest the tech nine for Yakinda a Galil in the hands of skulls couple of AKs in the mix, so more than enough for a competitive buy out of Team Liquid. But again, they would love to grab another round or two before... Let's just call it one. Just one round before we make it towards halftime. Red Smoke lands. A bit more standard. Two towards middle to harass. They're coming through. Giving it a good go. Nerds flashed off. 
spam kill from Tessus. Yeah, that's a nice start. Ekinder watching from the sidelines now. Presence definitely noted. Two of them trying to go quick, actually, towards B zone. So bombs towards B doors. This could be a bit more poppy, a bit more of a test. And look at these angles Tessus is working with. He got a banger on the pistol with something similar. Just holding these real tight lines. That's going to flash, I think, in towards Cave. Oh, he's missed it. That's, that's awkward, isn't it? Cadian goes down. Not blind was Tessus. 12th frag found. He's on for more here. The multi-kill master racks himself up a triple. Just like that. A quad kill in the round. Kicks and denies his ace. He's not going to be happy with that. But that was beautiful. Tessus is sharp today. He's come in firing on all cylinders. Bit of a shake of the head from Tessus. Don't test my cave. Yeah, could go some, try somewhere else. Yeah, or maybe land your spam, flash I think. Ah, uh, well, it wasn't all the way through the board, just the corner of the wall. And to stop Yakinda, who has been tussling with him, especially with these lower weapons, we saw the success he was having with the MAC-10 earlier. But Tessus is one of the names in the heroic jersey that we've been loving, what we've seen, uh, especially in this new iteration of the team. He's really been able to put his aim on display. Well, Liquid humbled in the investment. Heroic. Back in the swing of things. Shush on the jiggle. Ready for the defense when he sees the shadow. Going to lob out either a smoke or a molly. Molly in the hands for now. This is a B fake. Oh. Well, that's very convincing. Nav taking down Nikodos, but Shush is still managed to find them all Beautiful. with one magazine. That's spicy. Round over. It doesn't matter about that lovely little catch you got from Nav. Nearly hits the crazy flick, but instead it will be Cadian getting one. Well, he's going to uh, the opposite side of the world, isn't he? The bomb's down on A. Cadian's going to try his luck over towards B. Uh, yep, Kickson has heard you. What a horrible way for this to go down for Cadian. There's no way he's clearing this. I say that with such conviction. I have no idea, do I? But, yeah. Uh, uh, yo, yeah. yo, yo! The old stabbing the new. That is cruel, Kickson, you cheeky boy. And the gap's closing, Chad. We know that hot start we were talking about. This is uh, It's all but wiped clean. And that momentum, again, just to highlight, is completely gone right. the liquid. Sure, they're going to be happy with it, and they flick back over, they get the CT pistol. You're reignited with that fury, but if they're a little bit upset of how some of these rounds have unfolded, that could be them mentally stewing. Sure, happy to see that knife kill come in, some grins on the faces. He sees the red dot on his mini map. He's like, "What are you doing? Yeah, are you going to finish? Are you going to do something?" Or liquid? Do you have any concerns to voice? Cadian straight in towards B with this AWP. The lurk smoke on the sign. You can see him immediately looking to the left hand side of the pillar. Right. Have very hoping. limited options, and they walk straight into it. That's a manufactured opening. That's very cool. Kicks in looking for any info. Ramp, he gets an old bullet between his ribs. Oh, good damage from Naf as well. Puts Tess on notice. This could be a really nice finish. They're kind of cherry on top of this Team Liquid T side. Nerds falling away on the elevated angle. Cadian has caught, finished off Tessus, but it's Nerds and Shush back with a vengeance. Could be desperate from Skulls through the smoke. Yeah, he's thinking about it. Naf talked about smokes. Nikodos has just walked past him. You see him? 4 by 3 Oh, no. He didn't see him. Naf didn't know he didn't either. see yeah, him? That's crazy. Cadian's having to go for a full ace at this rate. Look at the bombs outside the door. Skulls needs to come back and pick that up. There's yeah. 55 seconds. No rush initially. You know Nikodos is pushed, so you can see that smoke is going to take some time to clear. And Nikodos has fully just pulled the ripcord. He's out of there. Oh, Skulls is looking for the bomb. Which side of the box is this bad boy on? He's been able to pick it up. But rotating back across the world and towards A comes with his own issues. The fact that Cadian's in cave, he isn't going to be able to assist with this. I feel like the B finish would be the better of the two options. Cadian's going to have to draw blood. If he just goes down and it's quiet, then Shush can stay where he is. And that's currently... Oh, feeling things out in mid. 25 seconds, guys. What are they doing? Into mid. This is a free frag. The... There goes the, the round, I suppose. Unless he can hit it with the pistol. Shush is right underneath him. Goes for the no-scope. Showboating. I don't know if he has time. I don't think he has time. Ten. Well, Nikodos well, is here. Nikodos is there. He's been having a bit of a tough time. Seven. Six. Oh, he can plant in the smoke. But hang on. Nikodos can finish it right here. Sticking out. Will close his second frag. And it's six-six on the half.
Here we are, Cadian versus Heroic, Team Liquid versus Heroic. And it's been already an interesting uh, whistle-stop run of the side Ancient. Uh, Chad, what were your key takeaways from that? It had a bit of everything. Yeah, a strong start from Liquid with what looked like some well-put-together moves and protocols of decision-making that then later in the half started to look a little bit wonky. Heroic getting back into the swing of things and Liquid, well, when they were down, the number disadvantages didn't look like they had it all put together but let's see the pistol round underway and four players charging out middle twist with first blood make it second blood can he make it third why not okay Eden's actually gonna yoink that one into the head of Nikados and yeah the bomb retrieval would be nice it cost him a great deal of his life and still hasn't got it great drive by there from the Glock it's a very potent pistol but Cadian will close it's just Tessas in a one versus four a smoke from Naf doesn't stop Tessas just driving straight through it Opts to take himself the USP is there something to be said about this round he knows he's taken down the kit as well Saw that on the ground. Bomb under their rule. Has plenty of time to work with, but if he's hoping a kill comes his way... Mm, yeah. I think it's interesting that uh, Twist is still hanging around for the potential b wrap. Well, they essentially have everything covered right, right now, so the CT net, it's working as you would hope. And even if he picks up the bomb, he starts to pick a site, so there's responders on either side. As Twist now finds himself in cave, investigating middle, might be able to find a bit of a timing as Tessus has been able to slink ever closer towards that bomb. We noted when he picks it up, and there it is, bullet in the back of the head. Twist to close that one down. Both pistols for Team Liquid. They finally break through after that comeback from Heroic. Triple out of twists, very clean with it, looking good, looking like he's in form. And going to be needing more of that from uh, Team Liquid Stars. Well, in the modern conversation, without the bomb going down, the cheaper Galil's in play, the MR12, it's going to be the Glock Eco. And I don't think we'll see anything too exciting. Yeah, CT pistols, man, absolute yep. gold. It does mean we can address the... Uh, CT setup for Team Liquid that they'll be running on this map. Yukinder will be the cave player, Naf will be dealing with B Long. Uh, you're going to have Twists as one of the mid-entities on the rifle. Skulls to be the A anchor, and then Cadian floating around. Bit of the X factor, right? There's obviously going to be different setups of how they want to hold middle or A. The AWP tends to get a bit of traction, but Skulls going to put pressure on the young Brazilian. As long as the bomb doesn't go down, I would say no harm, no foul. Ah. Handling it well here, Cadian. That threatening deagle did do something, but uh, just the one casualty. Certainly not wanting to it. lose the M4. Yeah, they are. You can see Cadian really wants an extra 600 bucks, an extra frag. I want to make sure he can actually pick up the M4 of Star Wars. Oh, what bloody hell? Yeah, <laughs> Nika does. <laughs> Making sure his clock's still not jammed. And yeah, they'll take that. That's got that's costly. Do they not get the uh, M4? Oh. That was, that. yeah. So this is the thing. Twist just threw his M4 over to be picked up. I don't know if it even got picked up by any of his teammates. So they... They actually took... I think they didn't take they either M4 into the next round. I think they got one. Uh, like, I think Skulls just... Wait. No, because Skulls was dead. I don't think they had either M4 come through in the next round. Anyway, oh, it doesn't matter. Oh, we're very, very effective eco from Heroic. We'll see if, what the, if we can review that. Tess is down to a good spam, well placed bullet through the smoke from Skulls. Tess's aggress cut down. It's Yakinda. Ready for it, he's Kixon. Pushing down the ramp. A second, though, the MP9 potent at that mid range. They are, however, looking for a bit of an open runway into B. Flash good or better. Cadian nailing shots, racks up the double. And should have secured the round off of that. Nerds disconnected from the pack, was holding middle. A yeah, bomb to be fortified, smoke lands, and. Nine available for Team Liquid now and just need to batten down the hatches for the next 70 seconds. Nerds to try his luck at a clutch. Yeah, so quickly it started for Skulls and this is the shots from Cadian. See if we can get that second one as well. That sounded good. Oh, it was. Damn. Just the tip of Nikodos' head. Pixel gap. Well tracked. Nerds has arrived after our little uh, highlight reel interlude. Has the smoke... How's he going to make this one work? 
Looks like he's just going to lob it over towards the bomb. That one's had an interesting ricochet. Nice, well calculated. Perfectly on the bomb. Well, that's a lot of information for him, really. <laughs> yeah, they're spamming. Yeah. And there is, unfortunately, a little bit of a gap that uh, Twist is holding. Staying dynamic on 20 seconds, Nerd. So you're going to give it a look in. Yeah, this is what he's expecting. Oh, he's done well. Isolates the first. Oh! Nails the second onto Skulls. And he's found another smoke. He's cooking now. 10 seconds. Is this really doable? Pick up the bomb. Eight seconds. Oh, he can't find it. Oh, time. No time. Kadian will close it. But a valiant attempt from Nerds. You can see the, the problem solving was coming together for a second there. It feels like he's spitting chips not being able to pick up that bomb because that was beautiful. The twist kill was great. The second... Lovely. Enabled the rounds. This one using that gap of the smoke in his favor, and then just seeing the traces coming through removes Skull's head. Yeah, just frustrated he couldn't pick up the bomb because it was so doable if he was able to scoop that up. But heroic, yet to grab a round on this T campaign. They have invested lightly. Standard mid utility. Oh, and charging through the flames. They have gone with the extinguish pace on this into Yakinda, who oh, hasn't got dear. anything done. Tessus yeah. takes him down. Tech nines. It's really going to be where they start. Pressure on skulls. Pressure on skulls. Round. It is just skulls and he's back. Oh, hitting shot. And the second onto Nurse is clean. Kadian will deny. He's starting to really come into his element here. They did force the gap, though. You saw that. Skulls was backpedaling all the way to get over to either respond towards red or respond towards the B-hold, and he's able to get kills in transition. So really good stuff from Skulls. That's 10 rounds now. Liquid in a best of one. Right? These best of ones are actually very important in the format we have on our hands. You win this, it's one best of three. You're locked in towards the playoffs. Right? That's how, how easy and how quick it can go. So later today, we have uh, Lin Vision taking on Furia, which is a rematch from the Major. And we've also got Tai Lu in the server. If both of the Chinese teams win, it means we would have one of them locked in 100% for the playoffs. That's a big if. But uh, could be cool. You know, the vision can do it. Can Tai Lu? Says Twists. Oh my god, blocking two of them in the smoke. He gets nothing from it. Flash exchange, lining them up. Kadian will get away with one onto Nerds, but it cost him skulls, and now Yakinda's aggression's gone down. This has been a rather. Uh, energetic start. Well, put this together in your head. You know that Kadian was over towards Donut, and you know Naf is traditionally a B holder. If there's just one play towards B, and you can quickly get the troops back together and execute, you trade, you're in, you win. And, well, fortunately, Naf has rotated towards the other side of the map. This might just have to be the save call for Team Liquid. They're regrouping now at the doors. Could just go contact. Don't even have to go hefty with the execute, but Nikodos wants to play it safe. Short smoke. Long molly, and away they go. This will be Heroic's first round. Look what a at that. beautiful molly spread. Maybe you want to see. Options, yeah. Nice little combo. Better to be safe than sorry. Bomb has been planted. See how this went wrong for Twist? Because, I mean, he knows and they realize at about the same time. But then, ah, yeah, backing away. Multiple targets as well. Very hard, yeah, just kind of between the two of them. Could work from Kixon, finding himself the double and Heroic breaking into the T side, getting started. He were mentioning KD and 18 kills for him thus far. And, well, yeah. the first time he's taken on a few of his old teammates and his ex-organization. But this is it. It doesn't come with the same level of animosity, I would imagine, as playing against Astralis does. Mm. Because the conversation went that it was Stown and Yabby who, oh, who yeah. wanted him gone, whereas uh, that wasn't the entire team. Right, We don't actually know the full picture or the full story, but I, I would say that things aren't as... Uh, or well, maybe towards the org, Kadian might feel a bit betrayed that they didn't stick with him. Well, he'd certainly want to beat Heroic. Let's yes. make no mistake yeah, about as, that. As the logo. Yes. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, late. Tactical timeout. The third now burnt from Team Liquid. Zeus, you can see him looking straight towards the eyes of his in-game leader, Kadian. The two of them being able to confer. That gives Saw an opportunity to get on the mic as well, but not an awful lot of talking from the big boss until feels it's very necessary. Now I saved M4, I saved AWP, and now shoving the rest of those pennies in towards the center of the table. They've been able to get a Famous for Skulls. Yakinda's actually going to operate with an MP9. Kadian would have had enough to drop an M4, so that tells me he wants to make sure he can keep the X Factor of the AWP out in more rounds more often than not. Or it also might spell some aggression from Yakinda. You see him in that cave position, he definitely packs a punch. Little MP9. If he's getting going to get Aggie with it. 
Might just be an A play out of Heroic, which would be a nice call. Yeah, I mean, it's only Naf there. But this is a different setup. Naf usually holds B. He's on the boost. They're going to be ready for it. Oh, we fire. oh, well, at least gets one. Hectic start. Skulls another. Look at this. There's already three of them there. Twist gets three. As easy as that completely destroys the commitment. Oh, How were the, they there so quick? But that's it. That's the call out of spawn. Nav should be B. He was up towards a tree. It meant Skulls was Donut, right? So they had more bodies over towards A than they traditionally would. A uh, standard setup, right? We're talking two mid, two B, one towards A. Nav on the pre fire looks a little bit silly. Uh, but the fact he grabs one is huge and then twists. He's edging. He's edging hard right here. Unbelievably. You're going to see an awful lot of that, especially in that position, especially over towards middle. And that's the first time we've seen them getting fired up because they that's like a huge that round. That's that was a, a call that they've just discussed off the back of a timeout. They were ready for that type of an A play. They stalled out Heroic's movements. Yeah, super interesting. I, and yeah, I, I agree. Now to free fire looks silly, but finding one. Yeah, but Tess is, Tess is obliged. He went, oh, okay. Here I come. Yeah. <laughs> and the shadows, I mean, like, you... I don't know if you're what you think, but I definitely get a bit freaked out with oh, something like sure. that. Like that when you're on boost and the uh, temple shadow, that yeah. one always gets me going. I can't can't quite get the timing right. Haunted house. Yeah, it Jump is a bit scare. spooky. It just throws you off. Well, both teams, primarily rifles, both teams rocking an SMG. Tess. Oh man, if I'm heroic, I'm screaming. How is there three of them there from spawn? But it's yeah. like a bit of a mad, isn't it? Yeah, beautiful calling. Let's see what happens now. No, it's me. Skulls. You got a clash here from <laughs> Tessus, giving Yakinda a taste of his own medicine. SMG action. Look at the pressure Cadian's under. He's the only one on B right now. And against Tessus, these strafey gains must be frustrating. Nade, strafe, Cadian, search. Having a look. Solid damage there from Nikodos. He's got the util. He's got the headshots. AK-47. Taking down the Orpa. And that's a bit, that should be a round secure. They know they were searching towards middle, so at this point, ushering towards the site, get the bomb down, and because of the scoreline, likely to see Liquid go for another save, but both teams have used all of their timeouts. Mm. So unless we go to overtime, we will not see the coaches with another opportunity. So the decisions now are going to be with the five players on either side of the server between one another. Nikodos able to get the AWP in his hands. We saw some ugly moments from him, but just getting warmed into things here in Chengdu. That sounded good. Thank you, I've been practicing. Wow. Oh, okay, that was a B-stream update for everybody playing at home. But we were just talking about uh, the SMG action and just biffing in cave. It's been a lot of lower buys or lighter weaponry. But there was a lot of pressure on Katie and after the Akinda's gone down on the side on his own. And that's a great fight for a rifle. It's always quite comfy with the AK you spot and tops of heads. Just a three-round game. Yeah, that's probably going to suck the air out of the room a little bit. Still enough for another liquid buy, but as we take a look at, at the loss bonus, for them going into the next round, it's only 1,900. So if they continue to lose the sites in similar fashion, they'll have to keep saving. So for Heroic, it means for them, unless they wipe the board, it is always going to be going up against a threat or two. But they will need a couple of rounds consecutive. And then Liquid's loss bonus will start to build. Good pressure. Oh, that's a lot of damage for Nikodos, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, down to a crisp. They're out middle. They have Tetris control, elbow as well. And now they can apply pressure towards red. One of the positives in this round oh, is going to be the A main space that Skulls currently has. Because now if you let them slip through Donut, right, they will have to clear 180 degrees. So it, it's not the end of the world. Somebody will have to acknowledge the red leak as well from Team Liquid. Because that's been open, and yeah, you can see Twist having to acknowledge that. But that puts Twist in such an awkward position, considering where he currently resides. They might have to do a, a little bit more of a proactive maneuver on the CT side. Well, that's kind of Cadian's repertoire. Uh, often proactive. I like the fact that he's the one dealing with this. There's Behold, they can feel that they're under pressure. There's spam. It's not quiet. They're jumping around. There's plenty of noise. And now there's Util. Nuts is going to go investigating. A cool donut clear eventually. Well, they can always pivot off of ledge, right? So it is going to be that 180. Oh, I've spammed down again. Just harassment, pure harassment. Yeah, they are starting. I think Nat Nertz has summoned his troops. Saying, boys, A feels very quiet, but Cadian is going to be setting himself up a re smoke on ramp. 
Trying to keep the pressure as Nika does. Kadian, he's just got there in time. Spots out one. Nurse is committing in. A delay, Molly. Yeah, 14 seconds. It does limit their chances. Looking for the plan. Skull's got to get it over Skull's here. Skull's could just deny it. What are you looking for? Amen. It's clear, brother, man. Seven seconds. It would have been a perfect opportunity. Tessus on to Naf. They are all kind of locked into Donut, though. Skull should have at least one. The, the delay on this has got Nerds completely unprepared for that. Now, they would love a smoke. Don't see one. Kit on Twists and Skulls. Well, nice angle, but not so great in the result department. On to the spray is Tess He could win this. He certainly has the capacity for greatness, does Tess 14 HP. Missed shot, spots him on the defuse. And 12 secure. Twist pulls it across the line. Liquid are going to be very happy with that. Yeah, it was... Oh, it was on a knife's edge for a moment. A touch and go, that was stressful. Uh, the fact that Skulls are still searching out A main in case of a threat when I think, what, there was like 12, 13 seconds left on the clock. Uh, but they did get it to work. And well, this is how the exchange went down. Nikodos blowing the smoke open himself and getting taken out of the equation. Skulls, as you mentioned, it just seemed like, hey, how has nobody responded to this? Still able to pick up one. And this might be the final round of this best of one. Yeah, and as you've highlighted, best of one wins here. This might be one of the biggest wins that this Liquid roster has had. Yeah, for real. I think a lot of people expected this to be a bit of a heroic cakewalk, seeing how Liquid have floundered at times. Lots of comms from Cadian. Smokes off Donut. He smokes himself off as an orb, but... Remains vigilant on the angle. Dismantling their two-man cave setup, they're starting to rejig. But look how quiet it is towards B. In the last round, there was spams, there was U2, there was jumping. Right now, there's no noise. So Liquid have got a hold up. This doesn't look like a standard round. They've backed off completely from B. They're responding to the threats towards middle, towards red. Yeah, they're not particularly buying Kixon's util there. He's thrown out a flash ramp, and it has kept... Look at the setup, nah. three on A. This is great from Liquid. They this can... is fantastic. They can shut this down. This is it. This is probably looking... Be the final round of play. Or oh, noted. Cadian catches Nerds trying to line up the smoke. It does leave his hand though. Cadian gonna have to try and nade himself out. Oh, what twists? Forced forward by the flames, finds the multi kill. It's only Tessus left in the clutch. What's he got? Nothing. Yakinda secures it. Liquid take down Heroic to start off their IEM Chengdu campaign with a win. That's gonna feel great for Cadian going up against his old org, but I think just good for Liquid as a whole to get a win, to be able to pull off a victory considering how bad the start for this roster has been. You've got big names in the Liquid jersey, Twist reunited with some of his old teammates, Naf especially. Uh, Liquid hasn't been functioning at a high capacity for some time. It's only a best of one, but it's a step in the right direction. Yeah, and as the desk had discussed, you know, we're talking about Heroic's form. They're dipping form in some individuals absent at Copenhagen. And now they come into this, you think, okay, let's just, you know, let's get back to what we were doing. Let's get back to our old ways. And it starts like this. Yeah, the alarm bells are ringing. Yeah, there was moments, uh, glimpses over there in Copenhagen. But the way that they finished against Payne, it felt like they went out with a bit of a whimper. So Heroic have to go back to the drawing board as... Oh, we're even getting the uh, handshakes in front of the desk there. I think they named the panda Bob. Bob the panda. Yeah, it was Yanko's naming duties for that one there. Well there. But uh, yeah, towards the tail end of that game, Liquid with some really good reads, some great understanding of the situation, and uh, a 1-0 to start the tournament. Yeah, dreamy. One best of three away from the playoffs. Some of the highlights as well, starting with that triple pistol in the second half. Cadian nailing this second shot as well, looking good with his AWP. Felt like Nerds' 1v3 could have been could have been doable, could have had something to do with that one. And Twist, this was, yeah, this was where they really popped off because they knew that that, that essentially had uh, secured the game. And off the back of a timeout as well, so yeah. that's good. You know, you have that little uh, 30 seconds with your coach, have the meeting of the mind, and then when a round like that works, they feel really good, right? Those are the type of rounds. Sure, it feels great, uh, but we do have Heku standing by for an interview with the victors. Yeah, I have Yikinder here by my side. First of all, congratulations. This is probably like a really, really good start. You also had a really good start in the first half, six rounds in a row. We saw Heroic against VP on this map, and they kind of did the same thing. Were you kind of maybe like trying to replicate that style? Like maybe you found like some kind of weakness that Heroic has on Ancient? Uh, I don't really think so. I think, yeah, obviously we watched and prepared. Uh, we watched the game against VP, we watched the game against FaZe, and uh, we kind of saw what was working against them. But you never know, in a way, like, have they learned something or have they changed something? And 
we just had similar instruments that VP had and it, it was working. I think we got a little bit unlucky when we were going A and we were rotating A and uh, every time I was kind of dying first and uh, because of that we didn't have enough enough space uh, to close out the round. But uh, I'm glad we, we showed a really good CT side and uh, yeah. And would you say that the current liquid is a different beast when it comes to LAN? <laughs> I'm not really sure. I haven't been to a LAN in like six months. Uh, this might actually, like, if considerable LAN. I, I don't mean like blast groups or whatever, but uh, yeah, it, it feels it feels nice. Like uh, the atmosphere is amazing, and uh, it's just, yeah. I mean, this is a best of one. Next one is, is going to be a best of three. It's going to be either G2 or 9Z. Did you prepare for both teams? Yes. All right. Thank you very much, Kinder. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Yeah, must be feeling pretty good for you, Kinder and Liquid to be back on land, particularly with this result. Things got kind of streaky in the first half, split six to six down the middle. But once Liquid got on that CT side, only permitting Heroic two rounds on that T side. Great start from Liquid. Absolutely, it's what won them uh, the game. And uh, I think it was the casters we're talking about in the first half. You know, they were happy with the basics. Like they were getting things down. I don't know how low expectations are for Liquid uh, at this point in time, but it was a good game. I think it was really important the win because it guarantees them at least two more best of threes, right, to get a little bit more games under their belt with this lineup. Yeah, and I was surprised how, like, pedal to the metal they started this game. Honestly, Heroic wanted to play in their face the first few gun rounds and it felt like Liquid were just on top of it. Like, they were really on point with, like, the utility usage they had towards middle. Twist had a couple of bangers, multi kills towards mid, so put them in that 6-0 station. Heroic came back to life a little bit, but that was all the leeway they needed. Yeah, it looked really well synergized, I think, which I wasn't necessarily expecting, but then they have had a month off to be practicing this, right? Like, maybe we should have expected a little bit more coming into it from Liquid. Yeah, I think it was good and it's also a sign of good preparation that you were able to keep rolling after you win pistol and connect a couple of gun rounds obviously a slow start for heroic and then you move on to the ct side is where twists turns it on really right steps up a notch pistol round and i think also kind of poetic well in a bad way that that key round that he wins in the gun round he steps to, goes through the smoke and he's not burning in the molly at default like on That's ancient too. we see it so many times and just gets three quick kills and and ends the round right then and there yeah, and i also say for liquid in their favor their defensive setup passive setups were much stronger than heroic mm -hmm. like they they were able to just play a little bit far back have twist being in that second player on the a side have kadian come in behind uh for heroic unfortunately it was either you win the round in the first 20 seconds or you don't that's it uh, a little bit limited i think the comms for liquid were good as well mm. uh, we have the the luxury of our room is basically here we can hear them talk they were they were pretty on it yeah sounded pretty clean let's spin the twist track one more time though in our air force aim high because uh, yeah this man was on fire round 18 uh, we obviously mentioned it really great spray Damn. down after heroic get their first round on that t side and yeah it just looks like the twist form that we know and love and need to see in this liquid absolutely that's right for we need we need this for twist in this liquid lineup. I mean, and that's also one of the reasons why he moved to liquid, right? From phase, like he wants more responsibility uh, in the lineup. He wants to be that star player and he needs to, to deliver for this team, especially with some of the other players still struggling a little bit, you know, your kinder skulls here and there. And yeah, it was a big boost for team liquid. Uh, absolutely. And we could see it. that was the round you were talking about in front of the smoke. <laughs> that's also the position that he's being afforded, right? He can be like that second wave because he's got movements in the CT side and that usually comes with the expectation of multi kills massively delivered here. Heroic are just packing up their belongings just to our left hand side. Of course, they're going to be in that elimination series later on today. Um, we predicted that Heroic would be taking this. I think maybe we have a little bit of recency bias because we did have some tape on them. Um, is this disappointing for your money from Heroic? Uh, I think it's hard in a best of one, right? When you get yeah. off to such a slow start, that's why we shouldn't have best of ones. But uh, yeah, I think the bigger problem is they have to play today, mm -hmm. right? Like you have to play later today against the loser of G2 9Z. I don't know if the game is over. Uh, G2 was ahead, they mm -hmm. had match point, but uh, yeah, so you need to find a way to just forget this game, get some rest and have good energy for that elimination game. Otherwise, it's all over. That's correct. If you lose the elimination game, you're eliminated. Yes. Would you that's believe how it? it works. Works. That's how, it, how works. it works. And you know what? It also works that we move on because plenty more Counter Strike on the cards. And we've got a little bit of a rematch of what went down at the major. We've got Lin Vision, hometown heroes, taking on Furia after this. In every gamer's life, there's a question to be asked. Do your clothes match your hobby? 
in any situation? Or do they just represent what you dream of? No matter what situation, there's always the right way and the wrong. The only real question is, which are you going to choose? Decide for yourself. Smokes. See a double smokes in the same place there. Simple just jumping casually into the side. Wait, wait, wait. What, 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 what was that? Never miss a play again. That's not allowed. This is not FPL. This is a major. Finally. With Face It Watch, you're in control. Switch between player POVs live and see the game through the eyes of any pro. Never miss a moment with replays. Relive each highlight on demand from all angles. Watch it, control it, face it.是从二零一九年之后的韩联之后的第二第二次吧来到中国我觉得很兴奋吧而且我们俱乐部也在成都感觉IM那个赛场的场气氛好然后那个解说也是比较有激情的观众反馈也挺好还有危机是比较年轻
<laughs> we can get used to that. Yeah, because yeah, uh, a lot of Asian teams they are very aggressive. So yeah, and I th I believe our players, their mm -hmm. the individual skills, they can handle this. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. And what is going to be the approach right now, like uh, when it comes like to Furia? Like, did are you going to play your own game or yeah. like full on anti strat? <laughs> we'll play our own game. We made some adjustments uh, to this map. Uh, can I leak the veto right now? Why not? Yeah, 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 can. Okay, so for Ashen, we made some ad adjustments mm -hmm. after the major. Mm -hmm. So maybe this can surprise them. Yeah. All right, I'm looking forward to seeing this surprise. Yeah. Thank you very much. Yep. Welcome. Okay, very interesting. Not nuke as it was last time around back at the major, where uh, Gum aptly said that Furia had the faster reactions, but Limvision were actually the team to come out on top. Another best of one situation, but you were both nodding your head saying, Ancient, you feel like that's a better ground maybe for the Brazilians? For whom? Yeah. Furia, <laughs> Who do you think? <laughs> I, mean, I don't really mind about the map, honestly, but I'm all for Limvision. Like, yeah. I'm on that hype train right now. I was already at the major, and all of that experience, they've gathered slowly at these S tier events. Now it comes together here in Chengdu. They say it's the home their club as well. I I'm so ready for it. Like there has to be some sort of romance that's in the books. For the club, for Gum, and a couple of players are from Chengdu, right? So they are quite literally the hometown heroes. And we we'll see. I mean, they beat Furia at the major. They can build on it here. Perhaps squeeze in a run, right? On the other side of their mini bracket is Maus and Tai Lu. They have to play both games today. So. A chance for now. You want to avoid the Tyloo versus Lin Vision in the lower bracket. Like that's oh, what you yeah. want to avoid. You want to avoid that situation at all costs. If both these teams lose, they would then have to just eat each other out in the lower bracket. That's that's not great. Do we get nostalgic for a bit? Well, I say nostalgic. It was only just over two weeks ago. But let's recap exactly what went down uh, in that major matchup, Yanko. What some people called the worst round of Counter Strike they've they've ever witnessed. Yeah, I think whoa, whoa, this. Whoa, whoa, was... What do you think you're doing, Yanko? This is this is major footage. Um, I'm just gonna check quickly with PGL if you have the. Yes, you sure he's cool? Y Yanko Panovic? Yeah, yeah, you cool, you cool, go ahead. Thank you, thank you, Maniac. And yeah, I think it was a round after Pistols, uh, against Pistols for Furia. They had a 5v2 situation, then it ev everything just completely falls apart, you know? Like, they have two players going on ramp, one by one by one. They uh -oh. keep fighting, they're not playing together. You're gonna have Caserato with a spray even on the guy, which, which doesn't really happen that often, and it's just awful at this point there's not too much for yuri to do he's in a bad position and the round is over as they were mounting the comeback as yeah. well uh, you, have, you have to imagine like the amount of confusion in the team speak at the time to for fallen to see someone go up the ladder and then forget about him as he strikes back like this was uh, one for the ages it's one of these i think you know when esl does these like great round with the comms command and we create a piece out of this you have to do it here right there I really want to relive that i just want to forgive no i don't even want to forgive i just want to forget that around <laughs> ever happened um because it was a pretty ugly run from furia to say the least to start off obviously they managed to get through to the elimination stage but even on this map um art was really struggling which has been a player that i know yanko you've been putting your finger on i think it just no i think it just tells you about furia and the state in which they are like there's no expectations for this team whatsoever no one no one mentioned furia getting to the playoffs of the major right people were probably surprised some people that they made it out of the um, opening stage right and also for this tournament like you don't expect them to make playoffs actually you're hoping they don't lose to Linvision again. Like, that's it. Like, let's not go out in last place. Like, it would be a little bit embarrassing two times in a row to lose to a Chinese team, right? Like, Linvision still trying to get up there, still gaining experience. So, yeah, the, the changes to the team were made with the hopes of improving mm -hmm. on your results, and they've actually regressed. What a surprise. Yeah, you, you, you say you, you hope they don't embarrass themselves. I personally, I won't change my tune as I did at the major. I think failure is necessary at this point. Like you have to have no excuse. You what? have to. How much more do they need no, to fail to make? I, I it's don't just think better time. It seems like no amount of failure will cause them to make the proper changes. Like it's just this is just it. Like so, what do we do? We do we like strike? We start cheering for pain if you're Brazilian, <laughs> or am I be on a train? or Legacy, or Imperial, or anyone, really, and just forget about Furia. We've got a little bit of time, so Yanko, what changes would you make? I would remove everyone except Kasserat. Okay. Every Everyone. I know I know you're really, you're drastic on it, and I think there's an argument to be I'm made. Not I'm I would not just, I would just like fall into one day, get a chance. An actual chance as a leader. No. When, when was the last time? Do you remember the last time he was a leader of a team? That was Imperial. 
when he had an actual voice. No, I think even before that. No, well, when, we, when he was a leader and actually had a good team around him. Okay, that's now we go even further back. That's 2017. But, I mean, the liquid, COVID. the liquid situation was anyway a joke. Like, he never had a say. After three days, he was put in this position. And, and then here as well, I had to share. And he has his own share of responsibility. So he had that situation in Liquid, and then he comes to this situation in Furia, which is very similar. Like, you have another guy who's also like, the, now he's in-game reading. Here. That guy's in-game reading. Who's in-game? Oh, we're meshing the styles. Awesome. It's working out wonderfully. And I'm I, I'm very mad about it. I've been upset this whole time. And let's... <laughs> sorry to cut you off, but... Please, I think ahead. also let's not forget about that people are talking about, oh, you would remove Yuri. Absolutely. Like, he hasn't been the player. You know, we talked about the fangs of Fury and all, all all of that. Like, it's more of a kitty cat at this point, right? Like, no, no one's afraid of that. And he's got some positions with a lot of responsibility um, and hasn't been delivering you know like i don't know what's what's going on there maybe he also needs a change of scenery a kick in the behind um to sort of right refresh himself but yeah i would remove everyone except okay, so four players removed how many are you removing uh i i would be ready to give yuri an extension okay. if i was in control i probably i would keep falling i would Give Fallen the proper chance to show me the Counter-Strike he would like to play with. I'd keep Yuri and Kesarado and I'd just remove Chero and Art and bring some new blood in there as well. People who are going to buy into the project as well. Listen, we, we've seen it in Copenhagen. Like, Brazil is starting to put new and new and new talents out there. Like, the like of Decenti, No Way, all of that. They, they, are, they are players that can really play the game at a high level. People that are deserving a chance. And there's certainly a way to mesh that experience that they have. Super long... Uh, experience, sorry, veterancy in here, and bring some new blood. Just, we, we've had enough. Like, we've tried for a long time. Yeah. That's no, okay. I think. There's, there's but we still have it. to talk about them, I'm, right? I'm, like, I'm with Yenko. He says, how, how much time are we going to give them? I agree with you, but it's my job. Someone is paying me today to talk about them. So I'm not just going to go on strike and don't say anything because we, we always have to revisit the same topics when it comes to them. Oh, I'm I just hoping Mesh is going to be enough. I love it. It's great. I think just Art and Gary need better pieces to make this work. Uh, no Lit Vision, should we move on to that conversation <laughs> topic? Um, home soil, this is a nice positive. Apparently they're, as you said, a bootcamp facility just down the road. They're feeling very comfortable here. They've got all the home comforts they could need. Surely that stands them an even better stead to take down Furia even more convincingly. Yeah, I think something that's a little bit different, and we talked about this previously for Lit Vision, they're very loud and energetic, right? And we've also saw, saw it a little um, interview we had before the game that they're a very young team, right? Mm. So that's why they're very energetic. They get very excited, right? And sure, it can work both ways, but I think for an underdog team, it's a good thing to have because you can feed off of that energy. It can carry you throughout the game, even throughout um, a series sometimes. So yeah, they've been gaining experience. They had that pro league season where they had Absolutely. a couple of upset wins and, and for, for Asian teams or any teams actually that are not from Europe, any time they spend in Europe isn't just playing the official games. It's also practicing, right? Understanding uh, what these teams are doing, updating your game. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree with you. And I think this is where like the, the seed of hope kind of starts when it comes to Envision is the fact that you you have these events where they're gathering experience and they're sort of trial and testing some of the errors and mistakes they do. I, I hope it comes to fruition here. Like, I, It's not like there's like a magic number or timer, but you would imagine that after every one of these outings at tournaments, they get together, they discuss what's going wrong. Because when it comes to the regional like sort of context, it's pretty clear at the moment. Mongols have their number figured out and Linvision don't seem to be able to beat them, but the rest is fair game. The rest, Linvision is a winning. We just saw here as well the graphic how they got to IM Chengdu. So I feel like they've already reached sort of a ceiling outside of Mongols, and then now you have to go ahead and prove it against different opposition, Western oppositions, uh, Brazilian oppositions here for the likes. That's the moment. And I liked uh, Hegu's question to Gum, obviously the coach manager. Man does it all for this team, by the way. Um, she was posing the question of actually getting to play some Western teams, you know, teams outside of your region. And interestingly, just looking at Ancient, this will have been the first time in over five months they'll have got to play a team outside of their region right. on this map. So. Any expectations there of maybe how they should handle potentially a bit of a different play style? I think we'll we'll see because he also said they added some things in between. So probably something that you couldn't see in those games uh, from the demos. But yeah, I think obviously comfortable to play the map as soon as they let it go through. And it's one where it gets a little bit chaotic for Fury at times. Yeah, and if anything, that could play maybe in Fury's favor. If, if you talk about how they like to play explosive a little bit in your face, uh, we just had a, a reminder, fresh reminder, Heroic Liquid, the first five, six rounds, it's all like MMA, sort of middle of the ring type middle situation. I might just be the case here. Also, if you envision, just maybe stay away from the A side. Like, okay, Serato, don't mess with the guy. Like, you know, he's cool. Just let him do his thing. Just, just go maybe towards the B sides. Get a little easier over there. Yeah.
yeah, don't let him get away with anything. Don't give him anything for free. Um, I just want to touch on the B stream because we obviously spoke about it in the post game. Uh, G2 winning versus 9Z, 13 to 10. Pretty close though, and it was a good start for 9Z as well, right? It's yeah, 5 0. They, they were up 5 0 on the, on the T side. How were the individual performances, Freya, there? Got Nico up there. Let's oh. go. Let's go. Who would have thought? We love that. 1.63 <laughs> rating. He's back, baby. Oh, in China. Now, now he's yeah, back. He's oh, back. Wasn't it the major? Uh, stage player. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Any thoughts for this map that we're going to be seeing unfolding? Do you well, think? Well, see, I, I, I don't know if Yura is a dead team walking, right? Mm. Like, I don't know if there's changes that are going to be made, but you have tournaments coming up, and you right. can't really, you know, you don't really want to do it because of that, or somehow they still believe in the project, really, right? Oh, like, and but if that's the case, then you need to show some results here. Like, you need to make playoffs of this tournament if you still have hope it needs to manifest itself somehow if not then why aren't you thinking about making a change you know, how would you even still have hope like wh what legs do you have to stand on what gives you hope like i know from within the team you have to believe but at some point i feel like even they probably run out a little bit you can see the frustration and it's also very understandable listen maniac these things take time you know it's like the combination of styles they need to get Adjusted to get each out other. My face. You just, just take, get out my you face. You just take the best out of both worlds and combine it, right? Like, why wouldn't it work? I, that's my question every single day. Uh, Ancient, you touched upon if we do see for a starting on the CT side, obviously, Caserado's a man to be keeping an eye on. If they do start on the T side, obviously, it will be decided by knife. Um, do what, what should we be looking out for from the Brazilians if they start off on the aggro half? All right, we can play that game. Uh, remember this guy called Art who had a really tough game on Nuke against them? Well, he's a little bit. Um, he makes it either sunny or rainy if he's having a good game or not. There's one game every now and then where he pops off a little and then we know he's basically the only man faster than Usain Bolt, I think, when it comes to running and he can run real fast. He can give you a few openings. Obviously, this would be very welcome man on our screen right there. Uh, but I, I'm, I'm just fishing at this point. I'm fishing in the pond trying to find any win conditions. I, I've, I've gotten off that train. I've, I've gotten off the train of the Fury. I'm, I'm really sorry. Actually, no, I'm not sorry. I apologize for absolutely nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, no. Yanko, how do, how do you feel? I feel great, great Fred. Yeah. I feel amazing. I'm, I'm, it's great to be back. You know, I'm having a lot of fun. Uh, I can't wait for this game. I'm very excited. I think it's like watching a train crash live. Like it's a bit of, of shadow to happen. Yeah. yeah, like you know, I'm happy either way. Yeah. Any predictions? Dare, dare you sign with Lin Vision? Lin Vision Surely again? Furia is not going to lose to Lin, Lin Vision twice in a row. <laughs> that only happens when they played the Mongols. Flip it. Ship it, and let's get this game started. Alex yes. and Chad, who are you siding with in this best of one? The team that wins. He's done it. You know what? Me too. Me too. Uh, I, 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 I don't like hearing such ferocious negativity from Matthew. <laughs> What do you mean? Well, he said he's given up on Furia, man. He's been saying don't this Don't tell for me, years. don't you start. Yanko will come back here and there'll be a fight. Uh, what yeah, positives do you have to... They're going to win this game, obviously, yeah, obviously, because this is the way it works. Yeah. When you... Uh... You want positives, bro? i got loads of positives. All right, hit me with them. Oh, hit man. Hit me okay. with your right. best shot. Here's one. Um, fallen. Okay. He is. Part of the DHL Alleged. Ultimate 10. He is. He most definitely is. Captain on one side, get right on the other. The best of three, the culmination of the DHL Ultimate 10 going down. The no, wrong event. Wrong event. No, and all ping IGLs are few and far between. It's uh, nice to you know, go keep... Art's in game leading, so. Oh. Yeah. Oh, I remember that, yeah. Yeah. But that's kind of weird then, isn't it? Yeah, but look, that's the conversation on Furia. Look, we don't have to. Do, we don't have to have it, right? Because at this point, it's just about getting a bit of redemption against Lin Vision for the loss of the major. Right yeah, now, with you. this is what I want to get excited about, right? Let's get excited about a Chinese team in the playoffs. Because Alex, back in my day, yeah, I'm old. When I would watch Chinese events, it, this is when Tyler was a 1.6 team. They'd always perform fantastically well on home soil, and they go on these crazy runs, right? Or you'd have like uh, Project KR, the Korean team. Uh, they would do well when the events were in Asia. And you know why? You know why? You know the one thing no one's talking about. You know the no one thing people aren't standing on the rooftops and shouting. What? Lin Vision aren't jet lagged. Oh my God! It all makes sense. It does. Okay, so we Lin, never give Lin them the, Vision, we, we never IEM, use it. Changdu, Trump champions. I'll start. 100%. Okay. And watch this. They're going to kick it off with the best of one victory over Furia. Ty Lu are going to win their match at the same time. And then they're going to kick it old school. Wow, we're four for four for them. Uh, glass wearing players. Glasses. Well, there's another one. Five, glass six. Glass wearing players. Glasses wearing. Okay. Uh, glass. Yeah, I don't know. It felt like every cut there was a member of. Uh, 
of the team. Maybe we could see if we could do it with a cameraman. Yeah. All right, cameraman, we want every player to appear. Uh, you on know, Fallen needs glasses. He's probably just wants to look cool. He's got the contacts in. Knife round is on right now. Stabby, stabby, knife, knife. Amelia with a couple of kills. This is a 1v2 situation. Starry to get it done. And K Serato is going to take down Starry. Okay, well, knife for sight is valid in the best of one. We've already had one ancient today. It was a bit of a, uh, a bangerang up. I'm doing Alt R. Oh, yeah, I shan't. Alt R. All right, Fury have opted to start on the CT side. They will be receiving the attack of Linvision Gaming. Hometown heroes in Chengdu. And we'll let you all know good morning, good afternoon, good evening. As we are going live for the second round, Group A. Ni howdy. That's a trace on the surround. This special right there. Let's get this party started. Envision starting on that T side. And I'm going to be very intrigued, Chad, to see if your prophecy it rings true. If we do get uh, a, a peak in Chinese Counter-Strike, Lin Vision, I, I have definitely got a, a bit of a soft spot for them. I love the, you know, the Desperate up as well. They've got such a, an energy, a passion for the game. It's very clear that they are, uh, you know, they're fully immersed. They're fully uh, obsessed with Counter-Strike. It's going to be quick. Look how fast these B-Smokes are out, short and long. Yeah, so that's going to get Whoa. them ooh, one, two frags down already. Fallen and Yuri have repelled the invaders. Now ooh, things will slow down. It's uh, icky. It's a bit of a sticky spot for the remaining three. A molly and a flash to still work with. And actually it's rotating. It's a fake because of how quick those kills came in. They're like, hang on. This is a bit suspicious. Cello even has a smoke to delay them if they were to try and make their way over there. But they've just paused. Yeah. And they're letting... I think that's Zaka. He's going to show face. They're actually going to suspect that they're onto something with Zaka's presence in Donut. If he makes a step or two, Kaysa, I will hear him. If they can get into B and get the bomb down, this pistol round can be salvaged. Sure, it doesn't have to be the victory, but the extra cash money into the bank account would be nice. Zaka with the space has actually drawn the rotation point of the bomb back from G. Bomb Smoke time would be deployed. great. And now that they're heading back towards the more fortified side, I think that might have just slipped down the drain. So Lin Vision, unknowingly, looking like they want to fall right into Furious hands. Yeah, this uh, it's going to be very hard for this to go wrong for Furia. Okay, Serato in a power position with the dual Berettas. He's got armor behind that as well. Just 30 bullets of wrath. He can unload upon his own discretion. Three now into the site. No one's ready for Kay Serato. He has made a meal of that. And Westman has already found two. Art and Kay Serato combined. Oh, lots of damage. Hang on a second. Zaka with 18 seconds. He's got to swivel around. Spots out Kay Serato. Bomb needs to be planted. 13 seconds. Maybe they're going to be shy. He fakes it out. He fakes it out. Kaysa Rata jumps. What a chance. Seven seconds, though. There's nothing for him here unless he can some somehow hit them both. He gave it a good go. Westmelon's double got our eyebrows raised and Furia probably a little sweaty palms. Yeah, that should never have gotten so close considering that setup. So some good shooting from Lin Vision to almost break in. But we're talking about that bomb going down as the key and still couldn't make that one happen. The fact that Westmelon is able to course correct into the second there. Beautiful work from him, but Fallen will finish things off. The bomb will not go down. And Lin Vision go wanting. That fast B strat. You blinked and you missed it. Uh. Well, they have one Deagle. In the hands of the Melon. One Deagle. One opportunity. Lead Visionary. The bomb. Uh, on the back of Zaka outside the B doors, though. Now, if we were going to live in a world, a bit of a fairy tale world, Alex. Okay. How could this one go right for Linvision? Oh, I like this game. Um... They'd need to get a deagle kill from the melon onto Caserado. Then they'd scuttle in towards the site, trade out Fallen, who might get two on the dual Berettas. At this point, the B players start pushing, leaving B lane, and Zaka gets a plan. Not how it was meant to start. No, well that's and that's fine because Starry's picked it up and Starry is going to die as well. It's actually just a farming session for Caserato. He's got his uh, his pitchfork, his combine harvester. He's a modern farmer, I okay. guess. Well, I changed yeah. the pitchfork. No, he, it's a bit old fashioned. You should still have a pitchfork as I well. I imagine you need one. You need the hand tools. Yeah. It's great to have the machinery, but you could run out of fuel. You're right. You might need a uh, repairman, Plus, also yeah. known as a mechanic. And, you know, you, it's nice to keep some 
kind of uh, analog approach. Of course, of yeah. course. What if there's like a EMP storm? Yeah, exactly. That's exactly what I was going to yeah, say. Yeah, you never know. God, this pesky EMP storm. Yeah, well, Fallen's got the AWP out. Hey, it's He's, time. Uh, kept the pennies, but we're into the rifle round. Round number three, red smoke. Oops, fighting mid is an interesting one. Let's see what he does with that. He throws himself out a little flash for the repeek. I like the repeek, though. I do like the fact he's being quite brave about this. Most definitely. Amelia's being brave. He's actually looking to take some early space. Hey, Serato, spot the shadow. That's the question, Mark. Well, they've been able to at least understand that they have a main control. So that's an important piece of information for Lin Vision. Okay, Serato could take that space at any point in the round, but as we can see, B Lane. Also under the remit of Furia. So the Brazilians with an awful lot of real estate fallen parked up close to the orb. This is looking tidy. Oh, fallen. Lovely find to open up round three. I like it. Yeah, really cool. Proactive, very restrained, kind of uh, made Starry look silly there. The round is very tough now for Linvision. Oh, this is an angle. Art's done his homework. Knows exactly where he needs to position just to see their heads and... Here's to be rather obscured by the brickwork. This is tough. They're 45 yeah. seconds, they have absolutely no space across the map. They're all going to be congregating outside of the B doors. It's going to have to be another brute force round where they make these kills. Here's yeah, uh, some good flashes. Some great trading. You better have some, yeah, magical flashes. Yuri's anti anyway. So I don't know if this is... Yeah, going to... Oh, oh, it's a brutal double kill there. Souring the move. And oh! Vision as G and Amelia just come alive. How have they aim dueled out of that one? The bomb's late to the party, but they picked it they up. Got the time. side control. They got time. <laughs> I just thought it had gone disastrously wrong. Now Amelia can plant. G? G's cooking. Oh, no, the spam it has to be G. Okay, Serato just unloading through the smoke. Gee, 35 HP in a dream. Okay, Serato jiggled out. Fallen and him just staying hip to hip. Now they go wide with the SMG. It's Caserato to save Furia, but I need to see that one again. That nearly, nearly got awkward. Really shaky. Uh, what was like, that, a 2v5? But also, the fight that Cello takes looks so awkward. Like, the fact that... They actually recovered that after that double kill where neither of them are looking at him as he spams them throwing smokes. The second from G must have been yeah, a beauty as well, so right. great work. To, look, they kept that threatening. They got the bomb down, a 2v5 situation. Yeah. So Lin Vision salvaged something out of what was overall a pretty miserable round. So they keep Furious cash limited, but still for the Brazilians, this is a very good start. And there might not be an awful lot of hope from the desk in terms of the longevity of this team, but this is still a matchup that they go into, even though head-to-head -head they lost the last time round. They can definitely pick up this best of one victory. It's a fast day. Eh? We're biffing. We're brawling. The fight is on. Ah, just rolling in. Caserato grabs another, and this one's done again. As easy as that. Send back to Spawn. Furia, they welcome a bit of pace. They welcome a charge, a bit, a biff, as you put it. And with the bomb already under their rule this year, I don't know what they're sort of expecting. G probably not going to be able to. Uh, Rejoin the pack. He's just going on his own little holiday. Well, we've had... Uh, this would be the third threatening round, right? Pistol round. Then we obviously had the eco. We don't count that. Then last round and now this one. So there's been three rounds where there's actually been a little something to work with if you're Lin Vision. And in all three of those, you've lost the opening pick without any way to respond on every occasion. Yeah. Oh, he hits walk. Oh, Yuri seems to have reacted to this information. Adopts the off angle and yeah, collects a free frag. Lovely work from Yuri. Nice idea from G. Just unfortunately gave it up. With the footsteps, 40 seconds. Caserato next fight and it will be the last of round four. Caserato gets himself up to eight and zero. Still looking rather fierce is Caserato. Well, at the moment, Furia have Lin Vision's number, right? Because that double A main push, either you're going to get this full control and nobody's home, and then you'll be able to clamp down on the round. You just block over towards B a middle, you can keep pushing, you can park a player towards main, or you immediately win the round in that fashion. So if the call was to stall out any fast A plays, if that's what they're expecting from Lin Vision, it must be feeling very good for the Furia camp because it feels like they're one step ahead at this very moment. None of these rounds have been close, even though they've been able to try and build back in and get the bomb down from the Chinese side. But all in all, one-way traffic for Furia on this CT campaign thus far. An AXQ set up. 
Matthew sat on the desk. Stay away from the A side. This is where K Serato resides. How many is he going to get this time round? He's got himself a little multi kill in the making. The smokes fly through. Let's see how K Serato handles business here. Flashes in, throws out his molly, and loses his head. They've managed to break through. That's a big opportunity for a plant. Maybe a round? Plenty of util for the retake. Can Furia put this together? Bomb down 40 seconds on the clock. Okay. Another smoke blooms. And he's not great on Furia. Yeah, they're not. Not sure. Absolutely committing. They're seeing if Yuri can find that multi kill. There are two around this corner. There's the util. There's the clear. Knife in his hand. West Melon gets a frag. And oh no! They've lost it all. Five alive. Make it four. Fallen racks himself up a couple on the way out just to preserve his AWP. Yep. Get three. Nice work from Fall in the end, but the round is last. It is Lin Vision taking themselves there first and doing it in, in a rather exuberant way, just charging into the ASO with Tech Nines. Yeah, and that was Amelia. Right, you could see Kay Serato a hero building for sure in the sense that this is his site. He should better lock things down. Throws the molly, stops the scaling towards the big box, but the Tech Nine in the face. And the Tech Nines changed the pace of this game. Lin Vision get there first, and there it is. A beautiful shot. Starry puts his aim on display. That's, Happy with that one. Yeah, I mean, that's certainly going to have some echoes into the next. Yeah, win this, you break Furious Finances. They've been able to pull out two M4s, two MP9s, and they've retained AWP. Wow. What is he up to? Yuri just <laughs> bloodlust through the Molotov. Down to nine. Yeah, now he's got to get out. Okay, yeah, double Molotov will do it. Gosh, they have given him no respect, no respite. Yeah, it's quite clear they've decided we're going to come in today and charge yeah it's almost like he hyped up the boys by saying boys you're gonna let these guys think they're better than us you know this is, yeah it's exactly it, exactly because there's a lot more storied individuals on the furious side of the server a lot more accomplished individuals so confident counter-strike i mean can you explain what yuri just did there running through the molotov and straight yeah, through it there's a a, a level of disrespect yes. in the most respectful way yes yeah i mean i, I know i'd be extra salty if i hear him going tss, tss, Oh, oh, he has pushed. Yeah, yeah. yeah. okay. Here he is. Good on him, I guess. Yeah. Get traded. And you're one and six as well. We're just, oof. Zaka might be a bit tilted after this, but they, they're executing into Fallen. I think they're flash. No, they're not. <laughs> I think you should cast like that all the time. Has he got another? No, he hasn't. Ari, good for the frag and converts onto Keserato and oh, it was almost a double. He nearly had the collapse there, one to the knee of West Melon. Starry full HP. Got a plan now, boys. Smokes are clearing. Yeah, ten seconds. This is getting awkward. West Melon, do you know he's got the bomb? Well, nice shot from Starry. Uh, bombs lost. The round is lost. At least he doesn't die afterwards. There you go. You'll take that. Okay, well, a consolation is uh, getting the loss bonus. They will be able to buy again. Amelia can get an AWP into the hands of G, or he could drop an AK across to Zaka. There's plenty of discussion to be had about the purchase forward for Linvision, but handy work from Fallen. Timeout. Gum. Opportunity to get him on the microphone. I wonder if West Melon knew he had the bomb there. 13 seconds, I mean, yeah, I understand also he wanted to maybe get the, uh, try and force the AWP back, clear him out, take the fight. Justifiable as well, but ended up looking rather awkward. First time out for Gum. Awkward. Did get awkward. Why does that feel so weird to say? I know, it feels like I'm saying quid at the end. Yeah, awkward. Fallen. Do you know who Lord Farquaad is? I do. Okay, just making sure. It's from Shrek. That's right. Not the gumdrop buttons. No. Fallen. Lining up the elbow smoke now. Intently looking at his monitor now. He's nailed it. I'll tell you now. That's landing. It is too. Door smoke, elbow smoke, red smoke. Oof. The um, cave smoke. Utility exchange. Smoke Starry. kills. He's on a bit of a move there. I thought he was anyway. Pushing through. He is giving it a go. Just straight through. That's one way to do it. Mid control. Up for grabs. Trying to restrict their movements freely through middle of Furia. 
A bit of a jarring smoke to continue the threat, but the spam does lightly find its mark. Fallen wants to take some space back. I like this. Furia, cohesive at the moment. Yeah, looking good. King Serato and Fallen partner up on the reclear of middle. They're going to get a good time. Look at this two players through red as well. Well, Art just has to block, but he has no nades to do so. He can't go down without a fight because the flank, Got it's on its way. Yeah, they're kind of already going to pincer her in. Art can just delay them. Nobody's it's watching. huge. Nobody's watching. Oh, their backs are turned. Yuri's on the fast flank. Cello one. Zaka. Just a one onto Art, but Bomb's bomb down is doors. down doors. And now they're coming back for Yuri and Cello. Oh, good shot. Star is <laughs> sharp as attack, man. Hitting shots, hitting heads. They should always just put themselves in a box because they can fight out. They just can't fight in. Yeah, that's it. 20 seconds. Got to get a move on, boys. These late rounds. Just keep running at them. They don't sit right. Gets awkward. Zach is going to lose the bomb and they're going to run out of time. Oh, uh, no. Oh, fallen. Okay, cleared. I actually nailed it. Just in time. One hell of a turnaround. If they actually win this round, considering how much... <laughs> of Furia were favored in this. Okay, Serato, next victim. Oh, he's caught a whiff. Spots out Zaka. He suspects he may, that may have been the second player. Clear your left, he will not. It's Starry to close. One hell of a round from Starry. That double onto Cello and Yuri is bizarre. The round doesn't feel like it could go any more wrong for Lin Vision. Art gets the first kill, a push from four players through middle, they drop the bomb and the two players down towards the B doors. And then this happens. Starry just strafes out, more than ready for the swing on the second. Beautiful work from him. And the cherry on top with the finisher. And speaking of finisher, that's Furious money. That's a Cheng don't get in our way, says Lin Vision. Okay, well, now the cracks are going to begin to form. Now we're cooking something up. Lin Vision Gaming, what are you cooking? This pre fire. Something going on today. Zaka. We need to find Fallen. You know where he is. Take your time, gentlemen. Use your nades. Oh, oh no, not like this. Yeah, yeah it's, it's, it's actually a one versus two. My goodness, that was a slightly concerning for the Lin Vision side. But they get through it. And it's just a two round gap starting to manifest. You can hear Art calling the shots. MP9s are plenty, three of which Furia will don. So uh, they want to have a lot of util quite clearly. So expect to see the full mid and B lane press. Again, the elbow and B doors smoking. Well, sticking together, our Lin Vision. I think they've changed their direction. A B rush. Ooh, that's very well oh, placed. Spot. That's a lot of damage. And then you throw an MP9 into the mix. Yuri does take him down. Good expectation from Amelia. The blocks, they need to call a cancel. You can reset, you have a number advantage. Sure, the rest of the map is a complete mystery, but you still have so much time to play with. No need to force the issue. So starting to dot back through spawn. Amelia, very worrisome about an A or middle push, having to clear off absolutely everything. That'd be special, a player in your spawn at a minute 30, but still wary. Yeah, well, just... By the way, Furio had started this game. I, I don't blame him. True. It's been pedaled to the metal. It has been. Well, Zaka is the canary in the coal mine, staying over towards Pocket for now. So if there are any B pushes out Cave or down the lane, we'll have to be detected. They've rerouted through middle, so trying to buy themselves a little bit of space. A red smoke deployed. Mid now being called clear. We have about 40 seconds left on the clock. And if they head back towards B, well, that's where Fury are currently stacked out. They haven't sent anybody forward for information at the moment because they didn't have any space to work with. This could be catastrophic. No, oh, boys. Walking straight back into the Panthers' den. And Ooh. they shoot hard, don't they? Yeah, they really do. More here. Amelia, Zaka, fragging. Cello alone in the one versus three. What is he prepared for here? They are trying to clear him out. It's good awareness from G. <laughs> Yeah, they can was shoot. Was that Harash? It sounded like Harash. It did He's sound been like playing some basics. He has been playing <laughs> some of the basics. And like that one echoed through the halls. <laughs> Harash, like a banshee whale. <laughs> yeah, Aww. they just, they frag so hard, dude. Having a good time with it. 
And I, I prefer watching it from like the people that uh, they're peaking's perspective. I... Yeah, because you really can appreciate just how whippy with it are they are. And that was the correct stack. Yeah. So Fury have got the dogs in the right place. It does feel like sometimes Lin Vision like they could be doing they could be so much better. Oh, yeah, like, but if, hey. you know, not, not based off their... Uh, yeah, no, could, I know what you're you saying. Know what I'm trying to say. Yeah, yeah, I know exactly what you're saying. Like, a lot of their decision-making sometimes seems, like, misplaced or they're overthinking or, like... It's not like there's a lack of understanding of the core concepts of the game or their aim. Like, damn, if you put these guys in, like, I don't know, another couple of these European boot camps, they're going to be... They're going to be a real threat. You heard from Garm in the post-game interview back at the Major when they were eliminated. He, he's, he's aware that they had done well, right? But they're far off of European level of Counter-Strike, yeah. which is where you need to be. So they know that they have a lot of work to do as a team to, to get up to the world level of CS. But they're getting there. This oh, they is are. Like, this step. They're there actually steps. making progression, which you can't say for uh, some regions. Nice. Nicely done. So, like, for example, this is Lin Vision trying to do a default, dare I say it. Is this a default? Well, Pretty standard? Yeah, anti-eco uh, slash default. Yeah, okay, that's fair. It depends on your... I was uh, say, there's, there's only two B-side. You've got an extra player kind of lingering towards A for the finish with the bomb. But that's the thing. You can see this passive stance from Zaka, right? So outside the doors, and then you've got uh, Westman tucked in towards... Is Case Pongo. Rara going to teach us a little lineup there, or...? Oh. Okay. What's he trying to segregate? Well, did he have the smoke in hand? Okay, so you line up on the white dot line. Okay. But you, you get cross the smoke. Her there. All right. And eventually you'll throw it. Oh. Hey. Do you think he wanted it to go in? No. No, no. it did land it correctly. Because now Art could do exactly this. <gasps> Oh, oh no! They pushed through the smoke! G's handled it well! Nearly got very uncomfortable and fallen down to Amelia. I can breathe, okay. But that was cool. That was very cool. Yeah, we got, the smoke lineup came into play. Saw how Both it's... Both of them uh, pushing through. Yeah, nice little way to reinitiate the cave control as well. We would segregate the space taken by the T's. Oh, got a little bit concerned that that would have been a... That would have been a Lin Vision tilt-up. You need those type of rounds, though. Yeah. Uh, you need to be able to build those into your playbook, have cheeky little maneuvers exactly like that. A couple of those go your way. Right. That's a map. As K. Serrado will find himself retaining a scavenged AK-47. Here it is again. We should get Rush on the mic. Hey, future pros. What you're going to do is you're going to look for the little pebble on the wall and line it up here with the cloud. If you pair it up with some teammates and a good flash, Why you will be able... Because he... What is Rush's accent? He's not... Br like, I know he's British, but he doesn't yeah. sound it. No. Well, he doesn't sound American either. He no. kind of sounds like Rush. I just... I don't know. When he does his VOs. Yeah, he does get a he bit does, more American. He does, yeah. It's true. Wow, I can hear Lin Vision from here. Uh, Damn. So that wasn't a good Rush... Oh, no. I, I thought... I knew who you were. Oh, okay. You didn't even have to say your okay. name. Thanks. Oh. oh, okay. Well, not everyone's a fan of no. it. No. That's fine. Fallen on the glass cannon. The GC. Chip damage. Cello's going back around long. He might get picked yeah, off. Yeah, he could. He flashes for himself, but ooh, doesn't pass the test there on the AWP G. Missed his chance. White screen. Good diligence there from Cello on the flash. Oh, Fallen staying fall. active with his AWP. Yeah, always. G just hoping for one passing glance. That's all he wanted. And West Talent taken down. Whoa. Oh, G connects. Costs him a great deal of his health, but... Amelia's activating on A. Yeah, and they just saw them retreat. Amelia oh, loses his head, loses the uh, chance. It's going to have to be B for the finish now, and you can see that Yuri's expecting this. Just pushing mollies again, Yuri! Onto Zaka, no less. Surely Westmelon's going to get this trade. The hesitance is worrying me. Westmelon shies away from the engagement, gets shut down by Yuri. Great from Yuri to get the double. Yeah, very impressive. And look at Serrato. He has just thrust himself forward through main. He'll be on the hard flank. Oh, no, G's not ready for this. No it's way so in the world. Quick. And K Serato. He's already hit one banger and secures the round six for Fury. Keeping it competitive there. 
Oof. I mean, you know, if Amelia gets a bit more space on A, it's a different round completely. Right. And you can see the, the smoke just kind of smacking him in the face. This was the opener. A great oh. shot from Fallen. Damn. Very well had. Oh. Um, <laughs> referee. Yeah. Excuse me. He was moving. Okay, Serato, that is... Uh, what was that? A big one right there. Yo, that's actually nuts. Yeah, we get to see Fallen's crazy shot again, but some crazy shots across the board. Okay, Serato just hitting a little fadeaway. Oh, God, they're just relentless, aren't they? You're getting spammed oh. from smoke. Some nice work from G. Quick on it. And you know there's an MP9 close. That's smoke betrays it as well as the spam. Well, Art and Case are going to relinquish that aggressive mid control they had. The smokes will start to fade, makes them much more susceptible. Ooh. All the CTs have just completely gambled out. It's Case tough just to walk out onto A, though, isn't it? Yeah, it is scary. He's kind of like just occasionally tending to it, takes a passing glance. He's trying to be basically be two players for the price of one here. In the meantime, Zaka goes through some denial of Jaguar. The final round of the half, you'd love to get yourself six here, six here if you're Lin Vision. A pressure. It is going to have to be acknowledged, or Fury will have to push on the other side of the map. Wow. How's his eyes? I don't know how he's done that. That was beautiful again from Serato. He's made it a whole lot more convincing towards the uh, Fury 7th. Right now, Starry has to do something on Tree. There's no point just parking unless you want to rotate back through middle. 30 seconds. Still enough time to make that call if they're going to make it, but Starry, you can't just sit here all day. 20 seconds. They're going A. They're going A. Yeah, so this could still activate. Red Smoke's fine. Need to get in through Donut. Art's going to be Temple. Caserado spawn. 11 yeah. seconds. It's just enough time to get the bomb code. Sorry, he's been treated the whole time. Maybe this comes in clutch. It could do. They're not expecting that. They'll be anticipating the Donut setup. G holding for the uh, CT angle. His teammate just called for a flash. Fallen actually only has a smoke. He's landing it up. He needs to land on default. Starry reveals himself. The oh, he's got a nice smoke for Donut. Flash forward. Starry trying to stand and bang. He does manage to reposition nicely for the clear. Ah, oh, it's a nice shot as well from Starry. Defuses imminent. Really needs Starry on his A game here. He's being held by the orb. He will go down, but he buys time. Defuse coming Isn't in from Serato. Two seconds left on it. They just need to knock him off the bomb. They can't do it. It's a seven for Furia. Hard fought from Lin Vision, but seven on the half.
Good morning, good afternoon, and good night. Wherever you're watching from, good to see you. We're here for our second game of the day on the A stream. B stream as well, kicking off. You've got Ty Lu Maus. You can check it out with B Dog and Lucy Loose. For us, we're heading on into the second half, and it has been a bit Lucy Loose from Furia on that CT side. Lucy Goosey, they were running at them, and then Vision of Cup 5 to work with. What do you say, Birch? Are we going to be having a close second half? Uh, look, I think Lin Vision did a good job to fight back in a couple of lo low buy rounds of their own, and we can see them pack a punch when the number disadvantages on their side, which doesn't seem to make an awful lot of sense, but the odds don't think so. This pistol round has so much utility. Three smokes, that means three individuals have purchased and won't have Kevlar, and we're fast in towards B. Oh, it's so simple, it's so poetic. Running it. Actually, both towards ramp. This could be a good response. If you nail the first shot, if you nail the second, you've found a remedy. You found the perfect solution. Oh, they're fighting forward. Look at this push. Oh, they can go to A. Yeah, There's an open oh runway God, all the way through A. CT spawn. Oh, Arkin my block God. with the smoke as well. It's rock, paper, scissors, but they've both found counters to each other. Art's blocking donut with the smoke. Perfect. That's an even better place. Perfect deep as well. You don't want to be pushing through that. Ooh, uncomfortable now for Starry. And uncomfortable now for Lin Vision, despite they're the man advantage. This? Oh, you're already traded. Trigger Discipline could have won the round right there. Instead, it's on. Shit. No kit. Got to get a move on. Okay. Cello, power position, and art playing for the round. Yeah, they should have done enough here. There's going to be all about clearing our temple. This fight is not coming. Cello is going to be loving life. He let art play first. Someone's have the bomb at least. Yeah, art's holding this oh. angle. Covers him. Nails the headshot into Amelia. They do clear him all the same. Did it. You've got to hold it. Zach has got to hold it. It's up to Starry. He can shoot. He can shoot. It's going to be ah. close. I don't is know that other This is going to be close. I'm looking it? right now. This is close. They don't have it. They don't have it. G getting one, two, three, four, five steps ahead of him with the yell. It felt like there was multiple seconds still required on that defuse. You sure that wasn't a replay or something? I'm positive. You're sure that that was actually. G, you look a little bit silly now, don't you, mate? Oh no. There was so much. Like it was. It, it wasn't even that close. I think it's also it, in his defense. I think Zaka faked it when he needed to hold it, and he heard the but first But look, it's sound. not even close. Yeah, no, it's not even close, I know. But, uh, but Zaka faked it. When Starry was initially taking that fight with Art, Zaka, like, touched it, turned, adjusted, <laughs> and went back on it. Oh, Anyway. That's a yikes from me, Dorp. Yeah, no, that is a little orky. Both pistols for Furia. Oh, man, if I'm G, my skin's all with prickly now, you know? You're like, yeah, oh, it's a little bit embarrassing. What have I done? It's a loud scream, scream as well. Yeah. Now you're on an eco, you've got lots of time to think about it. Exactly right oh, side. First death as well, so you can really think about it. You try and, you know, you know, open up your phone, scrolling through a couple of TikToks, trying to just uh, get past I'm it. I'm trying to think of an equivalent. I guess it would have to be something like school related. Oh, yeah. I don't really embarrass myself too much as an adult because everything I do is. Yeah. Already of that vein. Plen plenty I'm very comfortable around. with it. Yeah, yeah, I'm just very comfortable with it in general. Oh, well, let's um, let's get ready for this one, shall we? We shall indeed. Okay. What's Cello lining up? What's he cooking Got right the now? Glass cannon, AWP. What's, what's Cello G? cooking? Cello's cooking something. Yeah, he is. It's the donut smoke. So they're going a fast day. Go on then. Ooh, throw it when you reach the building. Hop. It's a fank. The bomb is not committing. Nailed that. It's coming through. They're through. Oh, I hate this. Amelia's hiding in the smoke, and he's... Oh, no. He's gone down straight away. Case Serato, the... <laughs> the fake. Oh, and now Art gets another. This is a fury one. around. Yeah, he just caught Zaka pushing through the smoke. With a Pete 2 k The Mac 10 you mean? No. Which one am I? Do? Oh, did I miss the Caserato got a second frag with P2K? Yeah. There I am. Okay, I am. I'm on board. Well, that is another brutal round to lose, isn't I, it? Um. Yeah. This is the, the ways in which Fury. I don't even know why they blocked main with the smoke because G was holding it with the orb. Yeah. So they felt the pressure because of the util. G still had the line, but his teammate smoked in front of him, which essentially created a wall of smokes that K Serato then used to come out behind. So that was a CT smoke that he killed Emilio in. That was, no, that was that a T-like lurk, lurk smoke, smoke, but the reason he could get out main was... It, because it was smoked initially by yeah, the CTs and, when they're not and they dropped back. And there's the MAC-10 that there he dropped because he knew he killed a player in the smoke trying to pick up an M4. 
And then kill to go with the P2K. Timeout? Gum? Let's, let's call it quick. Here quick it is. Here it is. So K Serato just, just unloading. Had a premonition. Then dro yeah. Oh. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. So that there was through is. the smoke as well. <laughs> Onto the Orpa. It's right, thing. Onto the Orpa. Oh, on the Orpa. <laughs> Poor soul. Oh, man. Well, well, well. This is why I never cheer, chat. Never cheer, never cheer up my teammates. Because then it's no, you, they don't notice the absence of it. Mm. It's never there in the first place. It's hollow out there right now, isn't it? Yeah. Oh my god, I'd, I'd, I'd still rent free in my mind. I'm sure it is theirs. Just the way in which that round has gone down. It's like a bit of a back break up for Lin Vision. They've got themselves those two save rifles. Let's see what Starry and Westman can cook up here in response to a full A take from Fury. They're just. Focusing on this side of the map right now. Yeah, this, uh, this round over. Can I say it's over? You can. I just did. So uh, that's twitch.tv slash ESLCSB. Yeah. And that's Mouse taking on Ty Lu on Overpass with B Dog and Lucy. I wonder that's what, what that is. I wonder what's happening over there. I think it was close when I was uh, tuning still in. Is? It still is close. Who's on the CT side, though? I'm glad you asked. It's Mouse. Okay. Yeah. So the fact that Ty Lu have that many rounds on the T side already is quite good. Your boy Mercury's doing all right as well. Yeah, they're, they're doing a six-man roster situation, Tyler. Yes, Who's playing are. at the moment? Uh, yeah. It's Advent. Advent, Kaze. Yeah, instead of uh, Mosier. CDR. I think it's Mosier that's not playing. Is he still on the team? Am I tripping? Uh, I think he's one of the benched members. Yeah. But I don't think he was announced as um, Part of the one six. of the six. Because I, I know ZDR was the one people were interested in. Cause no, Is Jam like, Young not playing? Jam Young's playing. It's Mercury, Jam Young, Kaze, Advent, ZDR. Okay. ZDR is one of the newer kids on the block. Yeah, there was no info on him. Like, they, you know, they've just walked into a... They just picked him out of nowhere. Cyber cafe. Yeah, plucked him. Cyber. Oh, there's still a lot of comms there. Working out how they're going to make this round work. Well, they need six rounds in consecutive fashion to tie things up. It's a big ask. Because you don't want Fury to get to 12. Linvision, what do you got in store? Double mid mollies. MVP pressure through the flames. Yuri tickled. Oh, might have been noisy on that. Oh my uh, goodness. He's just got a double straight through the board. Yes, he has. Through the smoke and then the board. And now, ooh, Zaka caught out. Cello put low. Finished off by the G orb. And that's another... Convincing couple of frags here from Lin Vision to try and get their CT side set up. Important to not give over any more casualties, yeah. I'd say. I would agree with you there. Well, a bounty of Yuto for Keiserado to work with, but uh, Bomb fortified. G holding the flank. Amelia over towards middle. So the two of them dealing with any possible cheeky business from Keiserado. He's going to give this one a go. He's been having a good turn, hasn't he, Kesaro? Has he got anything else in the tank for this round? Oh, gives it away. Westmiller not giving up anything, and it's a nice angle there. Good work, good restraint, good restraint. Sixth round on the board, four still alive, keeping those AKs on the CT side. That Westmiller double really sets the tone of the round. Yeah, we'll catch that right down. here in the replay. So is it oh, smoke? The jump. Oh, jump they go for the boost, and then he's aware oh. that it's possible. So the follow-through is beautiful. Great work. Now just five more. Grab another one of those without the plant. Maybe you can start having a conversation about a lighter fury of bite. However, Yuri still has 4.4. He's right out mid, looking for some space to work with. In combination with Yuri, they have mid control. Ooh, that's huge. That's a nice piece for any, uh, an art next step. What's he calling? All maneuvers towards B. Cello's going to be a problem as well. They're the ones who are smoking the ramp themselves, so it, it does make things a little bit dicier for that B defense. Quite staunch. 
as far as A is concerned, but middle's the mystery. And there's going to be a few problems that will have to be considered by Linvision shortly. The red leak, the donut hole. Oh, what a nice nade into cave. Zaka chipped down to half, the fight's coming. Oh, they will find it there. Yuri will find them both. And it looks like Starry can still hold on to his uh, bomb site for a moment longer. Throws out the incendiary, repositions, Molotov back from the cave fight. Fortnum's bringing that bomb. No smoke, though, so this is a duel. Starry, ah. It's going to struggle to contribute. Fortnum gets across. And G's dealing with A because Amelia pushed main, got caught by K Serato. G had to acknowledge the gap. And this is looking like 12. Really difficult. Fallen's going to wrap this one up with a good shot onto Starry. And G just going to try and preserve his AWP. But you, like you said, Fury up. Picking themselves up a 12th. Convincing in this head-to-head. Uh, -head, looking to get that revenge. Yeah, I think revenge is key. Uh, and that's right. The desk obviously talking about lack of faith in Fury. Up, but that's overall for the yeah. project. Probably not necessarily just to do with the Lin Vision matchup. But this is a good victory from the Brazilians to start off their campaign here in Chengdu. I'm getting a one round ahead of myself, sure, but considering how much control they have been able to apply in this map, you would think they can pick up one more before Lin Vision bring it back to an overtime. And you know what that sound means. We will go into a tactical timeout to discuss the final options. But both pistols... Some confident Counter-Strike taking a lot of fights. Fallen looking quite agile on the AWP on that CT side. And I'm sure after how Nuke went down back at the Major, the desk highlighting some of those catastrophic rounds that went against Fury up. 13-9 on Nuke. They were happy to find themselves on a new battleground of Ancient. And so the gum said they had changed up a few things coming into this match. Well, let's see. Is it too little too late to show some of those changes? Round number 19. And away we go. Starry. Oof, just gets away from the Yuri clear on mid side. And it's going to be a nice find. Well timed. Starry finds a nice first blood. Ah, uh, into the smoke. Zach has got his nade out. Oh, brutal. Not been a great game for Zaka having a tough time. Some of these audacious Furia maneuvers have really got the better of him. I think audacious is a good word to describe what, what Fury have given him today. Can't jump again, can you, Sorry. Don't need to. Art uh, will just leer into that. Starry's grabbed another. Steps towards Donut. Cello through main. Amelia, it's your turn. Oh, that's a nice one from Fallen. Spins around to catch the flank from Starry. He's ready for more, but past the line of sight is West Mellon. Ooh. Oh, Fallen, you've got the bomb, so he's going to have to give up on that angle. He's smoked at the moment to delay. It's a CT smoke holding them at bay. Now it's faded. It's all about this West Melon flank. Molly onto Amelia. She's AWP as well, important. Nails it, takes down the bomb. Now they can play their advantage. All oh, you can peek gives it to Cello. Bomb can go down now. Keserato spots out the flank. He's going to be planting open. Needs some cover. Good fire from Amelia. And he will secure it with a nice double. Ooh. Okay. Touch and go for a few moments yeah, there. Yeah, there's a couple of these moments. Pretty it? solid utility uses from Fury as well to be able to get themselves on towards the side. The bomb goes down and they well, should guarantee themselves another buy. Yuri can drop. I don't speak any Mandarin, so I can't tell you. Well, that's not true. Ni Hao and Cheshire. Yeah, that's, that's all you need. All With some kind eyes and an open heart. That's the way to do it. Kind eyes, open heart. But I'll tell you one thing. Lin Vision, they're a Mandarin it to win it. It's one hell of a way back up. Chung, don't do that again, Alex. <laughs> I'm sorry.
It was on the list of Cheng do's and Cheng don'ts, wasn't it, before we got here? It was. Oh, I like that. That really set the tone of the situation. It did. Lin Vision staring up at the castle, the mountain that they have to climb. Uh, Five more rounds. Whew. Can they take this ancient best of one against Fury in the opening stages of IEM Chengdu 2024 to overtime? Or will they fall right here and now? Oh, Fallen, that's a deep cave smoke he's thrown there. Case Serato has found first blood. So in answer to your question, Chad, it's a strong start for the case that Fury might be making this our last, at least in this uh, trip to Ancient. Now that's an interesting one. Cello throwing out that smoke. Is that going to sow seeds of doubt for the CTs? What's its purpose? Well, especially considering Fury have been lurking through a lot of the yeah. util. And also it means that Cello can actually reside here in the beehive. Make himself at home. I do like this re-aggress from G. Some good bravery there. Obviously no info on lane. He's got support in the form of uh, Westmelon. If Amelia pushes main again, last time K Serato won this tussle. Nose is here now. G will deal with it. Pressure towards B. Just Zaka. Or at least it was. West Mellon. Right place. Right time. Right spray. Oh, three. A laser beam into Fallen. Round done. 45 seconds. Surely Yuri's have got nothing left to do here. He's got the bomb in front of him. It's held by his opponents, and Emilia's even coming in from the angle behind him. So this is over, unless the double kill. Oh, yeah, there was you can a see <laughs> X-ray of just all the ways that could have gone wrong. Yeah. If Zaka doesn't nail that first one, I'm screaming. Yeah. Okay, 12-8. Well, Ashel's been whittled. Yeah. Yeah, it's not pretty. It's going to be Tech Nine for that. You don't want to lose to Tech Nine, do you? Fury know how that feels from yeah, the first half. Yeah, exactly. But great composure there from West Mellon. Could have easily just gone for a panic spray at range, nope. especially when committing to that second fight. So didn't. Yeah, he got the perfect timing there. Like three players, or rather two, just not looking. And they're Out charging mid. mid. Ooh, Emilia holds on for the double kill. Wow. Despite the low HP, in very quickly. Like, I feel well, like... It was done. Yeah, exactly. Look, he was a dead man walking. Gets away with... Two kills, dead man fragging. Still under pressure. Oh, get that smoke out now, Starry. Buy yourself some time. Forces the fight. Ooh, oh, it gets away with one HP. It's one HP versus three HP. Oh, he's got an aid as well. Imagine. Imagine he dunks on Amelia. Still 4v1 with one HP. Where were you when I won the one HP 1v4? I was in Chengdu. I think it was in the playoffs, actually. <laughs> 2012. 2012? Yeah. 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 <laughs> How old do you think some of the Lin Vision players were in 2012? 12 years ago. Probably. 12 years younger ago. Younger than they are now. Let that sink in. 12 years ago. Porcelain. Yeah. People that were born in 2000. <laughs> A 24. Yep. Yep. That's, see that? That see what I did there? A, you've gone for the easiest of mathematics. That was pretty good, I think, actually. This deep cave smoke's caused Zachary a few issues. Interesting to see how he tussles with it this time. So Case arrives already managed to poke his nose out of the elbow smoke. He's not necessarily going to commit off the bat, but this is already a lot of info and space. Well, that Molly's trouble on B. They're coming in. They're up. Look at this little gap they've forged between the smokes. That's a big shot from G. He delivers, takes down Cello. He's cooking up trouble. That's a, oh, a lovely gap, though. They're making this nightmare oh. fuel. As a double kill from Art with only four HP to spare. He's opened up the B side. There is a rotation, but look at this. They're, they're restraining themselves. They're not committing. They need to search for some info. Zaka's going to play forward. Oh, Zaka. Oh. Spotted. Fall is still going to go down. Controls the spray. Commits to it. Kaserato with taps. He can't keep the lid on it. A lot of damage dealt. This is not over yet. And then he's got a nade. The smoke swings on through. Needed that one from Amelia. Another low HP on the Yuri. Amelia's doing everything with this low HP. Another double kill impact round, but it's not over if Art can clutch up. He certainly could. He oh! does. What a round out of Art. The quad kill. 
Senslin Vision Gaming packing up their mouse and keyboard for the day. Well, they've traded 13 nines at the major Lin Vision taking out Furia in a best of one in the Swiss, 13 to nine on Nuke. And now the Brazilians will get their revenge in the opening stage against the hometown hopefuls. They will fall, they will fall to the lower bracket and they will have to await the score of Maus versus Tai Lu on that B stream. Don't want to be having that uh, cannibalistic uh, encounter so early here in Chengdu. We just can't have it. We need a win from one of the two at the moment. It seems it may be written, it may be happening, it may be starting to come into reality. But that's going to be played later today, if I'm reading the schedule correctly, which is even more cutthroat. Lin Vision. It felt like there was a somewhat of a comeback there, and this is the same story as before. These individuals, they can... They're sharp. They can really shoot. And they certainly have had some cool ideas and, and some individuals that shine bright. There were some unforced errors there that have accumulated into a loss. Indeed, and uh, losing both pistols, that is That'll always a tough it. task in a best of one. They even managed to bow themselves out with a Tech-9 round of their own, thanks to a nice little Amelia entry on that A side. But all in all, I think Furia, they looked pretty comprehensive. Had a very good game plan of how they wanted to approach it today. Very dynamic on the CT side, fallen, moving around a lot. But we're going to be moving down to Heku on the sideline with an interview. Yeah, have the coach. You got to see everything that was happening. The team managed to close them up with a pretty convincing score, but it kind of felt that maybe some rounds slipped away. What do you think that happened? Uh, always the first match of the tournament, it's tough. Uh, mentally, bo ones especially. Uh, I think we had uh, our chance to close it out on, on City side uh, better. I could be 9-3, we, we slip away some rounds, but uh, these things happen on CS. Uh, on T side, we won the pistol and it was really good for us to get the momentum and we embraced this momentum and 12-5 or 6 I think and we just uh, need to come down and do the things like calmly to close it out. And considering that right now you played against a team that like, no, you permaban this team's best pick with the highest winner. Do you think this was the best team for you to actually start to like warm up into the tournament? Uh, I think because it's BO1, it's not uh, too dangerous because we have three Vitos each team. So uh, I think uh, if a mouse win the, the next game, they, they ban a noobs too. So it will be interesting. Yeah. And do you, like, are you already prepared for both mouse or maybe even Tyloo? Yeah, yeah, it could be. BO1, man. <laughs> it's, it's tough. <laughs> it's tough. Like, a lot of things can happen in Barcelona, but first of all, congratulations. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Yeah, comeback attempt for Lin Vision. Simply cosmetic and major revenge claimed for Furia and Yanko. For once, you were right. You said Furia would lose twice to Lin Vision. So what happened here? Exactly. Uh, we had almost a, a, a mirror image of that first game, uh, Liquid versus Heroic, right? It was Furia this time around who, do, who got off to a strong start on both halves, 4-0, 4-0, uh, really. And Lin Vision did a good job, you know, of grinding back into the game. But in the end, it just wasn't enough. You know, Art with a nice round there, 4K and a 1v2 on low HP. Yeah, that, that 4K from Art is like a throwback from 2018. Like, at least with Furia coming out the gate, Art with the entry kills. I also think it was necessary. I think Furia was running out of steam a little bit. You could see Lin Vision warming up, being a bit more proactive on the CT side, and he unlocks the whole situation. Uh, very clever, edging the, the smoke, finding double kill entry, and then the clutch low HP. Kudos. Kudos. Yeah, it was good for him to come alive in those moments where arguably, you know, mistakes made on both sides of the equations. But first half kind of has to be the story of Fallen. Uh, he's our Air Force Aim High MVP, and it was great to see him coming out of the gates hot, right? Yeah, absolutely. You know, he was very mobile with the AWP, was hitting the shots he's supposed to hit, right? And was a thorn in Lin Vision's side. Yeah, overall, I think proactivity was the name of the game. And usually it comes hand in hand when having these good starts in best of one is that you want to be the one sort of dictating what is it that's happening. A couple of times for Furia, it's a double A main push, Fallen is with Kesavado. Then it's a B lane push. That's the first few rounds as well. So you can manufacture yourself that momentum and have that great start. Fallen was definitely a, an architect of it for Furia. And you have to realize it's a 5-1 start in the first high, 5-1 on the second. So it's a best of one. These are the rounds that matter. Yeah, particularly uh, in MR12, we've heard players say that quite Ooh. a lot. Um, Lim Vision on the other side of things as uh, Machine and Sponge were aptly putting it. Maybe, potentially, I I'm not going to write it down just yet, but if Tyler lose versus Maus, which is going on right now, 
could be unfortunately a battle of two Chinese teams in an elimination spot. Um, for Lin Vision, what kind of taste was left in your mouth after this this map? Pretty sour. Uh, it has to be right because they had their opportunities. It's just really difficult when you lose both pistols in a best of one, right? And, and in some of those early gun rounds, also a little bit unfortunate. In the second half, really, Serato has his. You know, he's just sort of drawing attention to himself outside of way, jumping over. Emilia is in the smoke and he just catches his head as he's spamming with a Mac 10, like jumping through the smoke, you know. So a couple of those rounds uh, were unfortunate, but yeah, they were shooting hard, man. Starry I mean, and West Melon with a couple of rounds. They always shoot hard and that's why we get excited about it. Uh, you had a great point about it's been so long since they played Western Counter-Strike on the map. And I do feel like you could see it. When Furia slowed down the pace, it took Lin Vision a moment to realize, okay, these are the timings we need to hit on the CT side. We can't just stay passive. If so, we're going to get bamboozled. And I think they took a little too long to sort of adjust to the rhythm that Fury was putting there. And this is maybe where we get that sort of experience. Right? It's one thing to, to be good on a certain map, but on Ancient, it felt like it wasn't really the body of work. I think a good sign, if anything, I don't think necessarily Lin Vision lost the map as much as Fury won it, right? Mm -hmm. Like, it, it, it was a good game from them, and, and they just came out on top. I mean, if it's the Battle of the Decibels, uh, Lin Vision winning that department, holy get hell, loud. do they get loud? Like. We were walking in from outside, and it sounded like they were right next to us. So uh, whoever loses that Miles versus Tyloo game, they've, they've got at least their ears cut out for them. And they thought they had that second half pistol. That's all I'm Fuse. saying. That's <laughs> the, the defuse that really hurt. Ugh. How do you frame Linvision going forward then? If you're saying, you know, this is more of a career win than a Linvision loss, do you think there's hope on the horizon for them to maybe bolster something? If they play Tyloo, they're the favorite for me, hands down. Yeah, that's fair. I will have them above Tyloo. Above pretty much anyone else but Mongols in that region at that point. And they're not here. Yeah. So. Maybe a chance for redemption fly. later. Yeah, you know, speaking quest. of FlyQuest, they're going to be coming to the other side of this break. They're going to be taking on Cloud9 in just a few moments in another best of one here at the Intel Extreme Masters in Chengdu 2024. some point in every gamer's life, there's a question to be asked. Do your clothes match your hobby in any situation? Or do they just represent what you dream of? No matter what situation, there's always the right wear and the wrong. The only real question is, which are you going to choose? Decide for yourself. We're still very early in the progress for ourselves, if I had to talk about that. Of course, we wanted to get into the arena and play in front of like a Danish crowd. Really sad about not making that happen. But all in all, I think we can be satisfied with how we showed ourselves uh, with the mentality that we had at least. Probably we need a little bit more time together as a team and I think we are really consistent in making it into the arena and now we just need to get the next step and it will be really good. We qualified as 3-0 and then we instantly lost the first uh, playoff game and it didn't feel like a major for us, you know, because we didn't play the best teams and we didn't play so many games and it was a little bit weird. Our communication was far away from what a top team should be like. I think it's fair when we are a completely new team and uh, we had a long talk after the major about what uh, we could do about it and one of the things is that 
in practice we like we set time off to talk about uh, different situations we have been going through in practice so just evaluating like very specific rounds and details of what could have been said or what should we have said uh, so people actually realize what they mean with the communication they give because for some people they like we had a very big misunderstanding because you said this then I thought this but it was not what he meant and so we tried to clear that out a lot more now looking back the biggest challenge we faced probably what happened on the stage and it was pretty unreal and surreal what happened there and we were pretty shocked and uh, traumatized I think so it was really tough for us and try to keep up the focus and keep our mentality so there were like a security guy running towards and, and shouting let's go down go back go back so we have to go back to the backstage again and the I don't know if it was our mistake but three of us misheard something yeah we heard like somebody got that we were just shocked and don't know what to do and we were like yeah like we couldn't focus some of us had panic attacks so yeah jail <laughs> i think uh, i think he performed insanely well i don't know if i would say uh, if i expected that from him from him before that but he at least surprised me well with how well he did it on the stage and it was just very impressive i was really happy how beat played in navi but how he plays like he's so good his play style and it's really nice to see him again performing really good and also how he played in the final like he destroyed everyone you know he, he was like 1.6 rating I think so Cloud9 arriving in Chengdu Flash fresh off the Copenhagen Major Playoffs, faltering to Vitality in that quarterfinal, but nevertheless still making it to top eight of the first CS2 Major. Now they arrive here in China. Their first opponent are going to be FlyQuest. And maybe, Maniac, if you've not been on socials, you might have a few questions. So do you want to do the TLDR of who FlyQuest are and why you, you'll know these guys? Yeah, basically they have a whole lot of history together, right? It is the uh, core of Greyhound as well with the return of Dexter. He was obviously with them in the Greyhound before they had to go through Jeeves and now FlyQuest. I think this is the most exciting part of that story for me is Dexter after the Mouse and the Fnatic Stint now coming back with his boys. Hopefully being able to use that experience. I'll just say the Fnatic Stint, I think it just tanked his credit. Let's just forget about it. Nothing good came out of it. But in Mouse, hopefully he learned a whole lot and now he can pass on to these guys. Guys like Vexide, for example, which I think have a great future ahead. Well, future should, should start now, actually. Like it's been a while since we have a good future, but this way you can get excited about the Greyhound and now FlyQuest boys. Yeah, I think also the, the important thing is now with a proper org and proper backing, what is it going to mean for this lineup? It, because it was always like, oh, we can't spend as much time in Europe as we'd like to boot camp and to get better, right? That supposedly won't be a problem with FlyQuest. And also, to be honest, the vibe was before a little bit like they're just traveling or they're coming to these events. They're the best team in their region so they can qualify, but there's not really expectations and they're never really close to achieving any sort of a result. Even at majors, they would win one game, you know, and then get eliminated. So I'm hoping that this adds a sense of urgency in a way that, you know, they actually try and be co competitive because you could see they couldn't even make it to the major this time around. Yeah, I've been hearing a lot more whisperings of, you know, the potential of more European practice for FlyQuest going forward. But let's check in with Liaz to see how he's feeling coming into China. I have Liaz here by my side right now. They are playing for FlyQuest. I do want to know, like yesterday you were maybe like feeling not so good. How is the state right now? I had hot pot and I shit myself last night, but we're good today. So we're ready to play. Ready to play. Well, you're going to play against Cloud9, and I wonder, like, you've been playing CS for a really long time. You've seen like those players for a very, very long time in different variations. Do they look like old Navi, old Gambit, or it's like a new beast? Maybe old Navi. I don't know. I, I was a little uh, electronic fanboy when I was starting playing, so I've always been following his career. And uh, they just play solid... Holy fuck, they're loud. They just play very solid Counter-Strike. Very. Uh, the fundamentals are good, and they follow them, but that also makes them easier to read and uh, it's just up to us to you know, make the good reads and hit our shots. Mm -hmm. And what's going to be the approach? Like, you're going to play your own game or something else? Yeah, I'm going to give you the, the shit answer and say that we're just going to play our own game. I don't know, we, uh, we're kind of fresh with Dex of the lineup. We've uh, had a bit of practice with him, but you know, we're just getting into the groove of things. So we do sort of have to focus on ourselves for you know, a tournament or two. And then when we feel ourselves, that's when we can look at the opponents more. All right then, thank you very much. Thank you. 
Happens to the best of us with the hot pot, Liaz. Don't you worry. But vibe check if they're bringing that to the server today. Um, they seem very chill, very confident. You're just about directing it at the opponent, <laughs> yes. right? So like that's that's what you want to see. And you know, Liaz, no sugar coating. <laughs> With him, but it, I don't think it also sh should be sugarcoated that I think people are expecting a little bit more out of him, right? Like he was supposedly, you know, the next JKS even back when he joined Renegades. Okay, he didn't have as good of a role in that team, but you want to see a little bit more output for him from him because Wax side, you know, he's the one who has been delivering for this lineup. Yeah, definitely. But I, I would wish one day I could give such good interviews as Leon. I think he's my new model, actually. That's what I'm going to go for. The honesty is on point. You just need to unleash yourself. Yeah, he's very unleashed. He's definitely untethered. So, Cloud9 on the opposite side, we did hear a, a nice little nugget from there that, you know, he's a bit of an electronic fanboy, obviously going to be going up against him. Um, what's the current situation with Cloud9, in your opinion, Matthew? Were you expecting them to make it to the playoffs and uh, um, were you left unsatisfied after that Vitality game? I mean, I think everybody in the Counter Strike world was a little bit unsatisfied after map two versus Vitality. They just didn't show up, disappeared completely. Uh, if anything, the Axile's performance is annoying for me because it shuffles the cards once once again about what you could hope from this Cloud9 in the future. Hey, we always have to readdress the, co the conversation about, hey, we have Boomich on the AWP now, and there's a few maps where it works, there's a few maps where it obviously doesn't work, it's a glass ceiling that we can't ignore. But now Axile starts calling his own number, and he throws up us back to 2020, 2021. And then if you are this man, if you're groove behind, I don't really know who calls the shot in terms of team management right there, but you might have to reconsider for a minute, because Axile came to play, and I'm, I'm looking forward to him here uh, in Chengdu. Yeah, I had Cloud9 making the playoffs at the Major, but I can't really explain to you why. Mm. You know, like... The, Fundamentals, like, the, the players are strong. Like, these are strong no, players. in theory, it, it, they should do it, but they never do, yeah, right? Yeah, but they're really inconsistent. And I mean, you could see it. I think that Inferno game versus Vitality is a really good microcosm of this Cloud9 lineup, right? Like, they did a lot of work in the gun rounds, right? But unfortunately, they lose both pistols. Then they lose a, an anti-eco, right? Yeah. Like, they lose to... Glocks, right? Everything falls apart. So they just can't put together like a good body of work, like a consistent body of work at a tournament where they can make like a, okay, I don't know if you consider quarterfinals a deep run, but you know, deeper than that, for I example. Mean, it's it's decent to make it for them in the playoffs at this stage, but it's just, you're looking for consistency. On the T side, you can probably have it because we know you can get away with not having an AWP sometimes in CS2 at the highest level. You can boomage space creating, and that's fine. But on the CT side, I mean, it's very easy. You look at Cloud9 and the, through the prism of his boomage, a good AWPer on said map. That's the equation. You insert the map in here, and then you see what they're capable of. Anubis is great, some other maps are catastrophe. And I absolutely hate this. The players oh, are switching it. the AWP between maps. We heard it from Perfecto we way back it. at the he end of 2023. He was like, yeah, man, I don't, I don't know what I can do. Do you I remember his to... face? Like, oh, he was, that was grimacing. Like, it was the most indirect way of saying, I hate my life right yeah. now. Yes, apparently I have to snipe. Is it good? He was like, Thank no. You, no. <laughs> it's it's be. I imagine that was the face Leah's had last night. But uh, yeah, I, I think the problem is also that they do have to be picking it up. Even sometimes on the T side. Yeah. Why? Because it's just such a different story for the opposing team when they know there's no wall, I right? Know, like I it know. changes the way you can game plan, the way you can react, just the danger of the op potentially being somewhere really changes the whole environment. Just get a real offer, man. God damn it, just do That'd it. Be great, are we gonna get it? ancient again? We are. Ancient. Are we gonna get ancient again? Oh my three God. Three times, not one, not two. Well, Spin oh, it three Chad times. and Alex are gonna love well, this. Perfecto, <laughs> oh boy, talking about AWP. He's the one sometimes Fun. eating it. Yeah, funny how FlyQuest doesn't let Anubis go through against Cloud9 in a best of one. Uh, how are we expecting... Just had to. <laughs> just had to mention it, didn't you? How are we expecting FlyQuest to be tackling this Ancient then? Obviously, we have quite a lot of tape on Cloud9, but uh, FlyQuest, you got, you got any questions? Mostly questions? Yeah, I have mostly questions, actually. Yeah, to be fair, uh, you were talking about Lias. would be a good moment for him to pop off. I Personally, I do think that Vexai is the biggest playmaker in that lineup and is the one that gets any sort of interest or excitement out of me whenever they're playing Counter-Strike. So hopefully that happens once again. But I, I think Cloud9 might be a bit of a too big of a bite. You know, they, they don't really fault. It was just this Katowice moment against Rebels where it had a slow start, but I went back, looked at the records. Generally, they start their events pretty well. I want to see Alistair do well in this game because Chad thinks he should be removed. Should we check in oh. with what Chad thinks about this game? Because we do have an Aussie on the mic for the Aussie boys. Alex and Chad, how are you feeling about this one? Uh, yeah. Where's that bus Yo. going? Yo. <laughs> Jesus, <laughs> Christmas, Yanko. Yeah, what's, are you cool, bro? I don't know why he's gone and done that. No, obviously, I hope the very best for them uh, in the most unbiased way possible. But Alex, I can't believe FlyQuest 
taking on Cloud9 best of five, qualifying for the mid-season invitation. Uh, they made it to MSI, yeah. inspired leadership as well. Good to see. And of course, Papa Smithy uh, taken to uh, to the interviews there to talk a little bit about what their leader has, has brought to the team. Oh, understandably so. Jensen, you know, just playing Jensen, some of Jensen, Meteos, High. Yeah, Masso on Varus. Of course. Yeah, but uh, look, let's see it what... It does sound like we're, we're about to do like a little legal edge. Look, who's going to control the mid lane? I don't know who's going to get the blow of the red buffs it's in this one. It's about rotations, Chad. Yeah. Um, from my understanding, I think it's all about the itemization on their carries. Who's getting the first scuttle crab? Uh, the scuttle, obviously, going to be a big contest. And vision control. Uh, course, you know, uh, lane swapping to maintain control. Into the jungle. I've never seen anything like You've it. You've got to keep your eye on into the jungle. But Boomage, this guy is like a young Alex Itch. That's a reference for some of you. Yeah, he home. was uh, he was even part of my Gambit. organization, Renegades, once upon a time. Was he? Yeah. Ah, oh, heard of those guys. Yeah. Okay. Well, we've come full circle because FlyQuest were Greyhound. So this is like the bo order. this is bottom lane, obviously. Okay. Pushing bot lane right now. Are they five, gonna five man are gank. They base checking the bush right now. I think they're going for a five man gank. He's using his uh, gank. Q. Double smoke actually. Okay. Next up, to receive. Okay, well, you've missed your first two opportunities. You are going to back away. Oh! Yeah, bell rung. Spam connects. Axar just stands like a statue, hoping not to catch another one. Lots of damage from FlyQuest here. It's this flash gun from Perfecto. It's going to be needed for the second phase of this fight. It's going to have to be one hell of a retake. you got the kit on Alistair. You could erect a boost, but it would be a bit... Flashwood, here comes the flash. Dexter one. Boomich dancing on the pillar. Good for another here. Can't find ins. Electronic is trapped. It's nice to see Perfecto bailing him out there. Oh, this post plant's working wonderfully for Cloud9. It's going to be Liaz on the clear. Hard clear. Now all onto Veg site. Hasn't even picked up the kit. And whoosh, Electronic was instantaneous on the conversion. Triple kill for Electronic. Liaz talking in the interview about how he's always admired the uh, the style of Electronic in and out of the game. Mm. Of course, stylish man. Stylish man. Man bags. I think about a bit of a roar there was Boomich. Yeah, but I mean, he made sure he'd won the round before he did it. Yeah, wow. Learned from G, didn't he? Understandably so. He really liked that stun. Stun? Can you stun in League or is that only Dota? I don't think so. There's no stuns in League? I mean, oh yeah, sure. Yeah, there's stuns. Okay. Oh, sorry, I was thinking about like stun grenades. I thought like, ah. yeah. Well, that's in the next update. Yeah. <laughs> this is a force buy and a fly Ooh. quest. That was quick. Boomish has got more available at his door. They have done a control pressure on A. That's Liaz's sight. He just might get a fright as the shadow is spotted. The molly lands and the bullets finish off the job. Uh, I've decided I hate the 5-7. You, you you, it was really good to me for a second. You decided that yeah. you hate the 5-7. Yeah, man. Just allow it. I'm, I'd rather just 50% of the time miss all my deagle shots. Okay. <laughs> yeah, fair enough. I'd rather do that. Fair enough. Where does the P... I never buy the P250. No, but it... So what's the point of it? Put some respect on its name. It's man, good. Actually. But you... I, I feel I'm like once you... I'm just buying the D. Yeah, but if you just mash your click as fast as possible and kind of pull down, sometimes it works out quite well. You get one dink with it. We playing a console game or something. Yeah. Mashing buttons. Just mashing my buttons, bro. But yeah, I'd rather just get a deagle and 50% of the time it works every time. Well, 100% of this round, they're trying to hunt. Yeah, and I think from my calculations, um, let me just cross two. Sorry, sorry. Yeah, by my calculations, they actually, um, they both, they both uh, get away with their lives. Are you sure? Alistair's been spotted. <gasps> oh. No, okay. I've crunched the numbers, bro. It's all fine. <laughs> all right. But you're right. They are fine. Everyone's fine. Fine and, and or dandy. Clean round. All five staying alive. Looking at Jive at Cloud9. Yeah, and looking to drive the CT side. I didn't quite understand. You know that, that FlyQuest tweet I read you today? Yeah, that was... I didn't quite get it. What was the... What I'm going to find what it. What was the angle they were going I'm for? I'm not yet? sure. They might need to really look at it because it... Yeah. Okay. We're going to have to have a word. No longer an underdog looking for their quest. Is that relation to they now have an org and it's oh. FlyQuest? Because they're still an underdog. And if their quest is getting hammered by Cloud9 on Ancient... Is it a play on words because of Greyhound being a dog? Oh, maybe. Uh, maybe they're smarter than we've ever been. Levels. 
All we've just made away as uh, Pumic has made away in towards the B bomb site. Um, yeah. Front site lurks smoke, looking a beaut as Axar. Yo! Well, that's a bit of a skull shatterer. That's what I'm doing with the D. Dirty from Inns. Unfortunately, he's lost his teammates in cave. That double up from Vexite and Dexter, a little empty handed. Well, hearing the rotation is Axar now. Yeah, that would have been nice there. Alistair goes down to Axar, just running him down. Oh, good molly spread as well. Forces Liaz into a more open angle. He's going to smoke on that. This is diligent stuff from Cloud9, despite the nice shot out of Inns. Does hand off his Deagle, so that's nice. But it would be a valid save. I mean, surely that's in their interest as well. Everyone's got cash for the next round anyway, and oh, Inns is not going to get away with that. Electronic there. Really boxing them in, aren't they? So punishing a Cloud9. A lot of these scenarios. A nice one there from Liaz. Got any more where that came from? Bam. What about... Alright, smell well. Well, Axel's back. Did you hear the news? Yeah, I heard, actually. He's uh, He gave an interview where he essentially just said, yeah, I've just been playing a lot of, lot of Counter-Strike and I can play again. Oh. Yeah, Isn't thanks. that easy? It's that easy. Just play Counter-Strike. Well, why haven't we been doing that? Why didn't he do that earlier? Yeah. What have you been doing? Yeah, like, professional Counter-Strike player. Like, oh, man, I just need to play. Oh, that's that shot from Inns. It was nice, wasn't it? Yeah. Ooh. Okay. First gun round. First real opportunity for FlyQuest to put up some resistance. You gotta watch out for uh, FlyQuest. They got that dog in them. Arr well, they had the dog in them. Now they've just got the quest in them. Where's that going, Axel? I haven't seen that one before. Is that the Deep Donut? Donutty. Oh, that's very cheeky. So, Deep Donut and CT. It's forced a rotation. It's already a nice opening. They're gonna have to blast through this B smoke, but they've. Been denied, so no HE to blow that one open. Have Good to be work. the reroute. Okay. Now the bomb's outside B doors as it was. Leas is actually ahead of that deep donut smoke, so he's calling mid clear. No nerves for the B players just yet. And they can rejig the defense, so plenty of time for FlyQuest. Oh, fight's oh. coming. Yeah, it's yeah. Knockdown, Vexite gets both. Save. Or will they? Perfecto with the round the world. Going into the next round, Hobbit has 1,800 left. Boomich has 1,800 left. Electronic has 1.3. The save would be the best option. Oh, uh, yeah. That's valid. Seeing if he can find himself an AK upgrade will be Axel. So there you go. Just going to park the bus. But good work from FlyQuest. Alistair hitting the opener. Vexite with the double kill over towards Cave. And, and some of the qualms, right? So for when they were Greyhound and they were trying to qualify for the major, the RMR, I think Dexter joining the team is a positive. But them not qualifying looks like it's a negative, right? Because oh, it's, without Dexter in the roster, they've been able to qualify in the last like sprees in majors yeah. and they've had no issues. But they would just go to the major and then they'd, like Yanko said, win one game and that'd be it. It wouldn't be too much to boast about. But the, the, I think the thing is... When you add Dexter to the team, he's going to come with all the European knowledge of Counter-Strike from his time in Maus and Fnatic, right? Which is much sure. better. He's going to teach them all these lessons, going to have all these protocols, all these different approaches to the game, which I think are all positive things. But to be in a pressure environment of them and having to qualify while you're learning this new style of Counter-Strike that Dexter wants you to play, some moments of doubt will creep in. For and sure. that is going to cost you in those games. Whereas before, they would have just played a bit more loosey-goosey CS, right? Alistair doing what he wants, popping off with the AWP. And there's less stress in that. Whereas I think if you're playing Dexter's system and you're worrying about how things are functioning and the game is getting close, you can see the wheels fall off. And I think that's what happened to them at the RMR. Because I think they will be better for this. Yeah, I mean, it's it's a full re reworking. And, oh, Alistair gets away with his life there. Tag through that thick concrete. He's gone for an audacious reclear, anticipating the dismount, or maybe overheard it. Next night. A lot of responsibility on Cave. You can see a little smattering of indecision. Doesn't want to be going down with his teammates erecting this boost. So instead, Cloud9 have poked their head through that smoke. Inns and Liaz responsible for middle. Good rear aggression it's a solid, from Vexite. Solid setup. Yeah, because this AWP oversight. It, look, it is risky if there's a cave play, so you, you can't stay in that setup for too long. Donut's about to get some action. And yeah, uh, Inns would have loved the kill there. And Electronic gets away with his life. Boom, it's some chip damage from the HE. And the rotation's been swift here. You've got to admire it. Liaz. Ooh. 
Vexite's gone. Liaz is Tip close towards Donut, yeah. They are dropping back. Oh, Electronic oh, has the rotation. Got the rotation. This is perfect calling, actually. Boom, it just sussed it out. Anticipates the full rotate, and they're just going to have to save. Yeah, this is going to just be a freebie bomb site. 25 seconds left on the clock. They don't know if anybody's hung around, of course. Wow. Really good work from Cloud9 there. They took themselves out of trouble. Yeah, Inz is going to be feeling a little bit hard done by playing that off angle. Yeah. Because, I mean, typically you, you're expecting to be overlooked, even in, in an environment like this. But a pretty solid uh, find from Electronic. Even flashing on the hunt, that shows you things are flowing well for Cloud9. You happy to give away at least, you know, another kill to remove everything from FlyQuest? Orb spotted now. Oh gosh, they're coming. You take this out of his hands, huge success. Yeah, oh, Alistair's getting pressed. Missed his first shot onto the Hobbit fight. Nails the second, a beautiful yeah, pixel shot. And ooh, gets away from Perfecto. That should be a saved orb. Alistair, done enough to keep hold of his signature weapon. And understandably, Boomich hyping up his troops because that is a solid T-Hall already. And a nice recovery after uh, what looked like FlyQuest with a bit of an opportunity. They can buy again, so saved Orb and Back. there's ability for Alistair to drop. Everybody can get M4, should be enough utility to go into the next round of play. So round number six, can FlyQuest... And all the audio I went. Did I yours go off as yeah, well? Yeah, I did. Okay, it wasn't just me then. All right. We're into A. Sorry about that. Sorry, everybody. They might have heard us the whole time. They but... may have. Just hearing me say hello into the <laughs> void. <laughs> yeah. Hello? Wait, Alistair, hello? Oh. Oh. I'm... And ends will clear. <laughs> 2v2. Bomb ticking. Bomb's about half gone on this retake. Axile's orping. Perfecto's orping. Okay, they're, they're taking the mickey, aren't they? Oh, they can hear us breathing. Who said that? I can hear, look, I can hear the ambient sound. So I, maybe the people at home have been able to hear us oh, this, this whole, whole time. time. Yeah, well, we have, well, we, we had no sound. So we're back now. Okay. But you know what? Sorry for the nose No, breathing. I'm going to dob some people in. Yeah. There are people just outside our little casting closet moving chairs around and stuff. You got to be careful with the cableage. Yeah, you know, there is some cableage around here. Be careful with the cableage. It's perfectly fine for the first uh, two ancients of the day. This yeah, is so our third ancient. It ain't us. No. Now, I don't know if you could hear us. You ever had a tea egg, Chad? No, I can't say I have. Oh. They're available for breakfast if you're ever interested. I'm having those pan fried dumplings. They are good. They're real good. Mm. Six to one in a moment's time. Liaz, unless he wins a one on five situation with Alex's favorite pistol, the 5 7. Sometimes it feels so good. And sometimes I just feel like I'm not... Can't aim with it. There's the first. Yeah, okay. Lias. He's fed up. A dink and dead. Electronic in he the dirt. This. He wins this. He's going to find at least one more. There yes. It is. There it is. And that's an AK-47. But Yoink. they've all left the bomb. They've all left the bomb out. He's gonna, oh, oh, the gone the wrong way. There's a gap. He's on the defuse. Oh. Maybe, actually. 
not the defuse, but um, maybe he actually gets away with a rifle. I don't think they're going to be too desperate to hunt him. Then the money's a little bit fragile. Actually, I was just considering going back towards the bomb, but I think he's been called off. And now spotted out on the retreat. Oh, he's done it. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. We'll give him the AK. An AK-47 for young Lias. I've been calling him young for about seven years now. It's probably not. So he was in the semi-final of a major back in Berlin 2019, That's alongside right. the Hundred right. Thieves roster, which included Azza, JKS, Jacob, and Gratis Faction. These days, the young guy on the team is Vexite. Yeah, just 19 years of age. Okay, well, the first tactical timeout has been called from FlyQuest, an opportunity for one of their ex-teammates, or at least for some of them, Urcast to get on the microphone. Contact cam was cool. And of course, we will see the buy to follow.
Also a top B ramp smoke, so we saw something similar out of Furia in the previous matchup. It is all ancient all day on the A stream. Welcome to the ancient. It's A for ancient. 24-7 channel. We like it green, we like it mean. We like it ambiguously Portuguese. Very deep door smoke, isn't it? Yeah, and at one minute with them already having Vexite out late, and it's not going to achieve too much. I do like the call though from FlyQuest, right? You could just uh, apply a few threats, allow the CTs to limp through their utility, knowing in the first gun round and you're buying on the third, it's going to be light on, and now they contact in towards B. Yeah, good angle from Hobbit. They're lined up. Yeah, nearly gets both of them with the one magazine. Instead, the Molly will force him back. This is the perfect angle. Boomich will collect onto Liaz. They've got a nice crossfire established. Inns, though. <gasps> One, two. Inns has done enough to make a round out of this. Fly quest, that it's on. Like Donkey Kong. Good flash. Vexite barreling towards them. Gets them both with the Mac 10. Massive from Fly Quest. What a turnaround. I thought they'd done enough. Comms are flowing, right? The fact that they're setting themselves up with flash like that, they're staying on the harass. And those are the two individuals of this team, Inns and Vexite. I'm actually getting himself up to 10 now, but th those are the two that you want to be seeing. See Axel's uh, fake howl he's made? Like, do-it-yourself do howl? Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's creative. It's cool. He's kind of done a bit like yeah. a kind of uh, DIY jobby. Rip off, but um, oh, no one will know. Go on. Squint at range, and yeah, you couldn't tell. He's got howl energy. Nice, guys. Yeah. Staying calm, and also... Wow. Just going through the paces, going through the motions. This would be a huge win in the camp, considering the woes. And, and we have a few teams here who had the woes and not making it to the major. Astralis, Liquid, FlyQuest. The beauty of that, as an, as an example of I when love when I just to FlyQuest on the same floor as Astralis and Liquid. <laughs> yeah, of course. <laughs> Sorry, Alex. but when when to um, when to bait your team? Inns gets that double mm. because Liaz pushed the smoke and he didn't try and swing for a trade. He gave it a couple of seconds and then caught them with their backs turned. I think that's always interesting of knowing when you want to get the right spacing and when you want to be baiting. And I guess that's just a perception thing. He nailed it this time. Inns 14 francs, top of the table. And now... There's only two players here. This oh, Molly we saw the Molly. other day. Yeah, it's going to work. It's If he's lined it up right. Yeah. Well... Yeah, you have to Turn find it. Oh, he still gets a frag. Surely that's it. Yeah. Silence M4 is doing work for Vexite and Inns. The squelch of a we'll, good headshot. We'll call this a double digi. Ten rounds. Oh, but it's a bit of a gamer, though. Picks himself up the howl and gets away. This is a tough comeback for Cloud9. It is getting awkward now, isn't it? I feel that it might even be too little too late. Have I told you my um, prediction for who's going to win the whole the whole thing? Who is it? Flirts Pro. Not a bad prediction at yeah, all. that's what I'm saying. Hop anyway. It. Here we go. Hop, no. Flogged. Keep Staying it up. calm they as are. well. They're, they're not they're just not you know, popping it. off. Exactly. I think they would certainly l allow themselves a, a mild celebration of oh, they win, conversion. For sure. But that's it. That's an if, you know, and that, not, or a when. But this is great. This is comprehensive Counter-Strike. It seems that way, you know. It's great to see that the Dexter marinade has, has start to take shape. It takes a while. That's the thing. It's yeah. an overnighter. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. It's not just hours. a 20 minute job. Yeah. Couple of reps. Looking very nice for FlyQuest here. And a best of one, but up against a real contend team in Cloud9. Now it's Perfecto's Orp. We know it's not always his favorite weapon to use, but he has whipped out the gun gear. And he's uh, smoked off for now. Oh, Ali nailed it. With the clear of the smoke in combination, takes down Electronic Boom, which has to be proactive. He's having a bit of a quiet game, is Boom. And Vexite's back is going to be turned. Perfect! Oh! oh. oh. has got some boost, dude! The flash from Dexter! Oh, wow. That was spicy. I would love to see that again. They're singing. That's 11. Yeah, dude. That's you think crazy. They're going to say, let the hounds off the leash. I know they're not in the org anymore, but let them bark. <laughs> let them chase. Let them try and take everything away. The bomb can make its way into the site. Vexite planting. Bomb site secure. Map already cottoned off with certain rotation points as we have Alistair making sure nobody pushes out main. It looks like Inz is going to join him to probably push in with the rifle. Dexter can work through Donut. 
Liaz can make his way down towards CT spawn, so they should have a look to take away some of these rifles. They've got the cash to do so. In fact, there's box. Oh, they're gonna get him. Box, box, box. There we go. There's a bit of fire in the belly, and that's a huge round. He's right. They have nothing at all. They have to take the like partial investment right now, and then it'll be 12 to 6. You just a great little like, combo. Yeah. This is huge, isn't it? Oh, fudge. I missed it again. <laughs> it was just as specky as you'd imagine. It was. Okay, cool. Leah's not even aware of the push. He just grabs the player deep into the site. That's how good the flash was. Dex's flash assist is going to be through the roof. Cloud9. Having a bit of a stinker. Alarming. It is alarming. How long has it been since they had a round, dude? This has been a run. Yeah. <laughs> it was 6 1. It was 6 1. It all the way to 11 6. Row. Good Damn. grief. And good CS that's being played. Definitely. You know, I mean, sure, you can frame it as Cloud9 having some struggles, but I really think it's much more FlyQuest just having a solid day in the office. Everyone's doing their jobs. It seems like the game plan is working. Everyone uh, delivering equally. Yeah, they're not just rushing into rounds either. There's no. always a, there's always some form of teamwork, some team element. Liaz having a specky one there. Will they keep it clean? Will they keep Cloud9 out? Because, I mean, you give them an inch, they will start to try and take the mile. Deep elbow smoke from Cloud9, so some unforced errors as far as the util for map control is concerned. Okay, so now they know that mid is there. It's jump spot, or at least they can assume. Smoke. Red. Quite spread out, a Cloud9. And this is a round to FlyQuest cannot afford to fumble. They have to be diligent. They know there's a lot of chances for some hijinks in these kind of rounds. If they return to AMA and it's electronic up close with the MP9. He's going to need to at least get one kill to make this interesting. Gotta be expecting this. You haven't had anyone in there. Make sure you're clearing this with the rifle. It's like it's dead. Trade. Oh, no! He nearly gets three. Dexter just about gets away with his life. Two and a half players remaining for FlyQuest. What can you do with this? They dump you till they're... Ah, this is nice. This is very nice. Using Vexite as a bit of a scout. Boomich gets away with his life, albeit only hanging on by a thread. 30 seconds. Yeah, they are bringing the bomb back. This can definitely go wrong here. Cloud9, by virtue of electronics, magnificent MP9 work. Oh, clean with it. There's one more. 20 seconds. It's going to be very fine. Really down to the wire here. I guess they might have done enough. They're using their util as well. 10 seconds, lads. Hard shots to hit. 5-7 goes nowhere. Vexai doing a lot here. Down he goes, but just enough time. Finds another with the flames. Alistair has at least contributed with the flame. Can he finish with the orb? It's only Perfecto with a P250. Seems like FlyQuest, although down to the wire, have done enough to secure the 12th. I'm sure that was not an easy round to watch for Urkast. That is probably one of the more impressive rounds that they've won, considering the circumstances of Electronic. He did so much damage with that MP9. Double, almost the triple onto Dexter. Then, Vexite takes the space confidently, knowing it's still up against a lighter buy. Gets a couple of kills, or gets the kill and the space in towards the side. That's huge. This is the type of round, you know how you were talking about the what ifs, the games were closed yeah. and it all yeah, falls apart. Right. Those are the rounds that they traditionally lose, the wheels fall off, the comeback happens, and then they have the gut wrenching moment. They are just one round away from upsetting Cloud9 in the opener. This could be huge. And it's Dexter just leading by example. Beheads Perfecto in cave. Straight through the smoke for another Dexter. Destroys. He's always been. One hell of a fragging in-game leader. He's delivered t today in calls and in frags. The bomb going A. Liaz will trade. Takes down Electronic. And there's nothing left for Hobbit and Axile. Dax is even going to flank him up. He's even going to try and throw the final blow. 18 frags and counting from Dexter. And they've got themselves completely lost. He's going to find Hobbit. He was just looking for answers there. Hang on a second. I'm getting a bit... A little bit confused. The bomb's left A. If they just group up and finish together, the yeah. round should be done. They don't need to overcook this. It has gotten somewhat interesting. Now it is a two-on-three situation. Kits, nades, present for Cloud9 to hold on to their honor. The bomb coming back. Hobbit to clear B. Might find a timing on Vexite. 
Twisting up. Backside. Will he give it a look in? Oh. And it comes down to timing Ooh, completely. Oh, he has just averted his gaze so hard. You get the first for free. Bomb down on A. Wins has a smoke. They could just lob that out. He's going to block CT, actually. He handed that to Liaz, who even has another. Surely Hobbit's lost this. Yeah, well, two smokes. Nade right down his throat. 40 HP. Nade in the smoke, but a second Blooms takes his place. That's lovely timing from Liaz. And it seems that FlyQuest may have done enough. Not tripping up, not stumbling, and running to take the win in the best of one. What a hell of a comeback. 12 rounds on the run, on the drop consecutive fashion and big smiles on the faces because the type of counter strike they played is something they should be proud of it wasn't just individual moments it was comprehensive team counter strike they were playing off of one another they were playing a system based game now with dexter in the team enough time to get things working a huge victory and now an opportunity in a best of three to lock themselves into the playoffs against wildcard or virtus pro tomorrow Ooh, sign me up. Sounds somewhat doable, especially Sounds if they play like they did today. It was steady Counter-Strike. It wasn't just pacey. It wasn't gimmicky. They weren't just trying to, you know, okay, we're going to do a fast play here, then hope they stack it in the next round. It was quite default heavy. And the fact that they brought it back from the hole that they were in, right? It was 6-1 down at the start of the game, a pistol loss. Class Counter-Strike. Yeah, and it's, you know, uh, it's testament to the development that they've been undergoing. You've also had the kind of this uprooting, you know, losing your org, having to kind of get all of the logistics sorted out for that, but showing up here in Chengdu and showing out, you know, really impressing in their uh, first look or our first look of them here at Intel Extreme Masters. Cloud9, I think, you know, probably qu quite the opposite uh, in our framing there. That did look like... The players of the majors. Yeah, exactly. Just how quickly that, that seems to have gone awry. Yeah, it didn't feel like they came today ready to tussle with FlyQuest who were prepped and ready. Yeah, still recoiling as well from the absence of an orping presence. I'm sure you're all sick of hearing about it, but it is the only team that comes into these events consistently competing without a dedicated orp. But Perfecto didn't look comfortable. I don't think I, I saw a single orp frag from Perfecto. Gave it a couple of goes. Well, that's the thing, right? That's the conversation that will never end and one that will always crop up in losses, right? In the wins, you go, oh, well, they made it work again. Yeah, boom and John over, but... This is the thing for the team. If they just made a top eight at the major, now they come here. We're, well, hold up. Never mind. We'll talk about that. The desk can do that. We've got Heku with an interview. I have Dexter by my side. I'm just happy that this is not a major because then, like, my pickums would, you know, like, the, after it pickums, it would be fully ruined. You had 12 rounds in a row. It's like, did you have, like, I mean, I see a lot of papers. Like, did everything go according to plan? Yeah, we're just like printing papers with like lots of stuff on them to like just get in their heads, yeah. To get in their heads, yeah. but I mean, probably that's not only about the mind game, there's probably something more there, right? Uh, there's stuff there. We were, we were well prepared when we came in and we did a good job. You definitely did a good job. Like the things that maybe like Leas was doing yesterday absolutely was not shown today on the server. You were absolutely amazing. Like, is this also maybe in a way a bit of a surprise for you? Um, I'm not sure because we've we've only played Australian teams, so I, I guess so because we've had probably like yeah not so great practice. But uh, I think overall we we came out really strong mentally, so that was really nice to see. But that means like that your next series is going to be a uh, best of three. Who do you think you might get to play? Uh, and if you're prepared, likely Virtus Pro, mm -hmm. and uh, prepared probably like. Tactically, right now, we, there's a lot to do, but um, I'm just excited to play. That's all. Sounds good. Thank you very much, Dexter. Thank you. Preparations clearly paying off for this first best of one. 12 rounds in a row. Despite Cloud9 starting off 6-1 up, that was it. Dead in the water after that moment. I just, can someone let Dexter know they won? Like, I don't want to, I, I wonder what the interview would have been like if they lost. Like, she didn't seem like excited or was like, yeah, we won. And he had nice. quite a lot to be smiling about because not only some great calling, obviously, coming out of him, individual form as oh well. He was tearing it up. Yeah, that was really fantastic from Dexter. And it, and it started in the comeback on the CT side where he was one of the players being involved in like retaking B ramp and being in their faces. But the last round, what we saw as a highlight, his double entry onto the side, like that's the biggest statement you can have. Listen, I'm in your head. I'm better than you. I don't give a it's who you are. I can shoot you in the face. This was great from Dexter. And I appreciate Chad making the mention at the cast as well. Very comprehensive Counter-Strike, how they played with them on their team. Just 
let Cloud9 be confused, let Cloud9 stew in their own mold, not knowing what to do, not knowing where to be, where to gamble, where to stack. You could definitely see FlyQuest were in the driving seat, and honestly, little slow clap, golf clap for that T side for FlyQuest, very impressive. Yeah, I think also what he was talking about, right? Like it's a bit tough for them to practice because they get to play only Australian teams at the moment, but you know, that doesn't have to necessarily affect your theory or you know, when it comes to your strategies and game planning and, and all that sort of a thing. Obviously the level of opposition isn't great, but you can still try to piece, piece things together. And I think here we saw how it looks like when everything goes according to plan. Yeah, particularly if you're watching your opponents and there was a hell of a lot of tape to go off of from Cloud9. And once again, get your bingo cards out because I'm going to mention the AWP. Um, we even saw a double AWP at some times coming out early stages. Yeah, I don't want to talk about out, it. Matthew. I don't want to talk Let's about it. Let's get rid of that. Um, I, I, that wasn't the only hole though, right? There was a lot of other things going wrong for C9 in this map. Yeah, definitely. Uh, mostly on the CT side, right? If they want to mess around and have double AWP on the T side when they're winning, listen, I'm not going to be the Grinch. Like, cool, you can have one. Like, have a good round. That's, that's good uh, sort of material for media and we can have fun about it, we can troll about it. But the CT side, there's an actual, there's a harsh truth to it. Like you need at some point to have an AWP being able to put down Vex site when he's lurking on the A side, to put down Dexter, Dexter right up when he aggresses you on the B ramp. So they don't have it. And the Perfecto tried a couple times. He, he even tried to be aggressive towards middle, but this is where FlyQuest were extremely ready. They had the nade into the smoke, Alistair picks into it, finds Electronic immediately, and then Perfecto is left alone. And guess what? He's not an AWPer. So you can put him on the line, and if he's waiting for the guy, he can get the shot. But when things get messy, that's where you have to rely on like sort of subconscious reactions. He doesn't have it as an opera. He's a little bit lost, and that's normal, and that's problematic. Maybe have to throw Axel's name into the ring. Obviously not just one player's fault, but this uh, wasn't this one great. I, I know we have we were talking, picking him up like he had a good major. He's back finally. Yeah, and he's then, back. And <laughs> yeah, he's back. <laughs> yeah. Back at the bottom. Yeah, I, I, I think obviously problematic. But this is Cloud9. This is just who Cloud9 are. They are reliably unreliable, you know, you, you can't count on them, except for the fact you can count on them being uncountable. That's exactly what See? I needed to hear, especially with the amount of jet lag in this brain. <laughs> um, for FlyQuest though, moving on forward, obviously we heard uh, Dexter saying they think they're probably going to be playing VP, they'll be playing the winner of uh, the game going on the B stream at the moment versus wild, uh, Wildcard. Do you see them as having the potential to actually make this run and make it through top of the group? We'll see, you know, VP is tough because of their play style as well. It puts a lot of strain on all the players, right? Like all your guys need to be in the zone. They need to be uh, focused. And VP was, you know, okay. a couple of, you know, one small tech issue away from making the playoffs of the major. So I think they're definitely looking for some redemption, vindication, really, and, and showing what they're capable yeah, of. Yeah, that's happening right here. We have a live update from the B stream as well. 6-0 up for VP. Obviously, a lot of hunger. Um, and that's obviously a, a, a prism through which you can look at this event as well. VP probably very hungry after what happened in Copenhagen. Uh, Cloud9 a little bit sleepy-ish. Whereas FlyQuest, you missed the major. You're close. You're only two hours away. Time zone. The jet lag is for you once. You know, use it. Use it. Maybe we'll live. I love how we never accept that in Europe when teams come to us. But when we move over we to the other side, I we accept go, it. yeah, this it's is. Just, it's just Jason gets flustered about <laughs> it. But I accept it. I got no problem with it. Should we move onwards and upwards and to our final best of one, opening things up on the A stream? Because Yanko, we've got quite the treat, don't we? Who's coming up next? Till Helmet. Let's go. They're going to be taking on Astralis after this. Hello to our viewers out there, Mike Loder here from the Ticker Studio, today with your weather across the country. Brizzy is looking warm at 31 degrees with a chance of afternoon showers, so keep those brollies on hand. Turning our attention to Melbourne now, where it is looking cloudy with a chance of... Counter-Strike? Chris three flick, oh, oh they're making one by one, sex, no way! He wants to... Oh, my God. Oh, he does it! Smokes, let's see a double smokes in the same place there, simple, just jumping casually into the side. Wait, 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 what, 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 what was that? Never miss a play again. Simple, it's not allowed, this is not FPL, this is a major. Finally. With Face It Watch, you're in control. Switch between player POVs live and see the game through the eyes of any pro. 
Never miss a moment with replays. Relive each highlight on demand from all angles. Watch it, control it, face it. After the absolute catastrophe of Astralis failing to make it to the first ever CS2 Major on home soil at that, their redemption arc starts here in Chengdu. Brand new captain at the helm, as Device is going to be taking the reins against probably one of the most unsuspecting opponents, quite literally, because these guys subbed in for Monty late yesterday. Unfortunately, there were some visa issues there, but Steel Helmet. Who the hell are these guys, Janko? Yeah, still helmet. A couple of names that you might uh, recognize are Captain Mo and DD uh, from the old Tyloo days, attacker who is the coach of the team now. And then there's a couple of newer players uh, in there for them. And yeah, obviously, I mean, they've been playing some qualifiers, haven't found success in any of them. I mean, they played the close qualifier for this event in November last year. Uh, they lost to Tyloo. They got smacked around really in that game. So yeah, I think just finding a, a spot as a stand-in and, and really I think the expectations are pretty low here for Steel Helmet. That sounds like an accurate statement, Yenko. And the fact that a bit of a nostalgia here, seeing DD, Captain Mo play around, feels like it's my generation. Uh, obviously, their biggest asset here being the location. Close by, ready to jump in, you know, uh, tag me in, coach. And here they are playing I Am Chongdu. 
It's kind of crazy. I'm just looking back through some of their match history, obviously, you know, not qualifying for uh, the, the upper echelons of Counter-Strike. And it's been a minute since they've even had the opportunity to play against anybody outside their region. So surely you're going to be taking the ball by the horns here, at least for not just experience. You get to play up against Astralis. Like, that's pretty cool to be testing your squad against them. Yeah, absolutely. You know, and you get to play them in a best of one, two, to open up the tournament, right? Perhaps you get a hot hand, something along those lines. We, we've seen crazy things from, you you know, the likes of Captain Mo and, and DD before, so do they have one more trick up their sleeve? And there's a lot to be excited about. I'm just going to give a shout out to production. That lower third is right there. Device IGL in six minutes. I like the little detail. We haven't seen it happen like yet, have we? Detail. It's wild. Okay, um, can I have a take from you guys? When you heard that Device was going to become the IGL, what were your honest thoughts? What did you actually think? Hated it. Straight up. Uh, listen, no, it's separate, separate. From an individual perspective, I think he was too good to make that transition now. I know the last few weeks have been co uh, complicated with the Astralis, with the guys and all, the Yabby Stabby, all of that. I don't care. I think individually he was too good, but the other side of the coin is he just extended his professional career for five years, if that worked, at the very minimum. How rare of a currency it is to have a good leader who can you can trust in, that can rally the troops and be good at the game. If that works for Device, he can play Counter-Strike to the 65. Nobody pushes him away from Astralis. That's just a fact. <laughs> 65 now. No, I didn't like it either. I don't think the timing is good because, you know, they had a team that was built to win now and sure things didn't work out with blame and they benched him. But, you know, it's going to take time for Device to really grow into this role. So the fact that Astralis is willing to, to give him that time and to do that, do that tells you a lot about the confidence they have in him and probably in the long term. Yeah. Uh, success of this roster. It's just about changing every six or nine months, changing enough so you gain a grace period of six or nine months. <laughs> as long as you keep changing, you can never fail because you're always going towards somewhere great. And with the change up of device moving into the new captain role, uh, might have overshadowed the actual new arrival to the team. Uh, that is Bro coming from the Monty squad. So let's hear from him ahead of his debut. I have Bro here by my side. Your last HLTV game was on Monte against Astralis and right now you are on Astralis and do you feel disappointed that you'll actually not get to play against your previous teammates? I mean, it kind of feels like I dodged a bullet uh, mm. getting into Astralis and uh, getting with these good guys. Um, but of course, I feel bad for my previous teammates that they were not able to get here in time. Mm -hmm. Well, previously you played an international team where you had to communicate in English. Now it's a fully Danish stack. Is it like way more comfortable for you to actually play with this lineup? I mean, the process of developing the team feel has been way shorter. Um, I feel we've been getting months of work in just one month uh, compared to Monte, uh, which is nice, but also uh, a bit uh, of a relief um, in terms of the stress levels. Mm -hmm. Well, definitely there was a lot of changes for you, but also there have been a lot of changes for your now in-game leader device. How do you think, how is he adjusting to his like, new role? I mean, he sets like the frame for the team is pretty clear and he's a very good leader. And of course, all of us trust him uh, with his past experience. Um, so I think it's a good spot for him to be in. And uh, it's also, it has come to him very naturally. Mm -hmm. And considering that he is like both like right now IGLing and OPing, there might be situations when he's like holding an angle. Is there someone that he's like maybe like sharing the responsibilities of like taking decisions or making the calls? I mean, we make sure that we each take a lot of responsibility so it doesn't feel as heavy for him. Mm -hmm. Of course, it differs from map to map um, on which positions we have. But uh, overall, he is the main voice, but all of us are vocal in the way that we will have a good enough balance for him to still have focus on his game. All right then, thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, there's a few things I want to dive into there. First of all, I want to get your take on Bro joining Astralis. Did you expect this to be the man coming in as a fifth? I did not expect Bro uh, to be the answer that Astralis was looking for, but I will say I'm, I'm happy about this change in isolation. I think they missed the mark, they fumbled the back, letting Bro go. He was in Astralis jersey, he was in the talent team for quite a while. He went on to Monty and then there showed the whole world what he could do as like a filler. He's a very selfless player. He doesn't really need a whole lot of resources. His input was great in Monty. So for that, nice sign. They need that. If he can provide that to Astralis, why not? I'm, I'm up cool with it. Exactly the player you need with Stone and Yabby on the team, right? And I think now we'll also get to see, okay, 
will these guys actually step up and perform, right? First, it was the problem in Heroic, they come to Astralis, then Blame was the problem, like the, some roles were overlapping positions, they had to change stuff. Okay, now you have everything you wanted, really. So now it's time to, you know, stop yapping and start delivering. And I don't think this particular game matters all too much because of the opponent that they have ahead of them. But in this tournament, you know, we're going to get the first glimpse into the device era in Astralis, right? And his captaincy and what sort of Counter-Strike are they going to play? What are we going to see out of Yabi and Stone individually, right? Like, are they going to be able to take that next step and really lead this team in terms of individual performance right into an, another successful era. And you mentioned Stone, and I'm really interested to see now that BlameF is gone, and obviously the power has shifted towards Device, that also leaves a little bit more space for other people to step in. Mm -hmm. And I'm not going to let Stone off the hook for what he did with this previous roster of Astralis. That was a failure on all accounts for a superstar like him. But I do wonder if now, with Device, he could not have a bigger, louder voice to put himself into of these positions. Because we've been far from the A-grade performance of Stone that we were hoping to see in the jersey new opportunity now. That's exactly what I wanted to touch upon that Heku was trying to borrow about, right? He was saying, you know, there's more uh, room for people to be chiming in and helping Device get used to this position. To it, you feel like that Stan is kind of the perfect candidate for doing that? Because we knew he did it with Kadian, right? I think he has to be the number one player besides Device doing it. Like, he has to not only call his own number, and I think when you're a strong player, it's your responsibility to find ways for you to be performing while it makes sense for the team. But that's something you do hand in hand with your leader. You say, listen, these are the positions I want to be in. These are the situations I can be good in, let's create something together that fix and works for the team and for myself. I don't think he did that with Blame at the helm because we know Blame also was putting a lot of resources to him. Now there is a chance, but it comes with responsibility. How much freedom do you think they will be able to, you know, take hold of and potentially, you know, exploit now that we don't have Blame F? We know he was a, a leader that had liked to have quite a lot of control. Do you expect this to be a more free-flowing Astralis? Do you feel like that's Device's vibe? I hope so. You know, it has to always be a combination of default style and giving your players freedom and having some things in your back pocket, right, yeah. to change momentum or to take not another ancient. Yeah, Come yeah. on, oh, man. We're Please. If we get another <laughs> six, six, half, I'm out. All those. Is that helmet. because of the bamboos? Like, is that because of the bamboos we have on the desk? Like, are we priming people? Like, mentally priming people to play ancient? Every time they walk past the desk, I'm, I'm like, cut yeah, these pants actually. down. <laughs> I'm gonna cut these pants down no, real we soon. Like the no, no, about that. Actually. But we're getting bamboozled over ah, here. Good one. Um, how many rounds? Would Steel Helmets get to say this is Still a helmet. good result? Sorry, Steel Helmet, there's one helmet. One helmet. Collective it's, big helmet. It's a big umbrella. How many rounds is a net positive for them? How many rounds do they need to get versus Astralis? What kind of game are we playing now? Like, okay. what, what kind of rounds would the loss be a win? Is that what you're asking me? <laughs> exactly, like, yeah. Uh, I don't know, just eight. Eight, eight would be, okay, a loss would be a win. So, took but, the number straight out of my brain. It's just like I in your brain. The nine. Then. Should we check in with Bob to see what he thinks? He's been quite quiet hey, recently. Robert, he he hasn't, had, hasn't had much to cheer about, has he? No, maybe this is your opportunity. Um, How likely do you think? I, I, I think when we look at this Astralis, right, this is the opportunity for them to be showing uh, exactly... Oh, you distracted me now. Oh, I just wanted to so boop cute, his nose. It's like intrusive thoughts. Just boop his nose. <laughs> I mean, for Astralis, I'm... Oh, I'm struggling. I'm struggling between two camps. One is the disappointment of not making it out of the RMR. Like they need to be showing improvements from that. But are we giving them the excuse of the time now coming in with this new leader? Are we kind of back to, to square one with the project? Yeah, but I think it's also like there's a lot of responsibility on Raga now too, because when you have a player that's just coming into the in-game leader role, you know, there's a lot of work there that needs to be done. Like, there's a lot of teaching that you need to do to go over things with him, help him, like, with his procedures in terms of preparing for the opponents. How do you schedule practice? How What do you do in practice? All that sort of a thing. And listen, you know, how surprised are you that Device is the in-game leader? If someone told you six months ago the Astralis coach in-game leader do is going to be Raga Astralis, or Raga Device, you'd be like, what the hell are you talking about? Like, how is that ever going to, to transpire? But here we are, and I think this is the opportunity of a lifetime for him to really you know, show some results. I mean, ending up in Astralis for Raga after his path, why not? You know, that just worked out apparently. The stars just aligned for him, no pun intended. You talk about transition to IGL, uh, there's also a case to be made about like 
mental resilience. Hey, we have a couple of nice little highlights of device punching monitors. It's happened in the past, it's happened a couple of times, and Apex for Vitality, for example, was a pair that went from playing to leader, had to put that in check a little bit. Let's not pretend We're working like... Working on that. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's a work in progress. It's a work in progress, but let's not pretend like it's not an issue. When you're a leader, and Device was very open about it in interviews, he said, I was frustrated with how we played Counter-Strike. I let nerves get to myself. I let emotions get to myself. There's, there's no place for doing that as a leader. Like, if you do, it's just the ship goes down. Like, it's over. Yeah, and I think also it has to be opping while in gaming, like, let's see what his individual level is going to be like. There's been a, a few guys who are who were able to do it and are doing it right now. You know, you have Jane, you have Kadian. Obviously, before you had Fallen, who was the highest ranked in-game leader on HLTV Top 20, being number two uh, in 2016, I, I believe it was. So, yeah, like, it only takes a split second of someone to ask you something or draw your attention away from your crosshair, and, and that can be enough. How hard of a feat, like just to contextualize it for people at home who, you know, haven't had experience of actually being in teams, to be switching into this role after being just the AWPA for such a long period of time. I think I'm looking at Device and going, surely he has the experience required, but it's still a really tough feat to be doing, right? Yeah, and especially because he's a pure sniper. Mm. And that to me is, is a role where your attention has to be so much so on your crosshair in key moments that being an IGL means you have to be able to sort of dissociate a little bit and then hold on your angle and then also think about what's going to be the next step. When am I going to call my teammates? When am I going to take the time, my attention away? Leaders that we talk about, the Cadian, the Fallen, the Jame, they've kind of grown up with it. And they, their brain, I don't want to get scientific about it, but they learn how to do it as more efficiently as possible. When you suddenly jump into this role, there's going to be moments we are going to see device miss shots. And I guarantee when that happens, he might be looking at his radar. Because suddenly you have to zoom out of your POV and you have to micromanage just a little bit. Sure, you rely on your teammates being able to do that. There's going to be frustrating moments and that's why we're looking at his individual level. All players that did that switch, had a dip of performance. Let's see for the vice. Understandably so. Uh, Astralis just winning the knife to decide which side they want to start on. And I mean, for Ancient, uh, no them and Ancient, um, it, it, it makes sense that uh, they would want to be going to this ground with the, the old roster, but do you think there's going to be a lot of switch ups with, with all the changes coming in? Do you think it's still going to be a strong map for them? Yeah, it's, I, I believe so. And I just want to see from this map, you know, some good protocols from Astralis, right? Like, I want to see that they have the basics down, the foundations uh, down, and I, I think that would be a good sign because I don't think Steel Helmet can really challenge them here. Yeah, I, I agree with you. I think we have to be a little patient with testing what this Astralis is made of. We would all like to be now. We would like to test them now, but we might have to a little bit. Uh, no, we can test them right right now. All right. Uh, versus Steel Helmet, of course, a slightly surprising opponent to be coming into their first challenge at I Am Chengdu 2024. Chad and Alex, take it away for the fourth time on Ancient. <laughs> what do you call it when you get four Machine, in the same it's map? Ancient. It's all the time, it's ancient every day, every day, over and over again until the end of time, ancient machine. This is our Groundhog Day, Chad. On the left side of your screens, on the T side is Steel Helmet. And on the right side is Astralis. Somewhat of a mismatch, but some legendary names and some legendary haircuts. Let's get this one going. As they look to be starting with a bit of a BX sec. A good old simple, short, long, and a flash lined up by Stair. Is this going to be used to disrupt the swing? Oh, it might be late. Oh, yes. Down's forced away by the util, but they don't clear the cubby. Oh, only the one. Stair keeps Astralis in the advantage. It's good work from Stair. 18 by M. We need to work out what we're calling him. ASL? ASL, exactly. 18, 18 young yeah. man. 18 year old young man. Mandarin. Mandarin. Mandarin out of the round as Captain Mo. He's got a clutch in him. 34 years young, Alex. 34 years yeah. young. A spring Age chicken. Age is nothing but a number, bro. Yeah, Matthew goes... Oh, uh, bro. Yeah. yeah. Well, he's in the server too. Yeah, he is. Yeah, Matthew was talking about of uh, his generation. I used to play against Captain Mo and DD a lot back in the day. I will not sing the song. I will not sing the song. I will not sing the song. Round one, I haven't sang the song. So that's a good start. Charlotte's are going to own this map. Yeah. I believe it, I believe it. I was married a long time ago. Where did you come from? Where did you go? Where did you come from, Captain Nigel? Well, no, obviously Captain Mo. Oh, come sorry. on, mate. Sorry, sorry. That was Jesus a layup. Jesus Christ, it was a proper layup. Yanko wants to see protocols. I want to see on the T side of Astralis, not for hey, once. Look. Device representing the Vox Eminal brand. How many are you going to get? I think you might get one here. There we go. He's going to be so comfy. This is like a 
face at pub. Like legitimately, that's what this yeah. this is actually devices every day of the week. I got owned by him and a Danish group of cronies and face it the other day. Yeah. Just having a good day, keeping themselves warm. Tack of the coach. What a time to be alive. Yeah, this is a nice little on-ramp, isn't it, into the tournament. You oh, get, what a great start. Yeah, you just got to get to kind of make sure everything feels right. Yeah. You kind of shake off any jet lag. So and, you've got the right config. Yeah. Make sure everything works nicely. Oh, that to me sounds like typing, which then would mean a technical doohickey. Yeah, one of those. That's a technical term. All good. No dramas. No damage done. No issues. Just a little technical drama as the Danes have smiles on the faces. Rugger, the coach, mentioned. Yeah, keeping the atmosphere high. Yeah, interesting to see Rugger in the Astralis jersey. Obviously, his time in OG, there weren't great results from OG. So, you sit there and you think to yourself, how much does the coach have to do with that? Well, he gets a chance to redeem himself. He does. Because that's the thing. He could have been a great coach on OG. OG just never had the resources or the scouting or I could come up with a laundry list, but they were never good. That's all I need to say. Yeah. yeah there's some peculiar OG rosters over the years. Hasn't there? All right. We try this one again. Round three. Fight. Test your might. All smoke from bro. Tidy business. 18-year-old male. Zal Sage. <laughs> you can't call him 18 year old male for the whole game. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> what, if you got, what if he gets a crazy, like, <laughs> clip and you call him 18 year old oh, male? Well, as well. <laughs> if he's 18, it then be weird. I'll allow yeah, it. Yeah, exactly. I think that would be okay. But if he's not, I can't keep doing that. Okay. Especially if he's like 32 or something. He looks good for his age then. He looks quite like a sprightly young fellow. Um, We're out middle. 29. 29 for 18 year old male. Year old male. <laughs> After effects onto Yabby. 18 year old male onto Stout and Zhao Sage. With a frag. This is what we're talking about. This is what the slut boys can do. <laughs> oh, God damn it, you've lost them. Slut, that's an HT. <laughs> Steel helmet. Steel helmet, okay. But we always call them like Ast, don't we? That's everyone says them that. Yeah, that always happens. That's probably with their recent form, but this is uh, a new constellation of the stars. Even with them alive, Chad. This is fantastic. Yeah, I they, reckon they did handle business. Didi's kind of giving him an AK there. He doubled down. He d oh. Respect. All hunting. Guys, he has an AK. Get him. Oh, no, two of the, wait, one of them going to spawn. You can't all go through main. I guess they can. Why can't they? Probably defuse, actually. If he ran over there now, he'd have probably have had it, would have had it. Some go go gadget arms. They are going to start leering in through main. Stay with the ability to take a few more away. And there you have it. We're across the line. There's Still the 20, with 29 year old. What are we calling him then? What is the average age of this team? It's, it's, oh, I can do that for you. Hang on. It's up there. It's up there. That's the answer. Oh my god. <laughs> They're weeks in top 30. I thought it was the average age. It was 43. No, uh, 30, 31. 31. 31.2. Making me feel young. 31. Uh, 30 is an average age of a team. That's pretty sick, actually. All right. Well, yeah. that was a bonus round. All for device. Yeah, see how Astralis approached this one. Steel helmet. Happy to retake the lane late. That already shows a bit of poise. So the fact that they got away with that in the previous round, quite a positive sign. Uh, last bullet in the dome onto Zal Sage. Stown with an opener. Clear the smoke. DD searching. Ooh, okay. A little bit of space room to work with. And Stown perfectly placed. Them. Ooh, not the same for the first shot out of devices, Orp. Oh, I like stoic. this repositioning. Yeah, he is going to be Molotov back, and he's good awareness there. Avoids a tick of damage completely. Captain Mo, maneuvering in towards Yabby, testing Red Room. 
Now, with the bombs disconnected from all of the players right now, it's an interesting one. Can I get a let Captain Mo work? It might be cleared. You can see Stan coming back. And there it is. So four-man mid-clear, two through the donut, two through red. Wolf Force, Steel Helmet in towards the B finish. 18YM in cave. Oh, but the bomb spotted down towards the doors. It gets awkward now, doesn't it? Bro. Just on to DD. And Bro gets away, finds an upgrade. Everyone's got themselves an AK or an AWP, so that's pretty damn good for a CT side. There we have it. As the third round comes through, so uh, short-lived success from uh, Steel Helmet. Oh, well, discussing the options as far as the purchases going forward are concerned. But well handled from Australis to respond immediately. Just like I can get an AK, 18YM as well. AE a little bit lighter on. But Raga has an opportunity to get on the mic by virtue of a steel helmet timeout. And that would be discussing the finances as we were. Looks like Didi's going to go with an AK instead of a Galil, so that means he won't have head armor. There are two silenced M4s in towards the mix, so opting for the firepower. A with U2 and a Deagle. Let's see if they can continue the back and forth nature of this game. Keeping the uh, double door smoke a bit of a consistent maneuver. Our Australis on the CT side. More mollies. Constricting middle. Parking four players outside B as Stan will be given the good graces of all the cave control. A flash and a go, it looks likely. Captain Mo lining this one up. Or winging it. Yeah, that yeah. is what I thought was going to happen. Okay. Oh, nice catch there from 18YM. Gabby. Yeah, Quick to take his place though, just keeping cave fight going, bro. Looked like a nice shot from on, onto the head of Jansage. I think Bro's a really good safe pair of hands to have in this team. In Monty, he always had some of these roles where he was left to his own devices. And that's going to be a clear. Able to get the bomb down, just AE and. Was just AE. Four to one. Three round the difference. And this should be a map where Astralis just absolutely put things in. Ciao, Sage. Ciao, Sage? No. We've been, yeah. He's, he's, been, he's been around the block. Yeah, the capital G. Does it get you? No, I like it. I think it looks nice to read. Match paused. What's going on, on the B stream? 34 years old. Yeah. Let's check his face it. Don't they? Isn't like 5e play or something here? Do they have face it here? He's got a 69% win rate. That's pretty good. When was his last match though? 24th of Jan. Okay. Oh, he only plays Mirage. One of those. Oh. You've just. Sorry, didn't mean to write him out like no, that. No, you've really just done him like that, haven't you? I'm sorry. One That's of those. ancients, actually. Okay, all right, all right. That's a good sign. Yeah. Stan's not happy 83 with... 83% ancient win rate. That's my, ah. that's my analysis for you there, Chad. Still helmet win. Yeah. 22 under a yellow. Well, everyone having a look to try and help Stan out with this issue. So whatever he's having trouble with, hopefully he can fix it. Interesting avatar. It's very interesting, isn't it? Yeah. You know... If you remember for a while. But since January, he's been playing in ages. Yeah. Gotta get him out there, mate. Well, he's busy. Playing officials against the That's markers, true, that's true. Yeah. Yeah, you don't need to play pugs if you're playing officials. Stan, you happy? He's happy. He's a happy looking chappy as we do get things back underway. Steel helmet, didn't get the bomb down. We'll have to stomach a bit of a partial investment. So far, no utility, but we do see pistols with armor around it for the most. 
This time it's Stairs turn. I think, you know, they have a, a pretty tidy looking roster now, Astralis, and it's only with one player difference. I, I'm, I'm trying to get on this. Oh, he's missed the door smoke. I take it all back. Yeah. I take it all back. It's all over. It's all over. Well, we'll give this one to Steel Helmet then. <laughs> crazy how that happened. <laughs> no, but I, I, I'm trying to get um, high on Astralis early. Yeah. Because everyone's against it. Yeah, you. I got. I got some hopium. I'm. I'm trying to just, you know, be that guy. Yeah. Well, I because don't see I, why not. I think that the pieces of this roster, so Yabby and Stown, especially playing with Cadian, are aware of, you know, the extra responsibility that riflers get when playing with the orping in game leader. And for me, Device was the orping, the orping presence in the server. That let's say he was entering, he was entering in towards the B bomb sale on overpass, for example. He's coming through monsters like the second or third guy with the orp more likely the third guy, mm -hmm. and one or two of his teammates dies, he'll always like chuck away the AWP and pick up the AK because he, you know he's not one of those AWPers that's just going to have to stick to it. So I feel he's got a lot of um, adaptability about him. Obviously, it's a difficult task, and a lot of people want to cite stress with Device. They want to be, oh, you know, this is the guy that had issues traveling or had the stomach problems, this, that, and the other. You know, he spent you know time on the sidelines. Look, I, I think those are probably valid concerns for people to have, but I don't think he would have picked up the in-game leader Mantle if he didn't think he could handle it. Yeah, and I think this, I, I, I'm very intrigued to, you know, when we get a, tr a testing game on the T sides to see what uh, elements of, well, Virtus Pro we get to see considering his admiration for James Stein. Yes, that's true. Uh, so, but I think what you're mentioning, a game that'll actually put them through the paces will be their match against the winner of FaZe or Namiga. Most likely FaZe. It sure. depends on how bad their post-major hangover is. We saw Cloud9 already having some struggles. Back into the gunnies. It's just going to be... Uh, the so protocols are so good. It's like, well... Floor of flame mid, floor of flame lane. And that's the thing, when we see like on the fly flashes being lined up from Steel Helmet, it doesn't fill you with much confidence to try and punish. Like a little harass. Setting Yabby up. Oh, the beautiful flash. A team kill in the mix, Captain Mo. We'll be regretting that one as yeah, it looks is... like all five should be staying alive. Not going to be fun for Didi. He's actually moving away from the bomb. If we knew that Monty wasn't coming earlier, which we didn't, imagine if we got the Mongols here. Mm, that would have been cool. That's what we would have loved to have seen. They didn't qualify, however. Oh, yeah. So uh, that's why they're not in attendance. There's, there's been a couple of handouts this event. Obviously, Liquid and Wildcard, who uh, were handed their asses by VP. They also have stand-in issues. One of their players was ill, so they have their coach, Horvey, standing in. And then Steel Helmet replacing Monty, who are unable to get all five of their players situated. And that's one of the keys of playing Counter-Strike, Alex. You do need five to play. There's the swing. There's the round. Six to one. Five the difference. And Astralis on debut with Device as the in-game leader. Rugger as the coach. This could not be a better way to start the new iteration of the team. You'll be obviously expecting to win this game, but if you just handle business... Put your horses here, Chad. Okay, right? So... <laughs> <laughs> Why are you... Come on, man. I'm being a little facetious. Come on, man. A little facetious. But I was just thinking, right? Yeah. A great way for them to save money in this round is to not buy helmets because you know they've all got AKs. It's a great way. That's at least a few hundred bucks. Oh! Oh. That's the collateral. Yabby nice. and Didi down. Device with the Darth and Lee Dig. Double and triple. And now Stair's going to steal away his ace. Just like that. Yeah. How cruel. How mean. Quad kill from Device. There's the Tech Nines. They try and run him down. They try and overwhelm the orb. I'm sure that's always going to feel good when you get to, uh, well, get 12 and 1. Had to be done. Sometimes it just has to be done. No, oh, the AWP Deagle combination. Satisfactory. It is the most satisfying. I always think a PT50 is probably better or a 57, but. Oh, yeah? yeah? You're a big 57 fan. Well, if it's for good players, I mean. Well, they've low smoked. Bro's yeah, just going to play. Okay, I like that. In front of it immediately. Why did they smoke top ramp and do lurk smoke? They could be walking through it all the way out. I guess. 
They call it the uh, smoke snake strap. Smoke snake strap. A steel helmet special. Yeah. Well, DD's got um, a little bit of a look on A. Stair might get caught off guard by this. He will. DD manufactures an opener. Oh, he's across as well. The line of fire. Device will punish him. Puts 45 damage down range. Captain Mo. God, that's terrifying, they isn't have to it? Clear this. Yeah, they will. How horrible for Captain Mo there. Now we've got eighty one eight YM. <laughs> Just call him eighteen year old male. I think that worked better. <laughs> I, do, I agree. For the twenty nine year old. Yeah, the twenty nine year old, eighteen year old male. Shall Sarge and of course Adobe After Effects. Oh, can I get to plant the bomb? And done it. Bomb has been planted. 18 year old male gets a frag onto Yavi. It's a 3v3. They're very low HP though. 18 year old male. Post up with the AWP. Needs another one here. Oh, he's let it go. Stout shuts him down. Shouts Sage down. And it does seem like an eighth is coming. After effects, maybe. There's something here for AE. Spams away. Connecting bullets. They're off the bomb. Oh, he's just running away. He's had enough. He... What? Oh, nice try there. Let's <laughs> <laughs> that one again. Play. <laughs> Done it again. The top ramp smoke, the lurk smoke in combination. I guess you're right. They are just trying to worm on through it, but they're not actually using it. So, bro, uh, does feel the pressure. Cave smoked off, down on the spam. And they're going to try and punish by lurking through. Oh, a lot of damage there. Surely you're coming through. Oh, that's so naughty. They're thinking How about it. How have you gotten away with that? Yeah, he actually does get caught out by DD's timing. A 4v4. They can still recover this half. Four rounds up for grabs. Make a T-side out of this yet. Oh, that's a good well-placed HE grenade, and it's going to be a big one for Zhao Sage to let go, bro. Just standing and not able to deliver the double. Step just takes his place. For them, it must feel like there's just constant stream of defenders. There's everywhere you go, there's just someone to take that's his nice. place. That's a big frag from AE. And a missed shot from the AWP of Device gives him a second chance. Running around over peeking. They're going to double swing. The one, two, three. And they'll leave with nine. Okay, well, as expected, Australians are running away with things. Device on 15 kills, 10 for Stair. 8 for Yabby, 7 for Stown. And Bro on four. So. Why was six afraid of seven? Because uh, seven, eight, nine. That's right. That is, yeah. yeah. We That's just right. check in. Yeah, no, I was just making yeah. sure. I see, I think it's interesting you go on with, like, Adobe After Effects. Yeah. You could have gone with, like, A-E-I-O-U. Okay. The well, we just call him Vowels. Yeah. I mean, we could just call him Vowel. That's kind of cool. Vowels. That's not very cool. Third tactical timeout from Steel Helmet. So it is just um, kind of a last-minute addition, kind of grabbing together there. Yes. Is kind of a brand, exactly. Yeah. Right. The, this Chinese representation, it's difficult to get a team last minute with Monty unable to fill five. But they've managed it, and it's, it's uh, you know, all, the, all due respect to them for, um, for showing up on such late notice, competing. And of course, competing in a, <clears throat> a tournament that they probably weren't anticipating. Uh, you, know, you haven't got anything particularly well drilled. You've got your 
smoke sailing through. Well, the region as a whole, right, if we're going to talk about it, the region as a whole is, you know, only has two names that have any real worth to it, and that's Linvision as well as the Mongols. Yeah. That's a shot. That's a nice double. Device, however, is just having a field day, and you talked about it, Chad. Sometimes he'll just go for the AK, and it's cost him his life, pushing forward, getting a little bit... Uh, a little cheeky with it there. Well, Bro's going to cut off the rotation point, so he's going to head through the doors down towards T-spawn, and cinching in main will be stair. So both of them on the look. They're allowing Steel Helmet to thread the needle to either site, essentially. Bro's going to call spawn clear, which he should, yeah, definitely start turning an about face. Stair can clear middle. And they have gone through red to B. Bro's going to be here perfectly timed. Just depends on when he gets taken out. Like, Stair's still searching towards A. So Bro is going to get the first contact. And oh, there's the glance. Now he's under a whole lot of pressure. Smokes himself off. Throws out a nade. It's not going to connect for any damage. This is looking good for a Steel Helmet second. Mm -hmm. Here goes Stair. Likely he clears Captain Mo here. But he did, and now a 1v1 emerges. Can Captain Mo come up clutch? Bro goes down, clean headshot from Captain Mo, and a second round on the board for Steel Helmet. Captain Mo rolling back the years. That's himself on the board. One hell of a way to get yourself on the board. Your team a second round as you find your second frag. There's a correlation there. Bang. Catching stare on the way in. Just proving to themselves that like that these guys can bleed, you know. I can I can convert. Let's go. Let's go. Second round in the bag. A third would go oh, well, an awfully long way. We've got uh, AE on the AWP, but the deep molly keeps him at bay. Full lane control essentially for Stan right now. They just need to clear out towards this beehive position. There's a flash over. White screen. But DD is about to be caught in the side. Well cleared from Stown, aware of all of the possibilities. Alsage gives up his position outside the doors. Devices AWP for two. It's a 2v5. Nice shots. Captain Moe is warming into things. Go on, take down Device. One bullet will do it. Can't control, and it's a 10 to half. They're having a lot of fun. Astralis, that is. Steel Helmet, they're close to being a knock to the lower bracket.
Let's shake, rattle, and roll for this second half of, well, you guessed it, Ancient. I am Chung Du 2024. Best of one, number four oh. for the A stream with Mr. Machini GTV and myself, the Splooge. It's great to have you here with, with me. Uh, yeah, Ancient 24 7, you're joining us here for uh, our Ancient Only channel. Astralis 10 2 up in another one of these Ancients and a whole lot of nades. So hang on, this is our first device T round. Oh my god, what's he called? Oh it looks god. like a B rush. He's, He's called a yeah, Just but look go at the util. B. He's done the cheeky smoke, the big one, the, the cool one. Okay. And all, oh, they're going to win. They've already killed everyone. 100% success rate for device T round calls. He has won 100% of his T round calls. What so are, this has to be one of the most remarkable things I've ever seen in Counter Strike. Oh, did you see what he did there? Two smokes. And a molly. And a kill. And a, and a kill. And he's got 20 kills, Chad. Unbelievable. They say IGLs can't frag. Well, wait until device arrives. 20 bloody frags, Chad. I think he's having fun. I, th I think so, too. He wasn't having fun no, at the RMR. now he's having some fun. He's like, having he's, fun. I'm seeing smiles. Yeah. I'm seeing giggles. I mean, it's probably quite easy to be smiling and giggling when you tend to uh, make it 11. Oh, come on now, Alex. I'm sorry, this there is I professional am. Yeah, you're right. <clears throat> Video games aren't enjoyable. Yeah, just keeping them hyped up. The pistol worked well. Maybe that was a rugger call. All right, hold up. Let's know. go. Let's see what the second round is. A donut smoke. A red smoke. Some flashes. Oh, no flashes. No flashes. Nade. Didn't call the flashes. Yeah. There's one flash. Pop. Snap. Crackle. And mid control. Yeah. And it's not a 4-1. It's actually a lot of early space. What about You've used those 18-year-old male flank, though. Oh, you're right. <laughs> Gotta watch out for those. And Xiao Saga's about to get cleared. Yeah, it's just no hope for him there. And there we go. That's the 18-year-old male Deeg we know. All right, they're into the B bomb site. And they have the bomb. And they have 12. So still devised with 100% success rate. Right, Chad, yeah, there is 100% conversion rate in his T side calling so far. Well, let's let everybody know what else they have coming their way today, shall we? Go on. Coming up next, they have uh, Harry and Hugo. Ooh, I love those guys. Or Prince Harry and Lord Hugo, I think is their official titles. Right. Uh, they'll be covering off a bit of action. G2 taking on Liquid in a best of three. Well, that could be intriguing. Furia versus Mouse, also a best of three. And uh, on the B stream, you will have 9Z versus Heroic for elimination and Lin Vision versus Tai Lu. As everybody from Astralis goes down, a glue and an AK are saved, but the smiles still on the faces. Likely to see the final round of play in this best of one. And this could be it. It could very well be it. And they go and start with a fight into AE. He's managed to find a one undone. Lovely timing. Captain Mo gets a double. Gets away with his life. Here we go. Well, the B bomb site is completely open. And Stown is starting to investigate. Bro's bringing the bomb that way. The rotation back. They've just dotted in time. Stown probably surprised to see nobody home. 2v4 to keep the sheet clean. Oh no, they've lined up, you know, but they both are, and just down finds the equalizing double. Miraculous calling here from Device. Yeah. Oh, sick call. What a sick call. He said, go kill long, get to plant for long. And walking through the smoke, it's Captain Mo lost. It's up to DD. What's he got for us today? D in his name, and a D in the game. It's 13 to 2. The crowd erupts. Astralis on debut with Device as the in-game leader. Rugger as the coach. It's a miraculous T-side. Three straight rounds, 100% from Tom Cruise. Mission ah. impossible, they said. That oh, smile that. on the dial, it says it all. The crowd now, proud now. Incredible work and Seal Helmet, couple of individuals. It's nice to see again on our screens, like legendary legacy Counter-Strike uh, names from China. Captain Mo, DD, back in those uh, Tai Lu days, Zhao Sage. 
He seemed metamorphosized a little bit as well, DD. He's changed a bit over the He's years. He's tatted. Yeah, but uh, obviously filling in for Monty, unable yeah. to field five steel helmet, plug that gap, and they will drop down towards the lower bracket where they, they will facing? take on the loser of FaZe versus Namiga, which okay. is our current match on twitch.tv slash ESLCSB. I believe Lucy and B-Dog are currently casting that, and that will be going down tomorrow, uh, that uh, best of three matchup. But a shake of the hands. As, uh, well, a bit of a stroll in the park for Astralis, a fortunate opening matchup for them. Will not be tested in their opening gambit. But uh, that is one way to start off their campaign. Not the complaint. changes in the roster. Definitely going to do good for the mood. Very interested to see how the uh, next game for Astralis goes. 100%. This is a warm-up. This is a warm-up. It was actually quite, you know, exciting early days. But I'm, uh, I'm interested to see what happens when the temperature gets turned up a little bit. But uh, yeah, good signs of life to start. Some dominant games uh, down in Group B. But uh, we're going to head over to Heku on the tournament floor. I have device here by my side. Device, first of all, congratulations. The first win is in the pocket. But considering that this team was kind of brought in at the last moment, how do you even prepare to play against them? We downloaded some of the demos on Liquipedia, I think, something like that. Uh, but they played a lot of games with stand-ins and stuff. So yeah, we, we did our prep. We kind of knew the veto. We could play engine if we wanted to. And yeah, uh, overall happy. As you said, I think that Monte would pay, probably be a tougher opponent, and um, it's a shame they couldn't play. Um, but yeah, always nice to get a win. And I already add a question to Brolic about like you IGLing. Uh, I was wondering like if uh, there's anyone who's helping you out. Maybe considering you're an upper, sometimes you can have a situation when you're holding an angle. He said that everyone is helping you. But is there one that maybe you would say is kind of like a right hand for you right now? I mean, it's also very map dependent on Ancient. I have uh, Stair, he's the mid guy. He has to take a lot of initiative and talk a lot to me. And yeah, I think towards B side, I have Stown that's kind of helping me. So yeah, it's map dependent. I think that everyone, as I said, is helping maybe some more than others. Uh, Stair is playing some vital roles on some maps. Stown is really good mid, mid round. And same with Yavi, they're really good mid round. They learned a lot, I think, in Heroic. So. I would say everyone, and uh, yeah, it's always nice. We didn't play that many T rounds, so uh, didn't get to call that much today, other than the CT side, which was really good. I mean, that's what happens like when you're like when the team is doing so good. I do wonder because I see that card, and uh, the only thing I can read is that positive mindset. Unfortunately, my Danish is not that good to understand the rest. Can you explain this? It's just some individual focus points on how I want to be as a leader and stuff like that. But yeah, staying positive, I think, is the most important thing. And then finding solutions. Yeah. Finding solutions. Well, you managed to find all of the solutions today on the server. And tomorrow, who's going to be? FaZe or Nimiga. Nimiga? Yeah, I think it's going to be FaZe, right? You didn't even know who it was. Yeah. Uh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Wait. I was <laughs> making sure I'm not saying Enigma Galaxy. I'm saying Nimiga. It's kind of close. True, true. I think it's going to be FaZe. And uh, it's going to be fun. My first time playing against Kerrigan as an in-game leader. It's going to be, for me, a game uh, I'm going to prepare a lot for. So, yeah, hopefully we can get the win. The old IGL of Denmark new, with the new IGL of Denmark. We'll see, but then good luck with your preparations. Thank you. Yeah, the steel helmet breached and on the receiving end of a battering. Great start for Astralis, but if we're being honest, this was a must-win situation for them. But uh, great to see them. Nonetheless, Machu coming out and firing on all cylinders and Device showing up individually as well. I mean, of course, expectations managed. This was great to see from Astralis. They weren't really tested. The last round, if anything, is super telling. It's 2v4 that looks absolutely easy-peasy, lemon-squeezy. Um, they had the upper hand in pretty much every department. Device's lights on fire. I had a good time watching game. It was it was entertaining. I'll leave it at that. I think Monty with three players would probably put up a better fight than still Helmet did, but it is what it is. It was just a walk in the park for Astralis. We didn't get the answers to pretty much anything. Uh, they started on the CT side and just really stomped um, Steel Helmet and that's sad. I wanted to see more from Steel Helmet. Although, you know, on Asian TV, it's, it's attacker is still on the team as a player and yeah. the average age is 31.2 for that team, which is just wild. That's kind of wild. Yeah, that would top the chance of 
basically any other team that I can even think of yeah, in my absolutely. head at the moment. There's, there wouldn't have been anyone even close, I think. Maybe that's why I was out on the sidelines just as a coach for now. But uh, yeah, I mean, Device, obviously we had some questions. Uh, it was nice to get a few words from him, courtesy of Heku. I love these, uh, you know, words of affirmation, the manifestations, positive mindset. That's what he's looking at. That's what's going to stop him punching that monitor match. Yeah, I mean, listen, I think it's it's uh, it's great from him to hear that. It's also easier to keep the positive mindset when you have 21 and 4 and you're wrecking everybody. I do think the game versus Faye is going to be a super nice stress test for this roster, for him personally. How does he fare under pressure when things get a little complicated? Uh, we got to peek behind the curtain a little bit and he talked about how Stair has to be very vocal with him, Stone has to be, and that's an interesting dynamic we're figuring out within the Astralis roster. But none of that really mattered here. I think any decision they made were generally the good ones. Even if not, they were bailed out by great individual skills. Device had a bunch of multi-kills when he was peeking mid with AWP. That's a couple of sequence we see here right there. So it was just nice. Didn't really tell us much about what this team is made of so far. A nice warm-up, I yeah. guess, for the Danes. That's cool. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, also, in being in Group B, right? They don't have to play another game today. They're going to be playing tomorrow. So an extra day to get acclimatized to the time zone difference. And yeah, most likely going to end up playing FaZe, who I think has a big lead uh, over on the B stream. And that's going to be interesting, a nice experience for Device. Yeah, FaZe currently 6-1 up versus right. their opponents. Frozen looking great as always. I think that's impressed me uh, about, you know, FaZe and what they've managed to be doing considering Frozen's coming in and it feels like the ceiling's only gotten higher for them. So I'm excited to see them going up against Astralis probably tomorrow. Probably tomorrow. I mean, listen, for FaZe right now, it's final or nothing, right? So they're not supposed to struggle here. It's a day in the office, quite literally, getting the job done against Namiga. Not much we can hope from that. It's the game in general. For uh, the Astralis camp, what are your expectations then going up against probably FaZe tomorrow? Oof, that's a, that's a tough answer. I'm hoping that they put up a good fight. Like, I'm hoping for a good game of Counter-Strike, right? And it's going to be Device's first real experience, right? Having to call T-sides as well. So looking forward to seeing how that's going to look Don't like. Don't want to know what a good game is? The game we got coming up next, mm. G2 versus Liquid. This is a tasty dish indeed. We're talking qualification for the playoffs for one of these two squads. Let's get into it after this. It's time for the DHL Ultimate 10. Who takes the lead this late in the game? At some point in every gamer's life, there's a question to be asked. Do your clothes match your hobby in any situation? Or do they just represent what you dream of? No matter what situation, there's always the right wear and the wrong. The only real question is, which are you going to choose? Decide for yourself. Okay, Mr. Elfish Guy, my name is Stunna. We're gonna be going in today with a little bit of a 1x bet power ranking for the group stages here in Chengdu. Yeah, um, I don't know where you wanna start, if you wanna start at the top or the bottom, but I, I certainly have some opinions as to which teams we might be able to put at the bottom. Negativity can be fun, so let's yes. start there. Uh, Tai Lu. Okay. I'm gonna put them maybe at the bottom. I think obviously there's a conversation to be had around Steel Helmet, who are the substitution team coming in. They are a bit of a stream team when it comes to Chinese CS, so don't really know what we're gonna make of them. I think for me, I put Steel Helmet 16, okay. Tyloo 15. So just like right next to each other. Yeah. I hate to say it, probably throw a Lin Vision in there somewhere too. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I think for me, I have a little bit more faith in Lin Vision. Uh, opening BO1 against Furia, I might give them a bit of a chance. They did beat them at the Major in a BO1 there, so. Okay, let's continue down the path, right? We, we're talking about Lin Vision, mm -hmm. but overall, what about your guys in FlyQuest? Again, I kind of want to have a bit of faith in them. I think, again, they had a bit of a disappointing performance at the RMR, but they are, in theory, a better team than what that uh, result would indicate. I think for me, maybe if I'm putting a team in 14, it might be 
be wild card actually. Pretty fair. Uh, yeah. I'm not super. Again, I'm not super familiar necessarily with NACS quite as much as maybe some other people are, but they are even coming in with a substitution into this event. So that again is not a great sign for me. So I would like to think that FlyQuest could beat them, and I do believe they actually match up in the bracket as well. So yeah. really sure. I can't yeah. really put all my eggs in that basket, so I have to put wild card down there on the list as well. Where do you want to go next? I think wild card's 14, and then for me, obviously we're looking towards like uh, probably I think you have to put FlyQuest as 13. Lim Vision has to then go above them uh, as number 12. And we're talking like 9Z and Amiga, I guess are probably the other two teams that are like the question marks going into this one. Okay, so we talked about middle of the pack teams, dude. What do you think? I think 9Z, um, okay. still got some question marks over them. So I'll probably slide them into 11. Uh, although then again, you're kind of looking at Furia and saying what's going on with them as well. So they're a bit of a question mark, but it's very hard, I think in the, in the middle of the pack of this tournament to really like, just be like, oh, they're definitely in this spot. So let's just go 9Z, 11, Furia, 10. Um, on the other side of that, I want to say, I think for me, probably I have Heroic as number six. I think that's okay. fairly safe. Sure. So I think for me then, it's a question of, of Liquid versus Namiga, where, where do they sit? Um, and I want to say like with the names on Liquid, You'd want to see it them would perform make better. Sense. Like, I think, yeah, so what, we've got Heroic 6. I guess I'll put Liquid 7, which feels a little bit like trolling. You know, it's like, how are you putting them in number 7 after not having seen them play, basically? But yeah. they got some big names. I want to believe, so I'm going to put them 7. Yeah. Uh, this is where things get a little dicey, because then you sprinkle in some Astralis on there. Uh, yeah, where would you place a team like Cloud9? Um, tough one, uh, I guess, you know, just to quickly go through the context of it, I'd say FaZe probably one, Mao's probably two, and then you're starting to get into a little bit more murky territory where you're like, okay, how do you sort of feel about G2? How do you feel about Cloud9? And how do you feel about Virtus Pro? For me, uh, I think I probably still want to give the benefit of the doubt to G2. You've obviously got Manasi in there, um, and he's obviously one of the best players in the world. So I might Pretty put good. them as number three. And then it's kind of a question of Virtus Pro versus Cloud9. I think I edge Virtus Pro over. Cloud9 just at the moment a little bit. I thought they looked a little bit better at the major. So that I think for me is the top five, which would be FaZe, Mouse, G2, VP, C9. That's right. This has been our 1x bet power rankings through what's going to be the group stages here at the Intel Extreme Master Shangdu 2024. All right, it is nice to be back in the saddle, everybody, and what a matchup to get right here, right into things. My name is Trey Saranthus. I'll be picking up for Freya for the rest of the day. I've got two best of threes ahead of me, and I've got G2 situated right there in front of Team Liquid. That's right, Liquid won a match. And speaking of which, G2, they want to win some more as well. So let's go ahead and hear from Heku and Monacy. Pretty soon, we're going to have a new series. It's going to be a best of three. And here, I have Monacy. Monacy, your first series, your best of one, was on the B stream. So maybe there are some viewers that have not seen and have no idea what happened. Can you give us a short summary? Best of one, nuke, losing one pistol, losing one first by round, uh, getting snowballed, and after coming back to the game. Make you combat call, right, all right. Uh, when it comes to like now your opponent, Tim Liquid, uh, they seem like a pretty like, comfortable team when it comes to like LAN. Did you have an opportunity to like check out the game? We had an opportunity. I don't think we had a lot of a lot of time to prepare, but uh, it is what it is, and uh, I'm gonna fight against them mm -hmm. today. Today, I mean, obviously, <laughs> obviously it's gonna be today already. Uh, but yeah, uh, do you feel like they are a comfortable opponent for you, or like they like might be like a bit tricky? I don't really think about it. Uh, I think for us, they're comfortable. Yeah, I mean, every opponent for us is comfortable. We all feel comfortable. So, just gonna play the usual game we play usually. You're gonna play your comfortable game. I'm gonna play our comfortable game, confidence game. All right, thank you very much, Monzi. Thank you. You know, I don't know that so many people have said a G2 game is a comfortable game. I don't know that many of the viewers enjoy that same experience, Bianco. Yeah, Trace, and it also appears that you're the only guy who's comfortable <laughs> doing a G2 game <laughs> with me, man. I don't know if, you know, people think I'm going to get too aggressive or anything, but I'm pretty chill when I'm actually at the event. Yeah, I think that's that's pretty pretty proper. Uh, yes, welcome back to the Intel Extreme Masters. My name is Trace. Yanko's here with me. Jordan will be here eventually, uh, somewhere around here. But nonetheless, let's talk about this G2 and the G2 that was promised. So what do we have now, Yanko? 
Yeah, I think for G2, obviously, they still made top four at the major, really close uh, series against Navi, not going to go into the details of, of that one, um, and, and had a really good result, right? Obviously disappointing, they couldn't go further, have a chance at the trophy, but, you know, it's only been a week uh, since that event, and here they're looking to just keep progressing. Right, like just uh, keep getting uh, better and have a chance at the trophy too. I mean, they won Cologne there in the race for the Intel Grand Slam, so this could be um, a really good opportunity for G2 to bounce back. You heard Nico say it right there, right? He said it with conviction. He made me a little bit of believer that they came here to win, and obviously there's a bit of vengeance on the backside of that with the major result at hand. A lot of things to unpack from their major appearance. Mm -hmm. I don't know where we want to start. Perhaps we could say when the crosshairs get turned on the IGL again for a veto process, we could go down that path, but that does kind of change things within the camp, right? Yeah, I mean, it wasn't his fault, right? Of course. Like, uh, Taz took responsibility for that one. I think Hooks is actually really improved individually on this team. I think he's finding more impact uh, just in terms of fragging. Uh, and as well, I think he's calling pretty well. I don't think those are the issues for G2. Something that are the, the problems are individuals. Like, they need to step up a little bit more. In Monesi, you have arguably the best CS2 player. I think definitely the best CS2 opera. Right, he's delivering time and time again, and it's you know guys like Nico and Hunter who need to sort of pick up the slack a little bit. Well, let's look at that because the stats are going to scream what you're saying. Actually, he tops so many of the different categories. It was a race pretty much between him and Donk all the way through. Hey, Jordan, welcome. This one. Try wrong one. All right, all right look, all good. Don't worry about it. Okay, yeah. Uh, oh. Hello, nice to see you. Yes, it's very loud for me as well, but. Um, yeah, looking forward to it. Obviously, G2, yeah, we're talking about Monacy. He was top rated at the uh, at the Major, right? So certainly someone that uh, is going to be having a lot of uh, people looking in his direction. I don't know that he necessarily had like an amazing game in that first best of one, but that's not a major concern. Uh, you know, we had good performances coming through from Nico as well. So um, coming into this best of three, I guess we're going to keep a bit more of an eye on Monacy and see what he's going to be able to do. Yes, all eyes tend to be on Monacy, but Nico, okay, let's pick up from right there because there was a lot of talk about how he needs to show up, be a better rifler, this, that, or the other. Are we getting glimpses of that, Yenko? Well, we did. We did in the in the first game, right? Like you can see in CS2, his numbers haven't been as high. I mean, he was the second rated, uh, second player of the year uh, last year, right? And he's still adjusting to CS2, you know, to its different style a little bit. He's had games here and there uh, where he pops off, but it's been a little bit inconsistent, right? Not what you expect from Nico and we'll see if he's able to find that form here in Chengdu. And, well, I mean, you talk about form with Nico, right? But we also have to talk about, you know, the, the big picture, the big puzzle here, because not just Nico uh, that steps up in the fragging department. We also see people like Nexa coming out of the woodworks, putting in his effort here with the team. Yeah, I think for him, it's a little bit more map dependent at times. He's had a couple of really good uh, performances on Anubis, but you know who are the heavy hitters of the team, right? Like it's you look towards Monesi, Nico, and Hunter, and then Nexa is there as a more of a role player. Hooksy has the IGL, right? And uh, that's how G2 is going to find big wins. Yeah, for G2, uh, you know, it, it is always a show. They like to put on a show no matter where they are. Uh, Jordan, speaking of shows, we got one of those out of Liquid earlier today. What did you see? Yeah, we did. I mean, I thought they actually did pretty well. I think they did even better than most of us really anticipated. I'm not sure what the general consensus was, but for me, at least, I kind of went into that one feeling like Heroic was probably coming in as the favorites, but uh, they got off to a great start. Obviously, as far as highlights are concerned, Twists was certainly up there. He had a phenomenal game. Uh, I thought as well, Kadian was certainly someone that was kind of worth mentioning. Um, you know, he's been kind of getting, I, I guess, a little bit of criticism as far as his orping has been concerned and obviously being the IGL for this roster as well. A lot of, um, you know, priority being put on him. But, you know, when you got those two guys firing, then, you know, I think things are going to go well for Liquid. And I guess on the outside of that, we, we sort of, sort of, again, have to talk a little bit about Ikinda, who maybe still didn't quite manage to get the ball rolling. But at least as far as that first game was concerned, it was enough for Liquid. Now the question, though, obviously is, a bit of a step up against G2, is that going to be enough? And for me, I'm still questioning whether or not that will be. So the jury's still out, but the vetoes are not. The vetoes are well out there in front of us. Ancient, Anubis, there you Inferno. Go. It's not that hard, Trace. It's not that hard. It's not that difficult. You just don't need to overthink it. You don't need to overcomplicate it. Yeah, we see G2 uh, here. Ancient pick first from Team Liquid. You know, they see a potential punish pick there, and they also just played it versus Heroic. Had a good game, good opening, won that one. And then G2, they really like their Anubis. They see that as a little bit more of a punish. I think it's fine they didn't pick Inferno because the map is really good for this 
this liquid roster is the one they found the most success on, but then leaving it in as a decider, I think, is the proper decision. They played it four times at the Major G2, won all four times. Their defaults have been working, their banana control is, is particularly good. So, yeah, I don't think there were any surprises in this veto for either team. So let's not kind of like beat around the bush here, right? We, we talk about Liquid, we looked at this Liquid lineup and we're thinking, okay, didn't quite find the results or the major that you wanted. However, you know, what that does to a team on the backside of it, because there's rumors, there's whispers of DOA, like, you know, they've arrived in this team, you know, but earlier we do hear from Zeus who, who's reinstated that, hey, we're going to stick with this. Yeah, I mean, to be fair, obviously you have to talk in the sense of like a bit more of a PR response when you're speaking on a broadcast, when you're giving an interview like that in an official capacity. Who really knows what's going on behind the scenes? Yeah, I have heard the same rumors as you, but at least as far as the performance was concerned, yeah, it's the best of one, but it is a good first step. And, you know, who knows what they can really do here against G2. It's it's certainly not DOA, at least as far as the matches that we've seen so far at IEM Chengdu is concerned. So I think we have to have at least a little bit of faith. It seems like that time off that they've had, you know, that month away from at least the official circuit is concerned, has put them in a good position, at least uh, from what we've seen so far. This game as well will be a, a little bit of a question of stamina, right? Like both teams arrived only two days ago, uh, jet lag still uh, a factor in, and this is their second game of the day. So, you know, you have to be mentally ready, you have to be focused and try to minimize those mistakes. This is very taxing. Right? You could, I mean, we're talking about time zone shifts and, mm. and things that kind of play into a factor the later you get into these days, because these can be long, is what Yanko's saying, Jordan. Yeah, I mean, I don't know about you guys. Obviously, as far as uh, everyone's time zones <laughs> are concerned, mine's actually really not that bad. I'm only two hours difference. Um, but even now, I'm feeling a bit tired. You know, it's 5 p.m. local time. Uh, it depends on what time everyone sort of woke up, got up, and, and got ready to go. But theoretically, if you're on an awkward time zone, you're waking up at, you know, 2, 3, 4 a.m., something like that. And it's been 12 hours since you were asleep. So, uh, you know, you've already or all play a game today. There's a lot of that to sort of consider as well. Um, yeah, it could be getting quite tiring uh, as we get later in, into the evening and people are starting to run low on energy. But again, I think part of that conversation, you can sort of tie back to that interview with Zeus where he was saying that at least he was feeling okay. So you have to sort of put two and two together and hopefully say that that will be the case for, for the rest of the Liquid boys as well. Yeah, and for Liquid, you know, I personally, I want to see them do okay or do better than they have been because right now it's hard to put stock in the team, right? Uh, it, being that, yes, they did start this tournament in the right way, now they've only got, you know, more in front of them. I think the problem is also for Liquid, there's not really that big of a sample size. I mean, you had Blast groups, which is the very beginning of the season, and then their next LAN was the RMR, where obviously they couldn't, so they weren't at Katowice, right? And even here they come in as a replacement team, like, they need more games under their belt, right? To see really what they're made of, how this team is functioning. If there are issues, what are the most concerning issues, right? Like people were talking a lot about Ikinder as well and his performances and he didn't have an amazing game stats wise um, versus Heroic, but he did have a couple of rounds where he found entries, right? Like in, in some rounds, yes, it went the other way and he struggled, but you want more of that from Ikinder and Twist even pointed out in the interview post game that, you know, he's been working really hard. He took it personally. He's uh, underperforming uh, at the RMR. So we'll see if he can have a resurgence here. I guess the question you have to ask is, is him having an okay performance against Heroic going to be enough for Liquid long term, right? You know, there's obviously the conversation around how he's been doing individually over the long term, and, and that's a, big, a bit of a bigger, more sort of longer conversation to be had. But, you know, is there enough in this roster that even if he's not having a great game on a consistent basis, you know, you're going to be looking towards Twist, for example, you're going to be looking towards Naf and these kind of guys to kind of step up. And obviously, Kadian with the AWP and, and all of his responsibilities, that's a whole different ball game. But yeah, is that enough, I guess, long term? Is probably the big question mark over you at the moment. When we talk about Liquid, is this a team that has all the pieces that it needs to find that success that they're looking for, Yanko? You know, on paper, you'd think so, right? But are some of those, those pieces need to deliver trades. Like, that's the, the thing. Ekinder needs to find his form. Skulls also needs to step up. Like, it's fine. It's his first international roster, all that jazz, but it's been a few months now, right? Like, you want to see in some games why he was brought into this lineup. You have to be able to carry uh, your own weight, that's the bare minimum, and then also contribute, you know, more than that and help the team win some games. Does body language give anything away here? That Kadian is not 100% yet. <laughs> like, yeah, perhaps. Well, he, they did get that huddle in, so perhaps, you know, that... Did. Maybe you would, like, want him to be a couple of feet yeah. away from the yeah. team. The high you know. fives and stuff. Now, he's going to get better and everyone else is going to get worse. I mean, anecdotally, I've run into him a couple times in the hotel and he seems to be pretty chipper, so I don't know if he's... Yeah, he's probably not feeling 100%, but he seems to be in pretty good spirits, so I, I think it's fine. 
much pressure does this man have on him to make sure that this lineup finds success? I think that's a that's got to be a big question, right? Probably a lot. I mean, I don't even know if it's just on him. I think it's on everyone, right? Mm -hmm. Everyone in that roster's got a lot of pressure. There's a lot of big it's names. It's a team. Yeah, exactly. There's a lot of big names. It's a big org. There's lots of pressure. I mean, obviously, there's all the North American fans that are kind of like jumping in on it as well. Uh, and, you know, I'm obviously someone from, I guess, a quote unquote smaller region. And we are certainly a lot smaller than North America down under. But, um, you know, you, you, you sort of have that pressure, right? When you're one of those teams that everyone from your region is really looking to to perform. That's exactly what Zeus was talking about. You know, like, sure, we know, like, we have expectations of ourselves as well, but also being realistic in terms of how much time is it going to take. But I think, honestly, like, if by the end of this season, they just keep losing, you know, and, like, don't have at least a playoff uh, appearance or something along those lines, I, I don't know how much time you're willing to, to give the roster, right? Like, you need to show some signs of promise where it's like, okay, we're on the right path, we just need a little bit more time to sort everything out. Yeah, and I think that, that whole idea of a scaling of time, too, is something that we really haven't kind of cornered in the CS uh, market, if you would say, because the lineups get time and time again, or they don't, and we've seen that happen, too. Like, look at G2, for example, and they line up with Alexi B, right? Like, I mean, he was uh, benched just six months into the lineup. You feel like that was probably too soon, so it, it can go both ways, and now he went on and, and has a major under his belt. So check this out. We've got, obviously, a, a little bit of a delay here. It's not going to be super long, but we can kind of take a quick peek into what's going on over on the B stream. That is right, FaZe, over in Amiga. I don't know if you two guys, like, were... Did you not get any sleep when you were doing the power rankings? You put Namiga as nine. Hold on now. Let's go back. Let's go back and Based look at the footage. Based off of what? I didn't say that. Uh... Well, where, 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 first question, I guess, then would be where, where would you put them? There we go. 14. 14. Hmm. Uh, so, so what, above Tyloo and Steel Helmet? Yes. That's it? That's it. They're not better than... Lin Vision? Vision? No. You don't think so? FlyQuest, Furia, no. I mean, I look, I again, I'm not super familiar with these guys uh, as far as... Exactly. Uh, uh, you know, be, <laughs> but, but in saying that, I always am someone who has like a lot of stock in the European region and that, that qualifier, I looked at the qualifier that they played, I thought they actually were able to beat a couple of reasonable teams. I know Betboom was in that qualifier and, you know, like again, they're not like up there, up there, but they're still not a bad team. So, um, yeah, maybe it was a bit ambitious, maybe it was a bit hopeful, but... Uh, I don't know. I guess I, I am someone who is from that minor region that always gets severely underrated. And I think that's where some of that bias starts to come through. And you kind of underrate your own teams and overrate the other teams. Mm. Uh, and that's where that kind of came from. But FlyQuest won a game. And they said that was that's, impossible. Uh, to be fair, FlyQuest, look, this is the first time in a long time that FlyQuest have won a game against uh, EU competition. So, look, I'll give them a lot of credit for that. But uh, I don't know that that was necessarily the expectation. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I have to agree. Sorry, Yanka, you kind of threw me for a curveball there. Uh, again, we are just waiting on one more headset, I've been told. So, nice. yes, those Headsets things are important, Trace. You Necessary. Need to, you, need, you need to hear where the opponents are running. You need to be able to communicate with your Especially teammates. That guy. And that's a guy that's been on Liquid for quite some time. I'm talking about Nasty Naf. Yeah, absolutely. I think he's been a staple of this team, of this organization, right? And hopefully this is the team where they're going to be able to do some damage again and give NAF and the rest of the guys a chance to win some trophies. And that's exactly where G2 is aiming to be, right? Uh, in contention for those big trophies. Last year they did manage to win Katowice and Cologne, some of the, the two biggest tournaments outside of majors, but those majors have eluded them and consistency has eluded them, right? Like they weren't able to string a couple of tournament wins uh, together. There would be a playoff appearance, then a tough loss, something along those lines. And, you know, now it has as the coach, it's only been a couple of months, but the mood in the team is pretty good. I mean, people are happy with the way things are going. They feel like they're progressing and, you know, constantly working on things and improving. And it's just sort of, you know, finding that form and being a little bit more consistent over the course of a tournament. Here's a stretch for you. Ready for this? This place, if you look at it from the outside, looks a little bit like the Spodic. So you're telling me G2 is going to come here and maybe pick up some of that magic, perhaps? Yeah, I mean, it's not impossible. Who are the favorites for this tournament, right? It's FaZe, it's G2, maybe you can put Mouse in there, VP, like as, as from the outside, and that's kind of pretty much it. And you look at FaZe, I mean, they've had to deal with a lot more disappointment, you know, because they were actually in the final. They took down Spirit and Vitality only to lose to Na'Vi at the very end. So I think the reset is going to be a little bit more difficult for FaZe than it is going to be for G2, right? And some of these other teams are yet unproven. Mao's unproven on the big stage. VP still hasn't really found their game to the same extent like they did at the Rio Major, for example. So all, all these other teams are kind of a notch below.
Is there a conversation to be had around what the support from the Chinese fans is going to look like as well? I mean, I don't know about your experiences, but obviously there's a lot of fans hanging around looking for uh, signatures. And yeah, some of them may be more malicious than others in some senses. But, but you know, I think G2 and probably FaZe are probably the two teams that most of these Chinese fans are going to be familiar with and, and super excited to sort of see play on the stage. Maybe Liquid, again, another big name, uh, is going to be one of those teams that they would be looking forward to outside of the Chinese rosters. So let me grab it there because we, we did have dinner last night. Nico and, and his significant other were on the other side of the restaurant. And yes, there was a line developing outside. There were also people coming into the restaurant mid-meal. I see Nico eating and someone comes up to the table. I don't think that's cool, man. It's a bit annoying, I'm sure. Uh, I, 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 look, I think you, you have to kind of take it as what it is. And of for these guys, it's a really big opportunity to kind of meet their stars. And, you know, it, I'm sure absolutely 100% would be very annoying if you're a player and, you know, you, you're just trying to have a bit of downtime. But, you know, still, these guys want to see you. They want to get your signature. They like you. And that is a good thing. It's a it's a good problem to, to have. Don't yes, get me wrong. Yeah. But middle of the meal, man. Come on. That's kind I of I know crazy. what you're saying. Having that some junk, For like sure. just, just <laughs> dipping it in that some junk. You know, and... So check this out. Like, we do this thing called the lobby, right? And perhaps you haven't seen it. But yesterday, we were able to catch up with both G2 and Liquid. Let's take a look. Going straight into another event. Did you even have time to practice before coming here? No, we had uh, two days off. Then we had one day where we rewatched the, the games we played in playoffs. Then we just played one day regularly to you know just stay in shape. So uh, not too much time uh, of practice. But uh, I think we did a good uh, development throughout the major. I think uh, we feel ready for this event. I was saying this about some of the other teams, and I don't know if you feel this way about your team, but you prep a playbook for the major, and you go pretty deep in the major, but you still would have had a lot more like rounds and strats for other maps that you wouldn't have used yet. So do you still come in anyway without the practice feeling quite ready? Yeah, for sure. As I said, I think we made just a big development uh, throughout the whole major. I think we struggled from the start, but I think as the major was going further, we started to play better. Uh, obviously, we had also two weeks boot camp prior to the major, and we have added a lot of things and as you said, there's definitely things that we haven't shown, but obviously like mostly you have shown, but when you play certain opponents, you still add small things for the opponents to anti strat them a bit. So uh, yeah, but it's not uh, much down to the, the strats and tags that you have. It's mostly to just individuals. And I think that's what we have liked the most of the major. I think if we step up individually, we are going to go even deeper for this one. How are you feeling, Neff? Feeling good, feeling pretty tired though, but hey, uh, well. It's like but it's not because of the chat lag? No. Just bad sleep. Doesn't involve chat lag, no. <laughs> and how about you? Yeah, yeah, feeling, feeling good. Yeah. Feeling yeah. good? Yeah. You're not jet lag? No, I, in fact, I just napped for 30 minutes for a mindfulness. <laughs> yeah. Is that like some kind of like running meme mindfulness? No, just now. Just now? <laughs> We're creating the memes right now. Like whatever happens like on the server is like uh, mindfulness. Yeah, maybe I can say that now. Yeah, this whole, yeah. Is it a misplay? No, no, mindfulness. That's gonna be the, what happens afterwards if I have to rage. I mean, hopefully that's not gonna happen. Uh, have, wait, you've been to China before, right? Yes. How many times? One. So this is your second time? Yeah. What was the first city? Check. I'm like interviewing Brokey, I don't know, like, Shanghai? Yeah. Okay. If you if you compare Shanghai to Chengdu, which one is better? I like Chengdu more. Why? It's more green. Air quality is very good. Um, they have not seen the pandas yet. No, no pandas yet. But it's on the to-do list. Yeah. All right, all right. You didn't seem like you 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 really giving me like that broken impression. Like so, I don't know. No. He he doesn't have jet lag. Jet lag is not a thing. I, I said hello to Broki uh, said hello to me at breakfast. He was like, hello, sir. And I said, hello, sir, back. So maybe we exchange like energy. Maybe it's contagious. I don't know. Maybe. I hope not, because it's going to make my life like very hard. Are you going to do the same thing with the Broki? <coughs> uh, yes. All right. Thank you very much. This was Team Liquid. That was one of the greatest interviews I think I've ever seen. Maybe. Uh, I, I, really, I really enjoyed that. Hugo, it's looking ready. Team Liquid taking on G2, and it's a spot in the playoffs on the line. Kind of yeah. exciting, though. No? You're not jumping the gun because the music is here, and we are too. So a Liquid versus G2 on this first map of Ancient, a BO3 for playoffs. Harry, we love playoffs. Of course, quarterfinals locked in at bare minimum with a chance to fight for semis. Excellent. Welcome to Chengdu. Let's get into the business. I really took a gamble saying that the game was. The game was ready. 
after that little delay. Right, after the, I know, I know. It. I think I nailed it. So here we are. G2 going to start off over on the CT side. And there we go. All right. So, yeah, look. Liquid. Nice to see these guys back on land. Nice to see them in a in a more pressureful environment. Yeah. And really not at all jet lagged, as we've learned. Doesn't exist. Uh, I feel great. I feel dandy. So does Nexa. Watch this. P2K in the hand, Ooh. and he finds that first headshot. Not a bad way to start anymore from Nexa. As they start to move in, he will get run down. Yakindar sticks the landing on the opening. Smokes it down, but Plant will come through. No denial. The spam connects a little bit. Cadian lives. And Liquid need to take space in this post plant. They set up in Temple quickly. It's good control, but they are all boxed in together. It's getting a little bit sweaty in the Temple right now. G2's filtering through the spawn. They've got no kit. Smoke can come through from Hooksy. They need to hurry up. Yeah, one kill off the dualies. Hooksy continues to move in. But it's now fly to step up and rise to the occasion. No more for NAF. Down to the 1v1. Monacy won't get given the fight, and instead it's all Yakinda. And a nice boys rings out for the Liquid squad. Strong starts are so important for this team right now. It's good to see them you know, begin this map in a, the same way that they begun that game against Heroic, right? They went 6-0 up. They closed it out after you know losing six rounds in a row uh, in that first half. But it, it still looked like a comfortable game for Liquid. And let's be realistic with this team, not just with expectations, but also with what we've seen. This team has accomplished absolutely nothing since its inception. The only thing they've done is qualify to Dallas. They're here on a wild card, replacing M80 so you know Liquid we it's about time I'd say that they need to do something here in China and so far the eye test has looked good that opening game and now the chance to fight for playoffs against a battle hardened G2 fresh off of the major playoff Liquid right now just feasting with the MAC-10s Ikindo was a menace with his earlier on and they'll make it so five alive for Liquid side by side as they come through with a conversion. But here's the buy. And G2, according to that little chat with Chad, have some more things to show. Will that come through in this round? Well, I'm going to be keeping a keen eye on Monacy uh, because he wasn't even much of a, a factor in their earlier matchup, right? It was Nico topping the charts. Nico back, question mark. That's it what was everyone map, was. So I think let's get ahead of ourselves. Let's just say he's back, Harry. Did he ever leave? Definitely, he did. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> what is this? You're answering your own questions now, man. Am I? Yeah. I am indeed. In we go. <laughs> the kinder gets a bit bruised and half nades himself, but otherwise, it's a good start for Liquid. Almost got... for mindfulness. Yeah. <laughs> if they don't do it, we will. Well, Liquid, mindful of this B aggression, but G2 have pulled a third player over. They've used almost all of their util. Two smokes and a Molotov remain. And G2, not jumping the gun, waiting for this execute. Liquid will bring it round B-side. G2 are very well set up for this. Lack of helmets means MAC-10s are always a factor, and this molly, if placed correctly, will force Hooksy's reposition. Yeah, they hear the tag as well. Yakindar knows he's forced a bit of a reshuffle out from Cave. And he looks to break in with the MAC-10 now. More util coming out, just chipping Hooksy down even more. He's now pinned in at the front of the site, but well placed from Hooksy. It's Nico trying to lend a helping hand that offers up that double kill. And now Nash has got his hands on the upgrade. Bomb plant in for Team Liquid. That early 5v3 that was gifted over thanks to Hooksy's double. Suddenly reduced to an even odds fight over here at B. You don't have a kit to work with, so time is of the essence here as they look to move in. They get their control over the site, but Liquid are playing the long game. They even spam out from Nafly. Oh dear. Oh no. Naf's getting away with a bit more chip damage. Kadian even barreling through. And at this point, there's no time for G2 to win this round with just the SMGs. Team Liquid, they've been able to walk away with that one. That is a dangerous but sick post part for Naf, right? There's no one who can actually check the bomb. That's why Kadian's just leaping out in fear that they're on the defuse. But Mac 10s not known for their spamming ability, but combined that with Nav, who has the lineup, that's really effective for Liquid. I love that post plant. High risk, high reward, and Liquid get out with the goods. 
A 5e3, as you say, flipped on its head, and Mac 10s looking lethal in this B site tonight. Good round for Liquid. And G2, they only save one gun. Hunter died to the bombs. Yeah. So it's going to get worse before it gets better. One of the things that the deaths were talking about was the, the jet lag. Doesn't the, exist. No, no, no. It's a no, no, it's not a myth. It's very real. Come on now. Oh, are you tired? I actually have a little bit. <laughs> not, not, you know, I'm, it matters less for you and I. sleep. Yeah, I wish, man. I wish. It's that simple, right? But look, who do you think's more jet lag no, jet out of lag, these two teams? Here's the thing. I jet don't need your explanation. Everyone knows what jet lag is. No, no, no. No, no one no. cares what Hugo let thinks. Let, let, me, do my bit. let me do my bit. Jet lag only exists when EU teams have to travel. Bear. Then we care Bear. about it. When we're doing events in EU, jet lag doesn't exist. But now everyone's leaving. Well, who's tired? G2 might be tired of this B site because it's getting rushed once again. These Mac 10s leap in with another entry kill. Now the bomb is locked out. Oh. Uxie's gone oh, round the world. What? And that communication stutters for a moment for Liquid. Naf will still hold that site. Four on two. They've come Hunter's through. Hunter's doing with the same maneuver. Flanks the same flanks. thing. Oh my god. And they're still waiting on the other side of the double doors, man. Hey, on ramp. Oh, poor Naf and Skulls. Yeah. And now Hunter's got himself. A big old gun that Team Liquid are going to have to try and get past. And walk it in. Slowly but surely. I can't believe two players got away with flanking ramp like that. And Hunter spotted, dealt with, cleaned up. And so Liquid looking good to find this round after all. Great save. Plant is fine in the spray. Well, it works, but... Oh... Rewards for that one next, sir. 1v2 here. If he wins, turns away. He looks long and it's given away in. Now Nexa shouldn't be aware the twist is on the big wrap. Up on long side, he's got the kill and the round in the palm of his hand and he'll take it. 4 and 0 oh for Team Liquid. Slappy slap from Twist. And to answer your question, Harry, G2 should be more tired. They should be more jet lagged. They've just come off the major. Liquid have been being chilling, getting ready, and maybe even flipping their sleep schedule in time for this event. G2 have just come off the back of Copenhagen with no time to prack in between events. And so right now, all of this is speaking to the favor of Liquid. They're making the most of this opportunity, controlling this T side again on Ancient. How long will they keep it up? G2's rebite is back. Liquid went 6-0 up to start against Heroic, and they still ended the half 6-6. So they'll be more than aware not to get ahead of themselves with this early lead. First quarter, Merchants for yeah. Team Liquid. There you go. G2 clearing out the lane. But Liquid, you know, as G2 learned last round, they've just been respecting this door's smoke. They don't want to play through it. You want lane? Sure. You can't hold lane forever. And so Liquid will go and retake this just a little bit later. Mm. Heaven smoke. Cave smoke, rather, from Nav. It's going to give Liquid this lane control. Hooksy has nothing. Bit of spam and he's out. They'll pre-rotate Hunter again. Liquid scared of the flank. They've seen this before. G2 are making the read. This is a nice rotation, but they've got to win it on the fight. They've got no more grenades. We open this by saying Nico back, question mark. Now we're about to find out. Top of the ramp. Going to find that yeah. first kill. Nico oh. goes on a tear. That's more like it. Okay. Oh, God. But there's the reply from Skulls, who's looking to take it one step further. Quick rotate out now as Yakindar tries to take away space in red. And if he can get here, if he could win this fight, that is a huge bit of real estate for Liquid to have. He spotted Nexa on the cross back. They go looking for this B player. He sees Monacy and he knows that Nexa's crossed into A. Oh, tries to deny nice. the plot, but won't quite get there in time. And so it's down to this. The ace clutch needed for Skulls. And it's just Monacy left to beat. Oh! Made out. Monacy oh. will dodge that for now. But he can't dodge goals forever. He's got to go looking for this. Bomb is planted. Four skulls back in Donut. And Skulls doesn't take the bait right away. Calls his bluff and checks it a little bit later. Monacy's feeling the pressure. Is this really going to be an ace clutch? Starting with that crazy 3k uh, spray down over towards B. Skulls oh. can't get the ace. 
Oh, it's close. And maybe not even the round as Modesty oh, just locks it in. Damn it. Crazy way for that one to go down, eh? Oh, that hurts. What a round from Skulls. What an attempt. And it's still seconds, milliseconds off of the round. My, oh my. And Nexa as well. He is so tunnel visioned on that kill. He never thinks Skulls will fake the bomb with five seconds. Gets off it, kills him in the Molotov. One shot would have done it. Doesn't matter. It comes up for Monacy. Incredible patience for Monacy. Risking it all on that round. Okay, we've got a game in, a fr in front of ourselves right now. Thank you. <laughs> Shut up, Harry. I'm jet lagged. Oh, yeah. It's a big myth. Skulls. He's shown ooh, a lot of promise in this team. In fact, even at the RMR, where Liquid fell in the final game to Complexity, uh, missing the major as a result, you know, he was, across the RMR, the most reliable player, which seems yeah. like a, an insane thing to say. Without a doubt, the least experienced. But a safe pair of hands, and Liquid will need him to hold on to this lead. Honestly, climbing up, back turn. The Akinda's gone through the cave smoke. So Liquid have forged themselves a five on four. Hunter flown around up here in window, spotted and dealt with. Naf clean with it. Nine and three on our mate Nafly. Nice scoreline for him. Will they get past Nexa? Oh, no, they won't. Nexa Happened. knocks them all down. This one suddenly flipped back the other way. That went from a 5v3 for Liquid to a 1v3 in, in what felt like half a second. Still winnable, but this reposition is really nice. Nexa can play to live and play off of Nico's contact. Kind has got to try and find him. Nexa jumping the gun here. He's going out on his own early. Gives away the kill. 18 seconds. Kind knows exactly what plant he can manifest. Nico heard stepping in. Don't. Oh. He goes back for the tap, uh. and Nico can chase him down right now as he saves the round again. G2 keep trying to give this game away, but someone saves the day every time. First it was Monacy, now it's Nico. Back to back rounds for G2, back to back failed 1v1s for Liquid. That was weird, he heard him running Donut and he still got off the bomb. There was so much time to fakey fakey yet again. Yeah, and it was the okey choky. I feel like as well, you know, second plant's always the real one, right? That's the mindset you're in, facts, like, you facts. know. If so that's why he was sticking it, because he knows that Nico knows that second plant is the real one. So that's yeah, why Nico know, would man, overthink, that's... should overthink it, but he doesn't. Because, man, Nico's back, we already said. You saw that BO1. They destroyed the South saw Americans. saw that 3K as well. Yeah, it was sick, actually. Hey, I'm on the Nico's back train. <laughs> I like, yeah. I, I uh... ride him like a horse. <laughs> It was horse, uh, oh just because it was a little, yeah, yeah, little softer than audio. Yeah, yeah. Horse, just to make yeah, that clear. So here we are, Team Liquid. God, these last few rounds have indeed gotten away from them. That much is clear. Thus, Liquid oh. try to go out in the middle, but this is Hunter's domain. You know, lock twists out. Your Kindar up to his usual antics around the cave, and Hooksy might just get offered up here. The Hooks is loose. Allow back into the safety of B, and then almost goes one step further. He's got no one to help him here. Everyone up to their own devices on this B site. Nico holding the big flank. The bomb's in A main. Liquid might just let your kinder play first, but that will give away this 5v3. You think, Monacy miss. A rarity. Liquid won't bite that one again. Nexa in a nice position. He's got Nico to bait for him as well. Oh, sorry, Hunter. Two players, close A. Income Liquid through the smoke. Hunter needs Nexa to watch his back instead. Hunter's just doing everything. Full 180 degree turn out of Hunter. And Nexa's run down, but it's only Nafly left standing. Missed shot from Monacy again. Oh my god, that's a couple of misses. Now it takes Nico moving in and regaining control. I think, I've seen, I think Monacy's missed more shots in this round than in his career. Like, I don't think I've ever seen him miss. The guy's a little cold to start this map. He was cold back in the BO1 as well. Wasn't really an issue. 
was a bit of a mid-game comeback from 90. Nice double setup, though. Kind of. I mean, it, it, works. it was it was very much Hunter being cr like just legit as hell in that setup. Next, they got a kind of free ticket to ride. Yeah, some of Nexus rounds haven't been too pretty so far, but weirdly enough, he felt like the second best player of the major. Yeah, this team. But that's more just speaking to the. That's like Skulls being the best player on Liquid. It's like it shouldn't. It shouldn't happen. It shouldn't happen. We'll see if it will. Oh, oh, there we go. Doesn't miss those. There's a Monacy kill. I remember that one. Any more from Monacy. Moving in up through ramp of Liquid, but this B site is just thwart with danger. Nico oh, spamming, not quite yeah. finding anything, and will get run at by a Tech 9. Now your Kinder are hot on their heels on a backstab as well. This one could get dicey. This one could get weird. They've even got Hooksy trapped over in Cave. They're going to try and chase him down, and they will secure that kill. They're waiting on Yakindar to try offer up the goods, oh, and now he's got to do it all alone. 1v3, but they don't know where he is. And so oh Yakindar's playing the long game. Nice. Yakindar, right where they want him. And now just just Nexa left to beat, and he hears him. All the oh. info there for Yakindar as he lights up the server. That's the Yakindar round right there. And it will deliver Team Liquid their fifth break in this three-round streak that G2 were on. That's like a that's like a Yakinda IGL round. Like back in the day when he first joined Liquid, or first started in-game leading Liquid, those are the rounds you'd see him go on these massive round-the-world flanks through red when his team plant on B. And they were ugly, man. He never found those timings. His team always got melted, and he would never win those rounds. But man, what a time to do it when Liquid's money was on the edge and every headshot connects off the Tech 9. That's a beautiful clutch up for Yakindar. 13 and five on him. Liquid with that X factor right now. And we'll keep singing their praises if they can keep racking up T side rounds in control of this game and breaking G2's money. This is the Liquid we were promised, that we prophesized. How long can they hold on? This one should be free. Yeah, so long as they don't go A, there's like no danger in this round. They do look like they're going A. Oh no, okay, well then. Oh bugger, let's see. Only pistols, Harry. Yeah, these rounds never get crazy. No one's ever lost the pistols. A little lurk smoke. Gonna get them to big box, but if anything, this is a little dangerous. It puts them into the firing line of this stack of USPs. Hooksy even has a 5-7. Boost up, baited in, but they go swinging in, and the rifles are here to rid G2. You would like to think that AWP is trapped. Yeah, yeah, they oh. want to try and chase oh, Kadian down, Kadian. but he does have to, some support. The rest oh. of the gang are here. Hooksy taking matters into his own hands, but it's just the double kill from his 5-7. Hunter, last spotted over towards B. But Liquid aren't going to go jumping the gun now that they've seen four bodies over here yeah. in this side of the map. They don't have to. They don't have to go crazy. Just wait for Yakindo. Whatever you do, as long as he's in donut, he can play off of them. They've got the info, and they've got the round. Nicely done. Could have gone a lot worse there for Liquid. Oh my god. So at the end of the round, they're trying to shuffle guns. They had a Mac 10, a Glil, an AK. They leave with an AK. They drop two guns. They only saved one. <laughs> they they only they only saved the AK. Wait, are you sure? Or the or the orb, rather. Yeah, I think they only two saved the orb. Two of them didn't save guns. Yeah, yeah, they two only saved, saved the orb. Guns. Okay. That's a bit of an awkward misstep here down the, uh, the last stages of the half. It's not really going to be a problem, but, well, if they lose this one, it will be. So it could. It has the potential to be a problem. Just don't lose. Simple as that. They're going back for A. This is the last thing G2 expect. They've stacked mid with three players, and that's left a huge gap. Got to take it. Got a donut smoke over from the B side. Next is ahead of it, but it's him or bust. He's got to kill them all or give it up, and that smoke is perfect. Monacy breaks it. Bomb can wait to cross. And Liquid are in a fantastic position. And Nexa dies through the smoke. Yeah. First line of defense crumbles away. And 
G2 are left retaking a man down. Twists even taking Donut Control away from G2. Wishful oh. thinking for Monacy as he tries to run through the smoke. Yes. And so Team Liquid had teed up for a seventh. That awkwardness with the save last time doesn't look like it's going to come back to haunt them. As G2 have no choice but to save here. Hunter even hounded down and they'll go on to finish everyone off. Liquid really running yeah. away with this T side after all. It, it looked like, you know, it could have got away from them. G2 went on that three round streak. You were getting a little bit nervous, but then Yakindar comes up with that big 1v3, trigger discipline round on the Tech 9. And since that point, things have been looking real crystal clear for Liquid. The fundamentals are just there, right? Like Liquid have clearly been working hard. They've clearly been pracking and boot camping for a little bit because we're just seeing some nice exec calls out of spawn. All those nades are landing, which is not even a guarantee, especially after, you know, a long time of throwing them. You think that's, oh my God, okay. Pistols through the smoke, Liquid just come jumping through. They ma managed to control it, but these pistols oh keep fighting back. Hooksy with a second. The top performer of G2 right now puts Nav on his last legs. And the bomb is in red. Oh, they don't know. Kadian needs to be careful. He's leading B, but his teammate's coming back around the A side, so he'll wrap and find that kill. Yeah. That's and that one alleviates pretty much all the worry. There was a good amount of worry up until that moment there. Bomb has been planted. This looks like a very fresh liquid, Harry. A very capable liquid. I'm not going to look too far into this for G2. This early in the matchup on liquid's pick on their T side. You know they, they're coming in prep. They've already shown it against Heroic. Playing their own game, you could say. But that game right now is fantastic. Yeah, you know, I think the, the other thing that's very exciting here, and this was something even the desk were talking about, was how, like, Liquid just have to show something. They have to, like, reach... You know, firstly, Chaos. firstly, getting a like yeah. land events is already a pretty big deal for the Liquid sure. squad. But then, when they get to these opportunities, they have to seize them, right? They have to try and make these runs happen. And so, you know, with this Bo3 being for that spot in playoffs, this is a, a big deal that Liquid are kind of in this position, at least to open it up. I mean, it's not... a very good look right now. Yeah. This isn't a team where it's like, oh, you look at them and they, you go like, oh yeah, because of their results, I expect them to go playoffs. But it's be it's because of the name value, the, you know, the players yeah. and the time off that they've had, which is only to their benefit in some weird way. Sure, yeah, you I mean, want more maps, you want more prac, you want more officials, and that's something Liquid haven't had land experience on. But at the same time, this time off has to, you know, give us something for Liquid. It has to it has to pay off today. It has to pay off here in China. Yeah, especially when, like, you know, by comparison, we already heard from uh, Nico in the interview about how they, they, they haven't really had a lot of time to do or change anything uh, since the Major. So, you know, yeah, I think, I think these things can work in Liquid's favor. And now that they won that opening game, which was probably the most 50-50 opening game we had on the BO1s and, you know, the most competitive on paper, and they won it fairly clean, you know, sky's the limit for Liquid. This puts them in the perfect position to make a run to playoffs, which for me is the bare minimum this team should be able to do in their group. Monacy puts it into question in this round. He cuts down Twist. There's two more CTs here, spamming from afar, and Hunter up close. Perfect bait setup for G2. Liquid can't ki uh, keep going here. That's three players spotted in Red Room. They are out. Bomb goes back to an undefended B site. It's just Nico, but he's back. He has shown us that today. And he's even got his friends moving in. Hooksy and Hunter take up position over towards B, leaving the red room behind. And so as Liquid go in here, it's a 3v3. Half a cave would be really nice right now, but they don't want to get spammed. So it comes down for the wall bang. Oh, not scoped in time for KD and the wall bang gets him off the bomb. And Nap now has to hit some crispy shots. That's oh. two out of nowhere. They're inside of the smoke. No. He's got time for this one. Full stick comes through. They're going to run it down. Gun him down. Naf no way in this round. And he will fall to the pistol. Some nice shooting. But that is the half. Liquid still in control. And G2 grabs something at the end.
Team Liquid positively elated, whereas G2 a little more frustrated on the other side. Uh, you know, we've had a, a kind of a, a textbook game for how you want a Liquid scoreline to look right now from top to bottom. Uh, you've got Naf, Yakindar, and Twists leading the charge for Liquid, putting up an 8-4 first half over on their T side. This is exactly what you want if you're a Liquid fan. Absolutely. Uh, Twist was popping in the first map today. He's kept it going. That's a good sign. Now for the top of the board. So Liquid closing the gap and the odds as they start to deal with this A rush. It doesn't go too well. Three in A main all get decapitated by G2, who come through with a convincing pistol round win off the back of those early kills. Molly falls a little bit too short as that smoke bleeds out of spawn and Liquid bleed out in this round. No survivors. It was pretty good. It was pretty good indeed. All the kills come through. Oh, Liquid coming through with a force, perhaps. Katie is saying it's the same force we wanted to do in the heroic game, but they won the pistol, so it didn't matter back then. Went on a bit of a hot streak on the CT side as well. Liquid, first quarter, Merchants. Yeah. And even third quarter as well. Oh, hang on a second. Twist Bootsy. loves his shoes. So blind, this Twists. Able to lock him out of middle. Nico, a little jumpy here as wow. he's chased down by Naps 5-7. Cool it. And so G2 going to respond to this by taking some real estate up through ramp. And this is nice. This gets them control over the B site. Naf is still a threat back in the cave. And Liquid are beginning a rotate over. I like this, though. They're going for the kills. They just need to group up. This is a little awkward for the moment. The swing has to save the day. Next, he needs all of them, and he can't connect their kills. They get the trade instantly. Hunter was holding for the ramp flank, but Liquid showed nothing of the sort. They smoke him off. It's fair enough that G2 go for kills there over Plant because they have no control, but if they went for Cave, they could have found that 2v1. Instead, they find the bulk back in the spawn. And the spots come in. Hunter knows he should save that AK. The percentage play putting Liquid's force by as the focus of attention. Same one they wanted to do in that other game. And right now, 100% success rate for the minute. All one times. <laughs> Starts with this. Hootsy. That is a ballsy call to rush out mid in round two, I feel like. You're, if it's a full eco, they might have the nade stack. If they're buying, sure, you maybe you're hoping they're going for the B push, but rushing out mid at the start of round two, high risk. But it gets you into the action the fastest. True. G2, they're here for a good time, not a long time. Well, this may be a quick map now after Liquid find a force buy. Oh, bro, that mood drop for G2 is apparent. Yeah. They were they were laughing, they were giggling, they they felt great after winning the pistol. Time to get serious. Well, G2 going for that same force they wanted to do last game. <laughs> They're bringing that out now. Hunter tries to run oh, it up through man. middle. That's the uh, the one gun. Almost lost to the wayside. Hoosey able to run through and grab it. Somehow. Good for him, but now G2, a man down, just cycling this weapon. Next, are hanging around, you know, just in case. Might want to give that gun a go. Could boost in the smoke, but takes the upgrade and Runs back to spawn. Spawn that liquor control. They have the ramp smoke all the way down. No blocking can protrude that. Is there a gap? Yeah, Modesty loves looking over this smoke. He loves like spotting that pixel with the AWP on the ramp push. It's not often an angle you'll get a kill on. Oh, the re-smoke. Yeah. It's more just an angle to get info, so you'll see them coming down ramp. You have, you know. But at this point, G2 obviously know that Liquid have this control. And they have one flash. It's either use it for the lane or use it for the site. 
you don't use it for the lane, you may never make it to the site. Yeah, this crossfire between Naf and Yakindar should be too strong, but they deal with Naf. Yakindar does what he can. Twist has to back up now and be ready to batten down the hatches over MB, but he will rise to the occasion. And with a bit of help from that SMG on Yakindar, they make quick work of G2's play up through B ramp. Cadian with some local dialect as well. That means full of ideas on his chest. I've been informed. Oh. And right now we're seeing them. Look what a cooking, Harry. Is that what they say? That is what they say. Fantastic. They're letting him cook. Oh, he is the chef right now. He is serving up a delicious dish of devastation for G2. It's a little salty for them. Oh, the, the nade stack on the Molotov. Skulls is about to feast as well. Three, four, and two oh. little shots. But Cadian saves the day better than letting his teammate fall. That's two aces now that Skulls has just fallen shy of in this game. Yeah, this one a little less devastating. Skulls has played great. I mean, he has just been the safest player for Liquid, the reliable one, even when they were having poor results. I say even when, you know, like... This is the event to prove, to, to change a narrative really yeah. for Liquid. I don't want to jump the gun off of BO1 and a, another map to G2, but everything we've seen so far from Liquid today has brought me joy. Hunter edging, squeezing his way through that smoke. That would be a sight. Here he is out in the middle. Like a wine bottle, Harry. <laughs> He'll make it all the way across. That's what I've heard. And into the boxes for old mate Hunter. But they're not going to uncork him yet. They're going to wait down in mid, give him some time. If you shake it, it explodes like champagne. <laughs> <laughs> so now Nico, will he get pressured through the cave? That's what everyone's wondering. There's two players here. Liquid could try and swing out to, to fight for some of this lane control. But instead, Hooksy goes looking further afield. And we'll get smoked off back at Donut. Nico's just going to get left here to hold on to the flank. And right now, G2 have got their eyes set on this A play. Nico trailing behind, wishing it ran in the family. Cadian gambling the wrong way. Liquid stack on this B site in a full buy round is going to leave them either full saving which would be very weird given the situation they're in. Or this info play, which has come at the perfect time, can set us up for a 5v5 retake round. This is very quick for Yakindar. Can he get that control? He needs to battle Hooksy here in Donut. He's been spotted out. Four rotates assemble for Liquid. Smoke down, plant in, and it's all on this post. It's looking pretty safe for G2 right now, and it only gets safer. I want to see it, Hunter with kills apiece, and they will find the gap. Oh, oh Nafly! He did that. Tries his damnedest, but isn't able to best that double over in Donut. And so that will be the save for Team Liquid. Wow. I think, you know, out of all the ways to lose around, that's an easy one to write off. You were just in the wrong place. You gambled wrong. They made the info play at the right point in the yeah. round. They just had, like, complete faith in the gamble there and that's a round you can call at 11-5 and not feel too bad because you have the breathing room you know if you run if you do that for the rest of the game eventually you'll probably still win the match you know love that ragdoll did they go flying yeah hunted, hunted it like a full-on car wheel that would be a 10 a solid 10 yeah What's better, rag dolls or voodoo dolls? Uh, I couldn't remember what the second one was, but the now one I that do. You poke yeah. and it hurts the person. Yeah. Theory. I've got one of you. Do you feel that? Yeah. Or is it just the hemorrhoids? Here's Hunter <laughs> out through ramp. Looking for the opener. Now Ooh. Fly will respond, and a double kill comes in quickly. As Team Liquid look to battle for this B site control. Ouch. They're going to deal with Hunter over at long. He tries his hand at aggression. 4v2 now for Liquid. And G2, they tried to explode up into B. They thought they had Liquid's number. But Naf repels them. 
Oh. On a seat, can't close the gap. It's swiftly traded and dealt with, and that leaves it all on Nico. It's got a chance for a 1v1 here, but headshot immediately. Liquid map point here on their pick, and a dominant map at that if they can keep this closed. 12 to 6. And Ancient is looking like the flavor of the month. All five maps on this stream today have been Ancient. Finally, in the BO3s, that will change. We will have G2. Tried their damnedest for it not to. No. If this was a BO1, Harry, we would have a clean record. And Liquid do right now. They'll have to do so on Anubis. G2. A last ditch hurrah. A couple of pistols. A Mac 10. Maybe a dream. Just waiting for this late mid explosion. There is no one here. You can, uh, if that smoke stays up, he can fight towards elbow, but the fear comes in. He'll hear the pitter patter. He'll go for a little kill, a little poke and prod. But they'll make their way all the way out mid. You think he can die? You think he probably dealt with this? Snap oh. tries to throw his hand in, but Hooksy will cut it off. And now, out through the donut into Cadian's AWP. Twists will hold the line, and Liquid look to run away with this one cleanly. That is a feel good moment for Team Liquid as they dominate G2 on Ancient. And now they look to Anubis to see if they can lock in a playoff spot here and now in a 2 0 fashion. Liquid pick it to Ancient, and we see exactly why. Welcome back to the Intel Extreme Masters, everybody. It is Twist and company, Naf leading the way over there. Of course, Team Liquid picking up map one. So, after all that said and done, Yanko, frustration levels, where are they? Uh, I think they're not too high. Um, uh, this was Liquid's map pick for a reason. They had a good game against Heroic, another good uh, map here against G2, pretty dominant win and for G2 you know Ancient is a map on which they lack some confidence it's a map on which they struggle uh, at the moment it used to be better for them uh, in the past but yeah I mean they're moving on to their map pick so still not out of it 
Yeah, I mean, look, I guess the big question for me now is like, obviously, we've seen Liquid do it twice on Ancient, and are we going to get to see whether or not they can do it on another they play map? play other right? maps. Because, yeah, <laughs> other maps. you know, it's, it's been good. There's no doubt. It's yeah. looked good on Ancient. There's no doubt about that. But obviously, we've only seen the same map from them back to back. So uh, obviously, going into our next map will be a big question mark. So could this game have been closer, Yanko? And by that, I'm saying, like, how many instances do you think it comes down to? Absolutely, it could have been closer. I think there's two... Mm. Big rounds, you know, that you look to uh, in the first half, it was round eight because Liquid, again, starts off good, wins the pistol, converts, all that stuff. Uh, and then G2 gets on a little bit of a streak. Nico steps up, had that 3K um, on ramp. And after that, it's against pistols where they start faltering. What about that whole idea of, like, let's push towards spawn instead of planting the bomb? Like, is that going to be another evidence right there of, of a round that very well could have been G2s? Yeah, but I think if we if we go into the first half, you can see that it's a force buy from from Team Liquid because the G two the rounds the G two has been winning haven't been too convincing, right? Monesi is going to be posted up, take some nade damage early on. He's going to find an opening here, like he's going to get one kill before the execute comes in. Going to throw some counter utility. Um, in a situation where they are in a 5v4, right? So now they're just playing for the retake, returning nades. I don't know what Nico did here. Like, just completely <laughs> gets caught by the player pushing. He could have just, you know, held that wider angle and just wait for his team to come in. That was a really big kill that he gave up because they have control everywhere except for this gap on mid. You can see Nexa is delayed on the flag. Kenny Kinder just has great timing and no one is really aware. No one is checking for it. I don't know if potentially they had bad info from someone who died that like there was an extra guy ramp because that's, you know, they, they were completely completely uh, unaware of Ekinder's flank. That was a massive round because you look at the money on G2, it's depleted as well. They go into a bad force after this, they lose that, they ha have to eco lose that and that's what gave Liquid such a big lead in the first half. And then that, that second half, we were just kind of joking about it a little bit, kind of talking about it right there, but I believe it was round 14. Yeah, so G2, A, rush in the pistol, win the round, right? You go into the, the anti-force by round and it's a little bit, maybe you don't have too much info on Liquid. You don't know if they're going to force, they're going to eco. Hooksy tries to take mid sort of by himself. They try to, to send him, he dies, and Nico trades one for one. Uh, the reaction is to push up B, and instead of planting the bomb, they just go further to search. Liquid's already there. They lose that round too. Again, ruins your economy completely. Any momentum you were hoping to build, it's gone, and that enables Liquid to basically just get to match point uh, pretty much, and then they just need to close out the game. Yeah, speaking of which, match point did bring us to a GGO map one. It also brought us uh, Air Force aim high player of the map. And let me tell you, he's a nasty folk, and he's a naff. This guy showed up here in, in spades. I think he uh, had quite the impact, Jordan. Yeah, definitely. I mean, it's good to see, obviously, for Liquid that they're kind of getting it done by committee today. You know, it's not necessarily just one player that we were talking about yesterday. In, the, in that first matchup, we were talking about twists. Naff was looking fantastic here. He had a lot of impact, a lot of multi-frag rounds as well. Um, and on top of that, it seemed like Yakinda also came kind of back into his own uh, on this map for Team Liquid. So we've seen good sort of individual performances for, I would say, four out of five of the members so far today. And if that continues to persist, throughout the rest of this series, then maybe there is a chance that they can get the, the win over G2, though. I do still have my reservations about how things are going to go on this next map. Yanko, this liquid, does it look well-oiled right now? It looks like it's operating at, at the capacity we expect out of a liquid. It does. It does look good. And also individuals stepped up. We talked a little bit about Yakindar Had a much better game here. Skulls had a couple of good rounds. Almost pulled off an ace clutch, uh, you know, in early on in the first half. So, yeah, now it's just a question of how is it going to look like on Anubis, I think another small advantage for Liquid here is the lack of information for G2 on the map. And G2 has played Anubis a ton of times recently at the Major, so uh, a lot of info on that. So Jordan, tell me what tell me what to look forward to here in Anubis. What are you thinking? I mean, look, for me personally, I think G2 is going to come back into it. I think we're going to three maps. I've had a little bit of a look at Liquid, and they do seem maybe a little bit shaky on this one domestically. It's certainly not maybe quite as solid as what we've seen out of the Ancient so far. But then again, right, they are a bit of an enigma in the sense that we haven't seen them for the past month or so. So you don't really know what's been going on behind the scenes for, for Team Liquid. And I guess that, as we've said, is kind of the biggest asset that they've got, that there could be something that they're going to just pull out the hat, similar to what we've seen in these last couple of maps of Ancient and uh, run away with the series two to zero. So, Yanko, what do you think Taz is telling the boys there? Like in that huddle outside in the parking lot, you know, what are you saying at this moment going into a map two? I think it's mostly just focusing up, you know, Ancient, it was their pick. We know the struggles that we have on the map. We lost a couple of shit rounds, right? Like that ruined our economy. So let's, let's just make sure that we 
take care of our economy a little bit better um, on on Anubis that in those rounds against pistols we're communicating like you don't let your focus drop concentration drop so those mistakes don't happen it's tough probably you know with, with being tired with fatigue that both teams are experiencing you know that stuff is going to happen but trying to stay alert as much as possible but enduring the pain of today right like if you endure this and you go through and you find success in this best of three not only do you net yourself that playoff berth you've, you've bought yourself essentially more time to probably climb at yourself uh, to where we are Jordan certainly and I mean a conversation obviously that we were having before the match started was Kadian feeling a little bit under the weather so an extra day or two that can really go a long way uh, you know when you're not feeling a hundred percent gives you the opportunity to start to recover a little bit and we'll see for what how uh, G2 decides to approach Anubis right because you don't have a lot of information sometimes you know dancer would be hey let's stick to our own stuff and they have a couple of strats that they like to run on this map you know the b-side smokes and and whatnot but that was maybe uh, maybe they were overdoing it a little bit in some of the games so perhaps the answer is just for this tournament to try to play a little bit more default on t side so you have more options open and you just don't have to depend on whether you got the correct read so do we think that skulls is going to finally get an ace here i mean it gets pretty damn close so let's talk about two 4ks right but maybe here on anubis do we think that this could possibly end here I mean, as far as the 2-0 is concerned, for me yeah. personally, like I said, ah, I think it's a tough one to say. Um, I would be a little bit surprised if G2 were to go down 0-2 in a matchup like this one. Um, you, you would certainly expect a little bit more from them. And again, you know, there, there's obviously always those caveats around we're not too sure what we're going to get from Team Liquid at the moment. But um, G2, we, we know they are a known quantity. They were top four at the Major. And yeah, that was maybe quite a, quite a bit of a disappointing result. But you'd still be hoping that they're not going to go and lose one of the first matches in IEM Chengdu. So I, I have faith that we go to three. And you know what, Yanko, I'm not even going to ask you because I know that you, you are riding that line where it might just be a painful map or it might be a fun, pleasant experience. Either way, thank you very much, gentlemen. We do need to go to a break so we can't get into Anubis. And uh, with that said, we'll be right back after this. Hello to our viewers out there, Mike Loder here from the Ticker Studio, today with your weather across the country. Brizzy is looking warm at 31 degrees with a chance of afternoon showers, so keep those brollies on hand. Turning our attention to Melbourne now, where it is looking cloudy with a chance of... Counter-Strike? ...up the set to try and win it in a 1v5. Chris, three flick, no. oh, the biggie one by one, sex, no way! He wants to... Oh, my God! Who <laughs> does it?
Lights out for Liquid after that first map. They look really, really good. And so this is actually a, a team huddle where the energy is nice and high. Everyone is uh, is feeling good about their chances across this series now. It was kind of a dream Liquid scoreboard on the other side. G2, this is one for redemption. They've got to redeem themselves on Anubis. They've got to long this one out and take us the distance. With a spot on the playoffs on the line. It's all to play for here as we head in to a map that isn't ancient. Whoa, first time of the day, five games in, but yes, yes indeed. Liquid looking to lock in a 2-0 to at least guarantee quarterfinals. It's a fast travel, Harry. It's a it's a fast forward into playoffs and still the chance to fight for semi-finals. Skip those days, get some time to yourself to get ready for what's to come here in Chengdu. And yeah, Liquid have landed and they've impressed to start the day, but finally their first real test, a map that is not green, quite the opposite in fact, and a map that G2 have got uh, formidable results on beating FaZe on this one. Of course, beating VP with an asterisk and even taking Na'Vi, the major champions, to overtime. So there's things to like for G2. Liquid don't really have the same experience against this kind of level. I mean, they did play G2 at the start of the year back at Blast Groups, but that was uh, that was a debut uh, for this roster on LAN. And it's been some time, as you kind of said, at the start of the day before we've seen Liquid on LAN and with something to celebrate, which is the start of the day. How will it end though, Harry? Do you have expectations of the 2-0? and you buying in? Ah, I wish. I mean, yeah, screw it. Why not? Yeah, I'm buying yeah, in. I'm buying it. in. Yeah, Liquid 2-0. They got this one in the bag. Sure, kind of all the numbers, all the history, all the stats, all that goes against them. It's all very much in favor of G2 that they recover here. But I believe in that man on our screen. Hang on. The man that was just on our screens. Uh not these ones. You don't believe in them. <laughs> well, that's actually like way harsher than it. That I, I think it's yeah. harder to come off the back of not only the major, which yeah, sure, I, I like a Jordan put it on the desk, you know, top four of the major, but you know, underwhelming at the same time. That's a, a weird way to look at it. But our expectations of this G2 team are always so high and it feels like they're always good for a final. They should be with the caliber of roster they have, but coming off of that, you know, shame at a major and then also traveling straight here with no prac time. I wouldn't be surprised to see Liquid 2-0. Do you want to know, like, because uh, I just kind of gave, like, a very cop. I just kind of said, yeah, Liquid are going to win. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. Here's, 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 my, here's my raisin, Go right? Uh, Moni C. Yeah. Monsley. Monsley. We haven't really seen him show oh. up in, in his usual form. And usually, he is such a driving force for G2 on Anubis. He's someone who really uh, plays to the extremities of what's possible on that AWP. You will see him make the most audacious plays, and often he's kind of the guy to get the ball rolling. And so for G2, if they don't have Monacy, then someone else has to step up and fill that void. And thus far, I haven't seen the candidates. I haven't seen yeah. the the person to do it. Nico, is it Nico? Is he back? Nico's back. These are the questions. The, the, the rumors of Nico's backening are greatly overstated, Harry. It may have just been one map. We'll have to see. This is a his but it's also round, It's also day one. Right? Yes. Like, I think, you know, even because there's a world where you just catch G2 sleeping a little bit, right? It's fair enough. Fresh faced, off the flight. Yeah. And and maybe you just catch them a, a little bit slow to start, right? Because, like, you know, we you even had that round where, like, Monacy misses, like, four shots. And it's like, bro, I've never seen him even miss once, I don't think, ever. Yeah. 
So, you know, if you catch them a little bit slow to start, well, that's that's bloody great if you're Team Liquid. You ain't complaining. It's still a, a scary group, though, for G2 and a, a scary side of the group because, you know, sure, we have Linvish and Tyloo down on that bottom side of the bracket after losing their opening games, but still in the running in this group. If you're going to look at, at all the teams to go through, well, there's Maus, there's Heroic, who are already down in the lowers. You know, there's, there's some serious competition here uh, for G2 to worry about if they do go down 0-2. They've got to be very careful. I want to see them bring their A game into this map after a disappointing debut. And even that opening game of the day, for a moment, looked like they were about to choke it against 9Z, who another team we have little expectation of. But now Liquid locking in, headsets on, fist bumps going around the square, and we're getting into Anubis. Yes, this is G2's chance to turn it all around. And long out this series after all, their Ancient might have fallen flat, but here on Anubis, G2 have done some fantastic work. So let's see what they can get up to on their T side. A clash between Hooksy and Cadian. And it seems like Liquid have done their homework. Teed up nicely for an A plate. They're going to look to come through with aggression eventually. You don't want to maintain this forever. Right now, G2 are keeping options open. When next, they're making a bit of noise over at main. But then they're going to creep up over towards dark. So actually, this stack, not well placed for Liquid after all. It's looking to get bypassed entirely. As G2 hit the go button on this B play, Yakindar has got to hold the line. And it's just him. Twist is there to back him up from the spawn. But Yakindar's hung out to dry. And so that will be a plant for G2 teed up. Yeah, he kind of, kind of risks the whole round on it, on his you know, engagements going through that smoke instead of playing the full retake. Liquid now have no kit. They needed him to get a couple of kills, and without it, they might be in trouble. It's a nice opener. Twist pokes his head out from spawn as well, but Hunter's on the wrap around the ro uh, 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 wrap around the world rather. They come flying back. Nice shot from Cadian. Leaves just two inside of the site, and they're just fighting for their life, fighting for the round. It's only Monacy. Can money see? Can money do? We're about to find out. One v two. They're running him down. This is ugly, but it's Liquid on the pistol. You kinder or not? They win it. 4v5 without a kit. I want to say as well, right, uh, there's actually a huge moment there where Twists over towards the spawn has a Molotov in the pistol, which is or an incendiary uh, in the pistol, which is crazy. Yeah. He lobs that over, and that's what actually buys them the time to retake from that A flank in the first Sick. place. It denied that bomb plant, bought them a few extra seconds, and, uh, and in the end, it's worth its weight in gold. Because as you say, they're retaking with no kit. It comes down to the wire somewhat with Monacy able to delay it from the back of the site. If that bomb goes down any earlier, they probably don't win the round. So, yeah, nicely done from Liquid to find success in a 4v5. We always call pistol rounds 50-50, random, things like that. But I, I actually like how Liquid have played these two CT pistol rounds in the sense of them putting three-man stacks on either bomb site, they did it on Anub uh, Ancient A site, they did it on Anubis A site. It just means if you get run into, if you hit that 50-50 right, you should maul them. Now they didn't on Ancient, but I, I just like the gamble. You're not relying on one player popping off against Glocks. You're relying on, you know, a setup, a bait and switch, multiple CTs in the same position. So Liquid are trying to bring some, or something to rely on, I guess, into very difficult round, which is a CT pistol. It's a shocking win, though. G2 come in with a force buy. Monacy on the AK. Nico Galil. So G2 definitely still deadly in this second round as they crawl through middle with the bomb. Uh -oh. That is a lucky time to call round not live. We'll see if it goes through. There hasn't been. Okay. No, nope, the round is live. Oh, We're it committing. Is. It is. It is definitely live. Oh, oh, oh. And they will lock it in. Convincingly done. So I don't know what happened there. It's her typing and I yeah. saw knives get pulled. So, but it felt like so, Liquid called that. Yeah, Liquid did. Your Kindar lagged out. And then I they did. won the round anyway. <laughs> Kinder actually crashed. It's 104v5. I'm. I wonder what, I, I don't know. It's not, it's not my decision, luckily. I'm glad I'm not an admin. Good luck. I think you just take it, surely. Yeah, You're like, I mean, yeah. I'm sure Liquid take it, but if they called not live and then they went around. It was like, 
No, it is live, and he runs out through camera thinking he's going to have his moment. And then the damage done. I don't know how it works. All I know is Liquid win that round somehow. And again, three A stack. Nice setup. They re-aggress on A main. And again, they win it without your Kindar. <laughs> this seems to be a trend here. All right, we can ride it off, maybe. He's back. He's in. And we've refreshed, and Liquid do have that round, folks, so... It's a bit awkward for G2. They missed the smoke on the B site anyway. And then into the heavily grouped Liquid on A. <laughs> Think what happened so much success with you, Kendall. We just removed him from the hunt entirely. <laughs> You're cut. We're fine with 4v5. Oh. Anything to stop him from in-game leading. Oh, it's perfect. Here we are, up against the pistols. It's cleanly done. 4v3 here. Uh, don't worry about that kill. Didn't happen. Oh, nice shot, but nothing. Done. Deagle's dead. It's nexing time. And the ghost moves in the top middle. Twist will be there to lock it in. So 3-0. and oh, Cleanly done at four Team Liquid off the top. Surely. Really good start for Liquid. Want to see what this gun round now looks like for G2 now that they have a full buy and everything to play with. No AWP yet, but T-Side Nubis are going to be punishing that. CT timing aggression. See what info Liquid want to go for if they want to make any plays out of spawn. They have Cadian's Orb. Option is there to make a move immediately. Where do you stand on this notes discussion I saw that's been being had Ooh. about the, the notes on the... Because you see I, there... I do have, a, I do have look, an opinion. Yeah. Look at Cadian. He's, yeah. he's got notes. I see those notes. So what do you think of that? I think the notes are good. I, I don't... I don't know if you should be like limiting page because I think then it just comes back to you, know, you just change the. I font. remember back in exactly back in school. I remember like some not real exams but tests. Teacher would say like, "Oh, you can bring one note, of, one note of, one page of notes into the exam, yeah. or you just write as small as you physically." They can. didn't so regulate want, the size. No, what the... are you going to do? I, I miss my handwriting is just simply tiny. Um, I did see what handwriting. No, you were a, screwed. Yeah, I couldn't read it. Um. <laughs> I think the limit, I saw someone tweet, I've never seen this. I saw some, I think Maku tweeted that he'd seen players with smoke lineup images in their notes. Now I think that's where that's where the line is for me. Like if you're gonna bring in images of how to throw your bloody nades, maybe just learn the nades at that point. So I think that's the limit. I think that's hand drawn lineups. There's a debate there. I think if they're well drawn, maybe I'll allow it. But for the most part, yeah, I don't think uh, there's a problem with notes. Like if you've actually read I've I've ha I've read a few pages of notes. I actually think they I don't think they're harmful. I think it's helpful. It it reminds you of some of your strategies, other teams tendencies, what players like to do. Contributes to the Yeah, I think it's just the makes high the, level the, we the used level to see. Higher, yeah. yeah. Cool. I think it's good especially in those timeouts where you can't talk to, you know, refresh yourself, read your notes. But once you start printing pictures, you've lost me. G2 out mid. You are literally gatekeeping it by literacy. Yep. Okay. If you can't read, then draw. Okay. Here we are. Over in mid, G2. They've taken all this control. And now they're looking to creep in through dark. This is a B split in through temple and that dark position. But they've got to get past your Kindar. And they will. They brush him to one side. Now it's just Naf trying to hold on. He's got support from KD and moving in, but it's going to get here too late. Not destined to be involved is this AWP. Had that one chance to use it over in middle. And now the save is called. A lot of money, but still calling it. So Liquid just immediately don't believe in that round. It's fine by G2. They'll take their win on the board. The spray felt like it could have been more for your kid, but... Well controlled by Monacy, jiggling back in Donk style with that crouch key. G2 
they needed a clean round to get them off to the right pace here on this T side. Don't have to worry about mon money in the early game. All right, determined sounding G2. I'm assuming that was them clapping. Sure. Maybe Taz. He's got big hands. Really left it there, huh? <laughs> Didn't know how to follow it up, Mike. Oh, I bet he does, you know? Like, I, <laughs> How would you I've know? always thought that when I see them hands. But here we are, Team Liquid. Are they going to catch these hands, or will they meet them there? Nice. As they tried to come through with a bit of aggro over towards the A main, but swiftly sent out by that util package, lobbed in from G2, the smoke molly combo. And it's easy does it right now. Once again, looking to work this mid control with Nico leading the charge there. Yeah, Liquid have been playing very heavy bomb sites and leaving mid open. And we've even seen rounds where Kadian's just jiggling from camera with a Molotov. So G2 have already realized that. They're exploiting it in these gun rounds and they're taking control. But it's where do you go with it? You want to try and stay fresh. They know we're mid open in a five on five. One of these sites, whoa, has three players on. Your Kinder smoke spam. He hears Nico come through. He's just going to take the fight in the open. Nice off angle to get one more. Your Kinder with a fantastic round here. It's forced G2 out. Monacy goes in. Almost sent it too far. Quick shot. Kading needs to follow up. He's alone in the bomb site right now. And he drops the bomb. Monacy oh. cuts down two rotates, but this might be too far gone. Oh, a chance for Kadian to end it. But now Monacy, given a chance for the ace on Anubis, would not be his first. Kadian makes it his last. Great shooting for Kadian on the site. The turret. And about He's time right as well, about time, because, you know, on, on, on Ancient, he wasn't really needed. It didn't really matter that he wasn't, you know, ascending the scoreboard. Everyone else was looking good, but there we are. Puts that orb to use and even stops Monacy on his way to a crazy attempt at the ace clutch. Real nice shots as well out of Kadian. And after the round, he didn't even, you know, no standing, no hype, no screaming from Kadian. Just right back. Okay, guys, listen, we need to do this. Staying on the ball, staying ahead of the game right now. Liquid, at least from the vibe check, the armchair psychologist, they are not putting this opportunity to waste. They know how much of an advantage they have yeah. coming into Chengdu. Even though they don't have the recent reps on LAN, they are still making the most of this, this chance of being fresh, being far more well rested and coming off the back of prac not officials so it's not like you know we've seen a lot of xx out of spawn for them on ancient these are things that may not work as effectively in a couple of weeks time because teams will prep for them they'll see they'll work out what they're doing they've not had the data on liquid no one's no one's anti-stratting liquid here in china so that will obviously mean liquid have to stay ahead of it in due course, in time, but right now it's working to their advantage. Oh, Nikinda, second man Ooh. there, can't quite get a beat on him. Nexa will trade that out, and now it's Naf again, left alone. Oh, Tate's moving in, and Kadian gonna find one through the smoke. Sure. His orb is hitting, there's no doubt about it. And the rest of G2 are all trapped down here in dark. Monacy finally gets his hand on an AWP. That nade is going to get rid of Nexa, and so now Monacy's got to fly solo. 1v3. Orp out. Oh, and nice. twists, forced into it. Monacy knew that swing was coming. He could hear the tag. It's one kill in the right direction. But the bomb dropped from that smoke shot out of Kadian earlier on. Means Monacy's got a tango on the cross. Only sees one man on the jump up. As he swings this, he's not looking in the right place. They haven't finished the job, though. Don't move a muscle. This layered setup is perfect for Liquid. Skulls can swing off of the orb contact. Bodice uh -oh. grabs one. And now he's on for a round. Now he's on for a 3K. Clutch up against the AWP. He spotted Kadian earlier on that jump. Eventually, he has to cross for the bomb. Kadian knows he has the kill in his sights, but Monacy ah! wins the round. Fast as ever. 
You don't give this guy a slither. Yeah, I mean, you take a swing for the king, you better not miss, right? That's the thing about Modesty. They bring him down to what, 12 HP, 10 HP? They nearly catch him crossing, but nearly is not enough when you're up against Monacy. Felt like just such a weird trade out. Kenny didn't have the angle forever. Then he leaves, Skulls takes it. Why did they swap? Skulls can swing off contact, they can peek together. Like Liquid just changed their tune at the last second and it cost them everything. And so, you know, one of my big worries for G2 coming into this was that Monacy wasn't, you know, lights out in these first few games, but this is the Monacy mileage you expect on Anubis. Right now, it's essentially all Monacy. 10 and 4. On that dashboard. Smoke is annoying. Hooksy can do nothing with it. G2 are still in their default. Again, they've got this free mid control. They're going to take a lot of space. Four on B right now. Skulls only has info. He can't even block if they wanted to rush him. So Liquid make a nice contact aggressive move. But it still might not matter. If Skulls falls for nothing here, this round will fall by the wayside. And there it is. Open runway. They'll just take A. The flank timing is all that Liquid have. But as soon as G2 plant and realize his site is empty, they'll be ready for the flank. This might have to just be a straight up save for Liquid yet again. Bomb has been planted. Kind of a rough way for these last few rounds to have gone if you're Liquid, right? You were riding the high of those swift shots at Acadian, and then you uh, you end up having the Monacy clutch go against you. And in this one now, they, they gamble over towards B with the intent to aggress. Uh, in the mid round, and it all comes down to that one kill you were talking about, right? When Nico finds skulls on that A site, the uh, the round is done. Now there's still a chance to do great damage in at the end here. For Naf and Yakindar, they're trying to make this one a costly round, but Monacy is switched on, and he's going to deal with that man over towards Rugs. Oh, they're still looking to knock out these guns, but the big ticket item is that Monacy AWP, and he gets out with it just fine. It's a bit what when they're stacking? A bit obvious. A bit obvious. Okay, keep blocking on mm. the stack so that they don't think that you've got numbers there. All right. I mean, the gap is mid. I, I think he meant keep blocking over oh, the water. Oh, the other side. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Forcing them into the stack. Okay. Okay. like to hear it. It's in a big rust coming yeah. through. We've got a very vocal team here, right? In the, yeah. in the core. In Kinder X in game leader, KD and current, and Twist with a wealth of experience, especially in Europe. Being in one of the world's best teams. Or well, the best team for a while. Mid is finally held by Liquid. Perhaps making a, a crazy move all the way through war with this 5-7 as well. He's going to be right behind them on the backstab. Oh, that's the bomb. That's the bomb getting away from G2. Naf arrives just in time, and with Monacy missing that shot, the bomb is still contained. Smoke for smoke. Is he really going to try play through this and just grab the bomb? Movement boy, yeah. That's Monacy. Pop, skip, and a grab. He gets oh, out. He's, he's done it. I always have faith in, in Monacy making those moves. They could go B if they're crazy, but they don't know it's a triple flank now. Naf's been joined by Twist, who took those kills in middle. Set up very well off of the bait of Skulls. Now Liquid with no kit, flanking for the round. Naf's going to be that first point of contact, but he's got Point's a lot out. of bodies here ready to trade him. G2 are aware that... Everyone is coming in on this backstab. Monacy doesn't miss on an Affly the second time around. And so now it's just Kadian and Twists. Time getting away from them. And with a missed shot from that AWP, no trade in sight. This one won't even get attempted. For a moment, Liquid felt like they had G2 right where they wanted them. That bomb dropped in the back line. But Monacy able to pick it up, able to cement it with that kill on Naf as he moves out through main. And Monacy... Really living up to the hype here by the time we get onto Anubis. Just a highlight reel of Taz fist bumping Monacy right now because he is saving this game for G2. It's, it's a shame that Nap only has a 5-7 there and he has nothing, no support, no, no other gun. 
not really what you want for that position to stop Monacy from grabbing the bomb through the smoke. But G2 make the most of that chaotic situation. They take space in the post part, which is so important. If they sit on the site or try and play towards Fountain, they wouldn't realize it was triple flank until it was too late. But they're positioned very well to stop that 3v2. Through the smoke with a break. Naf just baits for your kinder. Oh, they're not going to check him. They have no idea until it's too late. Oh, that's ugly. No more. Stop your kinder. Three kills. Ice is out this round in an instant. Yeah, very well done from the B defense there across the board for Team Liquid, right? It all starts with the Akindar on that tear. But uh, then reinforced with a late swing. I think it was from Twists out from Glyph. He's just kind of playing the long game, playing the trade. Very cleanly done. And at all stages, they kind of had these like bait and switch setups being ran. Nice crossfires. Even if Yakindar fell here, right? Like Naf was ready to swing and help him out from behind the pillar. So there were layers to that defense for Liquid. And that's a feel-good moment, right? G2 have kind of picked up a few of these annoying rounds if you're Liquid. And then you... You find the momentum break there, you put a stop to the streak that G2 are embarking upon, and you do it really cleanly. It's like finally one of your holes has stood the test of time. You know, we've seen Liquid leaning pretty strong over towards this B site. They're just gonna explode, Harry. Oh, you can duck. Revenge can't, is sweet. Can't win them all. This time caught with nades in hand, and Naf is even whittled down low. Liquid, this might just be a save. I mean, he can be an AWPA. Cadian, just saying. Maybe swap out. That will come through, but whether Liquid retake depends on this first kill here. Are they given anything? We've got lineup smokes coming in to retake. It's a dark smoke for Cadian. Skulls can maybe... Or twist, throw it into long. They've got to go quick. It's not actually the best smoke. It lands inside of dark, so... G2 is still going to be able to fight for this position. Time is ticking as well for Liquid. Half gone. Entry comes in. Twist very low. Two players are. Oh, this rifle will rid them of any heads. Skulls trade. Someone must stick for the boost is perfect. And that smoke on the inside of Dark does Liquid no favors. That feels like a very strange smoke to use for the retake. Yeah, it, it lands on like the, the far side of Dark. Like the smoke that, you know, like T's would look to throw when they're trying to get out yeah. down towards the beast there. If someone's water, sure, but it doesn't stop anyone from sitting even here where Hooksy is and fighting for that post plant. Nice boost for G2. They play it perfectly. It's still a very losable round if they overswing, but they're set up as if Liquid are going for it. Liquid will pay that price. Now a move getting made. What a play. Oh... Oh, even this is awkward though, right? Because now when they spot him, they're just going to swing no. a second man out. Hooksy, double kill secured. And with it, the round, this lead that Liquid had now looks to disintegrate. As it's G2 finding success after success. And sure, you had that one round come through for Liquid where they had a lovely B defense and a, and a gnarly hat trick put up from Yakindar. But back to their winning ways for G2. Back to the promise of Inferno that sits waiting in the wings as the decider here. They've heard him now, but it's worth it to grab the orb. He can't even fire it, though. Monacy crouches in, and G2 come through with an even half at worst, and probably a winning half, as Liquid's money has been cracked open at the end of their CT side. That's an annoying round for KD, and he had one chance. He had to hit the shot to save his teammate. And with the miss comes both of them falling to the in-game leader of G2. Nice recovery for G2 here. This was a 4-1 start for Liquid. G2 definitely got the ball rolling. Some nice post plants. Solid mid takes. Been making Liquid question a lot with the exception of a clutch here and there. G2, even like, look how confident they are. They're, they're just walking through the smoke. Flashes do land, but they know not one round Liquid have competed for this middle position. It comes down to a block again. Three strong for Liquid. That's something. Oh, they're going to break the smoke open and come straight through. 
Overwhelming Cadian and Twist. They're not ready for Skulls, but now they know about him. Now they can deal with him. And Hunter will. Naf barreling in through the back line. And this one still has legs on it for Team Liquid. Done far better than it was looking. That double kill from Skulls has really given them a leg up here, a reason to fight for this. Oh, this is quick. He needs to go, though. Yakindar fast on the flank and Hunter back turned. So many angles to be considering right now, and they're kind of tunnel visioned on clearing out this player through mid. That gives Yakindar so much room here. That one's free. Well, the next one cost them. It's just Nexa, and they sandwich him in. So Liquid, with just the SMGs, managed to even out this first half. Even split heading into this second half of play. Liquid battling back with SMGs down at the tail end of that first half. For G2, they come into this second map with Taz having given them a rousing speech, telling them he needed them to communicate more, get a bit louder, and wake up. And it feels like most of G2 have got that message, especially Monacy, who very much spearheads the charge here, the driving force behind G2 on Anubis. And he's living up to the hype right now. A monster map for Monacy, but he's got to keep it going. It's only six on the T side. Ooh. Monacy will start strong. Dex Cadian in this pistol round. Yakinda is trapped right now, and he has a Molotov, but might not get to use it. Exit getting thrown on B-bomb, spotted. Hunter, one kill in the game right now. He'll just cool it off. 5v3, Monacy has lightened the load of this round. And that bomb is trapped out on B-long, not wanting to commit into... The terrifying threesome on this B-bomb site. Liquid reset, re-smoke. And perhaps we'll let Skulls play as they go for an A-split. Oh, 
Oh dear. Nice. Good return from Nico. Important one of that. And Liquid, they were a little slower to this, having to rotate in late. So losing skulls, losing that foothold that they had. They don't even know where Nico's gotten to in all this downtime. And as they move in, this plant is anything but a guarantee. Nico will put a stop to it, but the bomb plant oh. found. He nice will shots. make up for it as Nico locks them out of his sight, but not before he's able to stop that bomb from getting planted. So that's going to give Liquid a nice little cash boost heading into the second round of this second half. Yeah, a tasty little force buy here for Liquid, but safe to say Monacy has woken up and Nico tapping alongside him. This is the terrible twosome parry that we want. Don't have a full force. Instead, it's just a bit of belief from Naf and his old teammate twists. Taking this AK and putting it to use on a T side eco round. Gonna have maybe players jumping around this corner so Twist can find an entry kill, but Hooksy's ready with a block. Hits are still primed right now for G2. And Liquid try to go spilling through that. But Hooksy is going to do enough to keep them at bay. And so this one gun now for Liquid is left clutching at straws. Ugh, even naded down to half health. So at this point, maybe you're just looking for a bit of damage here if your team Liquid. Try figure out a way for Twist to make a little incision into the G2 ranks. Minute left on the clock. Kadian sending in the AK first. Yeah, Twist can look for a little hole and try and find a 1v1 here rather than walking into a crossfire on that B-bomb site. There's definitely options open. Doesn't look like Nexus overcommitting to this, so right now Liquid could get all the way into A. And all G2 would have for that is information. So Monacy is drawn into the question here, but I think he's good for it. Oh, are they going to go for the kill on Nexa instead? Spotted out. They hear the steps. 15 seconds. Monacy hits his and twists against the world, against all odds, and against Monacy, which is not an easy task. G2, get rid of that forced AK. And now come through the buy for Liquid. G2 landing back on their feet, though. Yeah, very reassuring to see. I mean, you know, I think I mentioned how Taz gave them a bit of a pep talk and asked the guys just to wake the hell up. And I say he asked them. He did He did a bit more than that. He was... Demanded. Yeah, them. demanded them to wake yeah. up. But I think that's a pretty sound assessment. I think you could tell the G2 just looked a little bit sleepy. He didn't have the, the usual stars arriving. And Monacy's t certainly taken that advice in his stride, hasn't he? What an escape for Skulls. Oh my god, they still lose a kinder going for that fight. Hooksy's hitting heads today. But Skulls roots A main. Here's the footsteps, just jumps up into rugs. Despite that, G2's advantage still sits. And if Liquid just trying to waltz into this B bomb site, it is well defended. I mean, there's so many players here. G2 should have this one locked in, just into the meat grinder for Team Liquid. G2 gets churned up by Monacy. And now it's all left onto Skulls, who can't finish the job. Just the one and done. Another multi-kill round from Monacy, and G2 are getting loud. They're getting hyped up on this one. Another, another celebratory hand slap for Monacy. Or hand embrace. Hand embrace, I preferred hand slap. It's not really a slap, though. It's like a high five, but is there more contact? Does a high five imply speed, Harry? Yeah, that's why I say How long breaks. before a high five becomes a handshake? I think they are very different. Yeah, I guess one's high and one's low. Yeah. Okay. But you could do a low five. Give me a low five right now. 
That was horrible. You didn't yeah, I tried slap to, it. I tried to grab it, you know. More of a... Ugh. Closer to a handshake. That felt disgusting. Yeah, right, so... Cl- clammy and... Sorry, man. Hot. hot. So, yeah, no. I mean, Monacy is just on another level yeah. right now. 22 and 6. It's he like came back. Not even fair, really, to have people play up against him when he's this good. No, we'll talk to the admins about that. A nade early, but Liquid had just kind of come running into this A site. Twists in everyone's favorite position. The late bait. But no better guy for the job right now. As they come gunning. Crossfire, ready to swing. Monacy just kills one, and Nexa takes all the glorious twists. In a world of death, soon to join them. Nice and easily done for G2. This is it for Liquid. Even, if they want to be competitive in this game, it's on this round. Even the way that these rounds have gone is like very frustrating for Liquid, right? Because you think about it, in the round where they try to hit B, where they finally bring the guns out, what did they run into? Three-man stack. Okay, well, then we'll try to go A on a kind of low buy with the with Tech Nines and armor. Oh, now there's 3A. So, you know, they can tell that they're getting out red just on the kind of numbers that they're running into it. It's not like there was any crazy info gathering. It's not like that was a super delayed round. That is G2 leaning that way on a feeling yeah anticipating it's... the buy and what team liquid might look to do with it and so this is a frustrating way to be losing rounds if your team liquid it definitely was a while where all you would think about with hooksy is just his individual performance especially at the end of go like he was a weak player but firstly that's improved in cs2 without a doubt as an individual he's hitting way better shots looking way more comfortable but his calling has also massively improved it's felt like when g2 aren't winning titles it's more because their stars aren't showing up. Hunter's had a down period. Nico has had some off tournaments. And it's it's not actually felt like Hooksy's calling has ever really been the problem, especially not in CS2 for G2. So some nice reads. Nothing surprising. Good grenade for Hunter. That'll soften them up. He needs to finish the job, though. 3 and 11 in a very important position on this B bomb site. Hunter and Hooksy. Dealing with this execute. And once again, G2. How many numbers do they have over here towards B? They've got three. They're leaning heavy towards this side of the map. Break. Even going to break that smoke open. Oh. We'll feed Hunter, but uh, Nico okay. rather there to put up a defense to lock this one down single handedly. It's all Nico. Is he really on for the ace? Not going to get it, of course, as Nexa hounds down that last man. But slowly but surely, all the pieces are showing up here for G2. It started with Monacy with a hard-stopping performance. Now Nico rising up the ranks to join him. This is exactly what you want to see if you're a G2 fan. Yeah, Liquid have been unable to get any picks in this T side. They are just executing into stacked bomb sites. Middle has been blocked. Monacy's been very mobile. They've had one kill every round of the T side so far, and that is it. They are running into a brick wall right now, and there is no one to break them through it. That's the difference, right? G2, when they were encountering issues, who could they rely on? Who could step up and and shatter those man advantage scenarios, it was Monacy. And then that brings them back into the game and slowly but surely everyone's getting activated. For Liquid, there's no such luck. No one's bailing them out individually. Calling wise, they've walked into the stacks every single time. They're being beaten on all fronts right yeah. now. And Nico's just racking up kills as well, four and that. Nice smoke nade. And every single kill on the, the defense on that B-bomb site from Nico, so. 11-6 and another desperate reinvestment for Liquid. Oh, if it ain't already bad, that nade makes it worse. Hunter again giving up at the right time. Oh my God, they're not walking into a stack. What does this mean? There's only two players here, Harry. How will they hold? Wait, hang on. That's going to slow them down. If you look at the minimap, Nico is moving over. And so here's that triple setup materializing right as Team Liquid are looking to move in. So telegraphed every time. The Tech Nine's fast out dock might do something, but that Molly makes him go or bail. It will be the latter. Nico just looking for kills. Got to be careful. That AK's at long, they know it. Oh, 
I know there's a lot here. What you got, Nico? Boom. The util has been so punishing, but hang on. With Nico dead, that was the one player with any health left removed from the round. Hunter's gonna have to try and make up for it as they lose Hooksy in at the back of the site. Everyone is so hurt over here towards B and G2 are now pulling over oh. these remaining players. Nexa arrives just in time. Naf dead. Hunter follows up and that leaves it all on Skulls. If only his arms were just like one inch longer, he would have that in the bag. But instead he's gonna get wrapped on and Nexa will finish the job as G2 sprint towards the promise of Inferno. One round away from taking this one the distance and denying Team Liquid. That 2-0 they were searching for, that 2-0 they were hoping for. Yeah. After a great start to the map as well, they open this 4-1 up. Since that point, they found two rounds and nothing to show for it since getting onto this T side. And I'm, I'm glad we're going all three because it's it's not just, you know, Inferno to finish, Harry. Some say the best third map, but more importantly, it's a great map for both these two teams, right? We've had two kind of blowouts uh, in this series, presuming G2N now, and we go to a map where G2, as Yanku said on the desk, won every time they played it at the major, four out of four. It's a map where Liquid have been uh, outstanding on domestically, but now get to put it to the test against the best. So, it's, it seems like the perfect middle ground map to finish this series on. Can G2 get us there clean? Or will Liquid put up some final resistance? Shake off this dominant map. Hunter, say what you want about his score, but he's not been a liability on CT. He's given up Dark at the right time every round. Reinforced with Util, always bought enough time for Nico's rotation. This time it is just Hunter though, so not only not a stack, Harry, but in fact a nearly empty bomb site. One man v the world. He's got two mollies though. Again, G2 just buying so much time. Look, there's going to be everyone here. Oh, he tries to break the smoke. That will gift KD in the opener. G2, this defense starts to materialize, and now the smokes are fading. With Hooksy knocked out of the round, this one might just have to get written off here and now. They're even gonna lose Nico back in the spawn. Monacy at 23 and six, he's like, hell yeah, I believe we can do it. Nexa, do you believe? Nexa's like, no, I don't. And so they will just look to save here. You know, the going's good right now for G2. They don't feel the need to go and risk it in a 2v5. That would come from desperation, and they're anything but right now. The, the money is perfect, and they've got five more chances to close this game out. It's not that money, but yes. Uh, In MR12, that's a lot. Five chances, that's a lot. Sure. Surely. Round by round. Round by round. Right. round. That's All how right. you look yeah, at yeah, it. Yeah, that I is have how enjoyed seeing Zeus it. back behind Liquid. Like, not so much in this last 20 minutes, but prior when Liquid were winning, he was getting very hyped. He was getting very loud, you know, legendary coach. Part of a, a large part of why Twist's left face to come to this project as well. Wanted to be reunited with Zeus. And, yeah, his accolades speak to that as well as what we see standing behind Liquid, but later to the coaching scene, Taz bringing a lot of energy at the same time. And honestly, I actually really like that that's how Taz is kind of elected to yeah. to coach this one. I think that's what G2 have needed since the first map. Someone, Someone to, to kind of get them going. Bring and, them in. Yeah. It seems like a team that suffers a tilt, uh, definitely, some of these players. And yeah, it's a, a different kind of coaching that these G2 players have ever had. I, I think, think as well, you know, it, but the, if we get to a third map, like Hunter's going to go outside, splash a bit of water in his face, maybe. Something just to wake him up. Not outside. That'd be a weird place to do that. Yeah, find Probably in a bathroom. water. <laughs> Kadian opens up the round with a kill on a hook seat. And so another man advantage round delivered to Liquid to open this one up. It's a gap. If Nico wants to push mid, there's no one here. Oh, I say that. I'm wrong. Twist all the way back at spawn. Thank you, Jakey. So there is no gap. 
There is no way back in for G2. They, again, leave this B bomb site in control of one man. But man, when you see Monacy and Nico group up in mid like this, they're going to do something. They're going to look to take some space. Monacy loves aggro, plays out through middle. It is being considered, but Monacy's now got the drop on Kadian here, and he's going to hit that flick. Monacy, no more as Twist comes back in. Is he ready for a second player? He is. Nico knocked out. And so Team Liquid, round by round, is how this one's going to come together. They've at least salvaged this mid aggro. They've denied it. Hunter whittled down a 1 HP, barely surviving. Oh, Twist is so clean right now. Two or three kills in this round. Two of them very hard shots to hit. While he's running, cancels that strafe so well. And round by round, that's two in a row for Liquid. Four more to go for overtime. Those shots are, are really difficult to hit so cleanly when you're getting peeked into when, when Twist is running forward, but nails his counter strafe. Great mechanics. That was never a doubt for Twist. And deals with two re-aggressing players in the mid. G2 still got a full buy. They have loads of money off of that streak at the start of CT. Six in a row. This will perhaps be coming to a close if they can't end this map soon. They'll have to start actually making decisions based on economy. Yeah, it's been you be. plain sailing up until now, right? That's what happens when you lose seven players total across six rounds. You do have a lot of money banked up. Yakindar risks it all on a smoke walk in through dark. But there's a nice response out of Kadian. And they know about Hunter. They know where he is, but they will, they will deal with him. Bringing this one down to a three on three. The bomb dropped back over towards Long. Skulls might be the candidate nominated to go and get that. Yeah, this is awkward. This is going to take some serious time. If they, the Twist is leaving, that just leaves Naf alone and Doc. They might not even recommit towards B. The Util is going to buy them more time, though. They picked up a re -molly. That's perfect. Smoke will not stop Twist. He can come through that gap. Flash will delay it. But re -molly and Temple delay it long enough for the smoke to fade. That's it's a bit of an all. issue. Monacy and Monacy is posted. He doesn't miss. Not in this map, at least. Util pulled, but no peek on the back of it for Twist, who just sits here patiently waiting to see if he's given anything. Nico's oh. crept into the site, and right now Twist has missed all these timings. Nico up close. Twist is going to trade it out. In that moment, he cleared so much of B that they thought that the Team Liquid weren't committed there anymore. And so for a moment, G2 were out of position. And that's allowed the plant to come in. Twist is trying to have a... A real return of form in this second half. And now he's got a clutch up to keep Team Liquid oh, on Anubis and he'll manage it. Team Liquid riding on the wings of Twist right now. That was so beautifully played. These last couple of rounds of Twist, he, he doesn't make a mistake. He makes every right decision in that pre-plant, throwing the bomb on the cross, even though Monacy's not there, finding Nico on the gap. He doesn't swing across the open. He hears Nico get into the bomb site. He hunts that kill down. Naf even plays for him first, which while not necessary, they had the info. They knew exactly where Nico was. And this is what was lacking for Team Liquid. They didn't have that player to kind of break them back into the game, to bring them back into the fold. And Twist is very much emerging as that character. That's now back-to-back -back triple kill rounds from Twist. And, that's and that one is in the clutch to keep this comeback in. It's not just clutch. That three-on-three three was very difficult with Liquid having no util and barely having the B control. They ran a similar round on Ancient. It didn't work. Rogue read it earlier on where they slowed down in the three-on-three because three it had to go back to the bomb. G2 full prey to this Liquid T side as it starts to build into the game. Ten rounds feeling inevitable as G2 are locked out of the bomb site. Can Nico save us with some flashy shots? He'll need to. His teammates are falling behind him. He's on the clock. Nice kill. Nico needs so much more. And they are just not giving it away. They're going to cross together. An inevitable trade, perhaps. Or crosses the bomb in. Nico's got room. He knows it. Oh, my. Yeah. He's seizing the gap right now is Nico. Uh -oh. With a bit of help from Hooksy, who scavenged an AK on the push out through mid. This one's brought back into a 2v2. Liquid thought they had this in the bag, but now it's hinging on these next few fights. And Skulls is looking to walk it home. Twists a capable pair of hands left up in this one alongside him. And as Hooksy reroutes up into the heavens, he's going to have two players to worry about on this cross in. Skulls will make it happen.
Round by round, Liquid are building back into this T-side. And now they are just two rounds away from a shocking OT lock-in. Liquid fans have never seen it before, Harry. It's the anti-choke. It's G2, 12-6, now 12-10. Deuce is performing the Heimlich. He's getting everyone on side. He is squeezing them from behind, Harry. Squeezing them out, round by round. And this is it. This is the buy to beat all buys for G2. They've got everything they could possibly need to close this game. The last one is a liability. This is where G2 must take us to Inferno. But Liquid will not go down quietly. Statement streak to make in this T side. They need to match how G2 started the half with six in a row to reset the clock. What have G2 cooked up in the pause? They need a response. Early move. Double up A main. They get smoked out. That's changed the game plan for G2. They want to boost over instead. Put that orb to use. Honestly, doesn't buy that flash, even though it hits him. Square in the face, he holds on. Fairly undefended B site for the time being, but Liquid take mid for a change. Into Nico, his playground. It's been red hot in this map. And they go quiet. Nico about to get first contact, but it's Cadian to deal with him. Missed flash, but that's not going to slow Liquid hey. down. Next, sir. Uh, up close, bit of support from Monacy, making quick work of it, but Monacy's going to do even more. He's been the heavy lifter, he's been the guy doing it all for G2. Some uncharacteristic oh. misses at an awkward timing, it's all left on Acadian now. It's the bomb. Bomb lost here as well as Naf took it into this fight on the spawn. And so Acadian, this is a very awkward spot to clutch up from. He's got to go looking for this fight and he won't find it. G2 oh. lurch back into form. They shut down the Liquid comeback and they lock in a third map of Inferno vying for their spot in the playoffs. There's one man that they wanted to push us all the way into that third map, and boy, did he deliver. I'm talking about Monacy over on G2, so 
Nice, yeah. Celia. In, in, in case you missed it, like he was playing today. Uh, now, for the rest of G2, pretty absent in that first half. We're going to dive into all things of uh, this matchup with G2 and Liquid. Welcome back, everybody. The Intel Extreme Masters here with Elfish Guy, Y and K, and a map three upon us after a 13 10 finish to this one. Yeah, uh, bounce back from G2 on their own uh, map pick, had a big lead there in the second half. A little bit of a comeback from yeah. Team Liquid, you know, you start wondering, hey, will they be able to close it out? But uh, again, Monacy steps up with Nico and, and they win Anubis. Elfish guy, tell me how this map is even remotely close if you remove Monacy from this equation. If you remove Monacy from this equation, I don't think the map is close. Or, I mean, maybe it gets a little bit close, I suppose. But at the end of the day, that actually could well have been a 2-0, if not for the Monacy effect. I mean, we're talking about Hooksy, we're talking about Hunter going completely missing in that first half. And uh, that was kind of a, a bit of a problem outside of the fact that Monacy was able to really do that heavy lifting, win a very important clutch in that first half as well that really started to get that ball rolling for G2. So uh, certainly some sort of chat, sort of cracks that uh, were starting to show a little bit there for, for G2, but uh, they got it done in the end. So that clutch you speak of, mm. and, you know, we do have footage of that actually. Yanko, mm. break this down for me. Yeah, I think it was just incredible from Monacy. He got initially, it was a 1v3, so he gets the kill on Twist, who's like burning in the molly. I, I think he didn't believe it was going to spread. But before this 1v1, I mean, first of all, Monacy jumps, spots, and sees Kadian, right? So then he falls back to a lower, from a different angle to peek him. You know, they s switch positions. He takes a lot of damage, and you think, it's over here. I mean, he's red HP, 1v2, he can't get to the bomb, he doesn't have any utility to really use, but somehow he manages to find two 1v1 duels as, you know, the Liquid players are starting to wonder, did he try to reposition? You know, should we give him the chance? We know he has an op to, to even take these duels, you know, a little bit of a misplay there from Team Liquid, but he just takes full advantage of it. This was a reset round. Like, if they lose this round, they have to eco Liquid, keeps the ball rolling, right? Instead, the opposite happened, and this really gave momentum to G2. So is there a world where Kadian throws that Molotov and that sort of seals that round? Potentially, yeah, potentially. I mean, depends on obviously where he throws it in, but I think it's for me actually the fact that the, the first kill goes on to Skulls that really is a big difference maker in that round as opposed to if that first kill goes on to Kadian, you know, Monacy's still quite low, rifle still in play, maybe a little bit of an easier one to clutch out. Yeah, they were, you know, overthinking it a little bit because you see how they tried to double peek, but Skulls was a little bit too fast. You know, they could have just held sure. the, the, the angles, right? But I just want to also point out, yes, both Hunter and Hooksy had uh, a, a tough game, uh, especially Hunter. And Hooksy like, only had like three kills, you know, one or two kills, but he probably had the most important kill, kill of the half. Right. And that was him walking through the smoke in uh, K, right, and killing a Kinder who had an aid out. That was G2 full buying. It was a Tech 9. Um, by and that really allowed them to swarm the side. That's when we saw Monacy close out the route from the boost outside B. And I think also without that round, G2, I don't think they have enough in the second half to really close it out. And just on, you know, you, you talked about Hunter right there. We're talking about a guy that did come out with some assist in this map at the very least, you know, <laughs> like that is something that he did have in his pocket. But albeit, uh, what can we attribute? What is, I consider a slow start? Well, I don't know. I'm not really sure. Maybe, you know, he's just struggling in this game we know about his struggles in in cs2 whether it's you know the jet lag affect him a little bit more fatigue but really there can't be any excuses you know you need to find ways to deliver to deliver the frags for your team because he is such a focal point of this g2 lineup yes speaking of focusing on g2 that's exactly what heku was able to do so we're going to hear from taz right now I just had a word with Taz and I asked if he was surprised by the fact that Liquid decided to let them start on the T side of Anubis. He said, it's Liquid. Anything can happen with Liquid. Then let's see what's going to happen on Inferno. Ah, yes, Inferno, where all great series go to end. Isn't that right? Yeah, didn't end up so at the major <laughs> final, unfortunately, wasn't really a, a, a close map, but hoping for a better map here, and I think we will get one. This is a map where Liquid has had a lot of success with this lineup, and also for G2, we know that Inferno for this lineup has been a staple. It's been up and down, uh, you know, in the last couple of months, but recently at the major, they were undefeated, so hoping to see a good game. 
Yeah, I mean, I think for me particularly, I'm looking at those scalps of Mao's and VP that G2 were able to get more recently. And then I'm kind of taking a bit of a comparison as to what Liquid look like on this map and a lot of their results. You look at the numbers and you say, OK, they've got what, like 92% win rate over the last three months. It's like, wow, that's amazing. But a lot of those are against the domestic competition back in North America. So it's a little bit of a different ball game. Um, but in saying that, I don't really want to underrate Team Liquid. I mean, we, we, we've, we've sort of done that, I think, all day long. And we've said, oh, we're not too sure what they're going to do. We're not really expecting too much from them. But they have continued to deliver. Even they're on Anubis, that was not a bad performance from Team Liquid. So I, I want to say this is going to be a competitive third map. I mean, we, we did just kind of isolate the idea that they are playing pretty well-oiled Counter-Strike right now. Yeah, absolutely. And they have good rounds set. For example, the rounds where you have an AWP and a couple of pistols or SMGs, like they, they make calculated gambles, then react if, if, if things don't go their way. Uh, just couldn't really steal any of those rounds away. But I think here they'll also have a lot of uh, film on G2, right? And we'll be able to prepare that banana fight is going to be crucial here, right? We know both Nico and Hooksy, depending on the spawn, get up their uh, CTT side and, and they like to be aggressive on that side of the map. Yeah, uh, you know, I, I'm going to kick this one to you, Jordan, because, again, we did set the context that if you win this, you do get that little bit of time to yourself. So, Jordan, tell me how this series shapes up on Inferno for you. Yeah, I mean, again, I feel like the easy... The easy answer is to just say, okay, G2, in theory, on paper, they're the stronger team. They should go ahead and win this one. But like I said, I feel like Team Liquid, they've been playing well today. I've been impressed by what I've seen. So I want to go ahead and say I think it's going to be a close game. Um, I've also kind of liked what I've seen from the pistol work, like those sort of cheeky eco rounds coming through from Team Liquid. I feel like they've been getting a lot of work done there. And you can certainly do a lot with a little on a map like Inferno. So, look, I still have to say I'm going to give the benefit of the doubt to G2. But I'm not expecting this to be a complete blowout. Certainly not. Uh, I'll be expecting another close map. Bind into that, Yanko? Well, but I think it's going to be a good game. I think we'll see good stuff uh, from Liquid. And yeah, G2 is going to need more than Monacy if they're going to win uh, the series. Yeah, that's absolutely true. I mean, I'm talking about a guy that just hit the gas pedal 100%. Monacy did kind of keep them in a driving way uh, across this map, albeit 13-10. You know, it's it gets really tight there at the end. Guys, we're going to go to Inferno, but not before we go to a break. So with that being said, we will be right back after this. You're watching the Intel Extreme Masters. BRB. some point in every gamer's life, there's a question to be asked. Do your clothes match your hobby in any situation? Or do they just represent what you dream of? No matter what situation, there's always the right wear and the wrong. The only real question is, which are you going to choose? Decide for yourself. Smokes, you see a double smokes in the same place there, simple, just jumping casually into the side. Wait, 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 what, 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 what was that? Never miss a play again. Simple, it's not allowed. This is not FPL, this is a major. Finally. With Face It Watch, you're in control. Switch between player POVs live and see the game through the eyes of any pro. Never miss a moment with replays. Relive each highlight on demand from all angles. Watch it, control it, face it.
to wake up just in time for Anubis, and now they've sent us all the way to a third map in this series. Check this knife round. This is so clutch from Yakinda. 1v3, they're all low. He gets it done, Harry. CT start for Liquid, lock it in, and load up Inferno, our third map, to decide which will be the first team here at IEM Chengdu to go straight forth and forward into the playoffs. Quarterfinals at a bare minimum, but the chance to fight for semis in another BO3. Liquid looking good for it right now, but this is G2's go-to map as well, and they've at least got the track record against Tier 1 to prove it. Liquid had just been beaten up on the North Americans. Has is getting animated with his squad. It was him who kind of called to, uh, to arms heading into that second map of Anubis. He tried to get the boys pumped up, and it's safe to say it paid off. It was a masterclass from Monacy with Nico joining the fray as well. G2, they want to get this one over and done with. And as you say, I think, you know, they they have to feel like favorites coming into this third map here and now, right? They rose to the occasion on Anubis, and now we head to a real staple of the G2 map pool. Liquid on the other side certainly had their fair share of chances, and for a moment they were even believing on the comeback, uh, in the comeback on Anubis but cut down just shy of it. They've got to make up for this on Inferno. And after a knife round clutch from your Kindar, I mean, that's going to pump you up, that's isn't a, it? That's a game break. It actually was sick. Like, no, we I were mean, watching it, and we were like, come on, yeah. G2, just kill him. And then, yeah, and then he wasted. absolutely wrecked him. Yeah. Um, very even map, 50-50 map. Uh, off of the major data uh, for Inferno, but generally I think it, the rounds are, oh, in a sense, super one-sided. Like, you double entry T, you win the round. For CT, it's just about minimizing mistakes. Don't see a lot of teams fight for Banana on CT side. G2 are one of the rare exceptions. They won every time they played this map at the major, and they were actually very aggressive on CT side at the Banana, uh, with Nico at the forefront of that. But for the most part, we don't see teams fight CT Banana. They'll give it up. They'll play in the bomb sites. They'll cycle their smokes and just try and buy as much time as possible. Yeah, a couple of key players I need to keep an eye on here, right? You want Nico to continue delivering like he was on Anubis. As you say, he's going to be part and parcel success to their T side and on that CT half. But then also, I want to see what Hunter can bring to the table. Man, he was very sleepy it, on Anubis. It and like, they're yeah. going to need him now. It felt like maybe tired for Hunter because it felt like watching his reaction time was not the time I expect for him. He was like just taking too long, Harry. Like 300 millisecond reaction time. This guy's quick usually, so... Warmed in now, though, G2. Favorites on the odds. And even in the maps. 1-1 one, one as we finalize this fight. Liquid back on land for the first time in months. And with something to say. Twist has had a phenomenal series. Phenomenal day, really. Can he top it off with a double dub? G2 don't have enough util to double pump this. And so if Twist is able to get this smoke in in time, that is a bit of an issue. Util comes out now, and G2 are essentially faced with this task of, do they want to go through? They kind of have to. They are, the whole play hinges on it. So this is very oh, well counted, boy. and the dualies light up G2. Very well counted. Very well handled. Absolutely slammed. That nade so early, it doesn't even matter. I thought that'd be a problem. Nav just mauls them. Anti-flash on the boost. And these two... The cool old Canadians are liquid. Come through with a huge pistol round. Twist has bought a Nova. Okay. It's the thing, man. If you go over towards that B site, you end up in the Canuck hold. And then all you can do is watch. So... Nice. Very cleanly done, even a Nova bought out for twists. I saw him warming up with that across this series. Yeah. Oh, oh. Yeah, don't go for the knife here. You're in hot water, Cadian. Enemy territory. So almost gets out. Dink on Nexa. Don't need to overcommit. Skulls will block and live because another entry there could have led G2 into an empty A site instead. They go back up the banana. Get 
turned into mash. There's that Nova. Pump and dump. And don't leave your number on the nightstand. It's tw liquid with 2 0. Yeah, not my best work. Yeah, I mean, I've seen twists, you know, as we say, you've been using the shotgun all day in the warm ups, man. So it was just a matter of when, not so much if, he looked to bring that out. And he puts it to work here and now. Money made. Quite the confident display to just walk down mid as well in these rounds. G2 may have forced in without a bomb plant, but they get nothing from it, just a bit of damage. Ooh, -hoo. he's back. Why did Monacy take damage there? He tried to, like, uh, game it around the, the hitbox. I think even he's kind of frustrated by it. That was weird. Like, the nade went through the floor. Magic. Still, they've been gifted a little deeg opener. Let's see if they can make it any more interesting here with just the deagles. And a volunteers himself up as tribute. He goes in first. And, well, they were meant to trade that, but oh. <laughs> it's not gone well, has it, Twists? He's having a great day. Finally. There's the ace. We've had so many nearly aces, and it's Twists to finally get one. Breaking through. 4Ks all day. It's more like it. Always on the anti-eco, but that'll make you feel good about your B-side defense coming into this all-important gun round for G2. They don't want to get swept out of this third map. The sooner they start, the better. So what have we got? And the early banana control. G2 smoked the bottom of it, really trying to stop Liquid from taking control, but that is an inevitability. Nice grenades. Oh! Churned up by butter. Nico on five. Pummeled. That's kind of annoying if you're G2, right? That's your reliable point man put down to a serious back foot to open up the round. And so someone else has got to try to fill Nico's shoes. Just Inferno, Banana, very uncomfortable for T's to take early control. G2, even though they smoked logs, they can't even sit on ramp. Quid wait, their barrel gives Kadian forewarning. He hits his shot. There's three inside of A. Discounting Kadian, so it's going to get worse now for G2 as they come waltzing up short into twists yet to die. Playing an MP9 as well. Selfless. Preemptive smoke drop out of Nafly, and he's going to reposition on the back of it. Twists now getting his molly stuck in. That's a big problem for G2. This is wasting precious seconds that they simply don't have. Even re-aggresses. Oh. Twists still flawless. No. 11 and 0. Finally, they learn that he's mortal after all, but he's done enough to win the round for Team Liquid. Twist has bottled up all of his ability for the end of the second and now third map. I mean, he's been playing fine all day. Like the first match, the, the BO1, he was the top performer. The, the retakes were better than Huh? The retakes were. Ancient, he was solid. One of the tiny little snippets that we're getting here as well. It feels like him and uh, Kadian have a, have a good little working relationship between the two of them. He's been very vocal in, in all the maps that we've seen so far. So now a timeout called in for G2. Mm. At the Major, G2 are actually very good at getting eight round T sides. I remember a couple of games where they had solid Inferno T sides. A lot of late B executes. But right now, not really finding that gap in the same way. Twist has been on both bomb sites. They've run into him both times. Skull still zero and zero. A non-factor not required yet.
Looks like we have a little uh, little time out here. I saw Zeus pointing at his headset, so I'm assuming that there was a bit of an issue there. But we're going to get that remedied. G2. They don't want to feel like they... They looked like themselves for just one map in the series. But I think, you know, it does come with that sort of caveat that, like, Nico, who I think is oftentimes one of the more exciting parts of uh, their, their Inferno T sides, the guy who so often can get the ball rolling, got bullied down in their first rifle round. Who do you think looks the most tired? On G2? Hmm. Not Monacy. No, Monacy looks I'm just going to go Hunter. From what I've seen in game, Hunter, like, just off reaction time. And that's incredible because, like, he looks sleepy, but he is still playing well. Yeah. It's not easy. But that's, like, the that's the sloth in him. You got, that, you got that sloth dog yeah, in true. him. Yeah, true. He's just slower naturally, but... Maybe slower to us, but to him, it's still pretty fast. Day one, not easy. Especially off of the major for G2. That must be taken into consideration. All or nothing matchup. And a big, uh, big opportunity, right? As we've been saying, you either go to the quarters bare minimum or a... Uh, or a semi-finals berth, if we're able to win that next BO3. You yeah, can't also, be disappointed with that. It's also just about having a day off as well. You don't play yeah. tomorrow, you play that winner's match on Wednesday. So, it's kind of dodge the, the terrifying, you know, like lower bracket that's taken shape. I mean, to me, the only terrifying team is Heroic there. And then if Mal's lose later, sure then. There's, there's gonna be more terrifying teams down there. Like who? I think even Furia, Furia or, or Mouse I mean, are actually Liquid scary to face. Furia beat Liquid yeah. on Inferno, was it? No, Mirage, I think, at the RMR. So, sure, sure. I'll give you that. But uh, right now, Liquid are in the front running for that playoff spot. 4 0 up. An early rotate to B. G2, again, Nico getting naded. Poor guy. That is the life of the first man up B. He's had to take the tech and just storm in. We've got a god flash from Monacy. Yakinda in an anti position and even a setup for Cadian and Spawn. This looks good for Liquid, but pressure on Yakinda on the MP9. Cadian even watching with a flash pulled. He's going to try to set his teammates up here. Spams one out through the smoke, and Yakinda takes it one step further, whittling down the B play. It never Beautiful. gets to take shape. 4G2 oh, is Liquid. Keep the scoreline flawless. The hype as well. They're getting loud. They know what this means, Harry. They are absolutely rocking G2's world on this CT side. None of these rounds have even been close. The closest G2 got was the force buy, where Cadian pushed mid and like mauled them, and they got a couple of kills near the end. But still, Liquid knew went to cool off in that 3v2. And I love that. Played through the smoke from Naf. Trading off of your kinder. Cadian even got the spam kill with that USP through smoke. So. Just everything working for Liquid right there. Is there an answer for G2D? The... Skulls is on the board. Yes. He's been having a very odd game thus far. The rounds have just kind of been ending and they're it's, winning. It's fine. He's playing full Norbert mode, man. He's just sitting back on, on pit side. He doesn't need to fight. He's letting his team just kill G2 where they stand. So that's fine. Skulls isn't overdoing it. That's the key of the A anchor. Don't overdo it. Uh, Nico got naded again. Fourth round maybe in a row. Skulls. Oh dear, he gets undone instead. Hunter has crept his way all up short, and now Jizu have the A site. This was not in the script. Twist is going to try and deal with it. Twist looking like he can withstand the pressure of a lost site here. He's brought them back in for a retake. Man up now, thanks to his handiwork, and he even closes the distance on a Hunter. Twist is going hog wild, man. Finally spammed out as Hooksy gets him by chance. Ooh. But it's just Hooksy left up against it all. Just? 
Couple of convincing kills, sure, but he's got so much more to do. Creeping the smoke, it's a nice idea. Kadian and Naf have split up to try and find him. But now that they've cleared the pit, oh. they know they've got him locked in that smoke and they'll deal with him. That almost looked scary when Twist died because it felt like Liquid weren't going to go graveyard and that was the, the info position to clear pit. That's the best way to do it. And luckily enough, Naf does climb through there in that 2v1. Otherwise, they might be just tapping the bomb, trying to force Hooksy to fight. But they realized he was in the smoke. He was on the clock there. Nice retake smoke. G2 not aware that their Moto smoke didn't land. It was flown on the fly. Big gap. Couple of kills come through it. But yeah, still Twist controlling this game. 13-2. Yeah. and two, He gets that retake started. You said it in that round as well. Nico, in every single round but the pistol, has been put down to like 20 HP at the start. So that's credit to Team Liquid's util usage sure. here over towards Banana. Oh, this time the nade, it didn't do anything. G2 with only one of the last 11 rounds played. And that was at the end of Anubis. So... Got to get back to their winning ways. Maybe you've gotten what it feels like. Another nice nade, but they're popping on a good timing. No one's aware. Yakindo, they don't even clear him properly. They're looking down before they look sideways. He is just completely forgotten about. And yep, G2, make that 12 rounds now. As lazy checks come in. And G2 just can't balance. Nice. <laughs> They're looking mindful as heck right now, Harry. They really are. And, you know, I think uh, when they've had Zeus behind them since that second map, really, just like screaming the encouragement, getting everyone hyped up, that feels like it's transferred across here into the third. See Taz trying to do the same thing. Luck. This is a very hard position to be in. I think it's even harder, you know, when... I think it's been a bit obvious that, like, G2 have looked... A little out of it at times, and I think it's going to be way harder to, to find it within yourselves to, to pull back from a 07 down position, especially when you don't even really feel like you've been close. Outside of the round where Hunter finds all that space with the Tech 9, they, they've not really had any other op opportunities. All the rifle rounds have been very dominant. And so they don't really have a lot to go off of right now to G2. For an Team Liquid, be. this is legit as hell. Constantly bullying down Banana. They've successfully kind of dealt with Nico's attempts at aggression here. They, they've entirely taken him away from doing that. And so instead, G2 are looking for answers elsewhere. Going to pressure out in the top mid. This is maybe the most util that Liquid have used in the first 20 seconds of the round, though. So two mollies forced out very early down B and A. Oh, he came to that timing of the clear, and he still doesn't get punished. Nico just cannot get in his groove right now. That felt like a guaranteed kill for him. Kind is still alone. Can he escape? Oh, coming through the smoke is a nice play for G2. It's going to catch Yakinda, but he still gets back to the sandbags. One more will do it. Bursting heads. Oh. Yakinda popping noggins, looking for more. Monacy will catch him getting aggressive. And suddenly G2 flipped the script. After Yakinda does that, Liquid think the round is done. As far as they're concerned, it should be over. Skulls, he can, so he can hear these footsteps. He knows that they're already up and past him. They're going to clear out the short side. Skulls has been spotted. And now he hears that bomb coming in a little bit later. Does he want to try and find it? He wants to take this fight for Monacy. He almost has to cross into the danger zone. He could drop back a little wider into the mini pit, and that's what he'll do, but still has to cross into the site. Liquid don't punish in time. Nexa watches on from the pit, and now it's Skulls. Do or die. Creeping up and in. Can't quite deal with Nexa cleanly. We'll lock in that kill. Monacy is one step too far. And so G2 finally get on the board, and it's on the back of Monacy, clutching up in the 1v1. I felt like a lack of experience play. Didn't feel like Skulls knew what he wanted to do there, right? He has a timing to flank an apartment, get a really good position. He doesn't commit to fighting the bomb on the cross, which is fine. Maybe his teammates are calling for him to wait, but then you just feel like he could have made other plays. He could have wrapped around alongside. He could have gone through the apartments. He could have strafed out to quad, meaning he's safe from pit, but he can stop that cross. There were so many more options. Instead, he's just jiggling and still allows Monacy to get in. Like, that's no deterrent. Kind of insane that 
the one man hold at B did everything and then some, uh, but the four man hold at A crumbled to dust at the first challenge from G2. That's credit to Nexa. He finds that double in boiler. Liquid caught out on an island. Trying to swing down mid to assist, but yeah. Almost forget about that Yakinda impact. He had some excellent kills at B, and it mattered not. 2v5 right back. G2 on the board. Got to do something with it, though. Woo! Plucked. Stay mobile is Cadian. He's been quick. Rumored to be a little under the weather, but it's not stopped him today. Okay. None there, but Skulls hears more. Uh, this is a comfortable position where Liquid reset and regroup. Well, Nexa was the guy who opened up the last round that was in a spot like this. He's going to have to do it all over again. Creeping up through short, Nexa keen to deliver. Secures that opener onto Twist, but blinded by the flashbang. Kadian lending a helping hand to his teammate down in the pit. Blows the smoke open, lands a tag to Hunter. And tees up Liquid for a retake here. A man up in the 3v2. Hunter down low after that AWP just sinks its teeth into him on the smoke break. And so Nico might have to do the heavy lifting here. I've seen Nico wreak havoc in this exact position. So let's see if he's up for the task. One kill from Nico. Why not the double? Just Kadian left to deal with. And Nico lights up Team Liquid. That's now two in a row for G2. It's been a long time since they're winning ways, but they start to chain some rounds together now. And that could be their route back in. Finally, Nico, a guy who's been bullied all half long, gets his chance to play into the late round. And he does not miss that opportunity. Yeah, aside from that one round where he faces Yakinda and, and falls, it doesn't feel like Nico's made any you know, errors in this T side. He's just been in one of the harder positions. And well, you put him in a good one, you know what he can do. He gives us a round. Fantastic triple kill for Nico in the post plant. It's about time. Again, the nades have just been ludicrous for Liquid. The spam will respond though. G2, it's not unsolved. They offer up even more damage back onto the CT side. Nico's got the bomb. Not his problem. It's him V the orb on B. That frees up a quad rotation on A. Liquid making a nice gamble with Kadian having the AWP and a re-smoke available. He'll get some full warning with that flash coming through. Fires a shot, goes back. Smoke timing is everything, and you can just supplement it with more utility. G2, no, they've at least jiggled the defense now. And so they can recommit to their original goal on this A site. Nice off angle. I'm going to try to walk it up long. Naf is in a very dedicated position here. Gets out with the double kill. Does all he has to and then some. And so now, you know, it's just down to this 2v2 over towards this A site. Nexa trying to get out through the apartments, but won't check for Skulls. Instead tries to hound down the player at short. And so it's a nice, easy double for Skulls. Twists act acts as the bait. And Skulls is able to capitalize. Probably Skulls just eats those two flashes. Sure, they're far away. They're not full whiting him, but he's getting blind for a couple of seconds there. He eats two of them and then just wait. And both kills arrive. Patience pays off for Skulls. That's more like it. He talked about how he's not really been getting too involved. He's just that pit side anchor. Just been waiting for his time to play and Liquid back to their winning ways. I mean, dude, one of the things that's sick here, you know, we were talking about it coming into the matchup as to how both these teams are extremely proven on Inferno, but G2 are very much proven versus better opposition. For sure. However, Liquid have clearly got a lot of ideas. 
their nades have the, been incredible. Yeah. And I mean, think about it. They, they have successfully stopped any of this kind of faster action over towards Banana every single time to the point where Nico's kind of entirely moved away from doing that. This is the fastest G2 have had this control over towards B. And utility's often been the issue here, so they're going to try to get ahead of it. Yakindar's missed the timing on this jiggle. That nade going to come out way too soon, and it'll never arrive as Hooksy chases him down. Team Liquid was stacked here, though, and they hear Naf running away. They shouldn't suspect Twists as a third player at the back of the site, but he's cleared out by Nexa. And even as Naf responds with one, it's dire straits for Liquid. They've done good damage. One more kill would bring them back into the fold. It never materializes. Smoked off at spawn, and that might just seal the deal on attempting this round. Really? Cheeky, cheeky. Can they stop him? He's not on the bomb. And I think he'll die with it instead. I thought Nap was going for a sneaky defuse. Instead, it's Deegs galore for Monacy, denying a couple of guns on the way out. Still a G2 round, no matter what Liquid throw at them in there at the end. Oh, G2 just hit every timing there. Even though Nico again got put to 50, that contact B play was beautiful. The first contact comes from someone spotting on your kinder, but he doesn't know Hooksy's walked all the way up wall. That's a great call for G2. A bit of luck goes a long way on those jiggles. They make the most of it. Twist also with his first whiff. It's felt like in the whole map. And not a great time to have it, but still Liquid can keep this half dominant with the ninth. Kadian getting involved. They just send themselves down middle. They keep going. There's no bomb. Yeah, that's awkward. G2 left that. If only the orb stayed on the angle, but Akinda's got one on B as well. And G2 are running through that smoke. Worked for them last time. This Ooh. time's no different. Akinda are dealt with and gets awkward for Naf, who's kind of boxed into a corner. Monacy and Nico lead the way as G2 try to battle back in. This would be all but one of these rounds being at man disadvantages for G2. One of them a 2v5, one of them a 3 on 5. And they're now looking to round it out with a 4v5 right down the end of the half. Team Liquid left wanting in this retake. Desperately looking for that call to arms to bring them back in, but no kill presented yet. Skulls falls as Monacy is swift to deal with him. Twist's dead and just KD and left standing. He can't do it all alone. And so G2, they will salvage something at the end of this first half.
Team Liquid lead the way right now. And it's only a matter of time. We're going to have to see if those couple of rounds they let slip by come back to haunt them. An 8-4 lead. Liquid might feel confident. Versus G2 moving over to the CT side. You can never be certain, especially as they do find some footing towards the end of that first half. It was spearheaded by Monacy and Nico having a bit of a return to form. There's man down moments as well that Nexa helped to recover. The firepower pieces are emerging for G2. Let's see if they've gotten here in time. Kadian gets a spot on Monacy and tells his team to be cautious in alt middle. They held for a re-peak. Monacy's just trying to buy time with jump spots. You'll notice G2 have full armor. They're not blocking. They want these fights. They're going to get him. Catching KD and jumping up. Nico risking it all here with his triple B setup. This is all KD and just pulling strings right now. Puppeteer back to A into two. Nexa first point of contact. And maybe the last thing oh. they see as well is Nexa. Lays waste to Team Liquid with Monacy by his side and some uh, fancy finger work. That is a pistol round locked in. Hot hands, the best P2K player in the game right now. And I'm not even joking. There's not many people on that scoreboard, I guess, but he makes it look so good. Fantastic headshots for Nexa, plucking them out of the sky. And G2, give us a reason to get invested in this second half. What have they got? I said it towards the tail end of that first half. The rounds that G2 put on the board, three of them were from man disadvantages. They had a 2v5, 3v5, and a 4v5 go their way. And the other one was that kind of low economy round where they walked up and, and found the timing, right? And so if those are the rounds that come back to haunt Liquid... Ooh, after a that is, lead. Yeah, that is a really rough way for it to go. Pistol round now puts wind in the sails. The G2, Liquid on this force buy. Let's see if they can find something with it. Out towards long, they're going to bypass this setup on the long side. They're looking for the B split. Hooksy might hear this, but dealing with it is a whole different beast. Tag on an eco. He can't finish the job. Oh, no. That's a disaster. Monacy's going to arrive. Gets here in good timing. If Hooksy can even just slow them down by Monacy a second, that's all it takes. And now it's only NAF. What was once looking so good for Team Liquid is all called into question as reinforcements arrive and Monacy shines through. A positive desk slam for Nico. Thank goodness his in-game leader is able to ring around the rosy. It was like that pistol round back in Copenhagen where he's just running around ruins and ruining Liquid's day. Backstab, meanwhile, for Monacy, he does not hesitate on his rotation. And Liquid, despite a great pause and a five on four, cannot convert that force. They'll go again, rebuying for one more. Two AKs dropped, two unarmored deagles as a result everything to play for. This is uh, quite an all-in. Scary stuff. I, yeah, I mean, with three surviving in the last round, the buy is still good here for G2, so it's not like Liquid are trying to take advantage of, you know, a beat-down G2 economy. And if they come up short in this force, it's going to be 8-8 on the board. So this is pretty risky, all things considered. Actually, I'll say very risky, all things considered. Let's, uh, let's hold out hope for this Skulls Deeg over in top mid, making a bit of noise. It's a late banana take. Nico's got the smoke. Oh, oh, oh this is risky. Oh. Oh. Pays off, though. Not the start they wanted, but it's the one they've got. That frees up that second player to go back to B. Hooks can help Nico yet again. And there's the block at 30 seconds. They don't have a re-smoke right now. So this might be Liquid's chance. Flash is still helping, slowing it down somewhat. Housing, There's more yeah. util to follow, but 
going to get there in time. Instead, nading the smoke open to catch these players crossing. Bomb plant denied as Nico repositions. And Nico oh. tears through Team Liquid. What a fantastic round for Nico to get flashed back into B and getting quad the second after that molly expires and also the second before liquid go through b so as far as they're aware there's no one at quad there can't be anyone at quad we just mollied it we didn't hear him tick so that's a fantastic reposition for nico but also just an ugly round for liquid when no one's in the bomb site there are still positions uncleared hope and a dream hopeful for liquid on that force by and yakinda goes again keeping up his vp days always having something in a round okay maybe it'll pay off though oh oh i can't quite finish the job oh nico, oh, nico will Nico lends a helping hand, and so now he's going to make up for it. He's able to have a valiant last stand here in that previous round, but this Ouch. time dinked immediately and now deleted by the pistols. Hunter blowing the smoke open, but won't get there in time to put a stop to anything. And so G2, they've got to write this one off. Liquid, their persistence with these four spies, with these investments finally pays off in their worst force yet. It's just a hero AK round. That's just your kind of going, I believe in myself, you know, trust me, I'm going to make a play. They support him a little bit with some flashes. The Nico TK, not ideal, but also your kind of did so much damage, you felt like a Glock would have killed Hooksy there anyway. And Nico just can't even convert a kill. He gets dinked by Cadian's Glock. He decides to re-swing. And Liquid just have so many crosshairs at quad. This time does not go unnoticed. All power from Honesty. Gonna start apps and well, he'll have some targets coming his way pretty soon. Strikes while the iron's hot, first kill found. going to try to take up position over here in the apartments with Skulls dead. Attention momentarily taken off the apartments, but now Nexa gets a handle back on it. The liquid blocked over towards Banana. They're going to look further afield. Try to rejoin up with Nafly over here. In doing so, they will find themselves in the prying eyes of this Monacy AWP. Holding the line. Barrel seen. And he's ripe to get this one, is Monacy. They try to double swing him, but that second player out through Boiler won't get there in time. And so that one's free. Honestly, just going through the motions on this orb, but he's having a field day. Third kill in the round. It's all Monacy. And now the Nexus is given a chance to get involved. This one gets closed out cleanly. G2 right back to it. And quick to forget the way that that last one went down. They immediately continue this stranglehold over Liquid, trying to close the gap. Yeah, this is now asking a lot from Kadian on T-side, right? G2 had the same difficulties, just getting in. And even though Liquid have a flash in the pan, eco round win, consistency is going to be hard in this second half, in this final half of the series to see who will make it to playoffs first.
tense game right now. And G2, despite being around down, feel like they're the ones in control. They have the money. They have the better half. And Liquid have a rebuy. Cadian's Orb even makes an appearance. that G2 banana regression. They start triple over towards B. They want to try and flex for this. Hunter even dropping off some extra util on his way. Pops that all in down through banana and G2 immediately stake their claim to this map control. After getting locked out of banana, Liquid going to set their sights once again on trying to take apartments. Monacy and Nexa have kind of swapped places here. As Monacy was posted down in the pit, but he's got to remain mobile on this AWP. And so they will look to swap back. Heavy lean into the top of mid. G2 do want to try and fight for this while they've got so many bodies here. But as Yakindar is making noise on Banana, that will look to pull players away. However, here comes the push out in the top middle. Immediately, Hunt is called back around. So they're still too strong for G2 here in this A site. Hunter and Nico both hold the line. And it's left to a low HP NAF line. Yakindar bomb away from them. Oh. Yakindar trying to take this space over towards B. But this has been heard. Hooksy can hear these footsteps, collects that kill for free. And now NAF has nowhere left to go. Oh, here somewhere. And it's back to spawn. That timing on the long smoke fade could not be worse for Liquid. Nico tucks in in long cubby, and the second the long smoke's out, Liquid are moving up short, and they just get shot in the back. Makes it very awkward. And Hunter, he's had troubles on T-sides today, that's for sure, had it on Anubis, but the one thing you can't say on his CT sides is that he's a liability or a risky player. Often just playing playing the very late rounds on CT. Seeing him doing it back on Dark, on Anubis, did it the same here on A side. Letting Liquid walk into his trap. Chewed up, spat out, saved AK round pistols. Oh, oh that's... Okay. That was the bomb on the back of Kadian doing oh, that as no. well. And now Yakindar taking it one step further. Still Hunter here to find. Yakindar can't quite deal with him, but Huge. this is a lot of info for Liquid to work off of, right? They've taken a double kill up through Banana. They spot a third player there, and now they're going to pick up the pace into Monacy. They go, who is left alone down in the pit with his trusty orb in hand. First shot connects, but Monacy oh. needs more. Lightning fast. This AWP can't quite swing it for a third. Monacy's done all he can down in the pit. And now it resides with Nexa and Hunter to finish what he started. Bomb plant in for Liquid. Backstab oh. coming through, but with Kadian naded out, Naf needs to strike right now, and he's missed that timing on the short walk. Won't miss it the second time around. Hunter dealt with. Naf trying to close the distance, close the gap, smoke out, tries to play through it, sees that Nexa is not on the bomb. Will he call his bluff the second time around? Util to blow the smoke open. Nafly swung on and he'll hold the line. Nafly locks it in. And Liquid with nothing to go off of. Secure double digits. Maintain this lead over G2. Refusing. To let G2 have that lead for even a moment. What great routing for Nap as well. They go back port side through Boiler, and he realizes with the bomb inside of the site, he doesn't want to go through apps and not have an angle. He'll just walk up close. And man, that smoke break mechanic is the best thing about this game. It's really made clutches like that exciting. Clears the bomb, realizes he's getting swung. And three kills from Nap to put Liquid back in the lead. For how long is the question? All of the money, all of the result of this map rests on this round for G2. They put everything in, three MP9s. If they don't convert it, Liquid not only sit on 11, they have an anti-eco to deal with, a bitter pill.
that G2 might just have to swallow. It's a very difficult position for G2 to be in despite a fantastic CT side recovery in this game. Liquid just broke it at the right time. Oh, Monacy knows he's very lucky to have not been punished there. It's all got to be Monacy again. He's alone on B. He's got the best gun in the round. Highest kills in the server. All expectation on this guy. All eyes. And G2 know that as well. They trust in him to play solo B. Yakinda's luck v Monacy on the meantime, four on four on A. Oh, it's just a tag. Oh, and Yakinda, wow. They're going in? That's a blind hit, but they're starting to commit yeah, to the stack. Yeah, yeah that, going back molly, now a Liquid. That Molly actually just stops Liquid in their tracks. I think maybe they could have overcommitted. Hooksy runs through his teammate's Molotov. This is such a weird call for G2 to block when they had Liquid right where they want them. Liquid are already hunting down these saving players oh, they now. Want the round. They don't want to give over these AKs to these SMGs, but if they can secure the exits, they are teeing themselves up. What a frustrating round for G2. Modesty hits the tag on Yakinda. He still gets headshot. And then right as you think Liquid actually might overdo the round, Yakinda's probably screaming, come B. G2 run through their own Molotov. I mean, they throw the molly in the first place. That's just crazy to me. As you said, it was all hinging on this one. For Liquid getting up onto 11 now, it's just these two guns to worry about in the next round. Yeah, they don't have money, so they don't want to hunt too heavy, but every little helps. Only two guns. You will not have more rifles. Unless Nexo buys a FAMAS. But nobody wants that. What a great kill for Yakinda. That, today, it's felt like the Yakinda high risk solo lurks on the other side of the map have paid off. They certainly paid off on Ancient with that big red flank in the 1v3. And right there, he may have just set them up to close this series. Yeah, it's also been really reassuring seeing Twists and Naf both look good, right? Both kind of. Showing the form you'd hoped when Twist was brought back into this roster. The uh, reuniting of two former teammates with a long history together. And now we're getting them both in great form. Much akin to how this started. It's sort of like your, your dream liquid scoreboard with them two leading the way. So two guns is all G2 have to work with. Looking like they want to try and fight for this mid control, but the flash and the smoke. Well, it gives them the veil, the cross behind. That flash really slowed them down and sucked the speed out of this top mid play. Hunter will continue creeping down through middle, but Hooksy alone over towards B. Might get a taste of his own medicine here. Instead, he's just smoked off back at the spawn. And so even though Hunter is arriving in great timing on this wrap round, he's mopped up, he's dealt with that AK irretrievable. They will try and get a handle on it, but Naf does not give them the room. And so Liquid are one round away from solidifying a spot in the playoffs, quarterfinals at minimum, but shooting for semis if they're able to win that next BO3. We said coming into this, they have to seize these opportunities. They have to try and take every chance they can to get in these land performances, these deep runs. What you were expecting when this Liquid squad was put together. And they are just five kills away from accomplishing that feat. Great call in the previous as well, just knowing that with no util down banana, G2 just had nothing to play with and they could contact into B. This is what G2 was saving for to try and save this series, a last hurrah into overtime. But Liquid have looked like the better team across these three maps. Fresher ideas. Consistently stronger individuals. And now three shots to shut this down for good. Nico risking it all here. Back a banana. Hooks is holding flashes for him. 
Out they go. He'll need him. He'll need all the help he can get. It's only the captain. Yakinda comes running and gunning for the entry. Hooksy lines up too as they turn back to spawn. He might be able to save the day solo. Gonna have to. Hooksy oh. rising to the occasion. Three kills in the round. That gives G2 a fighting chance in this retake. Bomb still not planted. But Kadian now posted back of the site on this AWP dream position for this AWP. G2 aren't going to have an act of God again. This time they've got to get through Kadian's AWP. Nails that first. Any more from the AWP. Oh, Kadian will walk it over the line. And Liquid rise up. Stopping G2 in their tracks. In a lengthy BO3 series. They're able to take it in the distance. Inferno might be a home map for the G2 squad, but Liquid have now planted their flag here as they have at least locked in quarterfinals. Yeah, Liquid's first tier one land since Jan, and they don't waste the opportunity. This is only the first step for Liquid. High expectations, high goals, but they're on the right direction. The G2 on the other side, yeah, I think it would have been easy to write this one off if folks like Monacy never got started, but he was very much here to play today. And in spite of that, Liquid is still able to run over them. That is no easy feat when you've got Monacy looking good. Yeah, in a world where it feels like Liquid may even come through as potential favorites to that matchup on Wednesday, will be versus the winner of Mao's Furia to fight for semi-finals. At least they're in you know the top the top uh, six already. But there's more to do, or the top eight. There's more to do for Liquid in this tournament. I don't think that they will get ahead of themselves by any means. But the break has done them some good. Coming with a lot of fresh ideas. I think their ancient was something to marvel at. But of course, even beating G2, who were flawless on Inferno at the major, is something to say for Liquid. It's one thing to beat, beat everyone in your region, which Liquid have certainly done. But this is a whole different beast. So it's nice to see Liquid performing to the level that we would expect, that we would want from this roster. Yeah, and all that with the top performances from their Canadian duo. That experienced duo, Twist and Naf. Right, very reassuring to see Yakinda kind of that third man in there. Uh, and you touched upon it as we got towards the tail end of that game. It was great to see some of these solo lurks paying off for the guy. Kind of what made him so exciting to watch in the first place. And we got a, a full, you know, got to bear full witness to that today. He had some very crucial rounds in there across the series for Team Liquid. Yeah, G2, not the end of the run, though, by any means, right? They're down to, you could argue, the easier side of the bracket against uh, two of the Chinese teams. So we'll see if they can make a run to quarterfinals in the end. But first, let's hear from the rest. No, I have to do interview right now. Yes, you do. You do need to make an interview right now. It's yeah. already on. We're, oh, we go, on. we're going in. We're going in. First of all, congratulations. It took three maps. This is why I want to kind of address the situation on Anubis, because you could choose the side. And you decide to let them start on the T side. Why? Yeah, we talked about it. We thought maybe uh, momentum from, if we played good on Ancient, momentum can carry us on, on CD side and we play good. Um, theoretically, I mean, six rounds uh, CD side should close it out. Um, so we're going to definitely go over our, our T side. Um, I think a, a bit of tiredness, maybe, it could have played a factor, um, but we woke up for third map. So you would say it's not that what lost you the map? No, I mean, six rounds CD side is tremendous on, on Anubis, so I think any team would, would take that. Um, yeah, I mean, it is what it is. <laughs> it is what it is. I mean, at the end of the day, you get to close the series, but like there are some teams, you know, that are being called onliners and that's kind of usually being like called as an insult for you it kind of seems the other way around like when it's online like maybe you're not yet really there but now you managed to qualify so like straight to the playoffs like is it about like the environment on the land that maybe is an extra motivation i think so i mean we didn't qualify for this event in the beginning and then we got the invite and we take those check and sandwiches right um two weeks online practice for us at home people are feeling good people are happy in their lives uh we come here ready to play good cs with a second opportunity and um, I think we're making the most of it right now. All right, then good luck in the playoffs, and I hope you'll get to enjoy the pandas. Thank you. Yeah, they are going to have a little bit of extra time to check out those pandas. They did qualify for the playoffs. That's Team Liquid doing the damn thing, Yanko. Yeah, absolutely. A great performance from them, uh, making it into the playoffs, getting a couple of more games under their belt. We talked about stamina, Trace, how it's going to be important for this game, and you could see both teams you know, with some questionable rounds, 
uh, in this game, but uh, Liquid manages to come out on top. And Jordan, you just heard Twist say right there, everyone's happy in their lives. And of course you're happy after you qualify for the I playoffs. mean, why not? Yeah, right. I mean, you can see what that means to them. Obviously, we're standing out there. We can hear what it means to them as well. They're very, very pumped up, obviously. It feels like at the moment, uh, in a sense, right, everyone's against Liquid, right? The conversation has been, what are they going to be doing? How good are they going to be? They missed out on the major. There's lots of negative storylines, I suppose. And I negative think they've... Nancy's out there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think they've come into I Am Chengdu and they've got a lot to prove and they have today done a lot to prove how far they can potentially go. They've made it to the playoffs, and now the question is going to be how much further can they go? But uh, yeah, already that's a big tick in the book for Team Liquid. Yeah, that's a step in the right direction, you know, from the Liquid that we want to see uh, propel themselves. And Bill, they did just that today. In fact, they're still in a huddle right behind you, Yanko. So teams coming together. I guess we were wrong the DOA. Yeah, I think they looked good. They had some good plans for this game as well. We talked about banana control and G2 and they're good at it. You know, we saw even Liquid op open up 4A early on in the first half to throw the extra utility. You know, you hear how many nades have been used so that kind of conditions you how are going to approach banana control that was when g2 took loads of damage from the he's right that crippled them in the first gun round and it looked extremely dominant from liquid they they started waffling with like a 5v2 and a 5v3 that they lost back to back which gave g2 a way back into the game but in the end they managed to overcome them yeah we can jump into some of those rounds i think round 19 is where we're going to start but honestly you're right man 3d5 this one sealed the deal because it was look it's like an eco from uh, liquid i think a hero ak or maybe a saved ak right and g2 is going for fast banana control and Kadian just he ca catches a glimpse of nico before the flash pop and just destroys him with the p250 he had no armor then hooksy tries to make a play around the smoke he dies to yakindar and now Hunter gets the trade in a 3v4. You know, they decide to leave Monesi alone towards the A bomb site. He's going to do a great job of finding two kills and then Naf in the 1v2, really with the repositioning, outmaneuvers uh, Hunter and Exa manages to clutch it out. And I think this was actually huge. G2's money was shot after this point and Liquid just managed to take them down. That was frightening, just a little bit. Just a bunch of grown men just screaming at the top of their lungs. Yeah, good examples here, but also dig a little tight. Right, in, in moments that was very yeah, tight, that I mean, was very tense. When we switched over to the CT side, you know, G2 started rolling, but there were issues on that B bomb site. I mean, Nico couldn't get anything going, even in an anti-eco, right? Like from triple, they're splitting B, he can't find any kills with the M4. It was Hooksy kind of bailing them out in, in that round. You could see the frustration on their faces and uh, yeah, just the, the strengths that they've shown at the Major on this map. We didn't really see them uh, here against Liquid. Did sort of feel a little bit similar to Anubis in a sense, right? Where it sort of felt like Monacy against the world. And in this case, unfortunately, he just wasn't able to do enough, right? There was a lot of individual step ups, both uh, from G2 and mostly from Monacy, obviously, in that case. But then on the other side of things from Team Liquid as well. And so that's where, uh, at the end of the day, this time, Monacy wasn't able to do enough. And Team Liquid had a couple of big individual clutch moments that got them over the line. So let's talk a little bit about that Monacy side, right? So G2, they take an L here. Where do they go from here? Where do they get from this series in particular? to the lower bracket trade. Oh yeah, buddy. Oh yeah. <laughs> is where is where they go, but you know, still things obviously for them to work on to improve wasn't like a particularly great series, you know, Ancient wasn't uh, really close at all either, so things to figure out back to the drawing board to some extent and to see if you can make that lower bracket run. Yeah, um, and it starts to paint our picture, right? So we've got just our first day of action here of Counter-Strike. So now we have a bracket starting to fill itself out rather than when we first got here. So let's take a look at that really quickly. Um, and that'll be group of A. So as it lies. Well, yeah, we already, ha already had one lower bracket uh, game play out, right? Uh, we saw 9Z take down Heroic. Uh, Lin Vision and Tai Lu, they'll play later on. So yeah, G2 down in the lower bracket. Heroic is going to be mm. there, Lin Vision or Tai Lu, and also the loser of Furia Mouse. So yeah, it's, it's not uh, an easy run by any stretch of the imagination, and we have some exciting games ahead in Group A, Trace. Yeah, I don't think you have to be too disappointed, though, if you're G2 going down into that lower bracket, particularly knowing that you're on that side of the bracket the same side as the two Chinese teams so Linvis and Tyloo I don't think really hold a candle unfortunately to G2 so I think they're okay at least for the next game yeah and if you did just notice that is Heroic eliminating 9Z so they are out and Heroic stay alive in that lower bracket which could very well set up G2 and Heroic at the end of that lower bracket either way that's not today that's neither here nor now we're gonna go to a quick break we're gonna come back and we do have more Counter-Strike at the Intel Extreme Masters that is correct the Mundo it is Maus taking on Furia we'll be RB at some point in every gamer's life, there's a question to be asked. Do your clothes match your hobby in any situation? Or do they just represent what you dream of? 
No matter what situation, there's always the right way and the wrong. The only real question is, which are you going to choose? Decide for yourself. Smokes. You see a double smokes in the same place there. Simple just jumping casually into the side. Wait, wait, wait. What, 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 what was that? Never miss a play again. That's not allowed. This is not FPL. This is a major. Finally. With Face It Watch, you're in control. Switch between player POVs live and see the game through the eyes of any pro. Never miss a moment with replays. Relive each highlight on demand from all angles. Watch it, control it, face it.
A lot of hype around these two teams that we're about to look at right here in the right now. We're looking at Furio on one side, Mouse on the other as they make their way into the arena and get set up, situated for this best of three, right where they want to be at the end of day one. I can tell you that much for sure, and especially where you want to be, because this is the Intel Extreme Masters, and we are live from China right here with the last best of three of the day. I've got Yanko and I've got Elfish Guy here with me to kind of tie this one all together, because there's a lot of things to consider when you think about these two teams coming to the server today. Yeah, it's interesting, isn't it? I mean, you say there's a lot of hype. I don't know if that's necessarily the case. I mean, I think there's a lot of hype around this team that's on the screen yeah, at the moment, definitely, said, but maybe not quite so much around Furio. I think there's still some question marks that need to be answered. They didn't do so amazingly at the major, so a uh, big opportunity for them to step up here. Furia no longer the best team in Brazil. Oof. I think that I think you might be right. I think it's a problem for some of the other teams don't have as many opportunities, so okay. it's hard to tell, but they definitely weren't the best Brazilian team or the team that play the best CS at the major. You know, I think we can argue both Imperial and, P and Pain did a better job, but we'll see here both of these teams played the Chinese team in their opening game, mm -hmm. right? Managed to take care of that. But here is where it's the real test for, for Furia. And speaking of test, right? So we're going to get into Furia, don't worry. But when we talk about Mao's, it's been uttered, it's been said, and should it be reiterated? We're talking about group stage heroes, is that what we're saying? Yeah, man, I, I think this is where they do their best work so far. You can see it. Uh, in the stats as well, the difference in series record, also in map, map record to some extent. And listen, this is one of the youngest teams that we have in the scene. Their average age is just 20 years old, and sure, they've been together for a while, some of them even from the academy team, but you need to get experience playing on those stages and going through some of these losses, some of these situations, right, and understanding what's happening to you and why to be able to overcome it. Why did the losses have to start with my pick -em? I guess that that's just your fate, Trace. <laughs> it's meant to be. It's just, it's that's what you get. Yeah, it is. Okay, so Mao's. When we look at this squad, we talk a little bit about the you know the young and sort of. I guess the way that they're trying to power through the rankings at this point. Yep. Where do you play some Mouse? I mean, interesting, isn't it, right? I mean, I guess it depends on what the conversation is. Are we talking about just at this event? Uh, obviously, you can take a look at the power ranking that we did the other day, and we had them as number two in the groups behind FaZe, which is, I think, uh, obviously quite a hefty position for them. There's a lot of expectation on this Mouse roster, and I think a lot of that comes from what we saw from them in the group stage at the Major, which was, to be fair, very good. Uh, it's just more of a conversation of one To open the year, Trace, they were 3-0 at the RMR, they went mm -hmm. straight to the semis in Katowice, 3-0 in the opening stage, yep. right? But when they got to the playoffs in Katowice, 2-0 by FaZe, completely stomped. You get to the major, you're 2 by G2, okay, extenuating circumstances, mm -hmm. everything that was going on in that match that, that really affected the mouse players, right? But at some point, it, it has to change. And I think here, when it comes to the groups, they're uh, the big favorite. Yeah, and you look at this team in a multitude of ways. But in this way, I'm talking about the IGL and Suhei. Uh, and we're fortunate enough to hear from him before we get this game started. So let's check it out. I have Camille here by my side. I mean, people usually call you Shui, but Camille is more personal. You do need to explain me what exactly happened in the first series, because it was on the B stream. And the uh, score was pretty pretty close. What happened? Uh, it was close because we lost a very big eco uh, against five pistols or five USPs. And then suddenly the score is close. Suddenly they're winning. But then we knew we had it under control and we just came back. We, we closed out the game. But what caused that loss that, of that eco? Um, miscommunication? Maybe a little bit of miscommunication. Maybe too much confidence from my side. You know, just rushing plus W. Mm -hmm. But uh, I'll take it into consideration for next eco. Mm -hmm. Well, definitely the thing that usually give confidence, like maybe like lifting the trophies. The last one you guys managed to get was EPL season 18. Back then, you're like 3 old Navi that just recently won a major. What do you think you need to do in order to not just get to the playoffs, but also get those trophies? Wow. Um, I mean, if I knew, I would just lift every trophy, right? Yeah. But uh, it's a big working progress uh, process. Sorry. Um, there is a lot that goes into it, obviously the hard work that we put in, but also we need to stay consistent. We're a young team, so we're working on all those factors and... Every okay. We continue. Um, yeah, so we just need to be patient. Damn, yeah, okay. The passion. Yeah, fair play to them. But uh, yeah, we just need to be patient with what we have uh, and just take every playoffs uh, run that we have as an experience and take it forward. Sounds good. Thank you very much. Thank you. So what the leaders over here saying is, is essentially they need to be patient and kind of take these stage games, take these opportunities and playoffs and learn from them, right? So where does that start? Does it start today? 
Yeah, I, I think it starts when they get to the playoffs. Sure. I, I think here they're expected uh, to win this game against Furia. And yeah, sure, you're getting experience, you're learning at some point. You need to have learned your lesson and just try, start applying that and, and take that next step. And just and just handle it, right? At a certain point, just kind of understand the situation and come out above it. And our situation is a map veto. Featuring what map, Yanko? I think Nuke Pick could be here an option for Furia. I, I think it was interesting because both teams, Vito and Ubis, and Furia just decides to get rid of Overpass, leave it for Maus to ban it. Maus goes to the Vertigo pick. They've had a lot of success on it lately. Furia picks to start T side on that map as well, which is interesting. And Mirage as the decider. I think there was a couple of options here for Furia for both teams. Really, they decide to go with Nuke. You know, it's a bit tough to, when you're struggling to find wins, it's a little bit tough to know your map pool as well you're trying different things yeah so i mean y y yanko you've said it you're, you're looking at miles to come through in this one on top jordan Absolute. do you agree yes or no yes okay well we'll leave it as simple as that because we are ready to get into the game here in just a few seconds i'm being told so yeah we're looking at nuke vertigo mirage and uh, a date with destiny here for these two teams yeah, I think also Nuke for Furia, where it's known to focus more on inside, not necessarily always throw smokes outside, art, playing around vents, all that sort of a jazz. So yeah, he had a good first map. He'll need to keep that up here against Mouse. Yeah, we're going to have to see what the intensity brings, because we do know what Furia can pull out. We're going to see if they can, though, or if they do, rather. We're going to go into the game now. So if you are looking for that, you've joined at the most appropriate time. Let's get this one underway. Let's do exactly that, Trace. Mouse v. Furia once again for the playoffs here at the top of the group. And the top of the evening to you, Harry, as we get into a bit of a spicy game, like being called the group stage merchants uh, of Maus against the team that have never lifted those trophies, and maybe they should have in Furia. Who do you have taken this one? I think, you know, I think I have to give the edge to Maus. Uh, yeah, you know, I mean, we're not in the, the high pressure yet of the, uh, of the arena. And I think they do their best work uh, in these moments. This is where they look their best, but I don't know. Furia, they've got the experience. I like some of the stuff that Arts have to bring to the table. And K. Serrat, who started in good form to open up the day. So there's certainly some win conditions here for the Furia squad. Let's see if we get them. Yuri going to make quick work of this play in through the lobby and just delaying this flank. Shui's doing what he can from the heavens, but left with a lot of responsibility here and dink down at the first opportunity. Impact makes his way over. But this is a tall order for Maus. They lose Shui right away. And Imi will fall as well. So Furia rock up with a pistol round under their belts. And they'll get off to a good start here. Yeah, when I fi uh, think of Maus on Nuke, I think of Yimpat, and I think of him making the ramp look like a star position. It is certainly not, but this guy is the, the guy to look out for, I feel, in this game for Maus was rocking Tyloo earlier on. Both of these teams taking down Chinese squads on home soil here in order to get through the group into this playoff matchup. Oh, Shui burning. Crispy. Ducking back into the lobby. Keiserato clears him from door to hut around the world. They knew someone was, eh? They... We couldn't have gotten far, so Fury got a plant and this gamble on lower. You can't boost through the floor anymore and defuse that bomb. It's going to have to be a save. Or at least exits, rather. Yeah, I actually really like uh, how this Furious squad are starting to develop. I think they're, they're doing some exciting stuff. I, in particular, and we won't get to see it because they won the pistol, but I actually really like how they approach second rounds when they lose pistols. Uh, some of the ideas they have oh, there. Solo MP9 the, the on CT oh, Yeah, exactly. Like CT side especially. But, you know, I think it makes a lot of sense. Like, it sounds crazy, but, you know, you see so many teams get away with some interesting purchasing yeah. decisions. Folks like VP, for example, very aware and always have been of the importance of kind of doing damage early, and that feels like it's only become more apparent in MR12. And I think you see Furia trying to bring that into their game plan. I like also, they, they, they play, you know, they're no longer like the fun, we go fast team anymore, right? Like, they still have that ability to pick up the pace, but it feels like Art's tried to diversify the portfolio a lot. And we see a, a good few more kind of structured, you know, just set pieces into sites. Yeah, one of the things I haven't liked about that CT buy is, sure, on an economical side, it makes sense because you're just going to double buy MP9, even if you lose. But sometimes it just feels like there isn't a play behind it. Like, Art doesn't actually have a move 
right now, he doesn't need a play. The play's coming to him. Brolin just running to chase down that door kill, and Art will take the route into Vent. He won't get far. That's unfortunate. Torchy spamming him. Okay, Serata returns. But they do hear that drop, I think. So Mal should know about what protrudes in this B bomb site. And they know the route to get there. Look at this ramp setup. Too strong. Waiting for Furia to group for this B hit. When you see one, you should be ready for two in this position. Torshi. Especially if it's Torshi yeah. you see first, right? Just not the, the name you're used to seeing here. So are they ready for Yimpa? He'll flush Yuri out of the round. Can't quite deal with Fallen, but... Plenty more where that came from to plug this hole over towards ramp, and it's just Keiserato left at the end. Very yeah. solid hold. Torshi had a great major as well, individually. So foot coming in with fighting form early on this first map of the series. It is Furious pick after all. An early save in spite of this one getting off to a nice start. It was a bit awkward for Olme Art as he tried to go down the vent, got stuck on it. AK dropped up above as well, so Keserato didn't even nab that as he dropped on down. And then they go into a uh, a well-placed lean over towards ramp. Mao's good read of the situation on how Furia would have looked to have used that player getting down lower. So Keserato is never even given the chance. That first rifle round finds success right away for this Mao's squad. It's interesting there, man. We already have a little disagreement about the uh, the art four spies. No, I, 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 I'm not against it. I'm not against it on a on a money basis. No, I but just I, think I, that, I, th like, I think there are ideas behind it. So, well, that's. I hope. I'm sure we'll get yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. No, we will get it. Surely they lose a pistol at some yeah, point. Yeah, that feels inevitable. I don't know. Sometimes, sometimes it's fine, but for the most part, it just feels like he just plays his spot. And I don't know. It's not. A, it's not a hero M4 we're talking about. It's a hero MP9. There is only so much you can do. Ooh, Ooh, the spam. Brolin gets his revenge this time. Pushing through the door is Keiserato. Furia are in upper, though. Yeah, Brolin playing it through the main smoke, but he is overwhelmed. Torshi and Zershin will take matters into their own hands, and that leaves it just on Yuri and Fallen here. So Furia might have gotten out, but never given time to plant, never given time to celebrate the ground gained. It's taken away so swiftly by this mouse squad. Exertion. Knocks out the one gun that could have made it interesting as Fallen tries to grab that back. Torshi is just homed in to deny it. And high energy from the Mao squad to open up. Yeah, that's not easy. It has been a long day, right? They played a match uh, very early on in the BO3s. They played it at 2 p.m. local. So considering it's 8.40 now, and off the back of travel, which we've already seen affect some teams, important to start strong with that energy and bring good vibes. And that's something that we know Mao's for. Good vibes, fantastic vibes. Just, just dudes having fun, playing video games. A very young team with a lot of energy, so... And I mean, something that was echoed even by Shui in the interview, a team that I think just want as much exposure to stage games as they can get. Yeah. Ideally not up against FaZe Clan. <laughs> 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 but, tonight. yeah, you know, I mean, just a any time in, in those sort of situations to kind of get warmed up in those positions. Okay, Serato, can't make it any more interesting. But yeah, you know, I mean, not like you get to play stage matches all the time, and it's not like there's second chances available. It's like if you don't feel warmed up and comfortable there, well, then you will probably lose. Yeah, it is a difficult one with Miles because when you look at the results on stage, you can see why this narrative is building. They have lost almost every game they've played on a stage, but at the same time, almost all of them have been against FaZe, which is no easy win. The G2 won is a, a, the major is difficult because of the caveat, but also they were getting stomped in the first three halves of that series. I'm sure it stopped any chance of a comeback, but we can only speak to what we saw before the disruption. So Mao's had not much going for them in that game. Uh, Sydney was the same. 
world finals they beat cloud nine but it's not you know it wasn't the biggest arena and again they lose to phase i think so you can see what the narrative is building and i'm sure they want to shoot it down for themselves more than anything you don't want that voice in the back of your head telling you you're just a group stage team on the flip side for furia they don't really get these stage opportunities not in recent times having trouble even getting through the groups Mao's going to try and make that a problem yet again Torshi making a move, pushing through the door, finding Art. Art-esque. And then back down the vent where he can control this lower play for Furia. But they haven't got anyone down secret despite the smokes. The most Torshi will expect is probably one player. They're being very loud in the lobby. They want to go for an upper hit, it seems, with Yuri on the roof. But everyone's being pretty loud. So this isn't much of a question for Mal's where Furia are and where they're ending. A block comes back on A. Two set on the top site. This is not going to be an easy round for Furia. It's about clean entries at this point. This looks like a hot roof, Molly. Yeah, Util comes out. Shuey, good position here. Posted close up on the door. Quick work made of the first guys in. And you said clean entries needed. Well, it's a one for two. He'll take that all day long if your mouse just extending that advantage even further. And for four and no oh, chance. Wow. Torshi styles on him. Let's fucking go, boys. <laughs> and Torshi's having one of those games. And so that is going to make Matt as miserable for Furia. Yeah. Damn, Torshi, he's smooth with it right now. Off the hut, in the door, up the vent, in your head. Oh, simple style, baby. Love to see that. Show a great double as well from door. All right. Well, it was a little telegraphed. It wasn't the cleanest upper play. And Torshi's position at least allows him to control essentially both sides at once. Sershin spotted on the cross. Oh, he tries to get out. He tries, he succeeds. He goes back for more. That's a bit too far for me. Biting, but unable to chew. It's dentures knocked out by Furia. Mal's going to get an early rotate down vent. If they want it, they push Roland down the, uh, the slide. And Furia, well, they've been given a gun in secret. What can they do with it? Well, right now, it's a keen old slowdown. I know that with this info kind of cut and dry over towards secret, Maus are going to rotate players down a lower. And if enough time passes, there's a world where Brolin even gets curious. So they wait and see, uh, engage the reactions from Maus, but not being given anything. Eventually, Furia will be the ones having to make a move. And in doing so, they might get left in the prying eyes of Torshi's AWP. Right place, right time. Okay, not anymore. He rotates out on the orb. But don't worry, waiting over towards the back of Garage is Shui. Uh, Never to see this. I'm worrying. Yeah, maybe a little cause for concern. Right place, Torshi, right, right place, right time. Missed shot to open, but not the second time around. And so swiftly locked out a Furia. <laughs> oh, it's a beautiful pitch from Shui. Okay, I'm going seated alone. I would like to play seated. Perfectly cut screams. Oh, she's got a spawn, just judging by that call. I'm going T-Red alone. I would like to play T-Red. He actually, yeah, he has, he has, he has the spawn. The spawn. All right. Torshi Red check. Get him gone. We got Fallen's Orb out now. Also, I like that from Torshi. He's just telling them. He's like, I am taking the Orb Red. It's not a question. Well, it was a question after. It was, well, it was a request after. But they set him up. They'll let him do what he wants. But yeah, your AWP. When your AWP yeah. is 10 and 2 and just having a field day, you want him telling you what he's going to do. He's setting the pace. He's setting the standard. And so another opener from Torchy's oh. AWP. <laughs> he's stuck Kay again. Serato wasn't the intended target. He's stuck. And Arts missed the damn vent. Finally oh, makes it God. down. But he makes it down loud. Oh, down bad. On five health. He's got to fake it. He's got to make a lot of noise. And meanwhile, they're just searching, clearing the lobby, falling inside of the hut. Torshi 
with a lot to do. Cello tucked in. That's a good clear. It might come crumbling down. If they go back up, uh, Torshi needs to rotate quick. Yumi on the ramp. They know he's a ramp player. They still go in. It's danger, but they won't get punished. Not enough to stop this plant. 2-1-2. Two, two. Torshi looking to cut down Cello. Not in a position where he needs to move. Orp for Orp. Fallen hits his. And now it's Yumi in the clutch. In from ramp and fallen, ready to receive. Nails shot after shot. That all finally comes through for Furia, and it finds success immediately. Fallen does not wait long. After Torshi was having such a, a good time here, it felt like it would have been hard to put a stop to him as he's rooting in through main. He's had perfect reads throughout, but fallen a little faster. I mean, that's a quintessential Mao's round where they don't, you know, they, they never cut they never cut it off. They always want more. They always get hungry. And while well, they're actually a really great active CT side team, there was no one group there. They both pushed different positions, communicated together, but they both get caught. What a turnaround for Fallen to stop that door play. And it just comes unraveling. They saw Brolin get there. Okay, Serato leaves it. Or well, doesn't leave it, I guess. Shui pushes the smoke. Mal just keeps sending wave after wave of Rodent the way of Furia. But this big cat bikes back. Ooh. But it's the push in tandem that looks to reply. Two in through the ramp room. And they get out with the 4v4. Torshi waiting on his AWP. And he might get given a chance here. Yuri trying to bypass this smoke. Oh. Torshi doesn't get the oh, spot. He does the second time. And so that second player is given up the aim of the game. They know that Fury have crossed in a garage. Torshi collects one. Will he be ready for a second man? He only saw one crossing. So he's going to reposition out of there. Fury still have control out in the yard. But Maus are tightening their grip. You can see Exertion making his way up through secret. And Fallen's got yeah. no idea. If he peeks right now, this kill is free. Barrel spotted, Fallen dealt with. And Torshi even racks up another. It's only Art left standing. And not for long, surely. Oh, it's Shui rather over at Ram. <laughs> and he will lock Art out of the round. Very mobile, very active yeah. across the board from Maus and Shaw. Sometimes it takes away, but mostly it's giving. This is not a go-to map for Mal's at all. It's one they've avoided. It's one they've felt fairly uncomfortable on. But right now, they're just making all the right moves, calling stuff out of spawn. Torchy's not missing. I haven't really even seen Brolin yet. One of the things I love about Torchy, when he has games like this, he like looks genuinely surprised. Yeah. <laughs> this is what's wow. happening. It's so easy. Oh, he just can't set a foot wrong. Oh, finally deals with him. Finally takes out the big man. That's going to give more Maus players time to shine. Cello dink down low. But we'll complete the kill at least. And that's going to get Fury across down in towards lower. Maus are lacking the resources to send anyone down there right now. And Ashui makes this rotate happen. Thankfully, Fury haven't gone quickly here. And so Shui is not punished for rotating through the vent. But they are deeper than he was ready for. Ah, uh, fallen. He's quick right now, that orping into swapped AK. And it's worth his weight in gold. Instantaneous uh, headshot on Chewy. Four on two. Fury move lower and lower. Slower and slower. Okay, Serato is still concerned about a flank. It's just Yimmy and B. I say just, but 1v3 essentially right now. As these two upper players will not battle. Brolin might even get that pre-rotate. If he does, could be perfect timing. Oh, up the vent. They might have to. Okay, Serato is the only guy on that top side now. Brolin's come rotating down, and Fury have found the gap. It's scary going up the vent this late in, but they do seize this moment, this little gap that's been offered up thanks to Brolin's rotate into the ramp room. Two on three. The Maus want to give this one a go. They've got good timing on the lobby flank. They're going to be here faster than Furia might suspect. Art's been dispatched to deal with it. But if he offers up a kill here and gives way to the 2v2, Maus are suddenly right there and ready to go for it. If Art can just deal with that first man in, 
or even stay alive. That's worth its weight in gold to Furia. Yimmy goes looking for him, and Art will hound down that man. It's just Brolin left. One on three, gonna collect that kill, is sure. He? It's not for heaven. Hang on. Oh, oh thank goodness Art oh. is there. If he crosses, does yeah. he oh, win the round? If he makes it across, there's a, there's a real world where he just sticks that defuse. We don't need to think about it because Art is keen. Art is ready. Three kills in the round from him. Yeah, this swap was so big because that's a Galil. That's not a kill. He might even die on the fadeaway. <sighs> big round for Art. Okay, Furia back on the board. Back in the game. And really, it has just been Torshi running the board for Maus. So, without an AWP, he might be less lethal, but it gets crowdfunded. Thrown over by young Jimmy. The chance for Fury to make it six is off of the back of this round. It would break Maus' economy into the last. Let's see if Fury can do right by this opportunity. Torshi again. Consistent peek in the door. Oh, it's close. No cigar. He gets naded down instead. Great util. Ramp is open and Furia have gambled that. They've walked into the empty and open arms of this ramp room. Torshi's going to arrive on that yeah. AWP, but just too late to contain the spillover in ramp. And somehow starts scrambling a few bodies down here towards Lowett. Exertion, first man on the scene. Should be getting down the vent now as well, but a lot of it just comes down to this MP9 finding something, seizing the good timing that he's got. Oh, 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 he will get it. He will get it eventually. It's not clean, it's not pretty. But he at least gives way to a 4v4. It's winnable. Get to the rafters, and Exertion can't follow up with a trade, so that's gonna lock Maus out of the retake. They're left saving, wanna try get that AWP. Yeah, that would be uh, the big ticket item right now with the game Torch is having. It's just unfortunate for him that he doesn't consider that Fury have walked four players deep out ramp. On um, Fury or even no, the, yeah. the end goal to go grab that AWP. There's no way he can get it now. A bomb too big. So Fury, okay. Ready to write them off after a streak of five from Maus after the pistol. But they're looking to level out the half on 6-6 six, six on their map pick. Be decent on T-side nuke. Nothing to turn your nose up at. And if Art's here to serve as Torshi's kryptonite, that's that's fine by Furia. It's now both of these last rounds that he's found that opening kill onto the uh, the top fragging AWPer. So not much to work with here if you're Maus. These ramp pushes have been more problematic than helpful for Maus, and now in the last round where they're desperate, they are making plays, and they're all getting denied by Fallen Zorp. Two kills in the blink of an eye sets Fury up for a solid recovery on the T side. This is a match for playoffs. This is a map pick of Fury, and we needed their best face today. They are delivering that. Barely eked out a win. v Vision earlier. But Fury against Maus, playing to the level. Locking in a split half. Torshi doesn't know where to look, and Furia send us to a break. We'll be back in a second with more Counter-Strike here, live from Chengdu, China.
Satoshi might be running the board, but Furia find a way back in. And with Fallen now awakening as well, this is a real clash of orpers. 6-6 six, six at the end of that first half. A gap closed on Furia's map pick. We're going to need someone else other than Torshi to start flying the Mao's flag because right now it's feeling like a bit of a one-man army. Well, T-side is where we can share the load, spread the love. A little upper hit here in the pistol for Mao's. Going to have a main split coming from Silo. In case Ratu hears that climb up. Ooh, where do we go? It's so many players flooding in. Shui with a jump and a drop. Keserato kills two, and that bomb cowers inside of the smoke. One kill from Yimpat. Can he make it down just? And Torshi here to cut the rotates, but that ramp position will be the dangerous one for Yimmy in the post plant. Gonna get, have to get that quick stick. Guarantee the money for Maus. Past this point, it is seemingly impossible. Oh, dare I say that? Dare I speak too soon? I do. But Jimmy had a 1v4, not long for this world. <laughs> he's whittling everyone down, but he's so low himself. He can't do a thing here. He was just looking for the money, really, for Maus. Oh, the cello. Cello just wasting his time. Oh, oh, wait, oh, wait. The crazy he shot. Win. Hang on. Backstab him from he's done it. He's done it. He's won the round. That is madness. 1v4. And 5 HP, and he threads the needle to get past Ben. Last bullet in the face on what? No. No. That is a despicable clutch. Furia cannot believe that they've just let that one slip away. You could just see it materializing. I thought the Julie's player had it on lock. He needed one bullet to like, connect. Give me a one bullet at this point. Boom. Absolute madness. <laughs> I just, can't believe it either. It shouldn't be winnable. Should That should never be winnable. Cello's playing like so passive, it's actually a problem. He can't even stop him. Not wanting to risk a 1v1 on low health. They were both low. Oh, that's a kicker. Well, now we don't talk about the art force. We talk about the fury of force because they're pissed. Buying in big. Oh, I'm shook. Is that the 1v4 that just breaks Furia out of the game? Broken me. You never see stuff like that, man. Crazy. Ooh. Fallen wants revenge, and he wants it now. Scout pulled out. First of all is Brolin, but still more where that came from over here at ramp. The one that robbed them even tagged up by that scout bit more respect force but then again you bring jimmy down low does that really help you just makes you more eager to fight him that's exactly what he wants this is a really rough round though for battles they may have the guns but 5v4 two low players those pistols hit like rifles should be faking lower. Does draw falling down for a moment, but they got to get through the deagle. That's easy. Yuri just strafes out. Art, Art's big flank, but they cover him. And Kesarata from hell assists. They get absolutely oh! slammed, sliced. Oh! High energy for Fury yeah, just mean, as well. Finally, something to celebrate. Winning, winning around like that after the. Ludicrous 1v4 that comes through in the pistol is so important for Furia. It pulls them back into this game, kicking and screaming, falling at the helm there as his scout pops off. Well, it's been a rock in this game already. In the few rounds they've needed him, got that AWP double on the lobby flank, hit his scout shots here, had one rifle round. He's not had a problem. Well, this force buy removed as soon as you like it. Easy stuff. Okay. Well, apparently we shouldn't write this one off. No, no we I'm, should. I'm writing it off. Yeah. Brownlin just looking to maximize some damage in at the end. Damage maxing, we love it. 
It goes hot. He's dead to rafters, so sorry to be there. Oh, bear of bad news, but Furia back in control. For how long is the question mark? At least this man, round. I tell you, dude, if you're Fury, you're very happy with how this has gone. Like, you know, that, that fall down winning? of the pistol. <laughs> yeah. And then it's like, okay, you could have crumbled there, but they come through with the force. They find success. Now they beat Mouse's force by, and so that's going to get them off to that three round streak they were looking for. Three round streak that felt like it was cooked, like it was done. They're here to play. This one, I feel confident this time in saying it shouldn't get out of control. And Fallen even dons that AWP right now up against the Glocks. So he's going to have that heading into the first rifle round for Furia. I feel like we're seeing big Fallen games with more and more consistency, which is very cool. Yeah, but I think the fact that sometimes he feels like the guy to rely on, which yeah makes sense in terms of experience, but just speaks to the other troubles that Furia have have been having. Yuri with a bit of a down period. Even coming into the major, he was actually the highest rated Furia player over Case Rato in the last three months. That was pre-major. Case Rato certainly took the metal back, but Yuri has a statement on this anti-eco and him and Fallen find a full house outside. They blow it down. And now yeah. Mao's a gun round or bust. Torshi on a scope. He finds a way. Don't see this gun very often. No, but it is handy at trying to dispatch the orpers, and he takes it over towards outside because he knows that's where he's very likely to find Fallen. Has these nice longer angles to work with. So let's see if the Krieg in Torshi's hands is going to get up to anything. Fallen's on ramp this time. He's moving in, unscoped. Get a drop, great angle for Yuri. Siri just comes strolling in. There's the taps, unconnecting, and everyone killing. That's just a drive by outside. They lose every single one. Furia manhandle Maus in that gun round. They make it look easy. Considering that's like, you know, potentially the the best looking buy and the best chance, 100%, you had to try and recover this game. That's a bit of an ugly way for it to go down. That's a very lax outside take. That one flash to try and get Shuey across. Everyone else, like you say, is just dry fighting. No smokes in sight. I don't blame Mouse for feeling like they're the better team and they have the better players and they can win those fights. But I agree. Like, as soon as you lose it with no kills, you feel very silly. Nade stack in main dodge for the most part. The pistols will still do it. And an upper rush puts pressure on Fury. They respond well. Three on two. And no hurry to get back into this bomb site, but with everyone ready, they can do so. The nade gives them room to swing in. Torshi's looking for a way down. Give him a path to plant. That's all he wants. He made it. Fury are thinking, okay. He only has a pistol. He's planting at a lower. He can't win this. Yeah. And when has that ever betrayed them? Let's see. Torshi will make it across, nice, nice but man. burn alive. Fury, you don't let them slip this one by. That's and great. So they will lock them out of the top A hit pretty convincingly. Bomb plant found for Mao's at least, and they're flush with money. I mean, we're seeing now the lack of experience on this map and the, and the lack of depth show through for Mao's, right? Whether it's the dry outside fight or just going for upper hits with not really much util. That was just a main stack nade. We need to see a proper default for Mao's, you feel. Throw those outside smokes, end A. Or get a play down vent, join ramp. More of a default round. Because the dry fight did not work. And that was with all the, with, without the AWP either. It was on ramp. It didn't even get involved. Fury just won the flat out rifle v rifle fights with a A1Ss. So that was disappointing for Mouse. 
But it's great to see Furious stepping up to the plate here in a playoff matchup with quarterfinals on the line. And a scary team down in that lower bracket, Harry. G2 already waiting. No one wants to face them. No, especially not when they've had a bit of time to, you know, recuperate. Ooh, that looked dead on, but... Yeah, that's true. A little bit of sleep goes a long way. Can Miles wake up from this nightmare? Yuri's now got support out in the yard. Fallen's repositioned swiftly with this AWP over towards heaven. And so Yuri can pick and choose his battles very intentionally here with the AWP covering the cross over to Secret. Those smokes at least give the leeway to get a player down. And that makes Yuri want to get a bit more involved. He just jiggled out from credit, but he didn't spot Shui up on top of main. And so as he goes roaming, He's walking between enemy lines, and Exertion will get handed that kill for free. Much better look for Maus right now. They get past Cello as Brolin trades that out. It's an out. Fallen's Orb from the heavens has got to be the difference maker, but Torshi bears down upon him. Backstab him for Art through the back lines. Gets the bomb away from Maus, but can't take it any further. It's all eyes on Keserato down in the vent. Worst spot to have to rotate in from. Shouldn't have a hope in hell in this one. A little awkward as Torshi's the guy with the bomb. He can't hold the vent, but everyone else will take up that mantle. And Keserato's got to reroute. You're not getting a second chance to come up through the vent. He doesn't want to even give this one a try in the 1v3. That's more like it for Maus. A proper round where they throw the outside smokes. They draw a lot of attention there. Fallen's double scoped on the, the end of the smoke. And then they come in on a main split into upper... Brolin's had a very quiet game, but he gets that crucial entry kill trade out door. And then Maus just roll over Furia on the top site. But it's only a drop in the ocean. Got a lot more to do on this second half. Case Rato looking to deny the orb save. Torshi's very aware. And the hung Hungarian does it again with a 3k on the AWP. Yeah, big time for him to step up, right? You, you weren't going to have many chances. We, that was your only chance to don the AWP if you didn't win that round. And so he immediately puts it to work. Over the shoulder. He got his revenge the second time around. And, you know, Fallen had kind of risen to the, the, the top of the board alongside Torshi, so... Nice to see this orb duel still clashing, still kicking off, and Torshi looking to re-exert his dominance in that orb head-to-head. -head. Early upper hit. Shui with a main luck, but Yuri has a great position. If it wasn't for the smokes, he could break them, but this timing is very early. I don't think Fury are ready. Yeah, Shui, good position, but dealt with by Cello, who is keeping a keen eye on main. Hey, Serato finds even more success, and so now someone's got to bail Maus out of this. Exertion and Torshi throw their oh. names into the hat. That's only the tag from Fallen. Shello will make up for it. And they're now both trapped in this hot smoke. Yeah. Going to try and duck and weave down the vent, but nice. in doing so, they play right into our hands. He's one step ahead of that drop down. Fury at move onto map point. Love that from Cello as well. He drops a smoke on Hot Roof. That gives him so much room. You can see how hard Miles are trying to get him out of position and nading the smoke. They can't find him. He's not only able to stop that split component and not worry about getting traded Hut, but he draws so many eyes that Orp can drop in and force Miles into the unknown. Fantastic round for Furia on defense. And they look good to take their map pick in this series. It's going to have to come down to Vertigo and whether Maus can pick their heads back up on a map that, sure, they would probably say is their home map, a map they have beaten Spirit on, but also a map that Fury are frequent. So there's no rest for the Wicked here. Another AWP for Fallen. Met with a Galil on Torshi. Struggle street for Maus and the cross even though oh no it does get spotted on the boost. I think this great is as well for Furia is like the 
the floor right now in terms of, you know, you look at the scoreboard, it, it's it, it's not very low. Like, everyone's stepping up. Everyone's having their moments. It's Maus who actually have that bigger disparity. And that's not how you would have envisioned this one going down. Fury, I want a swift end to this map. Oh, and Art and Kesarato look to make that happen. Thought he was going for more, but he got out even better. Just trying to guarantee this round. There's no guarantee with the impact in the server. Three on four. Will Furia go a step too far? This double setup is nice as long as Yuri doesn't swing first. Forces Maus to commit back upper. This double stack's going to start to make a move eventually down at lower. You can see already that Yuri was kind of creeping up to the corner, playing it a little closer. They're getting a little antsy. They'll bide their time for now. Wait and see if they get any of those sound cues to react to. And so, yeah, Fury a fan out that lower hole now. Start to disperse it. 25 seconds. Maus are really leaving this one down to the wire. They're still hoping that Fury give them something. But as mentioned, Fury have just been waiting for the sound cue. And now they've got it. They know what's happening in this one. And their patience is rewarded. It's just the impact. 1v4 down at lower. But surely he can't do it twice. They're right behind him. They're pincering him from all sides, all angles. Rushes the bomb plant, but surely can't find anything past that. And chase down, finished off. Fury lock in their map pick of Nuke. Well, that just had a couple twists down the line, but it doesn't quite matter at this point. Furia handedly taking this map and securing the first one of the series. Welcome back to the Intel Extreme Masters live from China. Yanko, we've got Elfish Guy here, and we're on the case now, the curious case of what happened to Miles on Nuke. 13-8 kind of speaks some, uh, it speaks some truth to what happened here. Yeah, they just couldn't get anything done on their T side. You know, the CT side was fine despite losing the pistol. You know, they consolidated pretty pretty early on, but uh, once they switched over to the T side, even with that crazy uh, pistol round, 
win. They just ended up losing the second round and, and didn't find any momentum. Why don't we just look at that pistol round again? Because that was actually crazy. And that's one of the things that makes Counter-Strike just such a, an awesome game, right? So if we can load up round 13, we can run that back and see some heroics here. Yeah, it would have been uh, nice if it actually really paid off for anything because, yeah, it's it's such a nice clutch. It's really, really clean from Jimmy. And, and I guess you've got to look at this and say, well, Furia probably needed to do a little bit better than what they uh, ended up showing in this one. Um, I don't know who you necessarily put it down to. This is obviously a very clean shot onto Fallen, but the fact that he gets around the corner into Decon, no one is even covering Decon at that point. Serato just sort of floating around. A um, little bit of a, a blunder from Furia. The unfortunate reality, though, for Maus is that this didn't end up giving them any kind of benefits, really. They were laughing after that pistol, Trace, but it was Furia who got the last lap. Very last lap at the very end of the map, which is exactly... Another lesson learned for Maus. They've been yeah. learning a lot of lessons this year. And it's it's uh, it's something you have to keep doing. That's actually what he was saying pregame. It's like, you're going to learn from it. Well, you're learning right now in real time. Uh, Professor is teaching them. Yeah, it definitely is. So for Maus, yeah, that is a little bit of a, a silver lining almost, but it absolutely has no bearing into the outcome of this map. Yeah, which is the, you yeah, know, again, you would look at that and say, okay, this is going to be the start of something. It's a it's a sort of an even first half and you win that pistol round and you think, okay, from here is where you win the map. But it didn't end up really being the case. And I think, again, when you look at how things played out from um, Furious' perspective, they just had an effort by committee. I mean, led by Fallen, obviously. But uh, generally speaking, it was fairly solid across the board from Furio. That's exactly the name I was looking for. Fallen in the server and making sure that you remember that. Making sure that you don't forget our Air Force Aim High player of this map. And honestly, makes sense. AWP presence was felt. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, stepped up in this game. I think lately his form has been improving, you know, uh, a couple of games at the major as well, the qualification game to get into the next stage. He was absolutely lights out, top performer for Furia. And we'll see, perhaps there's something there to fall and just being the player, you know, focusing solely on that. Yeah, on the crosshair rather than the minimap most of the time, right? Yeah, I, I liked what I saw. I didn't think it was anything necessarily too outlandish. You know, he wasn't too flashy. He wasn't getting too aggressive. He was really just hitting the shots that you need to hit, making sure he got those sort of like, you know, the, the ones that you need to hit nine out of 10 times or 10 out of 10 times and making sure he locked those down. So solid stuff from him. But I guess, again, when you go into Vertigo, there's going to be another big question mark because we did see Torzi also playing quite well. So that matchup is going to continue going into map two. And also, we shouldn't forget, this is where Furia decided to start on the T side, right? right. Like, so, so I think this is where we'll see what kind of momentum they will bring. Perhaps that momentum followed the team to the parking lot, and perhaps there's some insight that we can't grab from that, which is exactly what we're going to do right now. Heku, what would you hear? Cyclone, the coach of Maus, said that it seems like Furia had their goal to make this map as chaotic as possible, and that's exactly what we see. Right now, we are going to Vertigo, so maybe we'll end up with all three maps. You know, outside of G2, I would say that Furia can also make things chaotic, right? <laughs> yeah, I, I think definitely so. Uh, that shouldn't come as a huge surprise uh, to Cyclone, right? And I think we can expect more of the same on Vertigo. Yeah, I mean, I'm not super concerned necessarily after that loss for Maus. I think, again, Nuke's not really a map that they've been picking up a huge amount of late, so they'll be feeling obviously a lot more comfortable coming into this next map. And um, the only thing that's kind of concerning me a little bit is, again, they did have a really close victory against Tyloo earlier on, so is the form looking a little bit shaky today for Maus? I mean, that's two maps in a row which have been a bit eh, neither here nor there necessarily. I don't think we're getting to see the best of Maus at the moment, and it is getting quite late. So are we going to see the best of Maus today? or are they going to be going down into that lower bracket? That's uh, something that we have to find out. But does it feel better than what we got earlier with Miles? You know, like that's going to be my question, at least at this point. I don't know if point. it does, necessarily. No? I mean, I feel like Tai Lu, for me, was one of the weakest teams coming into this competition. So the fact that they were even able to take them to potentially overtime, and at one point, to be honest, it kind of looked like Tai Lu was going to win that game, which would have been absolutely shocking as far as I'm concerned. We didn't even really know which Tai Lu was going to be playing today. I talked to Kaze yesterday at dinner. I said, are you playing tomorrow? He said, you can find out tomorrow. So I don't even know if they knew who was going to be <laughs> playing. So, look, I, I feel like Tyloo is a bit of a shambles. I don't know if it's a great representation for Maus having been pushed so hard by Tyloo. But again, it is a best of one. So anything can kind of happen. But uh, yeah, now two maps that haven't looked fantastic from Maus so far in the, in the event. It's starting to sort of um, build a bit of a storyline that maybe you wouldn't want if you're in the Maus camp. How big is this tape that they have on their jersey? Like It's, yeah, it's a full body wrap. It it's looks it's like it's half, all the way it's around. It's half the jersey at this point. <laughs> just wear a black t-shirt, bro. No. Yeah, but... Uh, 
We'll see. I think the silver lining for Mouse is, you know, against Tylo it was overpass. So sort of a middle ground with 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 uh, three vetoes from each team, and this was Furious map pick. So now they're finally getting into their comfort zone sure. on Vertigo. I think it's a good environment for them to bounce back and and uh, take us to a third map. Well, we talk about presence, right? You know, I mean, if they, if there's a chance right here, can Furia close this door? I yeah. think they can. There's been a lot of mindfulness on their side of things. Uh, so See what you did there. So yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I don't necessarily disagree. Again, like my prediction probably would be to lean toward Mounds in this one. Uh, that said, we'd need to see someone else beyond Torzi stepping up in this map. I feel like map one really was just the Torzi show. He wasn't quite able to do enough. So I'm looking at Zershin in particular as the guy that kind of needs to jump in there, make a bit of space. I think he struggled with that at this event so far, and hopefully he'll be able to rise up on Vertigo. Yeah, we are guaranteed going to Vertigo. That much I can assure you, at the very least. And we may even be finding our way over to Mirage, which will be the third and final map, the decider here between these two teams. However, it is my time to tell you that if you're watching at home, go ahead and use that hashtag IEM. That's short for Intel Extreme Masters. And in case you didn't know, we're live from China. We'll be right back after this. Hello to our viewers out there, Mike Loder here from the Ticker Studio, today with your weather across the country. Brizzy is looking warm at 31 degrees with a chance of afternoon showers, so keep those brollies on hand. Turning our attention to Melbourne now, where it is looking cloudy with a chance of... Counter-Strike? Chris three flick, oh, oh they're making one by one, sex no way! He wants to oh, double back, oh, 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 does it! You honestly, I I wouldn't use them against you unless I thought it'd be fun. <laughs> so I sit at home alone in your t shirt. I'm wondering where it went from when you always said it, how you liked me better than anyone. We cannot, we cannot talk, we cannot just shrug or dust it off. Or is that thought? Cause I cannot pretend I am your friend, I am your nothing I don't feel bad I don't feel anything I don't feel anything I don't feel anything I don't feel bad I don't feel sad I don't get
imposing tower of vertigo looms off in the distance furia already a map up in this series after running away with nuke they had the uh the privilege of playing on a map that's not as good for Maus now. Maus head to a home map for this squad, but one that Fury are no strangers to. And with playoffs hanging in the balance, it's time to see if Maus can live up to their uh, their moniker of group stage merchants. Yeah, their expectation. This is definitely a team we'd expect to see in the playoffs, especially if you look at their side of the bracket, right? It was two Chinese teams and Fury. They didn't feel like it would be too much for Maus to handle after getting all the way to the playoffs of the major, but they fall on their face in the first map, despite some clutch rounds and a decent first half. Fury still remain above the pedigree. Now, whether they can keep it up over a BO3, well, that remains to be seen. We'll have to find out here on Vertigo. Of course, if we go the distance, that third map is going to be Mirage, where the script gets flipped again on its head. But Mouse have to drag us there first, kicking and screaming. Like what we saw out of uh, Fallen in that first game, he looked very, very quick on the AWP. Yeah, I hope the clash of him v Torshi keeps up, man. That yeah. was a very interesting one to watch. It Torshi was cool to hot. see Fallen have to kind of match up to, as you say, a Torshi that came in firing on all cylinders, and Fallen was able to do so. So we're going to be keeping a keen eye on that. Yeah, a couple of kick-yourself rounds for Maus in that second half where they've got no room for second chances. This is it. Playoffs on the line, quarterfinals, maybe even more for Furia if they can find this on Vertigo. It's an old classic for the Brazilian roster, but recency bias screams Maus. Or is it just a squeak? We're about to find out. Heavy grouping over towards mid for Maus in the pistol as they listen keenly for footsteps and then adjust accordingly. Fury haven't given too much away. It is a slow pistol from the get-go. So that forces Maus to move to something a little more routine. Still with a real emphasis around mid, but now they at least have Yimpat ready to go and support over towards that B site should they need to. Making their way up ramp. Nowhere fast. There's a spot, and that will give them room. Case Rato lets his smoke on the A side go. He's got flashes for the ramp as well. Nice center sight smoke, staying economical. But they are blocked, and that actually stops this entire round for Fury, who wanted to explode up gap. Maybe Fallen can re-exec uh, re down on ramp. Your mouths, you almost don't believe this. Like, you haven't really seen a lot, right? You saw them leap out from the bottom of ramp, but other than that, you gave it up straight away. Now this one smoke comes out. Oh, he just crossed. Uh, no oh, God, Cheeky he's boy. knifed him. Oh, never knew. Stabbed in the back. Exertion opens up the pistol with a knife kill. And Torshi spams out Yuri through the smoke Ouch. from bad to worse for Ouch. Fury. They are run down. How does Jimmy get two kills there as well? They're robbed. And that hurts for Art, who just turns back for a second session, takes that space, and it's the last thing Fury expect. Statement from Maus with a knife kill breaking the silence. And that's the thing, even if I, I agree with you completely, Maus may not have expected that. They go probing a middle, they think it's an A fake, but even if that is the case, you're going to play passive on A, you can play a retake on this site, so it's a very common position. It's not it's helped for Maus by getting that smoke kill too. There it is, the vintage Fury okay. by. The Art Mac 10 into Glocks. I don't rate it. Just saying, I don't, not on T side. And then watch this, you go. I'm watching. Watch them win this round now. I'm watching. You want to put some money on it? Nope. Good, you're not allowed to. And that MAC-10 does as much as you'd expect. It will be shuffled on. Uh, boost it off. It's so awkward. Ooh. Oh, but Jimmy's just repositioned. Won't matter. Yeah. Able to deal with that nice and cleanly. You can at least agree with me, I hope, that the oh, MP9 yeah, 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 makes yeah. far more sense than the MAC-10 into Glocks. I can agree with you on that one. But it, he can, that. of course, just buy it up again. And so that's the beauty of art. That is the beauty. Like, there's there's the win. You get a kill, maybe you win the round. It's like buying a Deagle in a Folico. 
We've all done. We've all done it. We've all been there. Does it work? No. Is that going to stop you? <laughs> he even not. got given the spawn to play with this Mac 10. Didn't use it. Instead, wants to lean over towards B. Well, A fake early, ramp control, smoke. Just doing the work. But even that Molly doesn't hold Brolin back. He's going to swing this yellow side. Clear everything. So a late B pop into the stairs. But the impact's still here. Oh, I'm not loving the amount of ground that Fury are having to consider in this one. Art just had to go back and like walk into T-spawn and even now he's like paranoid that Maus have taken all this control in middle. Fury never had that info, so they're constantly looking over their shoulder here as they poise to take B and A ramp. At least have the real estate over towards B, but they're kind of looking for that. That damage or that kill to apply a bit of pressure over here towards A first, right? They can go back to Keserato later in the round. Or they can have him sell a bit of a fake. The options are still open here, but with no fights being given to them over on the A ramp side, Keserato will have to take first contact, and he Tasty. nails it. Now Fury decide to make a move and take away some of this ramp control. Oh, Brolin, the timing, getting caught, getting to Sandbags. He gets out with the kill. Smoke buys him a bit of room. Torchy trying to help out, catches Yuri sleeping at the wheel. And it's a drive-by for Brolin over the top, taking one more. There's still Art who gets round the smoke, but Brolin suspects something. Should we coming in to help out too late? He's dead, Brolin low. Somehow Furia are mauling their way back into this round. The time is the problem with the bomb loose. Keserato jumps through the smoke and Art does the same. Yuri fights and that gives the round of Furia. Oh, was it worth it? Crazy round out of art. It has to be said. I mean, he plays so far ahead up through the smokes at ramp. Finds his way to a triple kill. And that misstep, that little jump up from Keserato is counteracted from the wide swing out of Jimmy. Can't believe he fights that. Five seconds. Sure, he might get run down, but could have reset CT. Could have hit boost. You're just hoping that Art's going to go fake the bomb plant, right? And you can catch him like in that in that one moment of transition where he's pulled out the uh, the bomb. I admire the confidence, but it's going to cost Miles a round. Torshi picked on A. Good grenades soften up this. Baiting player. Jim Pat close again. Could get flashed by Zershan at a moment's notice. Might need to be. There's a whole setup here. In they come, the MP9s. Look at the feast. Great flash. Jimmy misses the jump, has to recommit to that spray. Unable to convert it. Oh, and Cello kills a piece. And Brolin left so far removed from this B play. Moving in for a 1v2 clutch attempt is Brolin. With the bomb already down and Fury are having a good bit of time to pick their post plants, get set up. The only man who's kind of trapped in a fight here is Cello. But Art's in a position to swing and deal with oh, this. Brolin no. won't let no. them in. And so he picks up that clutch, a hat trick in the round for Brolin. And that's the salvation of ours delivered on Brolin's back. Damn. Fury played that as well as they could, right? They just missed their shots. They swing off the contact, sure. Damage from Cello, damage from Art. Brolin survives with just enough. That's just a, a, a ball dropped for Fury. What else can they do? They've got to you know, get that kill cleaner. Disappointing round to lose. They did seemingly everything else right with that re-aggress from Maus getting punished. Players unable to retreat after pushing wood. Even the Flash are getting killed. Yet still Maus comes through with a cheeky little clutch to give them a 3-1 lead, forcing Furious hand yet again, who will always buy back. Fearless on these investments are Furia.
early util this time out towards ramp. So maybe Fury want to try and fight for that a little more head on. But Yuri and Fallen instead just make steps. And Fury now look to group for this mid hit. This is what they attempted to do in that second round force by. Uh, second round art force by. Sure. Malzar, not surprised though. Two players here. Watching now, Hart leads the way, but blindsided by exertion. And now support coming in from Elevator. Fury are trapped out on an island over here in middle. And exertion just keeps full sending it as the molly spreads. Cello might have battled one back, but how much further can he realistically look to take this? They're going to try boost him up. Maybe the angle open here, but he... Oh, Jimmy, not able to complete the kill. Cello reclaiming these kills over in middle. And now Furia go roaming. Maus are quick to re-aggress, though. And they know they've got Furia boxed in. They know they've got to be spawned. And yeah, the spot as well. It's not the angle you're expecting for Caserato. Picked off by Brolin on the A push, who is 7-1 right now after that clutch. I love that Maus re-aggressed in that mid-round there. They know they have the player advantage. And they know they have all the info with a boost coming in that confirms Furia's positions. They try and save. And we're going to have this kill come through one way or another. Now it's force it. Good clear for Torshi. Four to one. Mouse do not let you rest. Fury got to dig deep. And, Fury, and Yuri digs deep into the pockets. It's actually Shello who buys, but an AK invested. To what is otherwise a bit of a throwaway round. Oh, did that stop the molly? No, it lands fine on cap, but Mal's are fighting for this one. Grenade will be punishing without armor. Yuri eats it down low. Brolin swings to clean it up. And Mal's are making quick work of this. Well, masquerade of a buy. Five up will be. I will be top. getting his fights here, but five alive. Woo! Five alive. Half by with nades. Pretty close, yeah. About as about as close as you can get. Not many nades to speak of. This is a dream start for Maus. Off to the races, and with a five alive round in there. Money not a problem for the foreseeable future. Furia, no such luck. Kind of like they're constantly hamstrung in these buy rounds, and this one is no exception. Collection of rifles, Tech 9 for cello. Only a two full belts of utility, so not, not all the options that Furia would want, especially when you think about how good Fallen looked on his AWP. That is a, a long time off of arriving. For Furia. Mouse, meanwhile, in full control on this CT side. Torshi playing with balls as he aggroes all the way down through ramp. Oh, Torshi okay. destroys the ramp take. And a bit of weirdness over here towards short. As Yuri has bypassed Brolin, he's going to collect one kill for free. But once he does that, now the element of surprise is gone. Brolin's going to come back and try and deal with him, but Yuri suspects Ooh. it. Yuri will anticipate that move. And so has he just saved the day for Fury? That is a keen double after how this round started. Torshi already thought he'd done enough. Yeah. Fury are now get a full exec into the site. They've cleared sandbags. So it's Antara's grenade from Shui, but... Can he stop them with headshots before the smoke stops him? There is nothing of the sort, actually. It's down deep, missed completely. Shui shooting, taking one more. Bomb will be planted. That elevator smoke keeps Zershan contained. But they can play a retake. Oh, huge re-smoke. Gap on it. Yuri still gets out alive. They're going to walk through the smoke. 
This is dangerous right now. Furia about to deal with everyone jumping up at the same time. There's that contact. The swing comes in. Sertion with a kill and Yimmy closes. It's up to Maus again to get it done despite the comeback from Yuri. Nice clear from him. Very aware he'd slipped past the gap player. All under control for Maus. That was a very relatable team calm moment there. Yeah. You've somehow let someone slip by on the smoke, and now you're apologizing. You tell him it's fine, it's all good. We won the round, that's what matters. I mean, they traded two for two on A, if you look at it that way. You know, could be worse. But yeah, gave, gave Fury uh, some breathing room. Mal's still very calm in these late round scenarios. I guess that's what's also surprising about Miles' lack of success on stage. They do seem like a team that, despite being high energy, they are very calm. They don't panic. Like, don't confuse them being mobile and active as being flustered and scared. Oh, dearie me, exertion with... Ice cold. A devastating play waiting to happen. There's just the one, but it's well timed with the aggro in towards ramp. So just case Serato left to try and do the impossible on his way to a 1v4 as he gets that first, but still has so much more to do and will take it no further. It's still just the one round for Furia as Maus continue racking them up. We're getting stomped now, Harry. I think we're entering that territory. Stomped. Yeah, nothing to show for this for Furia. Outside of that one round where Art just goes ham and gets handed a fight at the end of it, there's been nothing to look forward to for this Furious squad. And, you know, if you were Mouse coming into this, you could have envisioned that Nuke would have crept up. You might have already laid out a plan where we might have to do this one in three. There's always going to be a bit of an uphill battle. And so they're rising to that task right now. This time, a man down early as Jimmy is fed to the Wolves. Those Wolves are hungry. I'll take anything they can get at this point in time. Famished. No way he gets two. That's unacceptable. That's unbelievable. Oh, he saw something. They're creeping. They're crawling and they're dying. He got that first kill in one bullet. Every time, like you're you're watching it, it's like, oh, they shouldn't get one here. They'll get they'll get the double. Hell, why not a third? Throw in an extra portion on top. Wings on the side. And cover from the captain puts Maus in control once again. Good job, Ludo. Nice yeah, great job. I don't know how he does it. Two kills on that spray. 8-1. Roland and Exertion just in the circle jerk of congratulating each other for their two Ks. <laughs> Good double, man. Ah, oh, great double from you nice as well, buddy. Ah, oh, cheers, bro. You're doing all right. Oh, okay. Uh, here we are. Out Woo! towards B-Ramp. Wow. Jimmy this time doesn't fall prey to that cello aggression. It's crazy Mouse win that fight. Those enhanced T-spawns give you, you know, great options to get aggressive at B early and, and get that opening kill. Mouse know it. They fight it with two. But, man, they're just making this look so easy right now. Another defensive kill from Jim, uh, Jimmy on the B-site. Oh, Jimmo. Also, it's very concerning that Exertion has realized how much room he's getting in middle. Yeah. And Fury also haven't. <laughs> you know, like... They're, playing, like, they're playing four ones every round, and that one is never in mid. And the longer this round goes, the closer Exertion gets. Oh, oh well, it's so not. blind, yeah. so wrecked, fallen. Locked out, K Serato dead as well, and Yuri. Want... Yeah. Oh, he might have the backstab on. Oh, never mind. <laughs> Is it a backstab anymore? They just think Zershan's pushed B at this point when they see him. They don't even know where he came from. Oh, you're checking for a mid flank now? I got news for you, Yuri, and it's not good news. This is a great return to form from Maus. Nice. Nice. Yuri, keen double kill. But we've seen so many of these where Furia claw back a couple of kills in an unwinnable spot. Will this be more of the same? It will. Torshi nails him to close. This is the Maus we expected to see. They are well and truly running away with this one. If you're Furia, you're thinking, can we just 
fast forward. Fast forward to Mirage, please. Just make it stop. They've tried a lot as well. They've done set spawn smokes, been denied at ramp for the most part. Even when they've gotten 3v3s and ramp control, Mal's let them plant. They retake really smoothly. Fury tried the mid rush. It's been shut down by two players. Weirdly, I think one of the things that Fury sometimes get very averse to in these spots is the pacey rounds, right? Like, that's something that you've kind of seen fall out of their wheelhouse a little here. A lot of these oh. rounds have been these, as you said, like four ones where you start a little slower. And one of the biggest changes with the spawns here is that you do have a chance to go a little bit faster. Yeah, it's just like when Mal's hear you running on A, oh, yeah, they're going to they're gonna they're, dump yeah, yeah. everything, you know? So maybe there's a mind game there, but... Mal's of... Art has the spawn and a Mac 10. Please say this is the round where he just guns Three it. 3A. Up ramp, through short, Go on. wherever. He tries. Okay. <laughs> he tried. Oh, God, he tried. That he was meant you have the spawn. That's not meant to be so easy for Torshi. Gap Molly missed? Yeah. Art yeah, went a little wider to nade short in that push. That actually and that's what, what slowed him, him down by, like, the, the fraction of a second that allowed Torshi to get there. And so oh. nothing else found past that point. Torshi's AWP dominates this ramp control. And now I can't even be mad. Fury have tried the aggression. They tried, tried going slow. It's like, nah, sometimes you're just not meant to win the map. You know, it's just how it is. Next. They're learning that now. Mouse, there's a reason why no one really likes playing them here on Vertigo. And this is why. I'll give that to them. Yep. Brolin, look where he is. They're trying. Cello inside of the smokes, pushing through. He needs a highlight reel here. Jimmy is not going to let that happen. Might walk on his head. Oh, boom. Stomped on. Caserato, 2 and 10. Maybe 2 and 11. They're just giving him nothing. It's 5v1, guys. It's 20 seconds. And they're trying so hard. I love it. I like it as well because up until this point, even in the 5v2, where, like, theoretically, there's more chance of Furia. They've been so aggressive, so, like, in your face. But when it gets to the 5v1, they don't give Caserato anything. They just make him sit there and, and wait. Gets to your head, doesn't it? You're expecting a swing, play over stepping, a way in. Nothing given. Fantastic work for Torshi. Was he run boosted? No, I don't think so. Got there very quick though. Goes on for a couple. Easily done for Maus. Looking to go to the next map with a smile on their face. One round of the half. And this would make him forget all about how sadly, you know, Nuke just kind of unraveled after that stellar clutch to open up the second half, then finding next to nothing. I don't think they mind. Not with how dominantly this one's gone. Now, there is a bit of a timing here for Yuri. who's found success creeping through this short smoke yeah. before. Brolin has missed that tidbit of info. Dangerous spam, considering he's given up his smoke as well. So, he's got a call on support. But Shuri doesn't have one either. If he gets mollied, he's in trouble. Yuri up gap side. Brolin gets out. He's on art. And Art's Ooh. with Yuri on this short push. So no Molotov for the sandbag. Brolin will at least get caught crossing out of there. They deal with that sandbags player. Fury are clutching at straws for a second round at the end of the half. Not even that's going to leave Ooh. them with enough. Got to respect Shui having full faith in the flashbang, but not to be. K Serato from nowhere has chained together two kills, bringing Fury back into the fold here for a second round right at the end of the half. The read is good. He knows it's good. He's just not being given a standing player. Jumping Panther, finding a second round at the end of the half. And Jimmy's got to go for it, but nowhere to go but the graveyard. Ooh. Hoping for the best here. You need kills. No stick in the smoke is going to do anything here. And Caserato will close it. So Furia, something, something. Is it enough? Probably not. But we'll have to find out on their CT side.
Furia's ambitions of playoffs getting stifled here as Inferno looms off in the distance. Maus with a very convincing first half. I meant to say Mirage. It's fine. It's been two, a long day. Two orange maps. They're so similar. Yeah, but yeah sure. Here we are. Furia. Bit of an awkward one. They find one round to close out that first half of play. But I don't think that's going to be enough. It's safe to say that Maus have showed up in fantastic form come the dawn of this second map. And they're keen to put this one to rest bright and early. They could do that right now if they get away with this pistol round. Yeah, lock it, load it, fire it. Oh, it's trying to do exactly that with the P2K on the site. Nice shot. And he gets out, noticing that elevated smoke, meaning the mouse are taking space on this bomb site. So if you're give them the site in an advantage, oh, the hunt almost pays off. Art flicks back, looks for more. There's plenty more where that came from, but covered by Keserato. 5v2, a big flank that may be too late. Oh, needs it. Very early. At least keeps Furia distracted. And they get on the bomb quick, they've got a kit. Should we gonna have to try and spam through? Cause a bit of chaos. Fallen, she's what sticking it? this. Fallen is sticking oh. it. And cover comes in. They deal with the mid lurk. Or B lurk, I guess, that arrives through middle. And they mop up Shui back at the ramp. So Furia. I don't know if the spirits are high yet, but the, the comeback has to start somewhere. And finding a pistol round is not a bad way to open. Some exactly. nice shots from Art as yeah, well. Yeah, that flick down low is really nice. Just getting chased by Maus in that post plant. And yeah, Brolin had to fire off. He just had to thin the herd, but it just moves Furia further forward faster. And Fallen gets on that quick stick. I do love it. Cello very much the hype man for Furia. And I like that he's still even, you know, trying to bring that energy now. It's not done. Every game is winnable from any position, Harry. That's what you have to tell yourself. Especially at this level. Well, here up against the force, it's really not a bad way to have opened. Oh, but as Fallen tries to extend that advantage even further, he gets mopped up. That's a little awkward. That's low HP Yuri now known about. Art's got to hold the line, and Art will Whoa. hold the line. Go on. Art does not let them in. No free real estate, not while Art's here. It's crazy. He's looking sharp. There's absolutely no denying it. Yeah, they went for trades as well. He's got a little smile on his face. He liked that. ka -chow. Art felt powerful there. He looked it. Three kills. First isn't clearing properly, but they're going for trades, and it is ugly. Art makes it easy, and Shui never plays because he thinks three on one in the bomb site. They've got him. He's here for rotations that are not required. Fury get it done with just their captain. And okay. What did you say earlier? Round by round. Round by round. One at a time. And I mean, dude, that last round was clean. If they're able to match that here, uh, they still can. They still can. Four alive is fine. If they're able to match that here and now, they're not in that spot where, like, losing one round, they're instantly broke, and then it's already looking like GG. So that's important if you're Fury. You need the longevity here, especially where you have, like, a couple of rounds between your opponent and, and map point. You'd love to have that staying power. Ignore that. You're just rebooting? <laughs> they just reset me to factory settings. <laughs> Oh, this could be awkward here. Art, art, art. What have you got? The bait in is perfect. He reveals and he ends the round with Fallen in tandem. One, two punch. Just two dudes getting it done. Fallen through the sky, Harry. Yeah, you love to see it. But the buy is coming back out for Maus. This is their chance to leave an impression. This is their chance to start this, uh, what was meant to be a short walk to the finish line. We'll stop it before it begins for Furia. Road to recovery on CT Vertigo. But yeah, you're right. Let's not get ahead of ourselves. A gun round for Maus could be the make and break of this map. Art's almost got me believing in yeah. this with how good he's looking. And that's going to that's gonna tre uh, trickle down. Trickle down. That's going to trickle down across the squad. Sweet treat here on this T side for Maus. 
They push Furia back into the bomb site. The smoke over towards yellow. That lets Art keep the pressure on here. Means the Maus can't really look to take this ramp control yet either. They kind of have to respect that somewhat. Well, you earn respect. Let's see if Fury give it away. Continue pressure put on. That mid search, uncommitted, boost up. A nice timing for it. Grabbing a kill and getting out would just be the goal here. Oh, but the molly on gap, it's not a problem yet. No one's considering this. Oh, it's so close. They reveal it, it works. Art is clean with it. Boost up, little gimmick to take that advantage. And over in mid, Cello finds another one. Brolin now dead. And this first rifle round for Maus is in real danger of not panning out. And that's going to put some wind in the sails of Furia. Art awkwardly trying to play around this smoke, but they've seen him. They've got their bearings on him. Yuri will strike out from short. And Art comes barreling through. It's just Torshi left up against the world. Oh. And that molly burns him into ah! Fallen's crosshair. Fury are building. They are closing this gap from 10-2 down. It's now a four-round game. Cello's brought so much hype. He's never on the camera. They're always like stoic. They're always sitting there plain faced and they're still screaming. It's that one guy at the end of the line. He did his job. And Fallen and Art carry that torch. Fury round by round, step by step, building into what was a 10-2 game. And no plant for Maus. So no real consideration for a full buy. You could hero AK if they want, but expecting pistol armor. Can Fury really make this a reality? That would be a monumental comeback to 2 0 and to qualify for the playoffs here. Well, because, you know, even though we spend our, uh, our time kind of saying our Maus need that exposure to playoffs, they need to be in as many as they can. For Fury, not like with this squad, we, we've seen playoff runs in big events their last one being rio a year ago yeah. to, to the week really sure they won espoo but in terms of you know tier one opposition it has been a year since we've seen fury in the playoffs they fell immediately in the quarters to heroic but yeah that's crazy to imagine a year it's gone by quick. Fury needs something. They're getting it fast as well. Maus go oh. bounding into the bomb site. Cello, oh, don't get ahead no. of yourself. Two for three now. Maus make it oh. in. Can fall and stop it. The inevitable running him down. He needs to pick a target. Try to commit to the flank. Shui plays late and he will get too late. Cut down as the impact looks for the clutch off the kill. Oh no, he grabs a bomb, drops back in. Making the money. Has he got any more? Here he hasn't had the loudest of games, but this is his chance to earn his keep. Swinging on out. Jimmy's made the cross happen all the way back towards the ramp side. Here he should be aware of this as he moves in. Great position. Jump up heard. Here he can't connect it. And Jimmy will make it happen. Big 3K from the man. Ah, oh, dude, you have the molly. You don't even know the lineup. That's a shame. If he had the lineup, if he had, if he had a actual way to get that molly on the bomb, that would have maybe won the round. He could have played off of it. Jimmy would have probably still sticked, tanked 50 damage. And then Yuri just has a kill on a plate. He has the audio cue of Jimmy's reposition. That feels like an opportunity wasted in the 1v1. Cello did all he could inside of the site. And Fallen desperate to deal with Shui on the flank. At least bought time. But for a clutch that falls through the fingers of Furia, puts Maus one step closer to Mirage. Yeah, devastating round to lose for Fury as well. Like, you know, they're, they're kind of all starting to believe in the comeback and then they fall down to the Tech Nines. This was meant to be, you know, one of your easier rounds. This is meant to be one of the freebies that, that continued building up that momentum and now it's all left hanging in the balance on this round right here. We said one of the upsides to Fury having a kind of clean start to this second half was that they built up that residual money, right? They didn't just lose one round and then instantly yeah. reset and then they, that's it, the game's out of their hands. They can stay in it for one more round, but that's all the staying power they've got. Torshi holding for this swing. Fallen finally getting a don in AWP. At the most integral point of the game as well. 
Does he know what he's up against, though? Oh, okay. That will help. You can tell out over towards short. Mao's slowly but surely working some of this control over towards B. Right now, for Fury, it's not clear where this one's looking to end up. But as they regroup, they'll re-aggro down ramp. And eventually, they can just leave Fallen here with the AWP. And that'll free up bodies to start to rotate away. Well, they get to the B site in time. You can see that third man of art making his way over towards middle. Slowly but surely, that they're trying to lean over towards this side of the map. Jimmy's the first man in, but with Brolin dead in middle... That's the split contingency dealt with. Fury at least now only have one area to home in on, one area to focus on. And it will be in this retake, 5v3, to decide if this comeback keeps coming in for Fury. I'm a little scared for them still. Torshi or post plant, he could wreak havoc in this position. And Mal's are playing forward as well. They want to stop Fury in the front line. It's still fallen holding the flank. Fury can't wait forever. One kit, it's on Yuri and cannot get lost. They must keep track of where this kit is going. Flash over the top, forces the shot. Still Shui up close, needing a multi kill. He's got one. They line up a little bit, but now it's all on Torshi. Who can't hit his shot and there is just enough time for Yuri to get that stick and save the day for Furia. Boy oh boy it comes close but a well materialized 5v3 retake comes up for the Brazilians. Cool. And what a lovely feeling for Yuri. He falls down in that in that last round in that 1v1, but then makes up for it in a very big way here and now with a 3k, right? Opens the round with the smoke spam over at short, closes it with a key double, and being the one player with the kit who survives that in over towards the B site. Even if he dies there and like the kit gets dropped and then there's the chaos of having to find it at the end of the round, like even that could have cost you in that situation there. So job well done for Yuri. Who makes up for the failed clutch in a big way in that follow-up round. Now still have options here. They still have fight left in them. Or gets to come out again for Torshi. Rifles on everybody else. Like that we see Nays left in spawn. Great for stopping the bomb. Whoever rotates can pick him up, whether it's A or B. Cello makes it, but they know about this, so can't overcommit. Still scared of Brolin in middle, but this position just puts fear in mouths for a long time. And can't really get out. So just going to stay here and be that paranoia piece in the back of Mao's minds. They want to clear them together, two players coming they through. They know, know that Cello made yeah, it across? Yeah, they saw the cross, okay. yeah, 100%. Go looking for it. Cello! That's crazy! Oh, Middle is closed! Wow. Middle is done! Cello makes it happen! They take the bomb. They think there's no way he's getting two kills there. That's a one for one at worst. The hype man and the big man, as it turns out. And the doorman. He'll turn Mao's away. And so now Jimmy and Torshi, awkward 2v5 where the bomb's lost over in mid. There's still a minute left. But every move they make, they're paranoid in. These guns are all they would have in the follow-up round, but it's a call you don't love either which way. This round just gets torn out from underneath them. And so the gap continues to close. Furia continue on this miraculous comeback. They didn't even, it didn't even feel like it was worth entertaining coming into this second half. From 10-2 on the back foot, they continue closing the gap. And in a convincing fashion as yeah, well. The like, that's the wildest clean. part. Yeah. Even when they're in like these retakes where it feels like Mao's still have a leg to stand on, they might not have like a man advantage, but they got the bomb down, they got the AWP in the post plant. And Fury have found ways to break through. Counter terrorists win. And there's the hype man, we promised you. Cello, loud as ever. It's, it's such a difference from the rest of his squad, right? I mean, they need it. The flick is so nice because he's aiming deep and he still gets a flick off and transfers. Oh, lovely stuff.
I mean, Shella has been bringing the hype for a, for a long old time now. Yeah. It feels like on every squad he was ever on, he had to be the guy to kind of keep the emotions in check. Your old Imperials, your MIBRs, it was always sort of his thing. They need him now. Three rounds, separate squads. A rebuy off of the double save means Galil's. It's actually still a pretty hefty buy. Just lacks that util, that longevity. Mal's need a star. They need a hero here. Not been shy of having them in this series, but... Still, anything but comfortable on their map pick. And, you know, if you're Mal's, this is part of you that's like... You're just feeling, we can't actually lose this, right? Like, we were 10-2 up. Yeah. Are we going to crumble? Is what everyone's saying right? Like, does the pressure just get to us? That's the worry coursing through their minds right now. Should we good? I think he may have got a tech issue here. Oh, that's not ideal. 4v5, essentially, it feels like. And the swing is perfect. It might not matter. Art is going to maul them two shots off before Zertion trades. Fallen needs to hit this head. Orp v Orp. Oh, the flick does not connect. Both players get out. Torshi needs to save this round. Shui cannot. Zertion going for a deep fight. Two firepower pieces of this squad remain. No one's giving them anything. Might just have to be a save just due to Shui's crash. If they can protect him. Yeah. That's good at least. That's something. They keep the gun, but that's a real ah, yeah. that's an asterisk on Miles. Poor them. Not and the round you want that. Right as the nade came in too. Yeah. Like super awkward timing on that. Yeah, he got hit by an HE when he crashed. If you're Fury, you take those. Oh, yeah. But that's just another bump in the road for Mal's that makes this game feel like it really is coming in for Fury. Yeah. Seven out of eight in the half. Oh, that's such an awkward time for it, man. Yeah. Right, it's like you finally, you know, you have something going on around like the, the, the saved guns from the round prior. The locked out. You know, I don't think that that's like... Sure, it sucks, but it's not like some game-defining... No, it's, how, you it's know, about how you deal with it. It's, yeah. about, it's about how it's you It's more of a test it. of... Mental. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it definitely screwed over a buy round for Mal's. There's no doubt about that, but... Uh, you know, either which way, it's about how you deal with it. It's the situation you're in now. I remember. It's all good. It's a little tech issue there as we get, shall we, back into the game. Smart guy, mature guy. Back in the Mal's jersey after some time away and a major final to his name. It was uh, back in Katowice. Yuri uh, ex uh, experienced, that's the word I was looking yeah. for, experienced a similar thing where he oh. crashed in that final round versus oh, Apex after ancient. Fury had embarked on some crazy comeback to even get to that position. At like 12 11? Yeah, uh, oh. they, 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 they lost it, yeah, uh, 13 to 11. Yeah, it happened in the yeah. last round. In, in the in final like round of the game, three, in, a, in a 2v3 which, three or 4. Yeah, felt not unwinnable. No. So, you know, they've experienced their fair share of heartbreak to them. I think a lot of teams have. You, you have to roll with the punches in situations like this. It does happen. It's not ideal. What a monumental win this would be for Furia if they could finish it off, regardless of this tech issue. As we said, yet to make a playoff appearance in a big event in a year for this squad. Since Rio 2023, mm. the non-major one. Which, yeah, the non-major, which is disappointing for 
the caliber of players we have, especially it's an interesting time for Vero to do it though. Uh, when you consider we're coming off the major, they were the most disappointing Brazilian team. We had legacy exceed expectations. We had pain almost make the playoffs. We had Imperial look really good with some young players on their debut major shock everyone and Furia were underwhelming so from that to this it's quite a comparison I think if one thing's been apparent with Fury it's that they are like trying to to change the way in which they play right and you can imagine that brings with the instability as yeah. you're uh, you know you're kind of testing the limits it's more just been how long can you make excuses for a team with the caliber of players you have like and when you're signing people like fallen the question does get asked what is your goal you know loyalty over trophies these are the questions that fury have been presented over the years and so i think if they really wanted to be a top team in the world they could have made those changes they could have made the appropriate changes and it feels like from the outsider perspective that they haven't. If they can do it without it, all the more credit, but that doesn't leave them free from criticism after over a year of being unable to do anything significant. Maybe Chengdu is the way, Harry. On home soil, they certainly seem to do it. Maybe it they would, need everyone else jet lag too. Yeah, hey, it would be... Uh would be almost fitting as well with how often Asian CS has been the, the bane of Furia's existence sure, to come here sure. and look to make a run. Even Lin Vision, who sure Furia beat today, but uh, they lost to at the Major. It's more so been the Mongols. When are we getting a Mongolian event? I know we had a RMR there, but it seems like there's a healthy scene of at least players. I actually signed a new roster, and I'm sure there's just as many fans. Seen a lot of Chinese fans here as well in Chengdu so far coming out and I hope the arena will be just as full yeah I'm very excited for yeah, that it's gonna be fun uh you know even because five years man five, five years that's years. a long time Astralis were good maybe they're back maybe I maybe. mean 100% win rate on T-sides for device yeah you know it's been some time you know uh just anecdotally I felt like at the major I had seen more Chinese fans than ever attend, like flown from China to a European event. I say more, like the bar is low. I don't feel like I've ever seen, you know, large amounts of Chinese fans at a European event until Copenhagen. And I spoke to a few of them and they were saying, yeah, Limvision qualified. We were hoping we wanted to meet them. You know, we were like, yeah, that, that was part of the reason we bought the ticket. So that's really cool. But we're back in folks. If you're just joining us, it was a 10-2 half for Maus. Furia are mounting a massive comeback. They're looking to qualify to their first playoffs in a year. And they're only a few rounds away from doing it 2-0. Oh. Yeah, we're coming off the back of an awkward round for Maus. they got to dust themselves off and build back into this. Try to deny the Furia comeback. They at least managed to save guns out of the round, so that's something. The buy speaks to the position Maus are in, right? Like with saved weapons, with Brolin on a Glock. It's a bit all over the place right now. It's not going to make their job any easier. Brolin is on a Galil. You just want to... Oh. Yeah, you're good. Yeah, my, my bad. My, yeah, my, that's my, that's my <laughs> fault. No, 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 you're good. You're I accept good. responsibility. No one will remember it. Here we are. Good. He's going to up and leave mid. And rejoin the rest of his team as Mao's set their sights on this ramp control. This is similar to the last round in that Mao's are all in, right? And they've uh, already down to just three smokes. Sure, Fury don't have a yeah, lot it's either. It's not like Fury are swimming in that no. util themselves. This fake out, will, will it work? They've still got two players back at B. Zershan kind of needs an entry to sell this because Kestrato is not budging right now. And now they've seen this fog hitting the B site. The lurk is gone. Back at the site, Cello holds strong. And Kestrato follows up in an instant. Fury are filling the feed. Headshot back for Yimpat. He will get uh, some support from his captain. And the plant comes through. Fallen oh, jumps no! the gun. Bowser onto a two on five. Oh dear, that push from 
fallen is so awkward. It's offered this up on a silver platter. Jimmy left up in a 1v2, oh. but swinging wide, yes! Arwa laying the rest. And the oh! comeback continues. The furious story is not done yet. 5v2 to a 2v2, and they still win it. Furia, this one's a heart beater, a heartbreaker for Mouse. Wow, look at the margin there through the smoke. Barely catches Zershin. Could have been a huge lurk. And this is really cool. I mean, it started with Art, and then Cello joined the fray. He was getting hyped, he was getting animated, and that was reflected on how he was playing in the server. And then, as time's gone on, Yuri fell down in that 1v1 that gave Maus the one round they've got on the T side. Felt like that was going to break him, because he was not having a good game outside of that. But now he started to slither his way up through the board as well. Went on that huge 3k in the round after the failed clutch. Our Everyone Fury, yeah. from Furia is slowly but surely believing in the fact that they are going to come back from 10-2 down on Mouse's home map. And they've pulled this to this point, all while Caserato is the quietest player in the server. How have they done that? He's alone at the B side this time. Mouse threw a bit of a fake in, but he blocks. And that forces Mouse back to A anyway. It's all a fake out. Art oh, keeping their attention on gap side. This is a bit of a constricting setup, though. They don't have a lot of map or a lot of info. They hear some steps. They know Mouse are coming. The swing is here. Yuri needs a clean first kill. That will do it. He follows up with damage. R lines up more. And we've already seen him do work from this position before. He will keep it continuing. Two on three. Now Brolin. Can the Swede save the day? No. It's on the Torshi. On B2. Fallen in no hurry. And the pressure falls on the shoulders of the Hungarian in yet another clutch. Tap on the bomb. It's the full commit. Furia won't expect that, but he will decide to just stick it. Fallen's going up, going over, and oh, will get rid okay. of Torshi. There is now no difference in this game. Furia have tied this up from 10-2 down. They pull it all the way back to 11-11. Just one round for Maus since getting onto this T side. Oh, there is a difference, all right. Maus are feeling quiet. Maus are feeling contained. They are feeling like they can do no right. Furia feeling unbeatable. A whole different ball game now for Maus. It's all come down to this. Can they rise above it all and send us to Mirage? Or was this comeback always inevitable for Furia? Unbelievable game out of the Brazilians. Right when you least expected it. Right when you were ready to write them off. Oh, this boost, the timing That's of it. Perfect. Comes through just in the nick of time, right as Exertion looked to move in. Fallen in middle, nails his shot. There's another man to follow through, but Jimmy, will he get there in time? He can't find that kill. And so Fallen gets out on the AWP. Oh, Yuri shit. holds the line over in A. Shuey with the backstab, looking for the second man. Fallen just blew that smoke open. Lands a tag in reply. And now it all goes quiet. Stalemate over towards A. Jimmy having to just up and leave middle. They're so scared of everything. They don't know if they're being flanked. They're looking down ramp. Jimmy resetting off mid. He didn't try and trade Fallen. He actually had a huge gap in middle. When Fallen got that shot, he ran away. But Jimmy didn't take that space. And that hesitation has left Furia to make their gamble over on the A side. Okay, Serato does lean back, but he has nades for a post-plant. Fallen just needs to hit one more shot, and he sets his team up for success. Steps on the ramp. That will call Kay Serato back. As I've got to show resilience, they've got to show those lessons learned, and who better to teach them a lesson than the professor himself, Fallen, in position with this AWP. Is he going to try and make a play, or will he just wait oh. for this retake? Not needed. Kay Serato denies that plant with the nade and now fallen now the professor looks to get involved up and over and ready to end it it's just jimmy left to beat 1v3 trapped on the other side of this smoke and as it fades his only veil of protection is gone unbelievable from 10-2 down furia now sit in playoff point
You never could have predicted this. Like, I don't, no one could have seen this coming. There are some like crazy impossible comebacks that you feel prepared to call ahead of time. But this was not one of them. And slowly but surely, everyone has warmed up for Furia and everyone's gone stone cold for Maus. All the pieces have fallen into place. Art's leading the charge. He's got Yuri and Cello in there right behind him. Fallen even finding form after nearly giving away a couple of crucial rounds. He's really at a resurgence here. It is a story of recovery for Furia. And for Maus, oh. it might be capitulation. Yuri spammed out from exertion. First advantage in a while for Maus and untraded. Art's going to escape. Look to play another retake round. That Molly's a problem. There's no punish here. That deep smoke for Furia has absolutely saved them in this situation. Fallen moves back in, though. He wants a little bit more before all is said and done. That deep smoke implies aggression. Fallen's got to be careful. They can crawl up close to him. They are battering him with nades right now. Mouse just want another kill before they stick it. And they're going to get it. Falling dead. Keiserato followed up onto, looking for overtime of Maus, and they might just get there. It takes them so long to finally break on through. So long to finally get this elusive round to move them up on a 12. But they have managed it. Just Cello left, and he knows this one's undoable. Fury might have been tasked with the impossible once already, but this one is one bridge too far. Jim Pat spams him out, and Maus at least lock in OT. Can they save themselves? That is the big question. And we're going to get it answered instantly as well. No waiting. That's probably beneficial to Maus. They don't need to sit there and stew in it and think about this game. They just want to get going. Back to their winning ways. Threw some smokes on A. This deep execute they keep throwing finally pays off. As Furia falling off the top of a boost could not pick their target. Oh, when you hit OT, the nature of the game changes, right? Yeah. Suddenly, Maus are going to try springboard themselves back into this game, back to life. Oh. But Yuri and Art will not let them in for free. No boost this time. No little gimmicks to try sneak kills away. No good deed going unpunished. The success at ramp not found to open up overtime for Maus. Instead, it's all Furia. Torshi even getting spammed and whittled down as he creeps over the top here. Nice angle, but he won't get out for free. Art again playing ahead of that elevator smoke. Means he has no crossfire, but... Jimmy is once again late to the party. Roland looking to laser down someone. Plant is allowed. He doesn't know it. There could be a Molotov, and that's the fear here for Maus. He forces Art out. Nice combo. Now they go for the stick. Got to be respected. Fallen fights. He falls. Jim Pat with a double kill already puts Brolin in a clutch. His time to shine. They give him a little bit of room. They let Brolin fade away. And giving this guy room, no respect is... The worst thing you can do, Brolin very capable in moments like this. Tap on the bottom, swinging out, claims the life for Cello and for Keiserato now. It's a losing battle, hops on the bomb, oh. full stick, and oh. Brolin ah. just gets there in time. Sick, okay. Highlight reel for Brolin, big clutch on the site. And Mal's get it done with a man on one health. Back to back rounds. Woo! That was close. That was far too close. You give this guy an inch and he will take a mile every single time. Maybe don't show the off and the yeah, yeah. In this one, just, just go with the puppet strike. Okay. That's okay. Yeah. Yeah. Ooh. Then I will just tell you. Okay. You don't have to then do it. Tag timeout in for Fury, but it seems like Maus have sunk their teeth into this chance to talk the round over.
Fury don't want to have pulled this all the way back yeah. and ten two down. <laughs> only to let it fall apart in OT. Like that, that is hurt. the ultimate heartbreak. That would you had them right where you wanted them, but they might be the one that gets away. As a reminder, Mirage is that third map waiting in the wings. Should we need it? And Fury never envisioned a world in which we got there. Well, they did after the first half of this game, but all this to lose would be nothing short of painful. But Mal seemed to be entering a new level now. Oh, that's a beautiful kill for Shui. One tap out. Caserato falls up on the cross fallen here. That shot connects, sure, but still there's a lot more to do. Torshi quick with it on that AWP. Fallen blowing, smoke's open, looking for a way in, but that is audacious. Seen a couple of those for Fallen. A bridge too far, perhaps, on this B site. And low players. Still not temptation enough, because Torshi comes hunting. And Yuri is just hiding. Back to back to back. Three in a row for Mouse. Two in the overtime. It's a different game now. Yeah, I mean, you know, one of the things that's always talked about with Mouse is playing with pressure, how they deal with it. When you get to OT, the pressure is a little lessened, right? You have a bit more room, and so they're able to build back stronger as we've gotten into the OTs. Okay, you need to listen to me carefully here now. Yeah. Sure, he's getting involved. I love that. He's so, yeah, yeah, he's so just decisive. He wants to command them into that third and final map. He doesn't just want to secure a spot into the playoffs. He wants to try and destroy the, the minds of Fury as he does it, trying to take us the distance onto that third and recover what would have been a, a devastating loss, saving themselves at the 11th hour in overtime and denying that Fury a comeback after all. It's aggression out through mid from the Fury squad. Fallen will open on that AWP. Fury are now looking for anything to close out this overtime. I at least want one. Yeah. We've seen what they can do with very little. And so maybe <laughs> what is enough? Yeah, the issue is, is the, the switch sides, right? Off of the CT side, this is where they pulled the comeback and now they're looking for scraps to fall and finish them. Second shot connects to Shui. Call means nothing when the orb comes gunning you down. That smoke is in the way, and so he'll use it to escape. Oh, the flank even closes this net. Shuts the back door for Maus. Don't go too soon, though. It is being considered for the time being. Or oh, just holds off on the extremity. Oh. That's pretty gnarly. Yeah, like that. Don't Start know why... Uh, K Serato was still over towards B. He needs to he needs to up and move and come over and help this A side, especially with Art, like having them boxed in and not going too soon on the ramp flank. Now he gets activated as they're moving in at the 30 second mark. There's no time for Maus to change their mind. And so Art strikes in great timing. Torshi, 1v3, 25 seconds. Time is not his friend. And Art is also not his friend. So Fury, they wanted at least one. They're going to get that here and now. Torshi is run down. Art will be the one to deliver it. So just cut down Shire, the flawless half in OT were Maus. But it was the T side that was the problem for yeah, Fury. Logic is out the window at this point. Logic yeah, is I, gone. Anyone can win this game. Maus are favorites. They're gunning for a third map. They're gunning for playoffs. Fury now need a flawless T side. To say it's impossible means you've not been reading the literature. Stressful series for Mal's certainly coming in so hot to nuke and then just capitulating on that T side. Coming in so hot to Vertigo and the same can be said about their defense. Or their offense, rather. But now still, somehow, some way, in the lead, in OT. Can they push through the pain? 
and make it a three mapper. Once we got to OT, it all started with Brolin. This guy on our screens, on with the tech issues, delivering a uh, a one v two. The way of Maus. That's what kickstarted their OT run. It was quick. so good and so fast, he destroyed the monitor in the process. <laughs> it's a quick swap. It's a pit stop here. We've got our best men on it. Got to get that height. Got to get that plug in. He's asked for 60 more hertz. <laughs> it's only fair. Efficient pit stop here. Re-oiled, refueled. What else do they do? Eat a banana, maybe? Is there time for that? Are you allowed to eat in tech timeouts? Sure. What if you're communicating via the banana? That's always a, a worry, you know. Um, if you can drink, you can eat. That's my rule. If I put the whole thing in and maintain direct eye contact, that means we're going I'm a. having a great time. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a good one, right? So, thanks. I'm I'm really nervous for Fury, man. <laughs> I really am. Like after they embarked on this insane comeback, and we were all sat here thinking, "Oh my God, they're actually going to do it." Now they might not do it. I know you had y'all tired about how anyone can win this game, but anyone I'm not sure. I mean, I don't, I don't agree favorites. with you. I don't Bowser agree with you. Oh, you think? No, what, you I, think? I think Furious D side was horrific. Yeah, I we agree. We got two rounds, man. I agree. So now don't get some, me wrong. So two more some... rounds would actually be enough here. Three. At least to lock in a, oh, okay, another yeah, overtime. Sure. Well, why not? Let's do another OT. Then let's do Mirage. Then maybe like a bonus fourth map for, you know, the love of the game. Is the cope, right? Yeah. They got the last round and they got one <laughs> round early. And if they do that now, then then they've at least locked in a second I don't, I, overtime. You're just speaking words to me. Yeah. I don't know what you're saying. <laughs> I love how much tape parts oh, wear. Oh. <laughs> should get some for your mouth. <laughs> All right, then. I'll be quiet. <laughs> I know. Don't Good luck. <laughs> Careful. I'll sub in Trace. No, you won't. He ain't coming over here. <laughs> All right. High spirits somewhere, presumably. I'm hearing some laughs here on the Mouse camp. Oh, laughs communication, Harry. Oh, no. Oh. He just, I just heard him. He said his mouse is... His mouse, rather. Sorry. It's force of habit with this <laughs> his game. Mouse. <laughs> his mouse is now... Come on, colorful my, guys, my mouse is choking. My mouse is choking. Someone... Help me. My can mouse you hide like a mouse? Or does I that just kind know. of crush it? I don't know. Terrifying to envision, isn't it? They're so small. Yeah, just a little... Just a finger. A little poke. I'll let you finger him out in your own time, Hugo. <laughs> because I think, you know, we're something far more pre pressing here. Actually, we don't. It's still in the tech no, force. Yeah, actually, <laughs> I've got nothing to do right now. I wonder how the weather is. Hey, hey, we he's back. back. Sorry, Brolin my, my keyboard, is back. My keyboard is, um... No, we are back, folks. We are. Second half of the OT. The OT that we've all been waiting for. And it's Furia on their T side. This was where their struggles started on Vertigo. But let's see if the... The, the, the boost they had in that second half is going to carry through now into their T side overtime. Two rounds in regulation T half. We are still here, though, and Fury still have something to say. Everything's unsaid, that's for sure. After a dismal opener, Orb fires off with the flash on B. Oh, they get through. Too bad covering, but not needed. 5v4 Fury want this mid B. Split that pick will open it up. Brolin on the A site stops one. 
Fury go through the smoke. Oh, it's up to no good here in middle. Can't decide where he wants to commit. His troops spread thin. He's got a nice foothold over here in mid, but what's he going to be able to do with it? That's the big question. Smoked off. Waiting for that to fade. He's going to look to come through, but the AWP is bearing down upon him. Oh, Torshi caught moving. And that brings this one back. Dead to Brolin on the wrap round. A 2v3 now. Yeah, this round, Brolin's going to get heard. Case Ross starts, has to plant, fall, and can provide a bit of cover here, but he's got to pick his angle wisely. Getting back into the site. With the nade ready for that bomb. Deep smoke. It's all up to the nade doing damage. It won't get a kill. But out it goes anyway. You take what you can get. Pressure put on from the elevator. Fallen doesn't budge. It's all up on the flank. Jim Hack gets one more. Caserato in the site with nothing to say. A silent map from Caserato continues into overtime. And Mal's at least guarantee another OT. But they want more. They want Mirage. Yeah, that one's going to hurt for Fury. This was their chance to, to try and recover it. And with that one getting away from them, they're now going to take two in a row for Maus. They are elated. They don't let that one lost round at the end of OT get under their skin. They're back to their winning ways on the CT side as far as they're concerned. And as you say, man, for, for Serato, this one hurts even more so. Like, you've woken up in some backwards world where art is just... Head and shoulders, the, the best man on the team for Fury. K. Serato is still in single digits while Art is five kills away from a 30 bomb. K. Serato is meant to be the, the consistency, the one that brings it all home. The best in Brazil, mm. but silent at a crucial moment for Fury. Everyone's just throwing hands at this point. Everyone's just trying to hit Connect punches. Fallen's running through smokes. It's getting a bit rambunctious here in night time. There's the combo to give Torshi a fight. Oh my goodness. Crossed and tagged, but still survives Brolin. Hello. There's something. Cello opens up the round. Jimmy dead early. Brolin tagged up on that cross as well. So not the most comfortable for Maus just yet. A man down, I'm wounded. And so this spreads the defense thin. Roland's a bit of a maestro around this ramp position, though. We've seen him get his fair share of multi-kills peeking down the ramp, where it feels like getting out with one would have already been crazy. I like the gamble Miles make. They presume no one's going to lurk out mid late in this round. They just stack B because Roland has full ramp control. He has to give it up eventually. And we'll see if Zershan joins him. But right now, he's got the whole site to contend with. And yeah, they don't like the silence on B. They take back stairs, they rotate out. This is a very well-timed rotation for Maus. They've got Molly Nade to delay plant. They could uh, they could win this round of time. If Bond goes up short, they have to wait the smoke. But the Molly is very aggressive right now on Zersha and they're gonna fight for this one. Nades do good damage. Everyone from ours rotates in. Fury are walking right into the stack. They need these kills cleanly if they want to stand a chance of keeping this Vertigo dream alive. The comeback that never should have been. Looking to get shut out by Maus here and now. It's Brolin. Time. Doing away with one. Oh. Shuey dead. And Brolin looking to win this one to time. If he can rob them of the plant. If he can do something here. Would be one for the history books. But cut down by Fallen. As he tries to make a play, oh. Fallen and Cello lift Fury onto their back in that round there. And so double overtime, still very much on the cards. Incredible entries for Fallen. How does he find that boost player just peeking out a little bit too wide? If they tuck in fully, they just win the round. That shot there, if Shui's hiding, they're going to win the round to the clock. There's no safe side of the site to plant on. Brolin just has to run down. And seconds to spare, Fury do it. They survive yet one more round. Looking for double OT. Roland's been very strong on the ramp on oh, it's the city side. The double AWP as well. Just this one's made an appearance. Oh, the nade smoke, but the flash in response from the CT side stops both AWPs in their trap. There we go. 
He's sending it. Fallen. Oh, oh, and now he's got the shadow advantage. There's almost no coming back from what? this. Fallen tries to run it through. He keeps doing that. It's not doing Fury any favors. Ott's gotten rid of that AWP. Which Probably I think is a good thing, honestly. Yeah. That feels that feels like such a weird commitment for Fallen. I think it's just because that, that bottom ramp room control is so Pick powerful, back, right? Yeah. Like tries to play ahead of it, tries to go for something aggressive. At this point, like you've got to believe that you can do something about that. Having this control is just too much to give away for free, and Fury knew that. So, yeah, it, it's a bit of an unideal fight. It looks kind of silly for Fallen, but desperate times calling for desperate measures here. Desperate, Down the right. tail end of overtime. Oh. Brolin on the jump. They don't finish the job. He's just still wasting so much time. Again, think about last round coming down to the wire. This one may as well. Still three smokes, a Molotov. They have so much left up. Art oh, needed that kill, and it's not getting given over. You can't respect a smoke in this round. You have to go up ramp if you want to win. 20 seconds, ignore the sandbag. Furious only salvation lies in this site. And they've got to do it the old-fashioned way. They've got to be quick. They've got to be speedy Fury right now. That Molotov, that might wreck everything. They can't plant. They can't get this bomb down. Looking for a way back in is Cello, but he'll burn alive. And so no. Maus, in a lengthy OTFF, no. finally get the map that they were looking for. And they take us the distance onto Mirage. Good morning, everybody. Well, at least over on the NA side of things, perhaps even the South American side of things as well, because it would appear as though Puria decided to wake up a little bit here, gave us a bit of a challenge, but all in all, a little bit in vain. We do see Vertigo go the entirety, the full distance. Yeah, it seems like they were taking turns, Trace, taking naps. You know, it seems like Furia <laughs> was taking a little nap over there in the first half, then yep. Maus decided to take a nap yep. in the second half, and eventually they, they got it done in overtime, but it got too close.
for comfort. I mean, let's let's just kind of you know right away look at just the disparity between the first half and second half of play, right? Like it was not very competitive first half. I mean, 11-2 on either side, right? So it's just an absolute mess. What was going on? I think at the end of the day, you know, the first thing that you would want to look at is for Mal's on CT side, things look fantastic. I mean, great start. Furio, it seemed like they could get nothing done, and that's a really bad sign on the T side, especially with how the map has been updated with those new spawns. It really didn't feel like they could take any space early at all. A lot of those opening duels were going the way of the CTs. Torsi was having a great time on the uh, on the AWP, uh, and it really felt like Furia was kind of just down and out, and then, uh, you know, swap sides, and all of a sudden it's a completely different story. We just completely run it back and, uh, yeah, find ourselves in the OT, so uh, crazy game. I don't even know what you really say at this point, but it is getting very, very late. These players, I'm sure, are getting very tired going into that third map. Which is something to kind of grab onto, right? I mean, we're talking about a Furia that had to battle back to this point to make this a competitive map uh, up to that point. Uh, so tell me a little bit about that endurance. That stamina, it's got to be up there. Yeah, they put up a, a great fight. I mean, had uh, different setups on the CT side, right? They like to utilize those boosts towards the A-bomb side. Art had another uh, really good map. Uh, it, it's kind of funny that, you know, it was Keserato actually who was the poorest performer for Fury. I mean, that happens probably once every 20 maps or so. So a little bit unfortunate that, that it happened on this one in a close game. But on the side of Maus Brolan, definitely stepped it up, right? Like, I think he only had six kills on map one, but here uh, he started off really, really strong in that first half towards the A bomb site, finding openings, just mowing people down. And yeah, uh, a couple of really, really big clutches that he managed to win that didn't seem like they were very important because Mouse had such a big lead, but ended up being absolutely crucial. This 1v2 was crazy. But again, I, I still do lean back on the idea that if Fury had just had a few more of them T rounds, you know what oh, I mean? Yeah. Like, just a couple more. Well, I mean, that's exactly what Yanko's saying right there with that 2v1. If that 2v1 goes the other way, then it's maybe a completely different story. Um, obviously, you look at a lot of the individuals and you have to say, okay, everyone's sort of stepping up. Art had a great game. Fallen seemed to be relatively consistent uh, with the AWP there as well. But K Serato, where did he go, right? He's the guy that we always talk about. He's the guy that we always look at on this Furio roster and just wasn't able to step up when it mattered. And had he been there in his normal capacity that's a 2-0 today and it's furia and liquid that would be the two teams through to the playoffs how crazy of a storyline that would be interesting day one yeah uh, and i'm sure this next gentleman is having exactly that it's gary caught up with heku All right, I just got the information for Gary about what exactly happened on Vertigo. So basically, in the first half, yes, they struggled to get the plant on the T side. And he mentioned it's like because there were just too many people dying super early. Now, on the city side, he's like happy with the results. But unfortunately, they were just lacking maybe like one more, one more run, just a little bit more than two on the T side. But now it's going to be a third and final map. Yeah. Uh, you know, we do go to that third and final. We look at a mirage to sort of set the difference here between the two teams. Now, given what we got in the in the first half of play here from Puria, they can't afford to start that slow again, Yanko. Yeah, I mean, they were giving up a lot of opening kills. As, as Gary pointed out, that's why they couldn't get a bomb plan because it was 3v5s, 2v5s, 2v4s, right? Like, they couldn't penetrate that first line of defense. And on Mirage, I think, actually, funnily enough, M Mirage is one of those maps where Furia, T side, like, they have a little bit of depth to it. They have some more complex strategies, right? It doesn't... It's not all relying on just running and gunning and, and, and some quirky plays, so... I think for both teams, it's about do you still have the concentration yep. you know, at this point in time? Like, they already played the game earlier today, so they had to be up early. Now it's getting super. It doesn't matter even if you're jet lagged or not. Just even in, in your normal time zone, this would be getting up there in, in, in terms of nerves. But we're gamers, man. We're programmed to play all the time, right? No? I mean, it is 11 p.m., but... but Maybe like, not in this conference. You know, Yankee, you've been here all day. You know what it's like. You're, you're, you're probably <laughs> struggling just as much as these guys are. But, um, yeah, this is where you kind of have to dig deep. And, and I think there's that big story storyline for Mao's where if they were to drop this series, then we're going to really start asking questions going into tomorrow and further on into Chengdu after how things sort of played out toward the back end of the major. And that's starting to become a bit of a problematic trend. Whereas for, for Furia, I mean, I feel like there's only wins to be had, really, right? You look at this and say, well, they weren't necessarily meant to be super competitive against Mao's. And already they're kind of sort of starting to prove that they're maybe on the right trajectory in terms of an upward trend. Yeah, and that's kind of, you know, that's one thing about this Miles lineup. We talk about their trajectory and how exciting they are uh, to kind of watch and take into uh, account. But really, 
you know, where do you place them on that trajectory? Like, where are their shortfalls? What keeps them from, like, breaking through the mold? Well, I think Mouse's problems come when we talk about the playoffs and the stage, right? right? It seems like when that environment changes, it somehow affects them and the way they approach the game. That shouldn't be an issue at this stage of the tournament. And especially Mirage is a strong map for them. It was actually their best map if you go back, you know, six months or a year, uh, one that they used to pick often in their series. So I think... I wonder if these teams are going to change their, their approach a little bit on the T side, right? Like maybe focus a little bit more on executes, like set calls, or just do a quick uh, mid take uh, or a quick fake of, of mid control and then just exploding onto a bottom side, right? Because if you play default and slow, that requires everyone to be on point to communicate. And for that, you need good energy, right? And I think they're struggling for energy at this point in time. There's a lot of yelling going on around here, which is one which of Which is also uh, consuming. Yeah. It consumes your energy, right? And now you have to go into a third map. You've been yelling for nothing, yeah, right? Pretty much. Like, not, and now you're in the decider. So maybe you should have conserved some of that energy. Well, we're going to try to conserve a little bit. Yes, Mirage is in front of us, and so is Furia, who did just take that one to the brink, but couldn't get it over the line. Could have been a 2 other way, but we will decide it all on Mirage when we return. You're watching the Intel Extreme Masters. At some point in every gamer's life, there's a question to be asked. Do your clothes match your hobby in any situation? Or do they just represent what you dream of? No matter what situation, there's always the right wear and the wrong. The only real question is, which are you going to choose? Decide for yourself. Smokes, let's see a double smokes in the same place there. Simple, just jumping casually into the side. Wait, 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 what, 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 what was that? Never miss a play again. Finally. With Face It Watch, you're in control. Switch between player POVs live and see the game through the eyes of any pro. Never miss a moment with replays. Relive each highlight on demand from all angles. Watch it, control it, face it.
After falling shy of their comeback attempt on Vertigo, now Fury are hoping to settle the score here on a Mirage. For Maus, they've also got a point to prove, showing they can handle the pressure as they recover that one on the previous map. The spirits seem high in the Maus camp. Heading into this third and final map, look at this. Some good banter from Torshi. Good vibes uh, for Maus, and the same can't really be said for Fury, who mounts a massive comeback and still fall at the final hurdle. And now we go to another map where Maus have managed to beat Spirit on it. So in terms of track record, in terms of run, pretty good for Maus on Mirage. Sure, Vertigo took them some time, but they did get it done after all. And now they look to qualify to the playoffs as Fury face them forward, front, head on in this bout at 11 p.m. local here in Chengdu, China to see who's getting that guarantee at top eight. Yeah, right. We already had uh, Liquid make it through earlier, being the, the first team to lock in a playoff appearance. And now we have to know who's going to be against them. That is you on camera, Chewie. Yeah. Looking good, getting ready. Meanwhile, we've had, yeah. So, no, so meanwhile, we've already had Tyloo eliminated from the competition. Oh, and two, of course, uh, one of the rosters fielding uh, a couple of standings, a couple of bench players, a couple more players brought back and then dismissed. And who knows? Ross is kind of in flux right now. So that wasn't a shock as Lin Vision took the regional bout. Both these two Chinese teams fell to one of Maus and Fury early on today. Fury got their revenge against Lin Vision from that major BO1. And Maus took down Tai Lu in a very close affair where it took Yimpy dropping big numbers to get him over the line. That was 13 11 on overpass. And of course, talk of the town, news of the day, Liquid are back, baby. Or rather, they've begun taking down top four majorists in G2, pushing them to the lower bracket. My point being with Heroic and G2 waiting in that bottom spot with only one slot available, neither of these two rosters wants to join them. No, 100% not. It's a very stacked lower bracket that started to take shape there. And uh, that's going to be a real bloodbath. Yeah. In one of the uh, home crowd favorites in Lin Vision finding themselves down there as well. Not necessarily hit him with the same caliber, but... Yeah, yeah. It would be a shame to have no Chinese teams in the playoffs, although not... Oh, we're still relying on Steel Helmet. Uh, <laughs> I love that for you. I love that for you, indeed. Um, I wish them good luck, uh, frankly. Um, but, yeah, it would be nice to have a Chinese team in the playoffs, just, you know, considering we're back in China and, you know, actually Asian CS is better than it's ever been, perhaps gaining back another major spot off the back of the Mongols, run to the top 16. But the Chinese teams are nipping at their heels. They're right behind them. If only we had that full Tyloo roster, they need more time, of course, but... Limvision certainly looked good for the job against G2, which funnily enough is like the original, that's a Limvision El Clasico from when we saw them in their first time in Europe, where they managed, where Starry managed to 1v5 them on a pistol round. It's when Limvision really broke out onto the scene two years ago now, it feels like. And they've gotten better and better, but they may have bitten off more than they can chew here in China. Have Furia is the question. They had a chance to close this series 2-0. And, and instead, 
Mirage now sits in Mouse's pocket as their favorite. Yeah, the thing I think that will always be sad for Fury here if it does fall apart on this third map is knowing that they were so close because then if they do end up in that lower bracket and end up falling short, it's like, well, you know, look at who they would have had to lose to for that to happen. It'll either be Heroic or G2, and at that point, it kind almost feels... Yeah, it's like, yeah. okay, fair. But so, yeah, they, 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 they were, were so close. They were literally around. They were 12-11 on that last map. They were around away from playoffs, and that could be the round they remember if it costs them down there but let's not doom and gloom it yet let's see let's just let furious speak for themselves in map three the final map of the night here as mouths look to perform the reverse sweep in this series Furia have their eyes set on an A play in this pistol. Right, Util coming over now. Sometimes you'll see this, uh, them do this with decoys, but Shui oh, has blocked blocks. this smoke. Nice. That is a great block out of Shui. Double stairs smoke. Fury are going to be confused when they see that. Bro, you missed your smokes. Oh, I swear I didn't. Oh, they'll still fight through it, though. Cello, no fear, and a re-smoke ready. They even have a flash for the spawn if they want to be... Rambunctious, how it goes, but dodged. And Mao's just getting funneled through this choke. This is a little awkward. Furia had a game plan in this pistol with that second smoke. We can revisit it in a second as they look to take it over the line anyway. They're going to deal with the flank. Maybe exertion just dodges capture, but all his teammates fall like flies. And Fallen will finish the job. Two up. Fury I like to do there is they'll throw in the smokes over towards jungle and stairs and then they take CT and they do like that that smoke that kind of cuts off the channel for players trying to retake but Art with that smoke had to use it over at jungle after this one gets blocked. So they didn't get to do the pistol round that they wanted to do. You could see them actually starting a group over to CT and then they realize, well, we've used the smoke already. They have to go back more passive, but they stick the landing anyway. So Fury adapt on the fly very nicely there in that pistol. Yeah, better to just use it, right? Get it down to guarantee that open plant. Full eco for Maus. Flash over middle. One god flash for exertion. Oh dear. Oh my god, right. Fallen is juggling the guns out of mid, he's terrified, the USPs are closing in. And Jimmy's even found his way on with Galil, but not for long, Fallen will mop it up. Scared for a moment and then returns triumphant to mop up the pistols. Furia will stick the landing on this conversion. See if that gun's yeah. anywhere in mid. Might be something, Galil perhaps. Ah, Mac 10. Ah. Unlucko. Robbed. Galil got picked up by K Serato in his rotation. And so, you know, not the best save. But honestly, it's fine. Mao's are buying up next round anyway. If you're exertion, I think try do some damage here, get a bit more money. But I'm not exertion here, so if he doesn't do that, that is my defense. Sustained. And a sustaining round for Furia to keep three alive. Fall on with some crispy shots. Yeah, I mean, you know, he plays that perfectly, right? He knows they're going to try pressure mid once that stack's been spotted. He's only passive for the moment that they're taking top middle. And then the moment his teammate's there to join him, he kind of recommits to the mid fights and looks really good for it. Wasn't scared of the USPs, just didn't want to leave anything to chance. But here's the buyback in for Maus. Not going to feature that AWP straight away. Ooh. Okay, 
Uh, Uchello gets out behind the boxes. They don't know, and the swing off the flash is perfection. Can he get out with any more dodged? Uchello needs support. There's oh, great flashes for Furia in this round. Torshi may grab a kill under, but he wants more that, more where that came from. He might have it as well. Out behind the smoke. Under's cleared. Bomb trapped. Torshi can get out now if he wants. Does he want to risk it? Support from Jimpat finds another kill. Does get caught in that Molotov though. Two on three. Low players spam through the smoke. Big round from Cello, nonetheless. Three kills, and this one's dead. Unless. Through he goes. Toshi. Oh. oh. There we go. Spidey senses were tingling, and he's going to deal with art out through middle. Quite the turnaround there from Maus. They were on the back foot for a little while, but Toshi picks up the pieces over in mid. That's crazy. 5v3 off a of cello getting flashed into those two mid engagements. Still Maus just send themselves back up mid with a vengeance. Even if it feels like there are some overcommitments there, they still win the round. Period need K Serato. Like that round yeah. there, it's, you know, he's just kind of playing on intuition, on a feeling that the B site, there's going to be some space for him. I can forgive that one. But he was the quiet player on Vertigo. You weren't talking about him a lot over in the first map of Nuke either. And so this has to be the one where he kind of rises above it all. Shoey, oh. full blind. <laughs> oh, right up in his face with the back 10. Love that. Brolin going up and over at Ticket, but it's just the one and done as Cello trades that out. And now Exertion trying to make a play will get denied. K Serato is on the board. And just Jimmy left. Slippery Jim. That nade finds him, and Cello will hound him down. So Furia straight back to their winning ways with a damn near flawless round. Four alive. They'll take that every day. I pose this as, you know, it's the map, map Mal's B spirit on. They've got a great track record. They're going to be comfortable. It goes both ways, right? Like, Furia beat Liquid on the uh, on this map of the RMR and that BO1. They took down Ents, of course. A little wounded at the Major. It's not, it's not been the most frequent map for Furia since that point but it's still one they've got plenty of experience on I mean it's Mirage man need I say more why do USPs always look so threatening when Maus are using them even now look at this little silent conga line are you looking at it I'm looking but it ain't, ain't going nowhere, Harry. If you're going to waltz into that B-bomb site. Oh, no, Brolin with the spawn. Oh, sorry, guys. I went up top. i got to go to the back now. That's a shame, guys. Now I'm baiting. Yeah, he's ended up back at the front again. Hold, hold your horse. I'm only kidding. Man. There's a gun in the middle. They're going to grab that. They might actually get oh my God, hang really on. badly. Yuri, they just checked con for him. Oh, dear. <laughs> that one's free. Furia will get into the B site in the meantime. But getting out of the round with two guns, that's pretty nifty already. Mouse might want more than that, though. They're going to send in these pistols, see if anything else is offered up from Furia. Fairly winnable. A USP round that runs the risk of getting out of hand. Cello tucked in at the back of the bench. Util coming out now as well. They've scavenged everything they can from Furia's bodies oh, in this pistol round. But Cello, safe pair of hands to have in over at bench. Safe pair of hands looking to take this one home for Furia. And Cello will do exactly that. Woo! Of course. And damn, does he let them know about it. Yeah, four kills from Cello. He's had a sick start to the game. That molly misses. If that bounces correctly and goes bench, Cello's in a world of trouble. But it stops in the corner of the site. Could have actually been the round winner, or at least get the ball rolling instead. Surface is flat. That ball's just stuck. All power for Art. Fallen boosts him. They trade back. I was going to say, who is the author here? I'm not talking about Cloud9. Look at me. I am the AWPA now. No, 
Yeah, just off of spawns. And a bit of a B-lean for Furia. Once again, they're looking for this mid control a little later. Fallen donning that big green, takes it over to mid. Art, this is a very passive hold of any aggression in through Palace or Ramp. But Mao's aren't in a position to go for that. Instead, they want to fight for middle. They're not on the extremities yet. Run boost. Ooh, beautifully done. Very clean with it. And Fallen's not able to hit the ground in time to deal with that player back in connector. Sershin is playing very patient in ladder right now. He's facing off against an informed cello here. An in tune cello. The most terrifying oh. kind, but Exertion will deal with him. And there's a bit of support from his friend. Shui keeps the advantage in favor Ouch. of Mouse. Smoke blowing open, Yuri dead. Nice Fallen will come in with a trade at least. Two kills off of Fallen's AWP. Bomb lost over at Catwalk. So as Fallen goes further afield here, he won't be in position to grab that bomb. And that means Furia are not attempting this round. They'll let it sail on by the wayside as Mouse. We'll collect a second when those rifles make another appearance. Fallen's had some great orp rounds in this series. This is another one. It does fall on dead ears, but back on Nuke, he was a terror with it on the T side. Didn't even really matter on CT half, but certainly got it done on the offense. So Mal's went around. Comes at a cost, but it forced Furious save. Yeah, Mao's are in a really good spot to try and tie this game up and, and lay any early worries to rest. You know, conversely, Furia could look to to break through Mao's money as well. But it matters a lot to Mao's to, to stop Furia getting off to a hot start here and now. And they could do that. With the save in that last round, Furia's money is at breaking point. So if they go out through lower, that first duel matters a hell of a lot. And even though they get the trade, they're not ready for Torshi. Posted in the ladder room, keeping that lead in Mouse's favor in this one and sending the bomb away. Cello can't really dedicate to the save with that, sorry, to the trade with that bomb on his back. And so he'll have to commit to the long rotate all the way back around to his teammates in at ramp. And even if they get out into A, will they be ready for exertion mm. all the way push through Palace? Right he now, could it even feels catch like a the bomb. He could even catch the bomb as it rotates back. Oh, he might. It does feel like a B play. I don't know if he'll flank ramp unless they make noise, right? He's going to kill the bomb right here in spawn. It's the last thing you're expecting. Oh, Cello gets a Cello's second chance. Zershan now playing in towards the ramp, and they've got the info. Brolin confirms it, killing Caserato. They're ready for one more. Zershan buying time. Fallen kind of has to come back at this point. Cello's on his own. Zershan not ready for the orb, but he gets a chance off the reload. Oh, no. Fallen, another missed shot. This is getting ugly now. Zershan's just playing with his food. He chows down and takes that AWP and the round. Nothing Cello can do in this position even though he wasn't ready for another man at ramp. It mattered not. He's just happy to be here. And that is one of the rounds that many are describing as played at IEM Chengdu, right? Like that is a bit of an ugly one. We were just singing Fallen's praise on the AWP. Had more than enough chances there to deal with exertion and keep the, uh, the dream alive. They just couldn't get a beat on him. And Exertion goes on to completely rob Furia of any hope here. They are broke. Art's been tossed a hero AK. But that one just leaves a bad taste in your mouth if you're Furia. Yeah. Like batteries. Sure. That's, I guess, the go-to bad tasting food. Not a food, by the way. <laughs> Don't eat them. batteries. <laughs> yep. True. We covered all the legal bases there, so here we are. Uh, are out through lower. That hero gun needs to sing for Furia. Ooh, they're everywhere. Oh, they are all around him. Got to pick a target. Got to pick a target. And isn't able to adjust on his Shui in time. His teammates swoop in and swiftly deal with the mid aggro. And this round falls on deaf ears. There's that tie game you were promised. 
after Keep winning the boys. round prior. Let's go, let's go. Three in a row now for Maus. They are picking up steam. They are building momentum. And Fury's first time out is called as well. Maus not afraid to fight them in the middle with how many late mid takes Fury have been doing. Maus still have players ready to swing window and cat together. They've been utilizing ladder a lot. Haven't even really seen this AWP make a claim to the game on CT side, but Torshi will have his here. <coughs> Sounds like a mid take for Maus. Yeah, they're looking to really drive home the advantage, right? Start trying to chip away at the room that Furia can have. But if that is the case, I'll never meet them there. Furia have their eyes set on the A play. Another one of these XX looking to come through. Torshi posted with his AW. Sees an arm, takes a leg, cello dead, and Brolin will now join him in the kill feed. That advantage sternly taken by Maus. No resistance yet from Fury yet as Keserato tries oh. to leap in. Hang on. Hello. Hang on. Oh. Oh. Hello. He's Bro default, bro. Brolin's right here. Brolin's right here. Keserato shot in the back. Didn't know where Brolin got to, and that cost them dearly. It's only fallen left. And ah, Jimmy nice is one. here. Good job, Lude. Nice, Jimmy. Nice one. Jimmy the Beast comes through to take the lead for Maus. Four in a row as they keep streaking them together. And for Furia, they're left once again with no money. Feeling like this game is starting to get away from them. That initial 4-1 lead, how good it felt for Furia. Really good supporting clashes the whole way. Sure, they they blind Brolin for a moment, but that goes both ways. Keserato also loses track. They know he was under balcony. His smoke makes it a bit of a fake and hiding out of the backside. Just getting rained down death. Torshi's off, dying in the Molotov, or maybe not. He smokes it after his second. This guy will not give them a chance. Maybe he'll need to now on nine. And this would be crazy. Like, if Torshi suddenly oh goes back, back to map, map one, Torshi oh four. Yeah. Like, that's that should be over. There, there should be no accounting for that. Everyone kind of thought he was spent. You know, hasn't really been a name you had to look to all too much since the conclusion of Nuke, but suddenly arriving on the scene in a very big way. That all presence is felt from Furia and it leaves them hurting. It leaves them wanting. Yuri even just whittled down, nothing's going his way. And so Maus look to extend this lead even further versus the kind of mishmash half by that Furia bring to the table here. At bare minimum, their loss bonus is capped out now, so every round you're going to have something to work with, something to fight with.